This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 726, the first part of our Arcs of Consequence. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. My name is Steve. And my name is Alex. And joining us for this most momentous occasion, we have very special guest translator for One Piece in Shonen Jump and Manga Plus. Stephen Paul is joining us. How's it going, Stephen? I am very happy to be here for this momentous recording. Yes, it's a momentous recording. Have we mentioned that the recording is indeed momentous? And that is because back in 2015, seven years ago, was the last time we ranked the arcs, the story arcs of One Piece. Back then, the world was much different. Uh, we used clubs to record the podcast, which seemed like a really stupid way to record. But, you know, that's what we did at the time. Anyway. Uh, at that time, we had 22 arcs. This time, we have 24 arcs. Um, but we <laughs> also broke it. <laughs> we're counting slightly differently. Um, before we get started, <clears throat> I just want to say this uh, episode will be a two-episode series ranking all of those 24 arcs. Uh, we're going to start in the middle and go to the, the quote-unquote worst story arc as we ranked it. And then we're going to start from the middle. I like to use the term least liked. Least least liked. And then we'll start from the middle and go to the top, the most popular arc amongst the One Piece podcast crew. Uh, we're also taking all of your votes out there, and we will continue to take those votes. As of this recording, we have over 400 entries, so we will uh, let all of you know where it ranks um, on... We're going to include where it's ranked in the audience polls as well um, as we go through. But those are going to change, and we're going to actually give the updated version on our live episode, which is coming out for the 25th anniversary of One Piece in a couple weeks. Um, so that all being said, we have 30 entries from our crew um, and our guests, and this includes everyone here, Steve, Alex, Ed, me, and Steven. It also includes Brian Newton, uh, Mike Patton, Dennis, also known as Itchnob, Jeff, uh, formerly of the Shonen Jump app, V from Toho Yaro, Jill, uh, who you all know as Jill, who says hi and that she loves you all. I think she said that. Um, and we have Henry Thurlow the, from uh, Toy Animation, Godswell Ugwa, Rogers Bass, Abby Denton, Sungwon Cho, Dan Dockery, uh, Joey Weiser, Brodsky, Joe, our Discord moderator, Kelly, our editor-in-chief, Sam, our anime recap host, um, David Bednar, Donnie, um, did I write two Dans? Oh, no, Dan, our, our, uh, our editor. You know Dan. Um, <laughs> Nikki, Thatch, Vero, Bell, and Shannon Strucci. Um, so that is who took place in this, and that is, those are our judges, so to speak, for this um, arc ranking. It's quite the rogues gallery. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, and please check them all out. I'm not going to give all their Twitter accounts out right now, but please, please check them out if you haven't. Um, I'm not reading all of the accounts of everyone who voted out there in the audience, but I will let, um, I will say thank you all so much um, for voting in this. Um, so as, as I speak, we have 397 responses. There's just another one just got added as I, as I said this. So, this is just going to be an interim, uh, interim vote tally, a capture in time, and as I said, we'll have a final vote tally in a couple weeks. Um, so with that out of the way, why don't we get ranking? That's what we I say here at, on the arcs of consequence. We say, let's get ranking. Let's, let's get ranking yeah. and yeah. bass. It's ranking time. Damn it, Alex. I was I'm beginning to I rank. Got, I, <laughs> I think that's what they used to say when they uh, when they began filming the the Rudolph TV special. Let's get ranking. You know, right, I think this uh, doing this twice now. We are the kings of ranking. That's true. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I ranking of kings. The, ranking ranking of kings of o pirates. We're Osama ranking. <laughs> no, we're ranking not. The hell's an Osama? <laughs> We're gonna do this in tiers, um, and Steve, I don't know if you still have those uh, the the tiers that we're doing up. Um, if you want to introduce, did you not write them down? I um, did. I just I was just gonna. I want to give Steve a chance to talk. I've been talking this whole time, Steve. I did not write them down. Okay. Are we doing then, all six? We are we doing all six of these? We're doing all six. I could do it. Um, so we're doing much like in 2015, 
We are doing the Lovematic Grandpa or the Love Tester Machine, whatever you want to call it. We're doing those six levels. It starts at the bottom with Cold Fish, then Lovelorn, Lukewarm Luke, Hubba Hubba, Hot Tamale, and Casanova. Um, so each one of those include four story arcs, um, and we'll see where your favorite arc ranks. It better not be Cold Fish, um, unless it's Fishman Island, then... I guess it would kind of mm. make sense there. We'll talk. We'll see. We'll see if that's where it ends yeah, up. Yeah, I don't know. Unless, you know, that's what your ex-wife used to call you. Anyway, uh, we're going to start with uh, the lukewarm Luke tier, which includes number 13 through 16. And we'll start with number 13, right smack 13. near the middle. Um, this arc wasn't on our last arc ranking. Oh. Um, it scored an average at 13.47, which means it was the average was around 13. Um, and it is the Zo arc um, ranks right mm. in the middle. Um, and it ranked, believe it or not, same exact place for the audience as, as we are currently speaking. So wow. it seems like everyone mm. agreed. It's a good middle of the road neutral opinion no, no strong feeling one way or the other um the people who ranked it highest were um uh, me and ed and since i've been talking for a while we both ranked it number 10 mm -hmm. um since we have been talking about it for a while i will uh, since sorry, i've been talking for a while ed before i lose my the thing that makes me think and talk why don't you start sure Your this brain? has got uh, zoe was such a refreshing uh, ending to Dress Rosa. It kind of it gains in estimation after sort of the second half of Dress Rosa. The ending of Dress Rosa was great. We had that sort of uh, mystery of what happened to Sanji and his crew, uh, the other crew, other half of the crew, and reuniting them uh, ended up happening on Zoe. And I think that that leaves a really good feeling. And also, we get introduced to the Animal Kingdom pirates. We have uh, Yunosuke. We have all these great new characters and all the emotional payoff of like there's a Poneglyph here and there's also Rizo. And um, like the sort of uh, the interesting narrative structure, I also enjoyed, if I, if I remember correctly, in the um, the flashback showing Dogstorm and Cat Viper and the whole sort of culture of the Minx is. Um, it, I mean, it it, uh, it added a lot. It really sort of it, it was a spice that ran through the whole rest of the uh, up to where we are now with all the characters that uh, that were introduced at that point. And uh, yeah, it's um it's it's a good arc. It could have. By by necessity, it was a transitional arc, so it was, ended up being kind of short. So I I don't know if I could put it much higher than I did, but yeah, it's uh I really liked it. Yeah, I'll I'll speak quickly about it. Um, I I would echo Ed. I think it was a perfect combination of good backstory. Um, it was it have it has lovable characters, all of them. Mm -hmm. Uh. All of them animal. Um, and the villains who are evil, like cartoonishly yeah. evil, very evil, but also kind of weak. Except for Jack. No, Jack's kind of weak. Um, no. Not just Jack. <laughs> yeah, it, not the... I think at the time... He but also a, the the aspect of the elephant at the end yeah. of the arc is... Yeah. It, pu it puts an exclamation point on it, and like to see a giant... Like, probably the biggest... I don't know if it's the biggest creature, maybe the horse is bigger, but... A creature of that size just taking out one guy is, uh, I love that. And it's a hint towards the larger history of the One Piece world. Yeah, for me, it's that perfect combination of lore, fun characters. We do get parties and stuff. Uh, the whole crew being there, except for Sanji, kind of. Um, but whatever. Um, and uh, cool new characters also coming into play. I mean, a lot of them have stuck with us to this day. Um and hopefully for, for much longer, you know, since Carrot is going to be joining the crew, I'm sure. Um, it's the beginning of Capone being everyone's favorite. Uh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of really good stuff in there. And I'll say the Animal Crossing color spread is still one of my favorites with the, all the crew and Zoe. Mm. It, like, Zoe is, is an arc. When I think of it, I only think of good things. Like, it's not going to – it doesn't – doesn't completely blow my mind. It it takes a different structure. You could tell Oda definitely was restless after Dressrosa because of Whole Cake Island, Reverie, and Zoe all um, have this very different, you know, feel to them than a typical mm -hmm. arc. 
Um, and that I really like. And I think for Zoe, it works particularly well. The, the drawbacks for me is that it's not a particularly monumental arc. Um, and it's not a particularly... Um, you kind of need the other stuff around it to really enjoy it. Um, it's very intertwined with everything, which I think for me, when I was ranking it at least, uh, with with, an, with a very with one prominent exception, um, it mattered kind of whether it could stand on its own. Um, I sorry, one more thing I want to mention, and that's that we all did ha come to a consensus about the way that these arcs were going to be designed. And even we don't like the way it kind of came out, but there's no perfect model, um, I think, is kind of where we ended up. Anyway. There's no, there's no official no. Categor categorizing of these arcs. It's all, anytime someone does it officially, it's all different. Have mm. you ever seen the, the One Piece anime DVDs? The, oh, know, that's there, completely a, its there, own thing. There's yeah. a Kinemon arc, did you know? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, I, uh, a little peek behind the kimono. Uh, when I was... Uh, uh, trying to figure out how to rank these. Um, I see your, I see your eyes. Um, <laughs> when I was trying to figure out how to rank everything, I kind of ranked everything in groupings of sort of like sagas. You know, like here's uh, my top East Blue one, one, you know, one to seven or whatever, and here's first leg of the Grand Line, second leg of the Grand Line, uh, post time skip. Um, like, and I think it's. Uh, a, a real arbitrary thing, the uh, the saga model, yeah, uh, and even even arcs, yeah, um, because we have like post arc stuff. Um, it's really hard to figure out a a uh, like as you say an official way to do this. And I think uh, this time around, it's a little different from how we did it last time, right? Yeah, yeah. we we. I th well, first of all, I didn't want to have a discussion for an hour about how do we organize this. I don't like the way – I don't like that this is in sorry, here. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up, but I feel, no. I feel like it bears mentioning. No, no. It does bear mentioning. We we did combine a little bit more – I think we also may have broken out a few things even. But this was I, – I gave like six choices. I'm like one with like every little thing broken out, you know – uh, post Ennius Lobby, its own thing, for example. Um, the Reverie is, you know, like every little thing, and then gradually everything as condensed as possible. And this was kind of somewhere in the middle, and I think it's, and everyone, it was pretty unanimous um, at the end of the day to choose this one. There was, there was not a ton of disagreement. Uh, Steve, you wanted to say something, or? Yeah, I wanted to talk about Zoe. Uh... I was, gonna to, what? I was going to give yeah, it to. What, what, I was going to give it to Stephen. Ranking. Yeah, I was going to give it to Stephen first because Stephen had it at the lowest at sixteen. Okay. Um, uh, so Stephen, I don't know. Obviously, you could talk about why you like it or why you dislike it. It's, yeah. For well, everyone, it's kind of in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I should. I should definitely make a disclaimer here that um, I spent. I think no more than five minutes uh, organizing my thing. I just looked at it and just went bam, 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 bam. Uh, you know, much like um, Andy and April's wedding in in parks of uh, parks and re uh, recreation, I cannot then. I cannot stress how little I spent thinking about this. <laughs> so this is all going to be a surprise to me, and now I get to argue and try to pretend that I had a coherent uh, view of all this. But yes, I do. I think I put Zoe lower because I, in my rankings overall, I believe I I had a strong bias towards story arcs like if a if an arc had if it was telling a story i think i tended to rank it higher and zo is what i would call more of like a snapshot arc or a portrait arc where it gives you a really vivid view of a place and it has a lot of really interesting stuff but there's not a lot that happens in it you know it's it, it isn't a story with a beginning and an ending and, and a couple middle parts you know it's it's a justification for where we're going next and how to kind of organize that information. And um, so I think that that is a large part of why I had it down at, at 16. Um, I also was not, I, I am not a big fan of, of Jack. Um, I wasn't really <laughs> impressed with him originally. And uh, you know, that did not rise. My, my estimation did not rise over time. Um, but uh, you know, despite that, I do think there's, there's so much really cool stuff with it. I love the setting, the, you know, just, the the moment where you see the elephant is is definitely one of the all time great like One Piece moments, um, you know in the in the sort of 
Spielbergian sense of wonder sort of thing of like, holy shit, that's where we're going next. Um, and, <laughs> and I, I do, I do love that. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a very, it's a very interesting arc. I, I, I don't want to say unique necessarily, but, um, it, it definitely, there's not anything else quite like it in one piece, I think. Um, Steve, you ranked it at 14. So pretty close to average. Having just uh, re revisiting, uh, having just revisiting the material to the anime, and I'm trying my best not to have the anime adaptations factor too much in my rankings. I was kind of focusing more on the manga this go around. Uh, Zo is very refreshing because the Dress Rosa burnout was a thing. And Zo. It is structured very differently than any other One Piece arc because One Piece arcs tend to be you get to a place and then eventually you get to a flashback. I love that this story just threw you, like the, this arc threw you into something like something big, like the after effects of something big happening and you're slowly getting pieces of explanation of what happened. And I think the way... The, the way the arc is structured, it's it's great. I think it's like it it knows when to give you, you know, some nuggets of of exposition and then backs out and and brings you back in the present and explains more. It's like I remember like before, like we meet uh, Dogstorm and Cat Viper, we would get a flashback of when Dogstorm and Cat Viper <laughs> fought Jack. Yeah. And I thought it was very unique uh, for One Piece. So it's uh, something special. And of course. Zoe is probably one of the finest examples of how good Oda's uh, world building could be. Uh, just a very unique setting and it just rich in its own culture. And there's a lot of thought that goes into that. Uh, and plus there's a lot of creativity with doing with the anthropomorphic animals. It felt very fun. It kind of felt kind of back to... Uh, I don't want to say back to basics, but it felt very true to the spirit of One Piece. I'm like, okay, here's a very unique island. And I don't mean that to slag too much on previous arcs, but I think it was kind of, yeah, it's like this like this island. It's like anywhere else, but the, the people are, are half fish. <laughs> or uh, this, this place is the same as anywhere else, but uh, some people are toys. You know, it's... Zo had its own kind of ecosystem that... I I just really enjoyed that. Just uh just seeing like just knowing like oh oh the ground's different here because it's elephant skin and them factoring in you said Zunisha, a unique environment. Like, yes, the back of an yeah. an ancient elephant. Yeah. <laughs> and just factoring in Zunisha constantly watering its back with ocean yeah. water. Uh is there and also we haven't talked about this yet, but I think one of the one of the best uh, emotional moments in the series is finding out after all the minks went through yeah. uh, being tortured by Jack and his yeah. crew uh, that they did know who Rizo was and they were keeping that secret and they refused to, uh, uh, to turn him in. And that, that was a gut punch. That was so raw. And a true and surprise. That, I think like mm -hmm. I did not see yeah. that coming. Yeah. No one saw that coming. Yeah. At least I, yeah. I mean, as far as, far I as people I know. Yeah. Uh, and also the the lore dump uh, when we see the uh, the the road poneglyph and and then just finding more about the upcoming uh, Wano country and so and so many other things and finding out how to get to uh, Laugh Tale. I it was it was great. It and also like it's not too long, and, and I could appreciate it. I could appreciate that these days. But that's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Um... I agree. I think that's well said, Steve. Alex, um, you ranked it as, wait, I had it here, uh, 15. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Kind of right in the middle. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Zo uh, is short and sweet. Uh, it's a Lord jump. It's a Lord dump arc. So I tend to be a little, little uh, more like, I don't know, like sort of like Steven said, if it's not a self-contained story, I, I, I have less of an affectation for it. But, uh, uh, you know, dress rosa burnout was a definite thing with me. Um, it was the beginning of Oda's apology to dress uh, or dress rosa. <laughs> it's his apology tour, <laughs> his dress rosa yeah. apology tour. 
you get great character introductions like Cat Viper and Dog Storm. Uh, the Minx, uh, you finally get to know what the deal is with like you know Beppo and and uh, Peckums and them. Uh, Bedge, um, the reintroduction of him was like absolutely fantastic. The Sanji mystery, everything that's that Steve mentioned really like really resonated with me, and it was a nice um, nice palate cleanser. Uh, it's kind of what we needed. We needed kind of that short, you know, uh, that short uh, arc, sort of like how Davy Backbite followed Skypea. It was just fun. Um, but it was also this connective tissue. Uh, you know, this is this um, Four Emperors saga or whatever uh, Oda called it. And, uh, you know, it's all the necessary information that you need um, for uh, the next two big arcs to follow. So I think that's it, it's got some weight to it in that way. But mostly I just thought it was really fun. Um, I had a good time with it. And I, I will say that this time around, I ranked uh, I ranked these arcs uh, purely based on my enjoyment of them and how much yeah. like they kind Five, of stick yeah. with me. Yeah, as opposed to like, oh, this is a very important arc because yeah. you know it's the first time. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, sure, but like, uh, I did I have fun reading it. I think as the uh, <laughs> is it, that was sort of my my key. My I mean, key honestly, uh, it jumps up a few rankings for the thrill that I felt watching Zach uh, watching Jack get wrecked. By, uh, by Were you going to oh say God. me? Because I don't no, recall no, no, getting wrecked in that arc. Okay. <laughs> I hate I hate Jack. I think he sucks. Um, but uh, he's great cannon fodder. He's the first, like, what, one billion bounty to show up or whatever? He's... And then he gets completely wrecked by a gigantic elephant. So good. <laughs> it's. It, I think it's Love good it. to see a villain that is um, conse- potentially consequential, but ends up not being consequential. And also... Um, mysterious and kind of their power and background at the time you're reading oh. it. Actually, I think and, it's important that he had that bounty and yes. you know they defeated him. So it really shows after Dressrosa that that's the level that he's. Yeah, on. It, it's it sets it sets the stage, and in more ways than one. I think that chapter, and we had Greg on for it. I remember way back in the day, the X marks the spot one where you find out the, what the road poneglyph, poneglyphs are. Mm. Um, that is, I think, to this day, one of the most consequential chapters in how One Piece and the story works um, in yeah. the entire series. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, not just not just that fact, not just the fact that that chapter is in this arc but also all the stuff that all you have mentioned um some really cool moments um some really um heart-wrenching moments it's it's good i like it a lot (laughs) one uh, one last thing oh go ahead alex uh one last thing it also is i do really appreciate when oda throws in pirate stuff in his pirate manga um so it's 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 nice to be reminded oh by the way this is about pirates here's a very piratey thing yeah so uh yeah very cool to be reminded about the x marks the spot thing yeah and uh, yeah, and I was gonna say um, very uh, again, very minor thing. This is actually probably is why I bumped it down a little bit in my like personal sentiment because it was very difficult for me. But I remember when translating it, the Utia Yugara thing was oh, very God. confusingly yes. presented, yeah. it's and still, I, yeah. I I do love it. I I think it's really neat. It was a cool idea. I just wish he that he had. Uh, given me a little more help in terms of how he presented it to the audience because it was very much intended to be as enigmatic as possible um and so sometimes i feel like that's the, you know that's like my little thing that irks me about it but um i do think it is a we cool need idea a, that... we need an ease of translation um ranking yeah a metric after this. Yep. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> Um, I do want to talk about outliers, though. So I mentioned all thirty people who took place, who took part in this. Uh, who ranked it the highest? Roger, Roger's base ranked it at number four. Oh, um, the mammoth yeah. boy. Yeah. Actually, yeah. You know what? That makes sense. Mm-hmm. There is one person who ranked it lowest, and that is Thatch. Um, ranked it at dead last. Um, wow. Abby ranked it at second to last, and I think that's also worth noting. Um and okay. Vatsky ranked it third to last. Um, so we don't judge here. We don't. Oh, Joe also ranked it by the way, number four. Um, I'm and trying to think. Oh, how are? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's I. I think the really cool thing about the arc rankings in particular, and we've done a lot of other types of rankings, is I really feel like people's personalities do come forth. Mm-hmm. What 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 favorite characters what people like about the series or right. dislike 
Um, I think those really come forward. I think I said, I just ranked, the way I did it is, do I like this one more than this one? Okay, I'll rank this one higher if, as oh, yeah. far as enjoyment. And so I just went one by one by one. This one goes above here. Like, it's hard to say, is this my number one? Okay, but like, is this my number 17? Like, that's not a really easy one to say. Okay, um, let's go to number 14 um, in our lukewarm Luke uh, category. And that one with a 14.77 average is Punk Hazard. Um, in the uh, audience rankings, Punk Hazard ranked, I'm finding this out with all of you, so let's see, uh, number 17, so a little bit lower, mm -hmm. um, but around the same. So far, I think we're properly reflecting at least the interim uh, audience rankings, so that's good. Um, so let's see who ranked it highest, who ranked it lowest, and Stephen, you're out on your own here. Uh, you ranked it number eleven. Yes, I think so this is first. my yeah. I think this is my like um my sort of hipster vote. It's, this is like the this is this arc is underrated. Like people don't give it enough credit. Uh, and uh, because I think I I do feel like I I remember you know being in the you know this this arc was the first arc that I was the weekly translator full stop from from you know start to finish um and so i do obviously remember uh you know going through it week by week and being on the the podcast and talking about it and i do feel like as with most arcs you know people were very excited about it. like it was very interesting to go through um it, when it was happening and then i feel like over time it's just gone lower and lower and lower in the the public estimation because it's not it's not like a super important arc like i don't think it's like a you know it's not an earth shaking uh story development what about that time when the earth shook in it so, you know. well and i mean the main villain is caesar clown yes and it is caesar clown um but <laughs> i i think i i do you know this is like my my attempt to kind of lift it back up a little bit because i i do really i have a soft spot for for punk hazard i feel like it it was such a weird like you know, as close as you get to, uh, you know, a short of, you know, maybe the, the, the water seven, like, uh, get, you know, the whodunit, uh, you know, mystery part it is the closest to like a sort of conspiracy theory arc in one piece that we get, um, with like, what is this mysterious government lab? And why is there, you know, why are the only people here? Like these weird, you know, uh, half animal toad uh, goats. goons. Yeah. The pwn the toad goats. Um, why is there a dragon? Why is there a dragon? Why is it, is you know, dragon? fire and, and ice and stuff? And I, I felt like that was a really potent uh, thing, like com having that first after we came up to the, uh, you know, to the new world after uh, Fishman Island. Um, so I, I liked that a lot. I love Caesar Clown as a villain. I think he's such a fun character. Yeah, he's, I, I mean, he's, he's not threat. He's not truly threatening. Like, you know, Oda gave him his, his due, uh during the the arc even in the arc he he was not really like a oh my god this guy is terrifying it was like oh this guy has some like cheating powers like what is this bullshit um and and i <laughs> I, I just love his personality it's so much fun it just pops off the page um and I, I really enjoyed translating for him um and uh yeah i don't know it's not it's again it's not a super consequential arc but i i do feel like it's a it's a fun romp. I I feel like it is kind of a, a bit similar to Thriller Bark in that way. Like it's got a lot of flavor to it, um, and it doesn't. I don't think it overstays its welcome. Even even though like many arcs, it does have its certain parts where it drags. But uh, I think that that is true of just about anything um, in One Piece. Um, but I, I feel like this one did not waste too much time with a bunch of uh, filler, like story filler in construction that um is not super consequential like it just kind of does what it does and then we are off to the next uh, arc that's what i like about it um by the way i forgot to mention last time we did this in 2015 it ranked number 11 out of 22 it was right in the middle um so kind of in the same place ish um mm -hmm. all things considered i ranked it the lowest actually out of everyone at number 18 but i'll say this it's I, for me, like, I'm, I'm looking at my full list now, um, you know, I only say, like, the bottom, you know, bunch, you know, like, five or so, do I have, like, really, like, ugh, this could have been so much better, this wasn't great, you know, like, I have vibes like that. Punk Hazard, I like, I think it is, it is a perfectly good, perfectly fine arc. Um, it's hard I, to tweak, though. 
it was harder week to week. Um, it definitely had that air of mystery. I do agree with with Stephen. It didn't feel super consequential until the end, and then it was consequential only because of what was coming next. The Kuzan stuff was probably some of the cooler stuff. Um, yeah, pun that was the big thing um, of of that arc. Um, and Virgo. The, the, Virgo was funny. Virgo versus Law. That, that was a good fight. Yeah, it it was fine. Like I, all of this, it was a perfectly fine arc, but it was also kind of it didn't blow me out of the water. I think that's why it's a little lower for me. It's not like wow, this is. It, there was nothing um, that really made it super stand out to me. I think Law was a really great addition to the to the gang here. Um, I think the outfits are all really cool. I think there's some great gags of them stealing those outfits. Um, I think the centaur thing is great. The dragons are great. You know, like, I don't really have much to criticize it about, which is why when I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm looking at what's around it. I'm like, yeah, that kind of fits where it's supposed to be. I, I like most of the arcs of One Piece. That is why I am a One Piece fan. It just, I just don't think it stands out as much as the 17 that I have above it. Um, that's, that's really, that's really what it comes down to. Um, it just wasn't, I don't know. I don't really know if I have anything else to say about it. Um, Ed, you ranked it at one, one higher than me at 17. Yeah. At 17. Um, yeah, I have, I have positives. I have a lot, of, I have a lot of positives about this arc. I like the sort of the goofiness and the, uh, and like the, the intrigue aspect of it. But there was a lot of aspects of this that I did not necessarily care for. Didn't always care for body switch. Didn't care oh, for, yeah, um, was, yeah. I don't know. The, there was, I, I found it very difficult. Well, not very difficult, but I, I didn't necessarily like it week to week, especially with the ending of it with the chase. And also I'm not very, I don't know. I am kind of bothered by the violence against children a little bit. So like yeah. that aspect of it was, I don't know. I don't, the large, like the large children were, it was that was a little weird uh, for me. On the, on the on the other hand, I do like the like the smiley aspect of it, like the science aspect of Caesar Clown's powers, um, the minotaur, like the the brown beard and and the, the tours. They were all very um, they were very goofy characters. They're very light characters, I think, and it really sort of uh, the and like the chase of. It's interesting when Luffy has to like fight somebody with strength or he, in this case he has to get around their powers in order to beat them with a small amount of strength and then they have to like run out of the building uh to escape to escape the gas it's um yeah it, it's a, it's a it, it was enjoyable like and i definitely have positive i like and i like the i especially like the eddie cool brothers on, on a rewatch and law i think is is very cool i rolled in, my in eyes for those that are not <laughs> for everyone out there deep into me. uh they're cool but they wear hot pants um <laughs> But yeah, Law gets to be very cool in this arc. His fight with Virgo uh, has one of those really cool moments where he cuts the lab or he cuts the island. Yeah, and, I love uh, it. Yeah, it's it's not it's not my favorite arc. Caesar is goofy, and he's not my favorite villain. But I do I do like I like him more elsewhere. I like him more yeah. in other arcs. You see, I agree uh, with that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's um seventeen. It's a it was actually an easier rewatch on the anime, watching the anime back when I had the, when I got the Blu-rays last year. Yeah, that's one I kind of missed in the anime because I was studying for the bar, so I also right. just don't have as much, you know, connection with it. Um, Steve, you also ranked it at seventeen. I don't think time has been kind to Punk Hazard. Uh, I I think there was a moment I liked it more than fishman island and dress rosa but i think there's a lot of meandering in this arc yeah the uh the mystery is great uh i think Who's i split realized up and they switch bodies yeah um and that was more of like a detriment than a good gag and i i know i'm not trying to factor an anime but i thought like wow this is the perfect yeah. chance for the the voice cast yeah. to do their best impressions of each other Yep. And they didn't do that and just did the cliche of just swapping voices. So I couldn't even enjoy that. Um, I'm still sad I, about that. That's such a missed opportunity. One thing I, I was able to, I think I've been able to pick up on this over the years. I'm like, oh, I can immediately, t like, if you weren't as keen 
on like if you were an anime only watcher and you didn't know what was filler and what was canon, you can tell because Oda doesn't give you everything immediately. There's a lot of suspense and build up and mystery. Filler arcs, you know who the main villain is, episode one, and you already know their deal. Uh, it's you could tell right away. And I think this arc does a great job of that. I think Caesar carries this arc a lot because he's such a bastard. He's really fun. I was I kind of toiled around where to rank this one yeah. because I just think of Caesar and then I think of some of the other stuff. I do like the inclusion of Law now as like a main character. It's great to see Smoker and Tashigi, despite the weird body switching stuff yeah, yeah. and the standards there. Um, I think Tashigi, Tashigi got done dirty a lot in this arc, but also had some great moments um, yeah. at the end, especially with Nami. Uh, but this arc. When I think of it, I always think I, I'm always thinking of we're tied up in chains, or yeah, the, it's the it's the runaway arc. Yes, the runaway arc. The, the, the last beginning. third, the last third of this arc is just everyone running away from stuff all the time. The gas that turns out the gas doesn't actually kill you. It just like it coats you. <laughs> It, it, it's it, a it, paper it, it mache. Just, it's kind of a yeah. yeah it, it, it coats but you in a nice gross. you know who wants uh, to be in that white chocolate. <laughs> it, it 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 coats you in a, a nice white chocolate coating. You know, it's just <laughs> it's like um, Mister Freeze in Batman and Robin. Everybody's okay as long as you put yeah. them in water. Mm -hmm. So I I I don't like that stuff. I just I did. I think like there was a time there was a period where the time skipped and even like this went up through Whole Cake Island. It was run away, and I'm like, I am so sick of this shit. I really am. Um, and revisiting Punk Hazard, I mean, the last time I did, it's just yeah, I kind of it, it. It I I feel even though it's a shorter arc, I think it only took about a year uh, mm -hmm. to Oda to uh, for Oda to do this arc. I felt like you could have cut, you could have trimmed some of the fat a little bit. I think the the body swapping stuff wound up not really contributing all that much absolutely it was nothing. more of, it was it, it was a gag and one piece yeah. has a lot of gags and you have to you have to realize that because one piece is just as much a gag manga as it is an action epic but that really slowed things down and i think there wasn't good enough uh payoff for it at least nothing i could remember uh and the fights probably yeah law and Virgo was probably the best thing like luffy and Caesar wasn't much of a fight. It was just a a, a few well deserved punches to the face, um, and it's it's kind of just it's set up for bigger arcs to come, but it just took a lot longer to get there. I still think it there's some really fun stuff, but I think it's bloated despite its length. Um, Alex, you ranked it one more higher at number 16. Uh, yeah. Your thoughts? This was my middle-of-the-road time skip uh, choice. Um, it, it, firmly in the middle of all the time skip uh, arcs. I, um, I think that time will be kinder to this as uh, we find out more about Vegapunk. I think sure. once we have a lot of uh, contextual pieces in place... Um, a lot of folks will be coming back to this arc to reread it, to revisit it, uh, and and maybe look on it, look at it a little more kindly. Uh, that being said, yeah, I feel that the meandering, uh, the chasing, it it definitely a deterrent. They spent way too much time in each other's bodies, and I think that they could have even done a little more funky stuff with that, like maybe have Zoro and Sanji switch bodies. I think that would have been very cool, and have them have fights um, in those bodies. Like, I think that uh, the, the biggest missed opportunity is actually doing, like, fights with um, the characters in Switched Bodies. I think that would have been really cool mm. for a shonen yeah. battle manga. Uh, and I think, um, yeah, like, it, I did enjoy the gags, seeing Law and Smoker um, square off. Like, very cool. Doflamingo showing up at the end, I honestly, to me, the most exciting part of it. Um, and then, like, he, he's you think he's going to kill smoker and uh all, yeah. all the stuff leading up to um like the dress rosa prelude stuff at the end is very exciting very like dire um and going to an island that's like half fire and ice uh, and i think when we were covering it i was like oh man look at all the D, &D creatures is this yeah, gonna be like yeah. a D, &D arc 
because you got a slime, you've got dragons, you have centaurs, yeah. you have harpies. Um, so I, I think that uh, what weighs the arc down a little bit is a lot of the padding. Um, and uh, it is what it is. I really, I, I like it for what it is. Um, of course, Caesar being a really cool villain, Virgo also being really cool. Monet, I can really take or leave, honestly. I never really got the appeal. Uh, but, you know, uh, the, one of the big detractors for me here is uh, the Zoro Tashigi stuff is really, really sloppy and sweaty and yeah. left a really bad taste in my mouth. And, Zoro and, and Monet, Monet stuff is... Yeah. Yeah. Well, not not, that's, not yeah, Zoro's that, greatest that whole, moments. Uh, that whole situation. Um, so, yeah, you know, it is where it is. Uh, we'll see where it goes in the next couple of years. You know, I'm, I'm thinking that the three arcs, and I'm sure we're going to talk about the two that surround it, Fishman Island and Tresvosa, but they all kind of suffer, in my opinion at least, of the, from the same malady, and that's missed opportunity syndrome. I don't know what you want to call it. It's that... They could, they they had like some real potential to be something insanely cool, and you could see the pieces in place to do that, and then they're kind of squandered. Um, and I think Punk Hazard, to a lesser degree than the other two, in my opinion, does have that issue. I also don't think the stakes were quite as high ever in Punk Hazard, right. so the well, less uh, d less to its detri less detrimentally uh, to it. I, I do think that having lower stakes sometimes makes uh, an arc a little more enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, Less stressful. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, well, you came off of Fishman Island, and we're in a completely new island, a new new environment. Uh, and, you know, yeah, it, it, you sort of see uh, how far Luffy has come in terms of strength when, you know, you have Fishman Island and everybody gets completely bodied. And Caesar kind of gets murked a little, too. You just, you know... Uh, he has a tricky power that Luffy overcomes uh, pretty quickly. So I think that when when something is low stakes and a little shorter, a little easier to read, uh, you know, it's, I think, looked at a little more favorably. Um, but yeah, all the chasing, all the running, screaming forever. forever. You, yeah, I you would say... That's the next arc. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Stephen. Spoilers. Uh, you did say, <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned uh, Vegapunk sort of, the specter of Vegapunk lurking over this arc and how that might make it more interesting in retrospect. Um, and, and I was thinking about um, the fact that this is where we first see Kinemon and Momonosuke. Yeah. And I, I, I think, you know, uh, looking back on their, you know, because there were a few moments in all of the sort of backstory stuff that we saw in Wano um, kind of looking back over that, you know, this is your life uh, th that, uh, you know, did touch on like all the way back to Punk Hazard when we, you know, very first met them. And I do think it is interesting like to see how, like which parts Oda really kind of nailed like from beginning to end with their characters and which parts where you look at it and you're like, this does not really feel like the same character necessarily. I do think it is really interesting to look at them um, you know, retrospectively, although I don't think it really has much to do with the merits or demerits of the Punk Hazard arc in particular. It's just kind of like where they were when we first saw them, which is kind of cool to look at. I think one of the reasons we were holding off on doing a second Arcs of Consequence for so long is because we wanted the full context, particularly of Wano and how it affects some of mm. this, particularly Punk Hazard, Dressrosa, Zoe, Whole Cake Island. Mm. Um, they're all leading into, into Wano. And I definitely think Wano probably helps it a little, but I, you know, I think at the end of the series, it will certainly be in a slightly different place at the very least. Um, but I still think Punk Hazard feels like, and this is not an insult, somewhere in the middle um, for me. And I guess for everyone else, because <laughs> it yeah. seems like everyone else agrees. I, I'll say uh, Caesar Clown and Trafalgar Law, they're the MVPs in this arc. I do agree with Ed, though, that's, that Caesar Clown, I think, is better outside of this arc than he is here. Um, he becomes a different personal. character, like Buggy. Yeah, yeah. He, he becomes the, more uh, of a Buggy, too. Yeah. The, vo the vocal, never, vocal, vocal performance, I'm so glad we have uh, uh, Macau in... That's what I was going to say, too. In, I in forgot the, about uh, that. anime now, yeah. as, a, as a recurring character. Yeah. That, that's, you see, that's an opportunity the anime took, and I'm glad, about, I'm glad right. for that. Uh, can we all guess who ranked this the highest? Uh, I bet it was Joe. Yeah, Joe did. Uh, Joe ranked at number two. Jeff also ranked it at number two. Ooh. At dead last, Donnie ranked it dead last. 
and Abby ranked it dead last, and Henry mm. Thurlow ranked it dead last. Wow. Um, yeah, so those those are Very your outliers here. Yeah, mm. obviously since it was in the middle, most people ranked it somewhere in the middle. Maybe Henry a thought higher. one of what this uh, one of this arc needs it needs more of Law flicking his wrist around. But you see, it has dragons <laughs> in it, and he's a big dragon fan, so you'd think. Yeah, but, that's shocking. Yeah, maybe if, he's more of a fan of Logtown. <laughs> yeah, maybe that kind of dragon. That's true. Okay, let's move to the next one. Um, here we go. This will be a fun one. Uh, we're doing number 15, uh, in the lukewarm Luke, uh, category. I will say first, this got number 21 in the audience poll. Um, last time around this got, where is it here? It was number 14. So kind of close for us. Can you guess what the audience doesn't like, but that we really liked? Anyone? Is it Whole Cake Island? No, it's, no. it's more obvious um, than that. Uh. Oh, I don't know. Okay. What, what oh, Davy Backfight. Yeah, it's yes. Davy Backfight. That's okay. it. It's Davy yeah. Backfight. Long yeah. Ring, Long Land. Uh, the arc that everyone has opinions about. That's true. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not only am I positive, I'm looking now, and it did rank dead last for some of our, for many of our crew. Um, it also ranked pretty high for other members of our crew. We'll go into that. For us, though, the I'll say right now, the five of us, somewhere in the middle, um, which makes sense, given what we have. Um, the highest, can we guess who, who ranked it the highest here? It might be Alex, maybe? Um, Alex ranked it as his number 10 arc. Mm. Um, so, Alex, explain yourself to the audience that clearly disagrees with you. Uh, it's so fun um it's short and sweet uh it's as long as it needs to be it offers some insight into the world of one piece uh it introduces um uh the most fun villain since buggy uh it also Akainu is i'm sorry aokiji is pretty great <laughs> uh, is. well and, and also aokiji uh who is one cool customer um but the uh the general uh the nice thing about it is that you you're off of Skypea at this point, which has at this point run so long uh week to week. I, I started reading week to week uh at the tail end of Skypea, I think. Um and I I just I distinctly remember reading this one week to week and when Robin gets frozen, it was like, Oh my god, like you just come off of this this super fun, uh seemingly tangential uh, story arc where like oh man are we gonna get a ship right no but we're gonna have some fun uh, and uh, oh yeah um, Robin is super important all of a sudden uh, so I don't know it it's this um it, it's it's a really great uh, piece of connective tissue between two humongous arcs and uh, it's sort of a uh, the or the running start. Uh, for Water 7. It, the running start for a, a, an arc that is just um, bonkers good. But uh, moreover, the the concept of the Davy back fight is so cool. Uh, cool. It, it's, it's not just a, a really fun way to show pirates, uh, you know, uh, what a pirate festival of games would be, like a carnival, but uh, to show that a character like Foxy, who um, by all accounts, has a, a tiny power level. Uh, <laughs> like how he can amass such a gigantic ship and crew um, by using his devil fruit power to his advantage. And I think that uh, I don't know a, a very I, I'm not going to say very underrated arc um, because it definitely has its correct lovers of it. Um, but it, no matter how this you, is how, the hipster whenever, one. <laughs> yeah, it 100 is. I yeah. always have so much fun when I reread it. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny. Like the fight between Luffy and Foxy is just, it's, it's sort of, um, a prelude of what's to come with gear five. Uh, it's yeah. just, here's some, here's some, uh, Tex Avery, Tex Avery bullshit. Um, bad costumes. It's yeah, so funny. Uh, Afro Luffy. Come on. Very fun. Uh, I don't know, like short and sweet. Like I said, uh, not long in tooth at all. As long as it needs to be, um, 
Uh, I yield my time. <laughs> Ed, you ranked it lowest. I'm going to use air quotes here. Uh, you ranked it number 14. We all kind of ranked it within like two or three of each other. Um, so uh, yeah, explain oh, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, yeah, it's it's perfect light entertainment. It's uh, is uh, Foxy is very funny. Zoro in, in particular, Zoro and Sanji get a chance to shine. I love that ball game, uh, ball that like Nami's cheating and Zoro and Sanji getting along. That's like prime comedy in my uh, in my opinion. And they have a really cool like uh, <laughs> like Osamu Dezaki inspired freeze frame shot in uh, in the anime in that one episode as well. Um, so yeah. It, the aspect of, uh, and then the aspect of, like, in, in the manga, Aokichi sh- shows up at the end of that, and uh, that's a really shocking moment. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's great comedy, it's, uh, it's light entertainment. Foxy is, uh, Foxy's one of the funniest characters, frankly, in the series, and it's a shame that, like, he gets to be used for, like, uh, a TV special, because yeah. Dota has no intention of bringing him back. <laughs> He's, a, uh, he's in a lot kind of, of a specials, shame. though, and filler. Yeah. and But you know right. what? I'm never upset to see more Foxy. Yeah. Right, yeah, he's perfect for yeah. that. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a fun, it's a fun little arc. It doesn't have a whole lot of negatives, but it's also not very long. Oh, and I just love the gag of the, uh, the animals as well. The, that, I laugh for a few minutes on that one each time. Uh, da, Sean. Da, da, yeah. Dachshund, or whatever. Why does that uh, fox look so weird? <laughs> I love the the fox. Um Steve, you ranked it at number eleven. Um well, Yeah, why? I might have ranked it lower this go around. I it's funny because I, I, I have the reputation. Yeah. I have, I have the reputation of being like the Davy back fight guy. Steve, you um, ranked it at number nine last time. And okay. Alex, you ranked it at uh number twelve last time. So flip the script there. So um, why did I rank it lower? Um, Ed, you ranked it the tonal, same, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. It is a tonal shift. It feels inconsequential. It's silly. The the villain is obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> it it le- it it lends it, it it leans too much on comedy more so than some of the dramatic storytelling that. Oda's praised for, and I love it. I love it. Um, I think I ranked a little bit lower just because where it where it lines up in the grand scheme of things, it does feel like a canon filler arc. But I, if I could put myself back in the head of fifteen year old me when I was getting super into uh, One Piece at this point. I still knew One Piece as, you know, silly East Blue stuff. So seeing, like, the current happenings in the manga was Luffy wearing an afro and getting to, like, a boxing match <laughs> with some, like, weird-looking fox dude. I thought, yeah, that's One Piece. <laughs> you know? I didn't yeah. have the context of Alabasta and Skypea yet. I I think it's a great placement for it because Skypea was long and you know so it's is very what's controversial. What's to come, yeah, so. Water Seven is going to yeah. be longer. This yeah. is the one t- like time Oda had to breathe and be like, okay, this is my one chance to be silly for a while, and he does a great job with it. I th- I think that the artwork is outstanding in this portion. I love the look of the the Foxy Pirates. It's also it's really funny. It's very funny, and I think each segment, uh, you know, the three uh, different rounds of the Davy back fight all offer something very different in terms of dynamics and conflict, like the donut race. I think putting putting Usopp and Nami together is always a you know a recipe for success. So I enjoy their struggle. Um, the groggy ring game is one of my favorite like fights in the series uh zoro and sanji just doing cool stuff and also like a lot of comedic stuff it's it kind of solidifies their relationship however you define Mm. that relationship it's (laughs) like let's get along for for like two minutes (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. or however long they say um i really enjoyed seeing that with the uh the uh, the shorts they were doing on youtube when they reanimated a bunch of stuff i love seeing uh that stuff reanimated, but I love that sequence. And of course, 
you know, like uh, as someone said earlier, uh, Luffy versus Foxy is just cartoon mayhem, and I love it. It's it when people think of One Piece being funny, this is like this is some like the best example. This is Oda really like is putting that as the focus of an arc and doing a great job. And it's a shame. I. <sighs> I, I can't say, oh, it's these kinds of fans. Like, that feels really presumptuous to say. I, I, I guess it just depends on what you're in the mood for. And I, I mean, I like, the, I, I like all of One Piece, uh, some more than others. But I, I just think this is a success. I mean, sure, it's, it's not the grand epic that I think you're looking for in One Piece sometimes. But it's still Oda doing what he does best. And it's... It, it's a great breather i think he there's there's there, there's the times when you need to kick back and have a laugh in life and i think the dv back fight is that in in life as we know it as the one piece manga <laughs> and the, as the one piece podcast since our life is only one piece focused uh steven you and i ranked in the same place number 12 and i'll give you first dibs here um, okay your thoughts um here. yeah so i think if I were to psychoanalyze our <laughs> general audience, which is perfectly ethical, by the way, yes, um, yes, especially don't as we don't know, especially as a translator, yes, yes, yeah. in my in my professional capacity, um, yes. I I think that a lot, I think that the ranking for this arc tends to be a lot lower if you are either a newer fan or if you've really only gone through the series once. Um, yeah. and it's because it is such a curveball at the time, like where you're coming off of such a, a rich, like sort of epic story. And you're wondering like, what the hell is going to happen next? Like, what's going to, what are they going to do with the going Mary? Um, you know, like, are they, do they need a new ship? Like what's going to happen? And, you know, also, you know, the, the highs of the, the water seven arc and all of the emotional resonance that it has, you know, the, the, uh, Davy back fight is such a, like a just a total change of pace that i feel like you know people are just like this isn't what i want right now like that it's just not um what you are looking for in terms of like what happens next and so that i think tends to uh i think unfairly impact uh the recognition of of what it does so well because yeah like like the other guy said it's it's such a perfect like cartoon this is a this is like a 20 minute movie short. Um, like it's just yeah. something that is it. I, I would say it's inconsequential. I mean, there are definitely like benefits from it. Like, you know, it, it is about showing the bonds of the the crew, both in terms of like the funniness of their reactions, but also, you know, them sticking up for each other and fighting to get back Chopper and Robin yes. and stuff. Um, which is, you know, that, that is a theme. Anime is, only. Anime only. I was going to say, yeah, that's, uh, that is a theme that, um, is important in the, you know, the story around it. So it's not, um, it's not nothing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it is incredibly entertaining. I do think I, I'm trying to remember my most recent read through about a year ago. Um, I, I did love it. I mean, I think it, it looks fantastic. Uh, the designs are great. I, I do think, you know, the, the, maybe the one part where I'm like a little love it or leave it is, like towards the middle, I f like maybe maybe he could have done the Luffy and Foxy fight in like one less chapter or something. Like there are sometimes yeah, where it that. feels like he maybe built it up a little bit longer than it. Like the emotional resonance of it was worth, but you know it's so theatrical that it's just um, you know I, I, I sometimes I love it and sometimes it's just like okay you, you took a little too long, but. Um, yeah, it's a little gem of an of an arc, and it's uh, it's it's so much fun. Um, I I do love it a lot. Yeah, um, Alex, did you want to add something? Yeah, um, I I wanted to say that I think maybe part of the reason that uh, our general audience uh, ranks it kind of low is perhaps the anime. Uh, yeah, I was gonna because the anime uh, really prolongs this a whole lot. They add three more. Yeah, they had three more. Uh, There's you know, the rounds roller of derby, dodgeball. Oh Jesus! Yeah, the red light, green light, and red light, green light, yeah. something. Yeah, uh, and they end up getting Robin as well as Chopper. And then they, uh, 
then they have a filler arc and then Aokichi comes at the end of that. So it's very mm. like, I don't know. I, I think that a lot of, uh, if, if I were an anime only viewer, I would probably not look at the David back fight as kind as I do. Mm. Um, Absolutely. Having, having first read it in the manga. If, if I were just ranking this on the anime, this arc would, would be, I think fourth to bottom. Um, that makes sense to me. It would, it would be kind of the opposite of how I see it now in that, in the in the manga, it is a great arc with some little issues, and um, in the anime, it is a long arc uh, with some good highlights in it. Um, I the Long Ring Longland, I love more as I get older. I love more as I reread the series repeatedly, and I love it more because how often do we really just get the crew hanging out, um, ha- having fun? Um, even if there are stakes, you know, it's still kind of this like crew dynamic. That is what it's about. And especially before water seven and Ennius lobby, it sets it up super well. Steve, what were you going to say? Sorry. This is like the one arc where they're very anti splitting up the group. (laughs) Yeah. And we always ask for that. (laughs) They're like, no, Uh, no, no. Everyone together. No, we ain't ain't splitting up. (laughs) Yeah. And, Uh, And a lot of people always talk about like how Zoro and Chopper have this really great dynamic, but I mean, like, this is the OG uh, yes. Zoro Chopper dynamic arc. Like this is mm-hmm. where he tells him to pull up his fundoshi and be a man. <laughs> the, Very great. This arc, I think, really solidifies all of the character interactions at this point in a way that no other arc does or will do after this. Um, not not only everything that's been said. Not only is it a fun, um, you know, break, and not only that. There's, I think, some cool, fun, different fights in it. Uh, Foxy's power, I think, lends to some very creative and hilarious antics. Um, but I'd also add, we, we've we been mentioning, so we're recording this during the big month-long break with Wano, and the thing we really loved about the chapter going into this break was that it was a breather. We didn't have the anxiety that we had, for good or bad, for every chapter of Wano leading to the conclusion. And if the Davy back fights aren't a... St- you know an escape from anxiety i don't know what is and maybe it's the difference between being a fan in their early 20s or mid or teens and versus 30s and above um but like i need escapism i feel like you you appreciate davy backfight more when you embrace your inner cringe i don't know what that sentence means um (laughs) we're our outliers Okay, so yeah, thank you, Ed, for trans- transitioning. I will say, though, I, I, I'm always up for a rewatch of, of uh, the Davy Back fights. Um, Outliers, who ranked it at the absolute bottom? We have a few. Um, Jill, dead last. Um, Godswell, dead last. Brodsky, dead last. I have a word to pick with them later. Word to pick. That's not, that's not how that phrase goes. Joe, dead last. And that's everyone who ranked it dead last. Who ranked it highest? This should be no surprise that David Bednar ranked it number four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Very good. That's great. Uh, Abby Very Denton, fitting. also, we should not be surprised, ranked it number four. Uh, Dan Dockery ranked it number five. Um, those are mm-hmm. our outliers. Most everyone else was somewhere in the middle. Oh, I'll say Kelly ranked it third to last. And so did Dan and Nikki. Um there are a few that ranked it lower, a few that ranked it a little higher. The rest are closer to the middle. Um, and as I said, it was fourth to last in the audience poll. Um, so let's go to the last arc in this category in our lukewarm Luke tier. Uh, number 16. Unfortunately, we're going to have a lot to say about this one. Um, I'll say for the audience poll, let's see where this ranked. It ranked number 10. Um, so there is a bit of a gap here. We we I ranked it 16. I bet you do, Stephen. They ranked it number 10. I'll also say, I think this was in our last ranking, yeah. Um, it was number... Where the hell did this end up here? It was number 8 last time. So it dropped for us from 8 to 16. <laughs> and I wonder why. Uh, Stephen, do you want to give it a guess? Oh, is this Dress Rosa? It is Dress Rosa. Wow. The Dress Rosa yeah. arc. 
Um, so this, this will be a fun one. Um, so let's start Everyone with say who... something nice. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of things to love about this arc, this, but this there's is... a lot to not like about this arc. <laughs> I, I think the the audience poll in particular shows the the real divisiveness that this arc has in the community, and I understand both sides. It's a lot. Um, I'll even say amongst the five of us, there's some there's some breadth here. Um, I'm gonna have to. I always I'm starting with the highest. We always start with the good. Stephen, you okay. ranked it at number nine. Um, mm. so okay. wh- why don't we start with you? Do you not remember? Um, no. Well, I, like I said, I, I don't yes, remember yeah. anything that I voted except for one or two. Um, yeah. I uh, I think I I chose to be uh, to be charitable in, in this. You know, this was my like, okay, I'm going to give Dress Rosa a little bump here. Um, because like like we just said, there is a lot to, to like in uh, Dress Rosa. Um, and uh, so I guess I'll just focus on, on that. I feel like there's man there's so much especially uh especially the first two or three volumes i think out of the what 10 that uh that this arc spans absolutely um when the story is at its tightest i think it is just quite a thrill ride there's like so much going on uh there's all these different elements when you know you have the um the toys, like, you know, getting to the bottom of the, you know, the story of the the toys and people having lost their memory of uh, who the toys used to be. Um, the the element of the the Tentatas and Green Bit um, being this, you know, kind of strange little offshoot of the the arena of, uh, you know, Dress Rosa as a, uh, you know, destination, uh, pun intended. And, you um, you know, like just a, a lot of the the machinations of like trying to figure out what it is that Doflamingo is is doing here. I think they're they're very vivid, and it was very gripping in a way that um, Punk Hazard was not because it is you know such a kind of I don't know if metropolitan is the right word, but you know it is all one big city, um, and so there's lots of regular innocent people around, and so that feels like it ups the stakes in certain ways um, quite a lot um, for for what's going on. And, um, you know, there, I think there are some rich comparisons you can draw for good or for worse, um, between Dress Rosa and Alabasta, you know, we've, we've talked about them a lot about how like Doflamingo kind of feels like if Crocodile won, you know, if he, if he pulled off his plan, that's kind of what uh, Doflamingo did, um, to a certain extent. Um, I think that all that stuff is, is really, um, thrilling and I do feel like, Law's story is fantastic. Um, it is so, you know, f- especially for a non straw hat, you know, this was kind of like, oh, I guess Oda is capable of telling a story this uh, moving and compelling for someone who is not part of the crew um, as well. I, I, I really liked that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some some other parts that are uh, drag on uh, a, a little bit uh, too long. Uh, so I won't necessarily go over them, but um, I, I think there's a lot to like about Dress Rosa. And um, I think in some ways it does outweigh a lot of the issues that, that I also have with it. Um, Alex, you ranked it lowest. I was going to do a guess who ranked it lowest. We all know yeah. Alex. Ranked it. Um, you ranked it at 22, right? Or, or, yeah. I think that's right, right? I, yeah. I, I don't have the list in front of me. I basically just did it in the app. Third to I last. I got a receipt. Yeah. yeah. I, I've tried like so hard <laughs> to really go to bat for Dress Rosa. And before I, I say anything bad about it, I do want to say that I like Dress Rosa like just consciously better than I did initially. I thought reading it week to week was a slog, mm. um, but rereading it was also kind of a slog. I had to quit like in the middle of it and take like a break for like six months. When the birdcage came down? Uh, <laughs> I think it was a- sometime after the birdcage when everybody's just fighting each other yes. indiscriminately. Yeah. Um, but the thing about Dress Rosa that I kind of recently thought about is that it's a very interesting arc in that, yeah, it is it is sort of like if Crocodile had won. But it also supposes that even if Crocodile had won, his plane would have been thwarted anyway. I think that's kind of, uh, 
I don't know that that's sort of the conclusion that I came to. It's sort of like yeah, he would have he would have won and would have been okay for a while, but um, I mean, you know, well, crocodile was never a celestial dragon. Either. No, and also for the sake of argument, crocodile's real goal was Pluton. Rather right. than taking over a country, I think which, he just, that which was funny he in gotten, Yeah, he would have gotten beat up by Kaido, so I don't know yeah. if that would have worked out either for him. Yeah, um, but enough about Crocodile for now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dressrosa, the law flashback is, I think, one of the greatest flashbacks um, of all. Uh, Korra is a, I've said, I've said it before, I'll say it again, all-time great flashback character. Really, and it really made me like Law and and empathize with him. And um, I really, uh, I, I really dug that part of it. The things that I don't like are generally, uh, uh, hmm. well, I'll, I'll say that I also really like the Sabo stuff. And I think Sabo gets a bad rap as as a Poochie, as uh, you know, blonde ace. The reveal that that when Saba was alive is a really, really sweet one. It's really heartwarming. Uh, and the stuff leading up to that is really fun, too, the tournament stuff. Uh, the problem is there's so many ideas in Dress Rosa um, that could have been part of some other arc. Uh, it's like t- putting too many ingredients in a soup and over-seasoning it. I think that's that's the best way I can describe Dress Rosa. And it has a lot of really good flavors, but also... Um, Speaking of meandering, like it really, like it is a really, it really is long in the tooth for a lot of reasons. And um, Brian Newton will argue with me up and down about this, but <laughs> the, when the birdcage changes the environment, that's when like it really, really loses me. It's sort of like when um to uh, if anybody will get this reference, it's like playing Dragon Quest Eleven and finishing the game, and then finding out, oh yeah, the game's not actually finished. And we're going to take away, like, um, all this grinding you did for about, like, 20 hours of the game. And mm. uh, now you get to complete the game again. So it mm. sort of it's it, it sort of takes you back to square one. Uh, I think the fights generally are also really weak, um, with the exception of a few. And I think part of that is because they're all dime store Baroque works. I will... That's... Uh, I mean, they're all. I, yeah, what's and I the, think like, 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 like the Mister Four, Miss Merry Christmas fight, and the Senor Pink fight? Like, which one would you yeah. choose? Uh, Miss Mister Four, Miss Merry Christmas. One, that's only two chapters long. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> two, uh, they're. I mean, Senor Pink is a very divisive character. Um, I mean, there are things about him to like, but that story also went on for far too long. But yeah. he he he's was senior works at a, a bank. baby man. He worked yeah, at a bank, work. and that yeah. was all he did. He had no ulterior. And then words. he becomes an adult baby. Um, <laughs> so. It was to make his comatose wife feel better for having their son dead. You know, I c- Florida man. Dot dot dot. Yeah, it's so hard for me to read into that because I can never tell if when people talk about how much they love that backstory, uh, if. if it, they're in on some sort of like <laughs> it's so dumb it's great yeah. or they mm-hmm. actually get an emotional reaction out of it and you know this is no news we talk about it way too much but i yeah. just remember we were cracking up at the flashback because mm-hmm. we thought it was so it was ridiculous. a soap opera it was, so it was dumb. Dumb. and then people it was people were like how it's like it's like i didn't appreciate the reaction you guys had yeah i'm not remember that word for word but yeah. i was just like yeah like they go on a date and <laughs> Russians just like, let's see, what do I not like? Pirates. <laughs> well, I'm not one of those. <laughs> and people who lie. You know, like that's, that's not what she said that, but it felt so, it felt so dumb. And I'm like, this is so ridiculous. I think this is supposed to be yeah. like, this is the joke. Like this, like this gimmick yeah. is so dumb. That is the it's gimmick. Backstory is like dumb. I, yeah. But then I can't tell if people um, actually, yeah. Think it's a it's a it's a, it's like it's people who like a gut wrenching flashback and I'm like it's so it's like people asshole. who genuinely <laughs> it's like people who genuinely love Rick Sanchez not realizing the you're supposed to actually hate him. Uh, Brian, it's, Brian it's, would probably say that like it is both things at the same time and that's what makes it so great or something like that. You know, by the way, he was Stephen mm-hmm. Brian ranked at the same place you did. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah. the whole arc. Yeah. Um, and, 
Alex, yeah, go. No, b- before I, I go, um, <laughs> oh, you're leaving I, after this? <laughs> no, no, no. Before I, I stop talking about Dress Rosa because I, you know, I, you know, I mean, I could go on and on. Um, it has th- really great introductions for certain characters: Fujitora, the Tontadas, mm-hmm. um, like like I mentioned, you know, Corazon, Sabo, uh, even um, Happy Store, uh, Jesus Burgess <laughs> when he shows up. Yeah. Um, like it put a pit in my stomach because he's part of Blackbeard's yeah. crew, and whenever Blackbeard shows up, I always get really anxious because um, they're like out for blood always. Uh, and you know, there's it has really great moments that like up- uplift it, but for one step forward, I think it takes two steps back. Um, and ultimately, that is how I feel about the fight versus Doflamingo, like the ultimate fight. Um, where like Gear Four looks cool and has, does some really cool stuff, but I think the the final blow is a wet fart, and Doflamingo is like for a character who I was really really interested in, um, he became such a like such a weak sauce uh, yeah. character by the time his arc arc came around. I I think maybe it's very possible that Oda's you know going to be playing his his true hand with him later on, um, but I don't know. Either way, uh, yeah, Dress Rosa, I, I might have been a little unfair, and, you know, perhaps I, I put it too low, but as far as reading it goes, I just don't have that enjoyment um, all the way through these days. I, I ranked it second lowest, um, and I don't think you ranked it too low, even though I ranked it too higher than yours. Uh, I I think the soup analogy is really good. Um, I think even for me, it's a step up. I'd say you take the first two sips and you're like, this is good. It has good flavors, you know, and then you start keep eating and you're like, this is not going to agree with me and I'm going to be on at, on the toilet later and it's not going to be what fun. Is, you know, what I, is with this arc and food? Soup, I think, steak, salad. That's true. I think like, it, it is. See, the re- I see it a little bit differently. I see it like going to Super China Buffet. Like you still end up in the toilet afterwards, but like yeah. you can pick and choose and just disregard the things. That That's you know what you're right. Which is why I, which is probably why I have it like four rungs higher, not that much higher, but yeah. You and Steve have it at uh, sixteen. Um, I, just to say my piece as quickly as I possibly can because it's dress rosa and we could go on for a while. Um, we, we is, were, we're on an hour in this tier now. Well, I mean that that makes sense. We're we're three yeah, tiers total, the better arcs three hours. In this episode. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll say this. Um, I think that where the differentiation happens is people who marathoned it and people who read it week to week. Mm-hmm. This arc is excruciating week to week. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I know there are people out there who disagree with, with me, but at the end of this arc, it was more than half, I think, of our podcast episodes were devoted to Dressrosa. Um, and I don't think this arc deserves that much attention but you know be beyond that on the good end i'll say the first five of ten volumes are superb the second five of ten volumes are not good um they're yes i i'm very much generalizing because the second five i think include the law flashback i think um that mm-hmm. i agree with alex i think is one of the top flashbacks for me it is great it does make me tear up um it, it does all the things a flashback should um i have no complaints about that flashback i have every complaint about anything that touches that birdcage um it's it's bad i think i think and it's bad because it is a missed opportunity um it's a missed opportunity to th- no pun intended, thread the needle, thread the uh, everything together in the arc. But also, like, this is a good example. Not just the pieces were set so much better, but they could have been set much better in this arc. We talk about Doflamingo as a villain. Doflamingo is a great example of a villain who is so much better in every arc but his own. He is great um, at the end of the Skypea arc. He is great in Marineford. He is fantastic in Punk Hazard. He is great in Shabadi, where he shows up for, for a little bit. Um, and he's great afterward, too. When we see, Every time we see him in, like, the Reverie stuff, and I think he showed up once maybe during the Wano arc, um, he is a great character. But in his own arc, he is insufferable to the nth degree, and he's that guy who you keep killing and keeps coming back. The problem is he should not be a villain 
who is like, ooh, look how powerful I am. He should be a villain who's scary because he is able to manipulate situations. Mm -hmm. And they show that a little in the really poorly designed Kiro slash Rebecca flashback that's all over the freaking place. Um, But the... What would have really made it great, the thing that makes Doflamingo terrifying is you don't know what he's about. Um, And yes, learning more about what he's about might take that away. But more importantly, he shouldn't be a punch for punch guy. He should be a, oh, look, I'm messing with you. And just like frustrating, Mm. how do I beat this guy? And there is a little of that, but it's just done really poorly. That also involves awakening. And the, the awakening was like. Well, there Alex mm-hmm. could go in another twenty minute. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, hold on. I I have actually warmed up to awakening a whole lot more since With we've Lucy. seen it more yeah. and, and learned about it. But I, I to to your point, Zach. I think speaking of big missed opportunities, this is this this arc is the king of missed opportunities. Sorry yeah. to see to get your time out of this, but I, I no, do no. want to bring up that like you, we are introduced to Leia, who mm. has a sewing power. Yeah. 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 Um and Doflamingo has thread. And how the And Rebecca two, how the twain... just the character of Rebecca, generally, I will say. Uh, ah. Yeah. 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 I I think uh this this arc I I don't think we realized it at the time, but retrospectively, it this arc was kind of the first lesson in like when Oda shows you something that seems like thematically like oh he could do something really interesting with this or really like bold and like very story altering with it like you know use having leo use his you know needle powers to help help defeat do flamingo or uh you know in in whole cake island later with pudding and her memory powers and things like that like he's not going to actually do it and that's this is like the first time where it's like oh that this this is where he started kind of teasing us. Red like herrings, ac- yeah. accidental red herrings. I don't know what to call them. Right. Um, I do want to sing a little bit of its praises. I really do think the first five volumes are pretty solid. Um, I think if it were just that and then it it stuck the landing, um, it would be it would probably be in my top ten arcs. Like there's some really great stuff. I love the shit out of Fujitora. Uh, he is mm-hmm. he may he's either my favorite or second favorite um, admiral. Um, the stuff that's set up in the arc is really crucial. The Sabo stuff, I think, is great. The big Luffy face. Um, the the suit with the fish and the cat and the... Um, what's the third one? For frog. The fish, yeah. cat, frog, Kinemon, Zoro, the, Luffy. Yeah. The Still one of my favorite. The Tabasco. <laughs> I, yeah, I, ah. I was laughing hysterically at a lot of that. And mm. it made for really great podcast episodes. Um, even, even the bad hey. stuff did. <laughs> <laughs> Goop troop bloop Goop troop, lord. Yeah. Bloop. Uh Treble's an awful character. Um can I just say? Uh I, the champion of evil stuff is really annoying. I could like go on and on and on about it's it's really like this is the king of missed opportunities, Dressrosa. Um Steve, I want to hear your thoughts though, because I've been talking for a while. I think uh the law Rosanate flashback is one of the best flashbacks in One Piece. Um just really great stuff. Um, introduces us to some great new characters. Uh, Bartolomeo uh, is a great side character. Um, Almost forgot when that. Oda, when, when Oda really nails the comedic characters, they, you know, when they're a hit, they, they go far. And Bartolomeo has become a very popular character and well-loved among his fans, despite him seemingly being a commentary on uh fandom um and greg (laughs) yeah i i'm trying to think the benefits of the overall story of dress rosa and it's it's another arc uh you know just like what what is a true king uh you know in what and you know and i'm just like (laughs) and like what real treasure is and toflamingo I, I do like Doflamingo is a super popular character and I'm not going to tell people they're wrong. I, I think I ranked this up higher because I had to think I'm like, yeah, when all is said and done, Doflamingo is a, is a cool dude. Um, but <laughs> he's a, yeah. high praise. Put that on a quote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doflamingo yeah. dot, dot, dot is a dot, dot, dot. Cool. Like, dude. Is a dude. Cool dude. Um, but just finding out he was like, 
like he was a little demon spawn from the get go. Yeah. I can't help but like hear like Tress McNeil doing like her spoiled little kid voice, and it's like, I want a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Where are all the slaves? This is the gun that I only shoot family members with. <laughs> By two, I'm not sharing with Rosinante. Yeah, <laughs> it's I. It, he's uh, what a wiener. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's that's the thing. I mean, I, I kind of like that. That fits for him. It does fit no, for him, but I think it kind of that wasn't what I was expecting with the character from like what we would see yeah. with uh, when he showed up at Jaya uh, with Bellamy and Zarkis and then with uh, Marineford. But it kind of makes sense. It's you know it's like a darker version of Luffy. It's like, hey, I'm going to dismantle this world, you know, the world government, uh, but more so for my own benefit, not for the benefit of the world. Uh, it's like if I, you know, it's like if, it's like if I can't have all the good stuff, then no one can. And Luffy is a man of the people, so I think that's a great uh, conflict of ideologies right there. Um, it's just yeah, there's a lot, there's a <laughs> lot going on. Yeah. Hey, Sabo's back, everyone. Uh, <laughs> which, you know, I, I feel like in this day and age, everyone wants a champion like. Uh, I was like, oh, I called this. And I, do you remember reading the manga and they were on the world story and we and you saw Ace and Whitebeard's grave and we saw the three sake cups? Like, oh, there's three sake cups. Sabo's alive, I guess. And then we just moved on with our lives. Yeah. And yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess a lot of people, I, I guess, you know, but a lot of people don't read this material. Yeah, but we know what like the most, bunch- we know what the more surprising part of that chapter was, Steve. Koala learning fishman karate. Yeah, koala. <laughs> well, it's I, just I, koala. To me, I, 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 yeah, like not to like this sounds so hipsterish, but to me, the biggest surprise was like, oh wow, koala's back, and she's yeah. part of the revolutionaries. Yeah, hey, koala's she knows- back. <laughs> Koala is also uh, a fantastic character, well rounded. Um, some really great stuff in that flashback in Fishman Island. I, I, I just we haven't talked about the revolutionaries much yet because that's how dense this arc is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. It's all, it's all good, I guess. I just felt like there is too much going on in this arc, and I thought I knew Sabo was alive, and I knew he'd come back. I was just surprised. Oh, you're pulling that trigger now, and I wonder if that has to do with, uh, ooh, I killed Ace, and I didn't realize just how popular it was. So it's like the the dog died, but we got a new dog. <laughs> And I know that relates to the Poochie thing. I just realized. It kind of does. <laughs> it feels, it, it, it's like, instead of kind of having time to grieve, it's me like, so we, we got a new dog, so we could just stop thinking about the old one. You um, see, which I, didn't happen. Sorry, sorry to cut in. I, I like Sabo. The part I hate about Sabo is the amnesia shit, um, well, which I think is the stupidest, like, in my opinion, it is, I, it is such a cop out. And I, I don't think uh, Kuros was discussed enough here. And I mm. think he has a great arc. Exactly. Yes. This is part of the I, reason I, why I, I, I think I, I, I have it higher. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah, Kiros. I, I think Kiros kind of, you know, growing up in the slums and unfortunately, you know, committing murder out of self-defense. Unfortunately, uh, committing and he, murder. And, he's just, and he, he lives with that trauma and he just never thinks he's good enough. Mm. Uh, despite being welcomed into the royal family, he still thinks of himself as a street urchin and a murderer. And I, I, it's a great arc, and I think him, even as a toy soldier, it's really cute. The problem is it kind of absorbs Rebecca's story, mm-hmm. like yeah. it's like it's like an amoeba. And maybe, you know, maybe we weren't ever supposed to interpret Rebecca as having her own story, but I think a lot of us saw it as Rebecca was going to have her own arc, and she she was going to help her father. And I was really disappointed. For that not to happen, I could have I I could accept Kiros being like, you were forced to fight for so long, and I never wanted that for you. I never wanted that life for you. I you didn't you don't have to fight. But and then once Kiros was back and capable, he's like, it's done. Like don't you you could he's like you don't have to live this life anymore. You could go back to being normal. I'll I'll handle this. Um. I I think about it like it's not a bad story, but it is kind of demeaning in the context of One Piece, especially when not a lot of women kind of are are allowed to take action into their own hands. Uh, and just recently, I know there was talk about that with Hiori, and some people were bummed about that. 
So I think that's why that kind of stung a little bit more. But then it stung harder when Doflamingo finally uses his power to control people that I think oh, is God, like, I forgot about that. that that's game breaking. And he does it, and like Rebecca, he's gonna have Rebecca kill Viola, and Rebecca's just a blubbering, blubbering mess. And I was like, ah, uh, the SBSs really, don't make yeah. any of that better either. No, um, the stuff with the Viola, Viola and Dofi is strange. But I think there's a lot of good stuff here. I just think, I don't know. Like, did maybe did we need the Coliseum? Uh, Coliseum, yeah. I mean, honestly, so it, it feels very ass pulley like don't mm-hmm. like i just so happen to have the flare flare fruit right, and, right. Ooh, and i'm gonna hold the tournament and that'll distract you uh it the well, that is it still sets, flamingo in a nutshell but it also sets up the straw hat grand fleet which are yes who are bound to be super important uh hope so. so i i understand it had to happen there's just so much going on in dress rosa and and then the, I think the the literal hurdles of him being like, ooh, well, now I'm going to create an obstacle course for all of you to traverse because he can't get to me. I'm the Dofi man. Um, and that was annoying. <laughs> that was really annoying. He should have said that. That should have been his catchphrase. That was the yeah. big issue. Can't catch me. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, the Dofi, Dofi man. The Dofi man. Uh, <laughs> the um, man. I, I just wrote yeah. a, because it, it, it's clones. so long. String clones. Like, yeah. What the? <laughs> when they cut his head off, I, I, and you're like, okay, that's yeah. it. Then I guess I'm way more upset about string clones than I am about awakening. Yeah, yeah I could. So. I, I guess I could believe him swinging from clouds like he's uh, Spider Man. I, I could buy that. Yeah. But then him is like, I can make a, a clone out of string. But then or again, I'm gonna repair my organs. Uh, <laughs> That makes string. more sense than the string clone. The string yeah. clone no. makes it, yeah. absolutely zero sense. It, it's it's still very much you activated my trap card though. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. your yeah. princess is in another castle. Um, he, he repairs his own in, insides with strings, but then like when he gets knocked out, like it all doesn't just fall out. Mm-mm. I can't believe Doflamingo was a string bot all along. Uh, <laughs> I, he, he, it's dumb. It it, it it's it's kind of dumb I, um I, yeah. I i think i was a little just dis- god this sounds so nitpicky at this point but i guess this is just one piece podcast talking about dress rosa i <laughs> people know what to expect I, at this he point came off as more of so like a puppeteer with all that he was controlling people all the mm. time and i think yeah. oda realized i'm like i think oda realized like this is game breaking like because like, it's like what's stopping doflamingo from just doing that with everybody mm-hmm. it's just uh it's i don't know it I think it could have been. I, 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 I think mean, when that, you really when you sugar break, in that same arc, and she's game. Who's another game breaking? Yeah. 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 By the way, uh, I, I forget what I've ever came across with that steak and salad debate, but uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I've changed not, my mind. Can we not open up yeah, that can of worms? I know, but I, I think you that's know I had a steak and, and I, a salad I, I, recently, and I was thinking about. Well, I'm like, I'm I think that theory this. is dumb, and I think uh, Usopp suffered from character assassination in that arc. Um, yeah. I, I, you know what? Usopp, I, yeah, I'm okay with with Usopp. I'm torn because the thing that we were debating, and make this super quick, with the steak and salad thing, is that because of the memories being lost, Usopp kind of reverted to his old character, and I think he did revert to his old character a little bit. No, but no, Mm-mm. no, he's no. always been even in in the time skip. He's always been a coward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's well, not... I guess I think the premise of the debate was flawed, and that was my premise. So I will. Take the responsibility there. Yeah, Zach finally apologizes for steak and salad. <laughs> <laughs> ten years later, ten years later, Zach apologizes well, yeah. for steak and salad. All right, write that um, down for the Majis this year. I, I do. Wa- I do want to say. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'll make this quick. Um, <laughs> really? The um, you can say that now. <laughs> Kiros. Yeah, Ed has to have his piece. Oh, I, 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 okay, fine. Ed, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't really have that much to add at this point, but yeah, the, I, I think I liked Kiros more than everyone else, and I didn't necessarily have as many expectations for the Rebecca character as I think a lot of people did. Because I really attached to that first, like when we first saw Kiros' uh, flashback, he, I was always more more attached to him than to uh, to Rebecca. I had to pick up the pieces on that. Um, it, the just the, ult- the ultimate thing about Dress Rosa is that there's the highs are very high. I love the Coliseum. I love putting a tournament arc into uh, into a shonen like this, and also to have that 
aspect where the Blackbeard pirates show up and all these tremendous new characters are introduced and they all become a part of the Straw Hat fleet. But then you basically do a second tournament. Like Birdcage is yeah. like a melee tournament and then you're mm-hmm. doing it twice. So which one of these was actually necessary? Actually, the mm-hmm. one that I liked was the one that was unnecessary. <laughs> So yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's, it's it, like you were talking about missed opportunities there. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, the, as you said, Law and Korra flashback is one of the high points of post time skip One Piece. It's one of the most emotional yeah. moments. It's uh, yeah, it, it really fits in and it really brings the arc up because I said the highs are high, but the lows are very low. And yeah, the like the part where Luffy had like you're talking about the string. Uh, Rebecca and Violet stuff. And also, Violet's power is like, another game breaking power. There's too many. Mm-hmm. Like, Oda lost control of the plot with the Devil Fruits in this arc. Um, that, and like the final hit being unsatisfying. I saw some people talking about maybe they didn't think the last hit on Kaido was really satisfying. But like, compared to this, like, yeah. compared to this, like, it's there's, there's, no, comp- there's no competition here. Um, I think Fujitora is what, the most intriguing character, I think, to come out of Dress Rosa going forward. Or, well, maybe not the most one. It might not be important for the climax of the, of the series, but he has his point of view on getting rid of the Seven Warlord system and tearing down the world, uh, trying to do it from within as opposed to what Luffy is doing. I love that contrast between the two of them and their interaction, the way he talks about Luffy's kind face and the, the end of that arc. And, um,. Yeah, I think that's, that that was a sort of that was a very touching movement, uh, a touching moment. So, uh, yeah, I don't have that touching much to movement. Add. Like is. the highs are high, the highs are high, and the lows are very low. For I, I just want to mention two thirty thousand foot view kind of things. Um, first, yeah. I think the manga suffered because Oda was literally physically suffering during right. during the Dressrosa arc, and he had to take this uh, was his. Yeah. 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 and you could Squiggle really vision, squ- yeah you could really see it in the art in the art um i think I... for me that like knocks it down a little which is not i feel bad for saying that but it it looks worse i think Tresvosa than most of the other arcs steve you know i always i always thought jonathan katz and uh, uh john h., uh, J- h john benjamin would have been great uh <laughs> Riku and uh, Kuros. <laughs> I, I agree with really that. really got that dynamic there. I agree. Um, the second thing I want to say is that I think the thing that this arc and many other arcs suffer from is that the Straw Hats really are not front and center here for mm. most of it. Um, like, Bartol- like Gladius and Bartolomeo have a fight, right? Right. Yeah. And like, I love the hell out of Bartolomeo, don't get me exactly. wrong, but... Even my least favorite straw hat would be a more interesting fight. Yeah. You know, my, my, Kevin Dish and Kevin Dish and Sai. My yeah, my hot take yeah. is I, I love Bartolomeo and I love the concept of the Grand Fleet. I could not give a shit about any of those captains. <laughs> no, me neither. Except for Leo I love. Um and Bartolomeo oh, and who else? Maybe Cavendish? I I don't I don't know. Um let's go through some outliers. Uh, who ranked it um, highest? I, one yeah. last thing. I realized I was on mute. Sorry. Remember when we all thought like Robin was going to fight like Diamante and then, oh, Robin's going to fight Treble. And that was just, no, Robin's just like, I got to check on Rebecca. And I'm like, yeah. have you two met? <laughs> so, I mean, they briefly met, but I thought that was just. I mean, it had to be Kiros ultimately because he had the thing, yeah. like, he wanted to kill his wife. So he kind of had to be the guy to do it. Um, it's a shame. As we said before, Rebecca wasn't part of that. Yeah, she survived. So, well, that was that was what she did. Yeah, um, I have a lot I could say about Kiros and Rebecca, um, but I'm going to save it for another time. And I'm sure we've talked about it before. Uh, who ranked it highest? Brodsky ranked it at number two. Um, mm. I assume that is wholly because of the Corazon Law flashback. I might be wrong. But that's my assumption. Uh, v and Jeff both ranked it at number seven. Um, most most everyone else kind of ranked it in the same place. But there were some outliers on the other side. David Bennor ranked it dead last. Um, Dan Dockery ranked it dead last. Spicy. Um, and Dennis, or Itchnob, ranked it dead last. Um, yeah. I, I was going to say, I think... I think Dressrosa was when Itchnob stopped coming on regularly, so yeah. that might make sense. Oh no, sense. we it is 
it is I could talk about like its impact on the fandom for a long time. I think that is actually probably more interesting to me than talking about the arc in that I think we lost a lot of people then, but we also mm. gained a lot of new people who like I think marathon through it um and like I think it was really, like the f- Yeah. It was the first time I could recall people complaining that one piece was too long. Yeah, that like Dress Rosa was that era. Yeah, you know, that makes like sense. ten years ago, <laughs> with with no clear end in sight at that point. Still, now there yeah. is. Yeah. Now we're gonna take a break before we move to the next tier, two tiers. Um, and I will say, I think the discussions will be a little more succinct. I think Dress Rosa is That's probably the most divisive yes. of them, so I don't mind taking a little more time to talk about it. Um, so we'll take a little break and we'll get on with our Ed. Do you remember how you used to say it when we did it the first time? The no. the arcs of con- you did like the big arcs of consequence. Hey everyone and welcome back. We are doing our Ed. What are we we're doing it now? Our arcs of consequence. I'm glad that's back. Uh, we're in the Lovelorn section here, which is our uh, second lowest tier, uh, number seventeen through twenty out of twenty four. Um, we're going to start with number seventeen. Let's see. Last time, this 17. this arc was also ranked at seventeen. Um, oh. The audience ranked it at where is it? Where are you? Fifteen. Pretty close. Um, and it is the Romance Dawn arc. Um, I think this is a arc. really yeah. That's the thing I was about to say. <laughs> I th- I think this is a really really difficult one to categorize. I think Oda mm-hmm. certainly did not, um, and anyone could jump in here disagree or agree. Um, I don't think he really got into the groove of like what it constitutes as a story arc as we see it today. Whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, nor it's a d- short story, nor yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. nor did I think he kind of realized what like people want to see a right. story. Uh, it, it's the reason why, uh, and where did you rank it? To you? you know, in case people, I, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know in a moment <laughs> here. Uh, well, I have to, we have to follow this. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I say, well, well, I, I want to fill people in who might not know. Romance Dawn is what we refer to as the first chapter of one piece, which is, uh, you know, Luffy's chapter backstory one. with Shanks, <laughs> not the, not, not him on a ship with Alveda. <laughs> that's the anime. Uh, mm-hmm. And then his then, the intera- his then he meets Kobe and Alveda on an island, not a ship. Uh, and yeah. then all the stuff at Shellstown with Captain Morgan and meeting Zoro and Zoro joining the crew. Oh, that's all included. Yeah. In this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's gotcha. that's what we deem as romance on. I'll say everything, I ranked everything it before Buggy. I ranked it yes lowest out of this crew, and I'm kind of regretting. I don't know why I ranked it so low. But um, Ed, uh, you ranked it highest. highest um at 15 uh i talked I, i'm not sure if i was on mic when we talked about this but i talked about vibes based ranking and uh every yeah. time i go back and read this i get that joy of one piece in me you know every Agreed. when i read the Agreed. when i read when i read the first chapter and i see luffy's origin and like him punching the, the like him punching the sea monster and and higuma the bear coming out of the mountains and shanks showing luffy what a real pirate is and uh that's that stuff you get that um you know, I get that spark. It sparks joy, like Rikondo says. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that like that whole scene is so quaint. And looking back on it from this point, I enjoy it more every time I read it. Like Romance Dawn, it's you know puts a big smile uh, on my face every time I read it. And then also, um, you know, we have the sort of contrast with Luffy and Kobe, and Kobe being this really sort of <laughs> uh, nebbish character, and Luffy being this really proactive character. And the way that they sort of bounce off of each other and adding Zoro into that mix. Um, and him being played off as this really cool guy just from the beginning. And like being conflicted about joining Luffy at first and being impressed with, uh, you know, being impressed with him and then immediately basically joining him. Like he made that snap judgment. And I think, I, you know, it's probably the first thing that I really, really liked about him besides being cool with three swords. Um, but yeah, I, I, <laughs> there's very little, um, I don't know, I, there's very little weak points in this arc and looking back on it it's interesting to see oda at the beginning of his artistic style and uh, it's especially interesting to see it in that uh, full scale like that blown up size 150 percent size reproduction that i bought it looks really mm. good 
We're all still jealous. We don't have to keep mentioning it. Uh, we're extremely. I mean, they're available jealous. on eBay, but they're expensive. Which uh, which one is that? Is the the Romance Dawn uh, like full scale, one hundred fifty percent size uh, reproduction? It's a manuscript. Manuscript. Yeah, the, yeah but the oh, oh that's, so it's the whole chapter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought you meant one of the double spreads. That oh no 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 the yeah, the whole wow. whole thing it comes yeah. in like a slipcase. Yeah. Very cool. Ed hasn't shown you this before. Ed shows I everyone. No, I, I just I just forgot. I thought he was. Oh, okay. How, no. <laughs> how could you forget that? Um I ranked it lowest. I, I don't know why. I think it's more it just it doesn't have as much meat on the bones as everything else. <laughs> everything well, yeah, else. I mean it's still like I ranked it like it's still not even above like the half no, yeah. of the rankings, but I still I, love it. I have it for whatever sure. reason, second to last. Um I don't that's mm. the I think this this really proves the main fallacy behind this is that I am a fan of One Piece. I don't know if you knew that. Mm. And I love all of it, even the parts that make me angry, uh, like Tress Rosa. Um, like, I, even even in the things we're complaining about, you know, it's, it's that um, expectations weren't quite up there. Um, if I if I got to redo this again, I think a lot of people in our crew especially were, I think, Steve, you, you had mentioned just like how difficult this was to do um it's like choosing children um like where do i place each you know each of these and and i feel like romance dawn yeah has yeah go ahead sorry steve yeah i said i think it gets harder every time i mean i'm not a big rank person i don't no. really rank stuff i just like the things i like i can't always explain it yeah. and i think this go around i was like okay yeah i know i have qualms with certain arcs here but i like one piece and this this was tough and and then i had to like think of good reasons good uh you know and what standards to grade things on so. it's a true uh dopey's choice <laughs> someone throws something at him um, <laughs> that's a good one Steve. i was just so I'll, I'll make it quick in that i think it just isn't so outstanding the the stuff that i love i love because of the nostalgia it's like wow this was like the first one piece this was the you know this was the stuff. Um, was it? Is it the most gripping stuff? Absolutely not. Is it the funniest stuff? Also, you know, there's funny stuff, but it's not the funniest. Um, it's fine. Um, the Luffy's introduction is good. It's all very iconic to the series. Um, but that's like, I feel like it is. it is good only because of its importance, you know. Because it is the foundational stone, is the keystone to the series. You know, it's the first, it's the first brick laid. Um, but also, it's you know because it's the first brick laid. There's so many other better things that have happened since. Uh, that's how I feel about it. Um, I, I don't have much else to say because it's not, it's nothing negative. Um, Steve, you kind of said your piece. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. Um, you had it. I you had it at twenty. Yeah, I thought I would rank this a lot lower, but Ed said something very akin to how I felt. Every time I revisit this, it sparks that joy of, uh, you know, like w why the series is so great and uh, why I fell in love with the series. And maybe I shouldn't say fell in love because I felt like I didn't truly love the series till a little bit later. Because I think there's like a few rocky starts here. Uh, and I think I'd taken the context at the time. This didn't look like other manga. This was very anti manga, I would say, at least in its look. Mm -hmm. But I like cartoons and I like, you know, you know, I grew up on like Disney animated films and this is what it reminded me of. So I think that's why it appealed to me. But, you know, you, you're introduced to these characters and Luffy, the, his qualities really shine in these chapters because, uh, I, he, you know, he's very unique. He's very outspoken, uh, but he don't take no shit. Uh, he he dislikes, uh, you know, uh, cowards and uh, him teaching know, Kobe to be brave is, is is always a favorite in retrospect. Yeah, I think I, I I think one of the detriments of this is Kobe because it, it's like immediate like go away heat these kinds of characters the nerd mm -hmm. who's always like no we can't do this <laughs> and that and i thought kobe was going to be a lifer in the story me too yeah. uh, mm -hmm. i th i thought he was like he was reluctantly like going to be what was his name manta from shaman king like yeah. a little little dweeb kid 
Yeah. And I thought like he wanted to be in the Navy, but he reluctantly had to be with the Straw Hat Pirates. So I was actually, I kind of laughed when he was written out. Um, and I think that's, you know, I, when I think people see that, it's kind of like a, uh, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but then Zoro comes in and he's so ridiculous, but he's so cool. Uh, I, I, I like the fact that Luffy hit Kobe and been like, I eh, oh God, I hate people like you. And for a main <laughs> character to do that and not be like, well, you know, it's like we all have our strengths and, um, you know, it's, and, you know, I was, and, uh, you know, you should stand up for yourself and all that stuff. Pretty much what, like what four kids did. Uh, but Steve and for Luffy to just be, and Luffy to just be like, shut up. You're, you're <laughs> annoying. And I was like, I thought that was ballsy. I, mean, I thought that was, and I, and then also for loop for like how Meppo to be like, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I tied up Zoro and I'm just going to kill him anyway. <laughs> and then Luffy just like disregards, uh, the consequences and just Dex Helmepo like mm -hmm. pretty much the, 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 the right hand of the, the ruling fist or ax, I should say of this town. And for Luffy to kind of just like deck this dude, I thought like Luffy's pretty great. You know, it's, it's feels kind of uh wish fulfillment in some ways, but like, I kind of like that. He just kind of, he, he knows, you know, he, he, he knows exactly what he wants. Uh, and he, like he's and he's like he doesn't have any restraint. Like I said, like he doesn't he has no hesitation. Like he has full confidence in who he is and his beliefs. And I think that's really established in these early chapters. And I and and also his the initial chapter of One Piece, the you know, the flashback, you know, in this point, it's not really a flashback, it's a present back thing. <laughs> Cause uh I just think that story is very strong. And I think that definitely, uh, you know, lifted this up to number 20 for me. Above some other arcs that I like, but I just think when I think back to them, it's like I don't remember them quite as vividly as I do uh, these early chapters of One Piece. So, um, Yeah, I for forgot what I was going to say. Uh, Alex, you ranked it number 18. Yeah. Uh, generally, these arcs, I, the ones that are five chapters long or so, uh, I'll tend to rank lower because, like you say, not so much meat on the bone, but uh, I recently did a read through of um, the first, like, I don't know, 25 volumes of One Piece, which isn't a whole lot to prepare <laughs> for this, but... But it's, um, it's, sorry, twenty five volumes. There are big, I, like, what is FMA? I isn't isn't it like twenty something volumes? It's something it's like just, that. It's just crazy. But FMA chapters little... are also like sixty yeah. pages. Well, there's only like four chapters per volume. I think it's like twenty eight yeah. volumes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, either way, this is the first time in a really really long time that I read through all of East Blue like in one go, and uh, it's very very interesting to see how Oda's style and um general uh trajectory has changed since he started uh romance Dawn, i think is really great from a vibes perspective as ed said and also from a just how you how, like a proper way to start a story perspective like i think it's, it's the first chapter is very compelling uh it tells a really really fun story uh i will forever love every single adaptation in the anime that they ever do of this like from the uh episode of east blue to the uh, fourth episode of the anime like whenever i tell people to watch the anime i'm like watch this 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 will probably sell you on it because it contains you know the romance mm, that uh that one piece is all about you know uh this time around one thing that i didn't really notice is how packed these chapters are like these first couple chapters are like they are packed just full of content yeah, there's um, nothing else to do. <laughs> like, yeah. Like there's no there's no padding, there's no fluff. Um it's just complete like complete and utter like there's so much to every single chapter. Um they in the first like three chapters they do a lot. Uh and um I think that's such a cool thing. Um Something that's hammered a lot into the beginning of One Piece, and I'll get into this more as we continue on to other East Blue arcs, are um, what everybody's treasure is. And this is something that Oda sort of, um, I feel like he sort of got away from 
uh, as time progressed. But mm-hmm. like, you know, oh yeah, Luffy's treasure. It's his hat. Or, um, you know, uh, Zoro's, you know, honor is his treasure, his sword is his treasure. Um, I'll get more into this when we go into Orange Town, but uh, it's very, very interesting uh, seeing seeing how Oda starts this series. And something else that I've noticed uh, in regards to the recent revelations of Luffy's fruit, when you go back and read Romance Dawn, it's very, very interesting. Um, you know, probably not what Oda had in mind initially when he first conceived the story. Uh, but the th- like in the first chapter, you see a lot of motifs like freedom and Luffy's unwavering happiness. Uh, mm-hmm. He has this conversation with the fishmonger and, and he's like, man, why are, you, why are you in such a good mood for? You're a freak now. He's like, yeah, but I can do this. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, look how cool this is stretching. He's just like completely happy, even though he's cursed for the rest of his life. He can't swim anymore. Um, and I think it's really interesting to know that Luffy was an anchor even before uh, he ate the devil fruit. Like he's never known what swimming is. Uh, so and Kobe proclaiming to join the Navy and be a proper sailor. Like the fact that we see, uh, you know, good versus bad naval officer right from the get go is uh, super interesting. Um, the Marines in these chapters are already alluding to pirate spies in the Navy, um, which makes me think about sword. Um, well, it's also a good indication, I think, of the looking back, the kind of media that Oda consumed as a teenager. I think yeah. he really liked Jedi Geki period pieces with their corrupt officials and the good officials, and the forces fighting against that as well. Yeah, it's it's sort of a smaller scale version of what would become One Piece's larger, um, you know, uh, the world government basically. Mm-hmm. So yeah, kind of kind of neat. Um, anyway, that's where I'm I think it's great. Um, Stephen, you ranked it at number twenty, also like Steve did. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, that and that's this is impossible to objectively yeah. rank um and i i don't know i i don't know a lot of people when they reread their, like they they love their favorite arc they'll reread their favorite arc over and over again um i'm the kind of person that like every time i reread i re it's the whole series like so um you know this stuff at the very start is i've read it as much as anything if not more than you know than anything else in uh one piece and it is really just you know kind of impossible to to gauge on any kind of <laughs> meaningful uh, metric at this point um it is really fascinating i think to to look back on it and to see you know the parts where you can see you can see the shonen jump formula of like this is how you tell a first chapter that you know hooks people you get the you get the emotional hook in there and um and really get get you know into their into their hearts that way and then, you know, how do you follow that up and, and build something that uh, gets people excited? Um, and, you know, like comparing the particularly, you know, the, the actual romance Dawn, the chapter one with uh, the other, you know, pre-series versions of um, romance Dawn that, that Oda did, um, as well as his wanted, you know, the, the pre uh, One Piece stuff, seeing that influence really strongly in this you know much more close to that stuff than you know anything in the last 10 years of one piece um it it was really fascinating to go back in uh and and look at that stuff and you know i remember reading the the first chapter for the first time and i got so sucked into especially because you know back then there was no english version and i was still learning japanese so like it was very slow going and i didn't really know for sure kind of everything that was going on and getting so attached to the first chapter that by the time I got to the end and then like chapter two was like, okay, here's teenage Luffy. And I was like, Oh man, like I, I don't get to see my little, my, my little guy here, like the, my little eight year old buddy, you know, like he's, he's all grown up now. Like I, I was getting kind of attached to him, um, you know, which is so funny to think of now. Um, but um, yeah, was there anything else I really wanted to say? Uh, I, I I agree with Steve that I think it's really interesting, especially in the early East Blue stuff, that uh, like Oda's the the boundaries of the story in terms, or not the story, but the depictions of the story, like how you kind of feel about it as like, is this a badass series? Like he really continually kind of 
uh, resets that high mark as you go from arc to arc. Uh, so, you know, like Zoro is, is a badass when you first see him, but then like you haven't seen Mihawk yet or, you know, uh, Dragon or, you know, just like all, all these other things that continually get wilder and more outlandish as the um as the series goes on so it is i think very refreshing that be, because you have kobe who is this such a wiener um and is you know kind of annoying that it is really refreshing that luffy is willing to just like hit him and and be like uh no yeah you're kind of a wimp like you're kind of annoying i don't like that uh and that i think sets it it sets a certain expectation for like who luffy is as a character at a at a point in the story where you know the stakes are generally very low and it's very cartoonish and it doesn't you wouldn't necessarily guess like just how absolutely epic it will become later on um and so it's kind of nice that he he gives us that little kind of edge to luffy's personality um to kind of prepare us for a, a better a more accurate picture of kind of where the story is going from there um so yeah that's my two cents I'm trying to remember when gaimon happened and if that should have been in this uh, uh it was after, after orange, orange town, town. Was, after right? yeah before yeah. syrup yeah yep um obviously that's one chapter and that is why we do not mm. have that on our like list a little extra long chapter yeah yeah, yeah. It, is. It, it is it is a that is an outlier in the series yes it is let's say oh it's a tom bombadil of them orange town yeah <laughs> 25. um did anyone did i forget to to Everybody ask did. anyone i think there? we all went okay yeah. um so outliers brian dead last uh jeff dead last um anyone else at the bottom no the highest thatch ranked at number one Woo. um and that's really it there's everyone else is kind of in agreement where that goes um so why don't we move on into the next Lovelorn, number 18. Um, in the audience rankings, um, this one ended up at number 16. And last time around, this one ended up at number 13. So a little bit of a drop. Um, and the uh, this one is Logtown. Um, and I know, Steve, this is very fresh in your head. Um since I think, what was it, yesterday or two days ago you went through it? Two days ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, I ranked it highest, you ranked it lowest, but I'll start with you since it's, I mean, I, I watched you go through it, but. You know, Logtown has a pretty good rep amongst the fans. It's People 22 like for it. you, by the way. I yeah. That. Uh, I mean, 22. Uh, it has a pretty good rep amongst fans. People like it. People like Smoker and people like the callbacks to Roger and all that. Th there's not a whole lot to it. Um, I think the... Bring up the anime. I, I think my fondness for it is the anime. The anime had the benefit of being breathe. able to really... Flesh it out, let it breathe, kind of put some more life into it. Steve, I think Oda, you need to say "Daddy the Father." That's a verb. That and also uh, the, like, <laughs> the bar that Gold Roger drank at. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, Daddy, you're my father. <laughs> uh, Sanji and the cooking contest. Um, yeah, guy yeah, with the giant coke good. nostril. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, Carmen, one of Carmen's oh, uh, dudes. Jose, Jose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I forget where it was said or if this was even confirmed by the man himself, but I think Oda really like he wanted Chapter One Hundred to be they set yeah. sail for the Grand Line, mm -hmm. so he kind of cut a lot out of here, and doing so it kind of it it, it kind of just it, it 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 almost feels like this should be a part of Twin Capes. It but I like keeping East Blue separate from the Grand Line stuff. Yeah, just going back and revisit. I like. I liked it. And I was like, "Wait, I don't need to rank." I'm like, "Do I rank Logtown this low?" I just think the problem is there's not really a great story arc here. It's great. I mean, it's great for the story. I just think there's not a like when it stands on its own. It's. I think it's not as strong. It lends itself to the grander scheme of things. Uh, so well, I it, it it's over in a flash. It's really quick. 
Um, and, you know, there's not, I guess, Buggy and Alveda and Smoker are the antagonists, but, you know, there's not really a big fight or anything. There's some great gags with Buggy and Alveda. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fun, but it's kind of, it almost feels like an opening act, you know? It, it doesn't feel like a complete story arc. I like that's yeah. I, I felt very conflicted on where to put this. Like I like it, yeah. but when I was looking at everything else, I was like, I don't think this is as strong as other arcs. Um for me I put it at sixteen. I mean, even that, you know, it's not super high, but I this this was like the arc where I really got into the series, I think, because I felt I guess Baradier too for the same reason, but it really felt like a stepping stone into a greater world. Um, the stuff with Dragon um, at the end of that, and and you know, even more so, I think the reason it bumped up a little bit here um, is I think in just coming off of the chapters of Wano we're just coming out of, this feels like a really like. Wow, this was really setting the stage. This was uh this was the last great uh match between the uh emperors of the sea. Um and this I don't know. I really enjoy it. I understand it is definitely truncated and abridged and it doesn't I don't know, it doesn't have like a big feeling, but it also I love I love it for the same reasons I love the Davy back fight. Um in that it is a it is short um it is it does feel like kind of a breather from everything else going around even though it's kind of also a culmination of those things it's definitely a culmination of east blue but we're also stopping kind of in a port town we're getting all the supplies we're getting ready to go to the next leg um i find that refreshing for whatever reason and also lore dumps which i love personally um and there's like a lot of little hints <clears throat> in the story that I could think of. Um, I don't really know if there's much else to say. I really like Logtown. I've always really liked Logtown. It's a personal, like, um, affectation, but um, that's 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 why I am where I am there. Steven, you ranked it one below me at 17. 17. Yeah, this is the late title card of One Piece. Um, yeah. It's yeah. like... It's the big sweeping, like sort of directorial choice to be like, hey, what about, you know, all this stuff that you've seen? What if I, you know, give you this flourish and, you know, like here's the resonance between Luffy and the King of the Pirates and, uh, you know, the uh, the big lightning blast and, and stuff like that. Um, and like, here's some old characters that you remember fondly, but they're a little bit different and they're, you know, they're chasing after you now, you know, it, it is a little bit of a look back and also a look forward. Um, and I think that it is a very, it, it's cool. It's uh it's aesthetic in that sense. It is not, it does not have a lot of structure. It doesn't really need a lot of structure. I don't know that it would be improved by, you know, the, the daddy, the father saga. Um, I <laughs> think, yeah. you know. It's a uh, it's a nice little a nice little arc to kind of reset your expectations for the the series going forward, and um, you know it's a little palate cleanser to get set for the next leg of the story, and uh, I do appreciate it for that. But yeah, it's just a couple of chapters, um, just a little bite sized thing, so nothing much more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex and Ed both put it at nineteen. Um, I'll give uh, Ed first. Uh, first. Sure. Um, yeah, I have very f- I have fond memories of this, but I think those fond memories are primarily from the anime. That last scene of them setting out towards this towards um reverse. I could mountain. hear the soundtrack right now. Exactly. Yeah, that that's a yeah. big moment. That's um, yeah, I like the I like Luffy's posture, or I like his presence as he stands on the execution platform where Gold Roger was, and uh, it's a good moment. But overall, it's um, yeah, it's kind of a, it's a little, it's, a, it's just a little arc. It's it's not um, not, it doesn't feel that big. Like even the aspect of Dragon showing up there, no idea who that was for hundreds of chapters. And even then, the revolutionaries, and especially him, he hasn't done much even since. So it doesn't improve necessarily 
uh, in hindsight yet. Uh, so, yeah, I I don't know. There isn't much really to say about it. It's um, There are some high points, but it's ultimately very short, and uh, it's not much of a story. Before Alex uh, chimes in, because I, 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 I want to make sure I don't forget this, even in the anime, it feels disjointed uh, because this is when they chose to introduce opening to believe. Oh yeah, that and is. I always thought like I thought all the arcs in East Blue should just have we are. Yeah, but I guess around that time, movie two was probably coming out, so they wanted to, uh, you know, synchronize marketing with uh, Folder Five song and Django's Dance Carnival, the short before it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, great short, but I just, to me, like the fact that Logtown has believe in the anime, it almost makes me feel like it's not a part of East Blue. Uh, and it's just, it, it's an, and I know that's an, I'm going to say, I feel like I'm going to say this every freaking time. I'm like, I'm not going to let the anime sway my vote, but that's just an interesting thing that always irked me about it in the anime too. It, so that version's not without it, its faults. It's interesting. Uh, going back to, it's not, it's not a full story on its own. I had this idea back when the, the, uh, when the live action was first announced, I was thinking about ways to structure like a first episode where it would be interesting to start the live action with Luffy on the execution platform and mm. the lightning strikes and you don't see what happens and then you go to then you go to chapter one and start from there uh, as a as a prologue cool. to yeah. East Blue and yeah, um, yeah I think. It, 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 there, it's a it's a nice piece. You could even you could even do the Roger speech and then cut straight to Luffy there mm-hmm. about to be executed. Also, but then, you know, yeah. And then, but yeah. who's Luffy? <laughs> no, but you obviously. I mean, see I within that I, one. I'm episode. Not, I want to I want to poo poo on your ideas, but I, okay, I, we're not I, I running the live action series, so it's fine. <laughs> we don't don't worry. Could, it's I, not going to happen. We should be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Anakin. <laughs> only a, only a Sith. Alex. Alex. Tell us yeah. about Logtown. Tell us all about Lock- it. Logtown's great. Um, short and sweet, uh, but like you said, there's not a whole lot there. Um, there, I do love. Uh, I love the introduction to Smoker. Um, yeah. We first see him as like a mega hard ass until his pants eat the girl's ice cream, and then he's then he was a super hard mega ass. hard ass. Yeah. Um, but it's a really great way to reveal his personal sense of justice. And I think that, uh, you know, up to that point, we hadn't seen Marines really since, uh, well, I'm not going to say since Shellstown because Purn, Nezumi, Purn. Yeah. the corrupt yeah. Marine, you know, is, and, is um, a huge full body. Well, and, and full body. And right before, um, Logtown really gets into the full swing of things, that's oh, when yeah. Luffy's bounty is revealed. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then we're inter- introduced to, you know, the... Oh, um, I was going to say, yeah, we also have the uh, the Kobe cover story um, around there, too. So, uh, you know, a lot of Marines all at once, but they're a, a world power. So naturally, you know, we're going to find out more about them. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, Luffy accepting his fate um, is really interesting, considering that, like, in order to activate Joy Boy, I think he has to, like, kind of accept his death. And I wonder... If if uh, Buggy had succeeded, if we would have gotten the Nika powers almost straight away, uh, probably not. That's probably not the case. But I think it'd be kind of funny, like a weird what if. That's that. Uh, that is a good question of what did Oda actually have in mind mm-hmm. regarding that at, at the start? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Joy Boy, the name showed up at Fishman Island and not before then, right? I don't think. Yeah. And Dragon um, says so. shit like the world is waiting for our answer, and we have no idea what the hell that means, and that could just be something that o- Oda decided to say vaguely so he can fill yeah. in the blanks later. Also, I also, yeah. uh, I only uh, know the this old because J. J. Abrams approach. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And also, that's what his Smoker says to Dragon: the government wants your head. It's like, yeah, the government re- wants his head more than anyone else's head. Isn't that Dragon's yeah, like... just like good. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do, Bucko. Uh, yeah. Um, his power is super obvious, by the way. In, in a, that it's reread, like a storm, yeah, it's storm like storm they power. basically telegraph what it is because people the are wind, like, "What could it yes. be? It's some weather-related thing." But it's very yeah. obvious that it ob- he he introduced that whole the, the thunderstorm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely something yeah. to that effect. Um, uh, Zoro testing out the luck. Um, his luck oh, versus yeah. the sword's curse is extremely cool. 
Um, anyway, that's Logetown. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I I love it, and I'll, that's a good. I feel like that's a fun reread. I could just open up those four chapters at any time. And the one thing I'll add is, I do think that is one of those arcs that the more that happens in the story, the more it gets added to that moment. I think you know mm. a lot of the stuff in Wano, in particular, I think resonates. Yeah. I, I like that we got to see Ipamatsu like briefly in one panel in uh, in Wano. That was fun. Um, okay, let's see some outliers. Uh, the do you want to do worst or best first, uh, Alex? Do you have a okay, Alex? Uh, let's do best. Best. Is best. Fine, yeah. Okay, who ranked it highest? Brodsky ranked it highest at number six. Um. I think that's the highest. I think everyone else was pretty even. David Bednar and Bell both ranked it at eight. Um, lowest, Joey Weiser, dead last. Mm. Um, like, <laughs> for some reason, this one, I don't understand why you'd end up dead last. It's just like, how do well, you... how does it a lot there. I mean, yeah, it's... but how does it evoke such strong emotions that you're just like, no. Fine. Joey Weiser well, hates characters you're... turning into cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who does he think? Yeah, it's the opposite of me. Um, no, I... I yeah, Buggy Zach, becomes you're... Turbo Team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so no, well, Zach, you're, you're, you're yeah. projecting there because you don't know what the thought process is it might not necessarily That's come true. from uh, i hate this arc it just might be this arc does the least for me yeah okay okay steve uh good good sticking up for your friend there mr reasonable yeah, yeah. mr reasonable okay mr. mr joey who gives me feedback on either way we're gonna have a lot kids. more discussion this is probably gonna be the one we discuss the most until the end um at number 19 um mm. Let's see, where did it end up for our... It was number 18 in the audience, so pretty similar. Okay. Um, last time, I'm very curious about this. Last time, this ranked at number 16. So we're, we're kind of in the ballpark here. Uh, not a huge shift for Fishman Island. Um, yeah, at number 19 here. Uh, now, let's see. I am super curious how this did with everyone else. Uh, let's do best first. Steven, really, somehow, oh. Steven, you have been, like, kind I of the... keep getting best, yeah. Yeah, you've... <laughs> Did you rank anything badly, or was everything... <laughs> a the champion of the time skip, Stephen Paul. Yeah. yeah, um, Steven, you ranked this at 14. Uh, okay. So, yeah, tell us about Fishman Island. Why, why do you like it? Why don't you like it? Why is it kind of mm. exactly in the middle for you? <laughs> I think, man... Yeah, this is another one that's really hard to to talk about. Like, where do you broach this subject? How do you start talking about it? I think Fishman Island yeah. is, uh, you know, it's it's another one. I think looking back to now that we've had a couple mega arcs uh, following it, um, like the fact that it is like Punk Hazard it is basically a one year, like five volume arc is definitely in its favor. Uh, because even the parts that are kind of dumb are over fairly quickly. Um, I think it's got some great art. I love, I, while I do have issues with the the general, like sort of, pre, you know, we always talk about this, like the presentation of the arc and the presentation of the information. Like I, he didn't do a great job of kind of presenting the arc and being like, this is where this is, this is where that is. And so a lot of the, I think, subsequent twists and turns that the story takes you don't necessarily understand why they're doing this as opposed to something else like there is not a lot of uh information independent information for the reader to put into place um and so some some of that i think can be a little frustrating but the art itself and the the locale is a really beautiful i think um i love the um the ryugu palace yeah. uh stuff like the you know all the use of that um urashima taro like uh sort of fairy tale um aspect uh is is really uh gorgeous and um you know kind of vividly done i don't really mind so much that the uh that the new fishman pirates sucked or that they like got their asses kicked so so easily <laughs> Um, yeah. I know, I, I think a lot of people were frustrated just because it had been so long since we had the crew together that, uh, you know, it's like, well, when are we, you know, 
when are we going to sink our teeth into like a really big juicy like get that classic one piece back because we've just been following luffy and you know marineford and pill down all that stuff uh it you know the, for a long time the series had not been kind of quote unquote one piece um for a while and so the you know the fact that it doesn't really fit a lot of those requirements i understand the the frustration but i don't know i think it, you know in in retrospect i think it, within in the long view of the series i i kind of like that there's an example of an arc that has like not not i wouldn't phrase it as underwhelming bad guys but like like kind of pushovers or, or like you know the fact that hody jones is literally empty uh like he has no emotional core i don't necessarily mind that because like that's no nobody else is like that um and i i kind of value that uh unique aspect uh to it um and so i think those are the things that i i do enjoy obviously the the flashback is really dense as well it's not it's not quite the same kind of tear jerking flashback as like the character centric ones, but it's a really dense and fascinating one to pick apart. Um, so there's, there's a lot of good, um, you know, very heavy uh, material in, in that to, um, to examine, which I, I think is, is also um, quite interesting to, to look at, but um, I do understand, you know, obviously I think there are, some severe structural issues with it that um don't make it as it's not as satisfying to to read i think but um i do i do like it for the weird things that it does um alex you rated it uh lowest at second to last at 23 yeah um i mind you i had to sort of make my rankings like 20 minutes before our episode so this is sort of based on my overall experience reading reading it, and um, we are um, factoring in the return from the time skip in this as well, um, which honestly is my favorite part of the entire of the entire thing. Um, I think that the excitement of seeing all of our characters two years older. Um, I thought still... we were including that in Marineford and Post. Yeah. Oh, were we? Yeah. Yep. Oh, never mind then. Uh, great. I'll talk about now. That it's then. last. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Um. I'll I'll remain. I'll 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 keep it here. Uh. Uh. Like Stephen says, I think the new Fishman Pirates are stupid and dumb, <laughs> and Vander really Deacon's like, cool. like yeah. I mean, here's the. I don't mind Vanderdecken so much. Hold on one second. There's a fucking helicopter. <laughs> so I just close my window. Um. So. Yeah. Sorry about that. I think that sucks about living in Washington, D.C. Um, all right, where was I? Okay, so, um, yeah, the new Fishman Pirates, uh, they get bodied pretty quick, and I think that's pretty reasonable considering it's a good way to showcase how far the Straw Hat Pirates have become, or have come. But at the same time, it's a pretty, like, long arc, and... I feel like that could have been solved with like a quick trunks defeats Frieza esque <laughs> situation uh, versus a whole arc. Um, so we get an air cannon. Yeah. Oh god, the, the air cannon. I don't. I don't think that the overall map is laid out very well. It's sort of hard to tell. My, my that's my biggest. My I think the biggest flaw that this arc has is it's hard to tell um, how anything is going on. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, aside from weak villains and stuff, and I don't think the art, uh, the final attack art, has as much punch as uh, it has in the past. And I didn't really like what he did with, um, like putting uh, the fight matchups, like I don't know, two per chapter or whatever. I don't know. Uh, it just it left kind of a bad taste in my mouth. However, we get Jinbei. We get Jinbei, and we get a really really great backstory um the uh the juxtaposition of uh fisher tiger and um otohime's um completely you know different struggles are really really cool uh i think oda does a really fantastic job of really fleshing up fishman culture and you can tell it's something that he's been wanting to do for a while it's just that with all the talk of fishman island over the course of the series 
it's hard to get to this point and not feel a little disappointed. Um, and you know, there's the Sanji nosebleed of it all, but yeah, I've, I was talk about that. <laughs> but uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll let you go further into detail about that. That's the, um, it's just a, one of those upon reread that I don't really enjoy reading. Um, I, I enjoy reading bits of it, but like, I don't find the Mambo princes particularly yeah. engaging. I, I wish the side characters were a little more fun. Uh, I think Megalo and Shirahoshi are pretty great. Uh, <laughs> Poor but, Megalo. <laughs> uh, Megalo is great. I love, I love, um, yeah. Neptune's and, underrated, but yeah. Neptune is good. Um, but like, yeah, the, the Fishman pirates and then Hammond. Remember that guy? <laughs> uh, Caribou. Remember him? Uh, so, I, think, I don't know. I, I think the the design like of the princes particularly was like kind of baffling to some people. But when when the uh, interview from the color walk of Oda with the doll maker came out that he was like based a lot of the those character designs on that. Uh, I, I wish I could remember the the guy's name. But, yeah, I know um, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah that that I, I think put it into context for me. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting actually, because uh, they are very different. That is interesting. Yeah, I mean, I always thought that they're just, I mean, at the at the very least, Ryuboshi's design, Ryuboshi, is that the, the Manboshi? I think it was the main one. I think Fuku- is no, the Fukuboshi. 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 Yeah, his design always seemed kind of lazy to me. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, when you look back at the, um, at like Arlong's pirates, I feel like their designs are a little more varied and you can, yeah. like, mm-hmm. they each have their own distinct silhouette and I think that the new Fishman pirates also do. They're, but they're just kind of, I don't know. One note, I think the, the 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 thing that I got out of the arc the most is the blood transfusion scene with Jinbei. I think it's really, really special, yeah. really great, um, and it really, um, it really makes Luffy's relationship with Jinbei sing. And and it's really funny when you look at Luffy's relationship with Jinbei, and over the course of like so many arcs, it's like, of course, these two were meant to be together on the same crew and when and then when you eventually get them on the same crew it's that it's it tastes so good um because of all the stuff that they've been through and that and that this arc included so i can't really say that this is a bad arc um because of some of the really nice things it does uh but it's not my favorite to reread uh i'll just say that yeah um Steve, uh, you ranked it at number 18, uh, so second highest of, of, of us five. Um, um, yeah, very uh, conflicted with this one, all over the place. Um, uh, I think the complaints I've heard so far are valid. Uh, something I want to talk about with this arc, though. Artwork, outstanding. Ooh. Yeah. Beautiful. It is. Beautiful outwork, uh, artwork. Uh, from the characters to the backgrounds, there's so much love put into this. Oh, just the descent to Fishman Island. Oh god, yeah. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Some of my favorite that. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's really gorgeous stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think I, when I think of Fishman Island, I think of uh, you know the expectation, the hype versus the reality. Uh, I was looking forward to Fishman Island for so long because I loved the Arlong Park arc. I was getting excited when it was brought up at the end of Water 7 and then was prepping for Shibandi. And we got it. But it came at the sacrifice as uh, the tutorial for the time skip of One Piece. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, yeah, like the Fishman Pirates, uh, the new Fishman Pirates. I'm like, okay, level one, all right, yeah. yeah. For level level like, one see, villains. These fights would be cool. We've known about Hiozo since Hachi mentioned them offhand in Arlong Park. This, this fight's going to be badass, right? No. Uh, and all the other guys were just kind of schmucky. Uh, Sanji had to team up with Jinbei for his fight. And nothing against Jinbei, but I was like, wow, there's a downgrade for Sanji, who already was not yeah, a major downgrade in that arc, in this arc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they had to have a I whole found... arc uh, redeeming Sanji because of all the shit yeah. he did in this one. I, he, I, I, I praise Oda on his world building and Zoe, and I think Fishman Island was not 
quite there because I think the whole infra- infrastructure was very confusing. Also, like, uh, so what's underneath water and what's above water? <laughs> it's like, aren't they all fishmen and mermaids? Why do they need to? But it it was confusing uh, a little bit. And then like already splitting up the crew when we wanted to see them all together again was a little bit annoying. Um, but I, I, and the thing is like the, the Rose Gallery, you know, a good villain is, is one you could appreciate. And the one that you like kind of love, even though they're a villain. Um, I don't think anybody likes the new Fishman Pirates or Vander Decken. Nobody. I like no. Vander Decken. You like Dan or Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Dan Dockery, right? Uh, you're not, you're not you, you, I, I, I think uh, Alex. I think Stephen was saying Dan. I Dockery like and... Vander Decken the ninth. I think, I, I think he's got a really cool design. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he, he looks like a neck beard. With, uh, we, crazy, we, yeah. yeah. This adds, uh, I think but adds I, description I, to I, I think there wasn't anything likable about them, and I think that kind of lends to Hody because at first I thought like, oh, it's so stupid. Hody, like Hody doesn't have any reason. And I said this a bunch of times before. I'm like, uh, you don't, you don't care. Like you, like you, you know what I'm saying like you shouldn't have to, uh, you know, let a racist explain themselves. You know, it's kind of like, no, shut up. Yeah, you know, it, it there's no excuse. Um, so I think I, like like I said, like I think that's perfect for Hody's character. Doesn't necessarily make for the most captivating story. Um, but yeah, they, these guys are kind of just schmoes, and and I guess that's all they're ever gonna be. And I I think the flashback is the best part of this arc. It's smack dab in the middle. I think at first I maybe wasn't the craziest about Otohime's, but you know, revisiting it, it's like this is great stuff. It's all good because I think I was like, I I want to see young Jimbe and and young Arlong and, and the Sun Pirates, but now I have a deep appreciation for both of those stories in the flashback. But uh, oh my god, the the point between yeah you know, the point from after that flashback to the moment Luffy jumps out of Megalo's mouth and punches Hody was a slog terrible just like the our heroes just bickering like on what to do uh yeah. interesting in, you know must read uh manga that was not um god and i remember uh the part with the with noah with the descent of noah and uh remember that's <laughs> Craig took a break from One Piece yeah. because of that. I remember it was kind of just like, of ugh, of course, Hody, like Hody would stab uh, Vanderdecken. But I think it was kind of just uh, maybe our intelligence was assaulted a little bit because Vanderdecken's like, why you do this to me, man? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was like I, I, everyone's so stupid in this. Um, yeah. I think it's just there, and there's not a whole lot of new characters introduced that I really like. I like Shirahoshi, you know, and Megalo is cute, but like Neptune's fun, but we've we have other fun kings, you know. Um, With that much Chester? I mean, there's a lot of that was quite a bit of similarities, I think, in the weaknesses of Best Rosa and Fisherman Island. Yeah. And I think a part of it is like, you know what? There's there's makings of a pretty solid story here, yeah. But there's a lot of fat that needs to be trimmed. I, yeah. I was gonna say, I think Fishman Island is the perfect example of it working great in Oda's head and not translating on the page. Mm. Um, I think he was ahead of his skis. Uh, some other analogy that also fits here, you know, like that's that's the issue. I think. I think just like where we got to at the end of the arc is great. But just mm. the, you know how we talk about it's the journey, not the destination. The, the opposite, destination was better right? than the journey. Yeah, yeah. here, <laughs> um, like Tamago and very... show up at the end, and we get some cool Joy lore Boy, at the, end, the lore yeah, at the end the, of it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the Poseidon, Poseidon stuff was awesome. Yes, well, just in the in like Fishman Island, kind of embracing Luffy, and like you mentioned, the moment with Jim Bay with the blood transfusion. Mm. That yeah. like it, it, it was like that's what it's all about, people. But that's what was the arc was all about was that progression in in kind of uh 
you know, including Fishman with the rest of, you know, society and the human race and not looking upon them like uh, lower class citizens or creatures, but just it's Sanji nosebleeds and, uh, you know, you know, hashing out like a plan uh, at the, uh, you know, where the, the flower, wherever the hell the flower field was and all that crap. It, it just, mm. Like Hammond a forest. Is remember, that what it was friggin', like remember, remember Luffy fought like Hammond. <laughs> just to yeah. keep the just to keep the discussion somewhat succinct. Um, I I mean, it. This is this is the same problem as Dressrosa, and that is an execution problem. I think the idea is fantastic. I think it is rare or unheard of for like these kind of issues to be addressed in a shonen manga, particularly. Um. There were like very deep societal issues, not just here, but also in Japan. Um, there were there's tons of xenophobia, and there's the the whole thing with the uh, Ainu people in um, in Hokkaido. Um, there's like there there is a lot of this like. Um, um, what has got a lot to say about society, and it doesn't always work no. out the way he uh, wanted it to. I think um, I think the message, the moral he had at the end, was 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 good and um like he had the right idea but it's just on the page it just turned into slop yeah and uh, yeah i just wanted to mention the sanji thing because like they do the do we have to well it's a big negative in the arc for me in particular and there's and, uh splatter and yeah. what's the what are the right exactly and like sanji i we have to we have to we have to do a lot of damage control on him yeah. and also like Oda's relationship to queer media or queer topics, uh, yes. especially after like um, on the on Sanji on on uh, Kamabaka Queendom and like <laughs> getting angry at these people who just saved his life, like shut the fuck up. Like what's your <laughs> what's your problem? Why why are you like this? Like I, I get yeah. why you're like this, well, Oda. Why do you have to write this? Like why? Yes. Why did it have to be part of the series? He he thought it was funny, I think, and he was wrong. Yeah. I I'm, I like I think it really Fishman Island does more to destroy Sanji's character than anything else, other any other individual arc does to build it up or really build up and like it it does some real um heavy lifting in the damage it it, it inflicts on that character mm-hmm. um yeah he's yeah. um yeah I, I agree with pretty much everything uh, everyone else is already said. yeah but yeah I I always I had the problem with Vanderdeck and uh, as well and uh yeah just the the problem with this is is weak villains and sort of a drawn out story and the straw hats end up looking cool in the end and we get some interesting stuff at the end of the arc but it's stuff that's leading towards other arcs best stuff in this arc relates to other arcs more than does his own arc yeah yeah i i mean big mom being introduced big mom being introduced at the end of that is uh it's it's a it's a big moment It's it's a good it's a good stunner um but yeah that's more about another arc I feel like I'm going to talk about Dressrosa again because I I did want to say that that flashback is one of my favorites despite the fact that it is in mm-hmm. uh, a big Fisher Tiger mess. is such a good character. I Fisher, Fisher Tiger love, is I one of my favorite. That, that scene of him holding hands with Koala walking into that like the whole I love that flashback so mm-hmm. much. Um, and his effect really on Jimbei in particular was a high point. The way Jimbei yeah. changed in relation to him and uh, being able to sort of forgive that um forgive that sin that killed Fisher Tiger. I mean, maybe he feels that way. Maybe he, he still yeah, but he was able to sort of resolve that in in his heart. But with the yeah. blood transfusions. I think yeah. that Arlong uh like Arlong's backstory was interesting uh mm-hmm. because it's it's not anything that like it doesn't make you really sympathize with Arlong, but it definitely lends uh and a window into like uh here is someone who is a product of their environment and uh it's it's kind of interesting to see that in in this type of villain i don't necessarily you know think it's needed but um because you have the exact same thing with hody like hody is a product of his environment like to the and like the That's highest degree one. the highest ex- extremity well and what's what's great about that you bring that up and I'm not saying it's a good excuse, but at least with Arlong comes that experience of being out 
in the in the in the worlds and yeah. and experiencing what happened to Fisher Tiger yeah. and that kind of what I I wouldn't say oh that's what made him hate humans I'm like no but that definitely set him off the deep end yeah and then you have Hody who's just like basically an incel like he's never left home you know and yeah. he has all these opinions but he has not experienced the world at all he's, he's, I think he peaked in, peaked in high school this guy he's a he's a yeah. thin cell <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not naming this that because we already have a title, but I I was going to say though, like I think Fishman Island has probably aged better, um, which is unfortunate than most arcs um, in one piece in that it feels prescient and more prescient. It it is this, it is unfortunately something that society is very reflective of society, but I also agree that it, that Oda really flubbed the uh, delivery there on that. Like the, the problem is in the execution, not necessarily in the ideas. I think all the ideas were perfectly fine. It just was really poorly and confusingly done. Um, we should move on uh, before we, <laughs> before we move on, let's see where other people rank Fishman Island. Since Brian, we have to mention ranked him right in, right, right in the middle uh, 15. Um, Let's see who ranked it worst. Uh, only one person ranked it dead bottom, dead last, and that's hmm. Shannon Strucci. Um, Thatch and Dan and Brodsky and Dan Dockery um, and Mike all ranked it second to last. Who ranked it the highest? I think David Bednor ranked it number five, and that is our highest for Fishman Island. Um, so I think it's time we move into our next one. Uh, so this last is the, of this tier. <laughs> the last of this tier, fifth to last. Last time, by the way, this was number 19. And for the audience, it was number 20. So we all agree mm-hmm. here. Uh, this is this is exactly where this arc belongs, apparently. And that is Little Garden. The garden that is smaller than a regular garden. <laughs> Can yep. you tell we're three hours into a recording? <laughs> in, in the Garden of Little. Uh, I rank this highest um, at number 14. Um, I really like Little Garden. I think it is, I think what I say earlier with Zoe, that kind of one of my criteria for like a really good arc is that it stands by itself. And yes, obviously the Baroque work stuff goes through it, but I really think this is like a great fairy tale, fun fantasy you know, dinosaurs, giants, uh, a really stupid moral at the end, like the joke moral at the end, where it's a measuring contest that's actually, between. Uh, uh, that's, not, that's not what I thought you were talking about. Oh, uh, the goldfish moral? Which moral? Or the no, friendship no, the way, is the, important? No, and... no, the way Luffy wins his fight. Oh, yeah, the instinct. I love, I love all that. I think Mr. Three is a good villain because I hated him then. Uh, obviously, he came back and did a lot, but... Um, at the stuff that Sanji does. We're talking about Fishman Island with all the awful stuff Sanji does. Sanji, this is one of Sanji's better arcs um, in that he kind of lurks in the background and then does that cool thing at the end where he uh, insults Mr. Zero. Um, it's This is all really good stuff, I think. I like Little Garden. Obviously, my opinion is not the same as a lot of other people's opinion. But... Um, I thought it was fun in the way that the Davy back fights were fun. Um, the lowest ranked, uh, Steven and Ed both had it lowest. Uh, Steven, I'll start with you. 21, both of you had it. 21. Um, yeah, Little Garden has never been I'm sorry, my 22. Favorite. 22. Okay, yeah. Uh, Little Garden has never been my favorite arc. I do, th- I do agree that there's some fun stuff in there, but I think just the... The main issue for me is that it was always like, here's the mid-tier Baroque works, guys. Um, so it's just really hard to get it up for this arc. Uh, you know, it just feels like, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of small. It's kind of small stakes, uh, which is ironic given that there are giants uh, and huge dinosaurs and stuff. That that stuff is all cool. Um, and I, I don't know. I guess maybe it's just that like, all the dicking around with like the colors trap and the, uh, the candle, uh, you know, uh, candelabra, whatever the hell it's called. Um, you know, it definitely feels like you're watching like a mediocre, uh, you know, Batman 66, uh, episode or something. 
uh i don't know people i'm sure people like it for that reason I, but i like it for that reason, yeah I yeah I, I think i think for me it, it's just kind of uh underlines that like this is not super serious material <laughs> and so i don't know i think it's frustrating <clears throat> knowing the the that there are much better uh arcs in the baroque works saga coming after it that this is what makes it hard for me some uh, days you just yeah. can't get rid of a bomb bomb man <laughs> robin i can't find out who who did this it's, uh, it's something smells of wax wax candle candle man mr three <laughs> you see you guys are just yeah. proving you're 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 yeah. um we're having our own fun. my point yeah holy matchsticks batman we're having our own fun this isn't notice fun uh <laughs> right. yeah. this is um yeah I, I talked about this is sort of like the opposite of what romance dawn what i feel when i read romance dawn <laughs> like this is just sort of a <laughs> meh, this is kind of a meh arc for me uh, i i admit that zoro gets a couple of cool moments like when he decides to chop his legs off at the ankles uh being trapped in the candle uh candle wax but um yeah it's just sort of a small potatoes arc um it's nice to see the crew like interacting in the way that they do in the groups that split off and um it's 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 the peak of vv being well not, not the peak that's drama really it's the peak of vv being part of the crew before, before uh alabaster at least i enjoy that part of her interacting with the crew um but Otherwise, it's just, I mean, this Golden Week, I don't care for her powers. And she's kind of a blank slate. Like she doesn't emote really at all. Mr. Three does a lot of the scenery chewing there. And uh, Mr. Three, uh, similar to Caesar Clown, is better as a lackey and is better in other arcs than this one. Um, yeah, not my favorite. It's an arc that, um, you know, Whiskey Peak is our introduction to Baroque works and from Island obviously has the emotional core of Chopper's backstory, so this feels like the odd arc out in that whole Baroque Works story. Um, Alex, you had it at 21. Do you have my, my previous ranking of this arc? I'm curious. Uh, yeah. Why, why don't you start talking about it and I'll... Cause it'll take yeah. Me. So I've always been pretty, like, pretty warm on, on Little Girl. Oh, you had it at 11. You had it at 11. Yeah. Yeah, it it took a it took a dive this time. Yeah. Um so I always had this really real nostalgic uh thing with Little Garden because it reminds me of being into One Piece like like my early days of being into One Piece and um get, like watching it for the very first time and being really intrigued with Baroque works. Uh and um of course I was watching the anime and I, I after rereading it in the, over the past week uh, I think Little Garden is one of those rare instances where this arc is better in the anime than it is in the mm. manga. Um, the pacing is like, once Mr. Three captures everybody, it's like, it slows to a crawl. Um, like, Luffy and Usopp get taken out, and then they're they're good again, but then they get taken out again, and it's, it's a, it's, it's a real messy, real messy thing to read. Um, now, uh, there's a lot of stuff I do like about it, but at the there it's very long in the tooth and and like Ed said, it's sandwiched in between two pretty fun fun and good arcs. Uh, the thing I, I thought that was interesting is that um, you know the giant's honor is their treasure. Um, I just thrown that back out there because it's that's one of the things that that's gotten lost a little bit um, since Oda uh, has sort of gone along. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically where I'm at with it. It used to be a favorite of mine, and now it's sort of a slog, if that makes sense. Uh, Steve, um, you had it. I think you were last here, nineteen. Last amongst us to to go. I think my memories of this arc are fonder than my actual appreciation for it. It's good. It's it's good stuff. But I just think it's you know it's. It, it, it's here amongst giants ironically <laughs> the arc with giants in it yeah. and it just i i think it just doesn't measure up because i think it's more uh these characters i mean mr five and val and miss valentine were already jobbed out by luffy and zoro with one hit so they don't really come off as much of a threat you have to constantly handicap the main cast in order for these characters to feel like a threat or and they're like a hindrance like we all know that everyone could kick mr three's ass but he's you know he's 
got them by the balls metaphorically you know with the candelabra and all that and then you have miss golden week you know like you know luffy could kick ass but you know miss golden week's abilities you know or her painting skills i should say to you know delay that um it's a great arc for usopp i love it for usopp like yeah. him I, I i i wouldn't say you know you know, you know luffy's not b team or anything but luffy's like oh, we gotta go take down these dastardly villains who do i got and it's usopp and karu and i kind of <laughs> like that yeah um, me too. pretty good yeah yeah the the dorian brogy story is fantastic mm-hmm. you know and it's you know, and it's Oda pulling from old myths and all that. You know, the red and blue ogre. He's doing that with uh, Dorian Brogy, the red and blue uh, giants. Um, but I just think, you know, when you stack it up with everything else, it kind of just pales in comparison. It's a fine arc, but it is definitely, a tr- it, it almost feels like a transitional one. Like, we're coming out of some, like, we're coming out of, like, some interesting stuff. And it's it's not going to get... Yeah, like really good just yet but it's like it's fine like i i think just my problem with it was just like eh, yeah like the fact that it's more like oh god luffy can't punch this guy yet uh hmm. i think is what kind of holds it back but the the luffy moment the instant it's a lot of hurts it's, <laughs> it's one of my favorite moments with luffy yeah. uh i really appreciate that scene and I do like, like, I almost thought, like, mm, this is pretty good because Mr. Tree's a great villain, but uh, Ed's saying he's better as, you know, kind of like a cohort or an underling. I think there's some merit to that. Uh, and, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. I, I was going to add, I feel like Mr. Three is kind of maybe closer to the villain I wanted out of Doflamingo since we were talking about that earlier. Brains S- over brawn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um. I think Dopey's a brick shit house. So he shouldn't be though. Like that's <laughs> not. I mean, I guess I can't really say he should or shouldn't be. I didn't. That's not what I was expecting from that character. Um, and also, I feel like the brains over brawn thing is such a is a rarer um, villain uh, personality in One Piece than the than the other way around. Um, did everyone go? Did I get everyone there for Little Garden? Um, uh, I'll say this is like one of the most consistently ranked. Everyone has it at around like 16 to 18. Uh, the lowest Sam Leach ranked at dead last. Um, the high, like no one really ranked it super high. Like me and Sung Wan ranked it highest at 14. Um, and oh, Nikki and Thatch both ranked it at 13. So, you know, nothing huge. Um. Okay, so that's gonna do it for our lovelorn tier. Why don't we go to the cold fish, which Fishman Island did not make it into? All right, so we'll take a little break. Hopefully, this part's edited, so I don't sound ridiculous. Um, and we're I'm gonna. S- I'm sorry, by the way, about the thing. It's okay. Yeah. I just had to switch. Yeah, do. Um, let's go to cold fish. Three, two. Ed, we're back with our what? What is it called? Arcs of consequence. Thank you. It's like we're coming back from a commercial break. <laughs> Problem is we don't have commercials. Um, but pretend. Let's pretend. We should make fake commercials. That's what we should do for this if we haven't already. Um, anyway, we're gonna go with number twenty-one. Uh, this one in the audience poll ranked twenty-two. Um, and last time this ranked number, where the hell is it? 15, um, and also 21. Um, and that is because we combined one that probably should not have been separated originally. And that is the Twin Capes Whiskey Peak arc, um, which we are combining for purposes here, um, I think the main reason those two are combined is also because the same set of villains run through the two of them, and there are some storylines. Um, but let's talk about Twin Capes Whiskey Peak, and who do we got here? Uh, number one of the pe- the person here who rated it the highest is Alex, who ranked it at 17, a stellar 17. Um, <laughs> tell us, why is Whiskey Peak the best arc in One Piece? 
<laughs> I think I vote. I think I. I think it made it my top five when we did this the last time or the first time we. Okay, did I gotta check that. Ranking. All right, go ahead. Because I remember ranking this super. You high did initially. four number four. Wow. Yeah. That was a hot um, take. You were doing a hot take there. I was doing a hot take. I had to really lift it up because yeah. I feel like Whiskey Peak is the ultimate nostalgia button for me. It um, is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because Baroque Works, I think, is my favorite. My, I love Baroque Works so much, and that's the introduction, and the setting is so cool. Uh, the Cactus Islands, very neat. Um, uh, but before we get to that, Laboon, what a great, what a great uh, funny little whale. Not so little anymore. I completely forgot that he's got like, um, he's kind of a cyborg himself. He's got little, uh, oh, yeah. um, like a door that opens up inside him, uh, so Crocus can you know keep him alive. Uh, very very fun to read. Uh, uh, short and sweet this whole thing. I'm I, S and S man like short and sweet. I I have to say that, that a lot of I, I love these these little. Uh, capsules of arcs uh you know obviously the brook stuff comes back to um you know L the laboon stuff in a very nice nice way when you revisit it but uh to the point where when you um when they do the flashback of uh the pirates that left the silhouette is yorkie like he made sure to make sure that yorkie looks like like the guy in the flashback mm. with the cowboy hat and the coat um I digress. Um, the main reason that I really love uh, Whiskey Peak stuff is uh, Zora vs. Baroque Works. It's um, one of my favorite anime episodes. It's one of the coolest, uh, I think, just overall um, fights in the entire series. It's such a cool showing of Zoro and um, what he's capable of um, and what he was probably capable of when he was a pirate hunter. Um, I know a lot of people give uh Zora versus Luffy a lot of crap because oh it would never happen it's out of character but i i, I nice eye roll there Zach um no i i agreeing with you right <laughs> yeah i now i i think that Zora and Luffy is so funny because uh here here we have Mr. 5 and Miss Valentine who just show up um and they're like killers they're they're assassins they're trained assassins and they're like, oh yeah, you're the princess of Alabasta and the and the the, the captain. We're gonna kill you. Um, meanwhile, uh, Zoro versus Luffy is happening in the background, and <laughs> they trounce Five and Valentine while while barely lifting a finger. Yeah. They just, I'm Five and Valentine don't even get in the way. Like Luffy and Zoro are basically fighting through them, uh, and it's so funny. Just to it, it goes to show that this now this. Speaking of uh, the power scaling thing in Fishman Island, about to, to showcase how far these characters have come, uh, this is this is the perfect way to do it in classic Oda fashion. It's 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 funny and it's it's poignant in a way where uh, we're introduced to these two characters who have crazy devil fruit powers, and um, they're brushed aside by just a petty, dumb comedic squabble that Zoro and Luffy are having. Um, like right off the bat. Baroque works doesn't seem to be that much of a threat, um, but it also is cool because you see sort of where on where in the pecking order these officer agents are, in comparison in comparison to the ones that we get to see later on in Alabasta, uh, because there's not a whole lot of time for training in between, um, you know, Whiskey Peak and where they ultimately end up. So you have to sort of see where these characters um, lie. And uh, not to be a power scaler or anything like that, but I think it's a, a kind of an interesting uh, way to look at it when you look at the numbers uh, and um, where they eventually add up. Anyway, uh, nostalgia, the setting, um, the introduction of so many fun characters, and Zoro um, in in what I think is his um, his finest moments. So I love now, the peak. Now, did I get the wrong? Uh, list from you, Ed, because you put it dead last. I mean, yeah, any of the last three could kind of interchangeable for me, but um, yeah, but this is like Zoro's arc, and you're Zoro's, you know. See, that's the thing, though. I haven't revisited this uh, yet, and it, I don't know the the impression it made wasn't um, it didn't make as much of an impression on me as far as I can remember it. Uh, is this something I actually feel like I need to reread? But like going back in my memories, it doesn't have that. Uh, I don't know, that emotional uh, relation 
for me. Um, it's this sort of uh, it's just this sh- short arc, and as much as I love the crocus gags, it's um, and I, I don't know. Gags. I never. I n- it's true, but <laughs> those are. I don't, uh, I don't know. It um, it's just not the. Uh, it's not what I remember. It's. I feel like it's something that when I initially went through the series, I feel like I sort of sped through it, and whenever I revisited it, it doesn't. I don't know. I don't, I don't have that emotional uh, nostalgia for it, which is weird because you think I would. I mean, I I do like the Zoro versus Baroque works, but I feel, I feel like that sort of flowing into uh, Luffy versus Zoro, which I'm not the hugest fan of. It's not. I don't know. It just it sort of feels like it's not not that it wouldn't not that it would be out of character, but that it's sort of played for comedy, uh, and it's good comedy. But like, I don't. I don't know. It feels like it should be a bigger deal, but it turns out to be this gag, which normally I would like, but it's just, um, you know, it didn't make an impression on me so much uh, at the time. Uh, yeah, Mr. Five and Miss Valentine are, uh, I don't know, they're really light comedic villains. Uh, it's fun watching them get smashed during Luffy and Soros fight. Uh, yeah, it's just not, um, yeah, that, I guess that's why I put it last, because I don't have any of those emotional, nostalgic feelings for it, necessarily. Ah, oh, Whiskey Peak, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> Steven. Um, <laughs> what did I have it as? <laughs> you had it as 21. Steve as well 21. had it at 21. Okay. So both Steve's, what did I have? Yeah. Uh, I had Little Garden at 22. You were, Yeah, so the, you had okay, this just good. above Little Garden. Yeah. All right, yeah, because I like this one more than Little, Gar- Little Garden. Um, <laughs> I think it is... Yes, it is short. I I think probably the difference because it you know the it the Baroque works saga like it's like the little arcs that get longer as you go along until you get to Alabasta, and so this one it's real real short. I think probably the difference for me uh, between this and Little Garden is that it doesn't it doesn't force you to spend so much time with shenanigans um you know like the the shenanigans are short and sweet as uh alex said so that i think that helps out uh, a lot it is like especially for being so short like it's very vivid there's just like the just the the laboon stuff and uh you know uh, miss wednesday and mr nine are so odd when you first see them along with uh crocus um it's it is bizarre like whatever i expected to see once coming down reverse mountain it was not this uh which helps a lot i think for it um you know yeah it doesn't do a a whole lot but um uh you know the 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 whiskey peak part i think that 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 counts in this right that's uh with yeah it's twin capes and whiskey peak and whiskey peak okay uh yeah that that stuff is is cool too i think zoro's fight is is a really a really really fun sequence and it's definitely like if you weren't a zoro fan before that you were after that um yeah. and uh so yeah it's, there's not a lot that that happens in these but there it's a little whirlwind of um activity that is you know setting up the the bigger story ahead and i, I do appreciate it for that um but uh yeah it's just uh you know very short steve you also had it at uh 21 uh, the Laboon story is great. And that's heartfelt. Uh, Zoro versus a bunch of bounty hunters is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, debut of Nico Robbins' best fit ever yes. is in this yeah. arc. But uh, that kind of just pales in comparison to other arcs. <laughs> I think it's just, it's fun, but it's it's just set up for bigger and better things. So it kind of just doesn't stack up to other arcs. I think all the positive things were said, all the negative things were addressed. I don't think there's anything else I could really add. Yeah, I don't have much to add either. I had it at 19, so kind of in between everyone. Um, I, I think the only thing I could add is that it is, it is a really fun... Um, the, one of the reasons it was a little higher for me is it's a fun interaction between the whole crew. Um, I think Zoro's line about like as a real swordsman never gets too drunk that he doesn't know what's going on, and Nami's you, I could drink you under the table. I'm fine. Um, I I like I I love everyone. Really, you are in- seventeen. Meanwhile, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sanji's passed out. You know, you know, Luffy is overeating. Yeah, you know, like it is a very good showcase of how 
everyone deals with all sorts of these kind of crazy situations. All this stuff is happening around the Straw Hats, but the Straw Hats are still kind of the center of it. Um, it's a whirlwind that they're kind of just, you know, they're fine. Um, it's fun. Zoro and all the bounty hunters that the one panel with the gibbous moon above Zoro when he's like uh, kicking all their ass, that is like one of the top panels in the series for me. And that reason alone throws it a lot higher. And as we mentioned, the boon and that crocus gag, particularly in the anime with the, the dome sound effect is one of the funniest things in the anime period. Um, not Where'd that you that. I had a uh, nineteen. I'm. Uh, I think that's about right. Um, yeah. It is. It's also somewhat inconsequential. The unluckies. I just want to mention them. I love mm-hmm. the unluckies. They are right. also scary but cute at the same time. Yeah. It's an interest. Like they were. Like I got that dread when I first saw them. I'm like, what is this about? <laughs> but also, look, it's an otter and a crow or a vul- vulture. Vulture. Uh, yeah. Culture, yeah. Um, whatever. I, I, I do want to uh, say that, like, yeah, Stephen, th- Mr. Wednesday and Mr. Nine, like, you see that, like, when you meet them, this is my favorite thing that Oda does. He he introduces you to characters and, like, doesn't really give you a clue at all. Mm. Uh, like, this this is sort of, uh, like, he does this with Chess as well. And oh, yeah. And a couple yeah. other characters down the line where it's like, okay, here's a character. Um, you're not going to find out anything about them for a little bit, but look how weird they are. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I really love that about yeah. um, Mr. Nine and, and Miss Wednesday, too. Mm-hmm. They are so uh, weird when they're introduced. <laughs> I love I love them as a pair, like, a yeah. lot. Like, yeah. they're, they're really... Oh, I love their pair. designs, but they really are schmucky. Uh, they're oh, great. Yeah. No, it's... Schmucks are good. Schmucks are good. Um, yeah. I, no, uh, I love schmucks, but yeah. it's like they, they seem so formidable. And uh, do they... I don't know if they ever said. I don't think they ever. <laughs> uh, I mean, they no they way. uh they uh no they never uh, were formidable. I mean, they never were formidable. Hey, I, I've, read, I've read the manga. I can answer this. Um, <laughs> uh, they they uh, handed Igaram, Mister Nine, and Miss Monday's asses to them and put Vivi on the run. What? Oh, you're That's... talking about Five and Valentine. Yeah, you're yeah. you're no. We're talking about Miss Wednesday Mr. and Mister Nine. Well, I talk. I was talking about Five and Valentine. Well, I don't know uh, why you were talking about Five and Valentine. They're cool. Maybe because I um, wanted to. Kelly, <laughs> Kelly was our uh, outlier for this one at number three. Ooh. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to mention this because this is something I clocked uh, on my reread. Uh, it's very telling that Crocus can take down. Um, Who? Crocus. Sorry, Crocus. Oh. Okay. Crocus. Crocus. It's a load of Crocus. The leader, of the, the leader of the organization yeah, leader is of the... Sir Crocus Style. Sir Crocus Dial. Sir Crocus Dial. Uh, <laughs> Clockdell. Um, uh, you'll never defeat Clockdell of the seven wars of the sea. I forgot what the, fuck the yeah. Hong Kong sub said for that. Anyway, um, go but you can t- it's very telling that Crocus um, was on Roger's crew. He can take down a Sea King squid. Like, mm. I, mm-hmm. something I didn't clock. I'm like, oh, wow. That's, yeah, there it is. Hmm. Uh, even back then, uh, very, very, very interesting thing to notice. Um, yeah. So the outliers, Kelly had number three, Nikki had it dead last. Um, everyone else had it around where we had it. Whoa. Um, but not like dead bottom. Um, so let's move on to our next one. And there actually might be stuff people want to say about this because people have read it recently. Uh, this one is our number twenty. Two, so third to last here. It's number twenty-three on the audience poll, and the last time it got number, uh, it, it got dead last last time. Mm. Uh, it was number twenty-two, so that's interesting. It moved up two slots. Um, it is Orange Town. Um, you want an orange? Well, you're gonna get a red nose instead. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, Steve, you ranked it highest. Oh. <laughs> Hour three into this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad I didn't say red nose? <laughs> Steve, you ranked it highest at number 13. Um, Shockingly. I thought I thought Alex was going to be Orange Town uh, fanboy. Al- Alex, the did, Alex said 14. There is range here. Oh, okay. There, the, between the five of us, and Steven knows why, uh, there is range you know, a younger Steve might have ranked this really low, and he did. And this might, 
Oh, uh, yeah. This might be recency bias with uh, the last chapter of One Piece. Uh, Steve, you ranked it number 19 last time, by the way. Uh, I realize now Buggy is possibly, you know, it, it will, not possibly. Buggy is one of the best characters to come out of the series, bar none. What a fantastic antagonist. Um, rereading Orange Town, it is solid. It is... It's not too long. It's not too short. It has great themes based on, uh, you know, what someone's treasure is, what they value most. Um, Buggies, just the the motif of the buggy pirates being these circus pirates is fantastic. And it really kind of set the bar for One Piece. Like, this is the things Oda can do or he wants to do. Uh, Zoro has a great fight with Kabaji and introduces us to Nami. Great gags, uh, great supporting cast uh, with uh, Shushu and Boodle, fantastic arc centric characters who get to do a lot, and you and you sympathize with them. I, I, yeah, I originally thought like oh, I'm gonna rank this pretty low, but then the more I thought about it, I'm like, nah, this arc is pretty good. Uh, sure, it's not one of the biggest and grandest, but like I said. It gets its point across in a short amount of time. It doesn't. It, it it doesn't overstay its welcome. Buggy is a fantastic antagonist. It, like every character has a great moment. Like, and, and this is also early One Piece when the main cast consisted of three at this point. Uh, Nami was a given to join the crew. It just everyone has like a sort of arc and uh, great action, great gags. Uh, this is. I, like I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? I this deserves more praise uh, than I originally gave it credit for, and I, I was surprised that I ranked it above some heavy hitters. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna. Yeah, yeah, I did. it's over it's Zoe good. for. I was back and forth with Zoe, and like I like Zoe, but I'm like, you know what? Jack ain't no buggy. and Fishman That's Island. Sure. Doflamingo ain't no buggy. That's for sure. <laughs> Um, Alex, you ranked it only one below Steve, so I don't know if you want to add to that. Oh, yeah. I I mean, uh, re- on my re- most re- recent reread, yeah. Uh, this, like, what did I have it last time with 20-something? I think I... Uh, you had it at, yeah, 20 flat. Yeah. And, and I think that um, the reason I did is because, you know, I... Oh yeah, earlier arcs, you know, not a lot of meat, yada yada. There's m- much better things, and and I will say that I think Buggy is better in other other story arcs that he's in. Um, but he's great; he's a wonderful villain. Um, because I'm so used to watching the anime, I didn't clock that uh, in the manga when Buggy, uh, his henchman, says something about his nose, and he lifts him up using his power. Uh, he blasts him with the cannon uh, in the manga, and he just lets him go in the anime. I didn't. Like that's pretty uh pretty ruthless thing for for like our first major arc uh villain. Uh the treasure stuff, of course. Uh the town is Boodle's treasure and the pet store is Shushu's treasure. Shushu is like the real yes. like, Shushu is I, the real yeah, I had so much fun doing this on the charity stream with Sung Won a few months back. So yeah. You, you were there for that as well. Yes. That was yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that um like the Shushu stuff is 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 really sweet. Um, and I think the action skips a few steps. This is sort of Oda getting his sea legs when it comes to doing action. Um, but, uh, there's some really great panels, uh, especially when he punches Moji. Um, and you see that, like, I don't know, this, this, like, half star of blood that sort of leads down to his, his, uh, his face on the ground. Um, but yeah, the shoot stuff is weird, but Boodle is the one that got to me this time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I was talking to Greg about this arc after I, I reread it. I was like, it's really kind of amazing how Oda um, how Oda does this. He sort of um, the way he sets you up for these characters. It's like, oh hey, how come this dog isn't moving? This mayor's gonna die for the town. Like, what's the deal with that? And then it's sort of um, giving these characters like a lot of development without giving them like a fifteen chapter flashback. Uh, it's sort of like taking, um, you know taking the uh the ethos of what their flashback is and just sort of pinpointing it to one singular thing uh very cool um 
I, lo- I love uh, that this arc contains a lot of what the ethos of Luffy's crew is. Um, like, th- and it's shown through Nami's constant disbelief. Like, Luffy, like she's surprised um, that Luffy's sacrificing uh, himself um, for, you know, for Zoro and for Shushu and um, for the town. And she's like, pirates don't do that. It's very, it's, it's kind of interesting that Nami is sort of the, um, the chorus here, the peanut gallery. Uh, yeah, Orange Town's great. Um, in my in my East Blue ranking, I have it at number three. Um, if that means anything to you, but it does to me. Uh, Orange Town rocks. It's great. Um, Ed, do you have anything to add? You had it at um eighteen. Uh, yeah. Uh, I this is one of the things I did get to reread. Um, uh, previously, and also doing it on the charity stream, like I mentioned. Yeah, the the Shushu story it really gets to me. It was Shushu and Boodle. It's um, I think it's the first hint of Oda's sort of emotional depth in telling stories, even from a young age. He wrote this when he was twenty two, uh, twenty three, and um, yeah, it's a uh, it's the emo- the emotion of that is uh, very impressive. Buggy is such a uh such a such a crazy villain looking back on it because he evolves into this big thing, but he's really I don't know. My my favorite villain, I think of, I guess up until, up until Arlong of the of the whole East Blue and uh, the way he uh, utilizes powers. It's a great introduction from Oda to the concept of the Devil Fruit and uh, how how it works and uh, what the limitations are. Um, you know, Buggy his feet have to walk all, along the ground and no matter where, and he can still get kicked in the balls. So there's there's only <laughs> we all that. could get kicked in the ball. Well. Not we all, but, but yeah, uh, the, but, but the the dog and and the mayor and the you know the emotional story at the core of that arc is uh, is is why it ends up being uh, you know of the shorter arcs is one of my favorites. Uh, Stephen put it dead last. Um, oh, Steven. I did. All right, yeah. Uh, I guess I will be the the ally. so I do. I obviously I love Buggy. I love all of his side characters moji kabaji richie uh they're all great um and i think th- it was a very appropriate villain for this part of the story um you know like buggy is the first kind of real menacing pirate that we see but he is also a clown and an idiot um and that feels appropriate for this stage of the the story and you know obviously it is wonderful that he is still an incredibly pertinent character in the story although that doesn't necessarily yeah. have anything to do with uh orange town itself um but i guess i will be the outlier to say that like i i think that the the shushu uh and mayor boodle stuff for me it's like like if you ranked it that would be of all the story like the um emotional stories that Oda has told i think that's the closest to a filler uh like anime filler level thing i mean I it just, is just I, hachi the it's just that story hachiko yeah hachiko yeah yeah um i don't know i think it's just it it was kind of by the numbers in certain ways it, it is it's a very familiar like it feels very much like a it it feels like a story arc drawn by a new young author in jump in the second volume of their first manga like that's kind of how it feels to me and you know like that there's a certain kind of preciousness to it in that aspect but uh i i don't i don't know it doesn't the 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 shushu story doesn't really move the needle for me um you know it's a it's a fine story but i think maybe maybe it's just because there's so little of the actual manga at this point that there's not much to compare it to, but it, it just doesn't really uh, work. I think as a central, you know, the beating heart of the, uh, of the story arc for me. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have much to add. Um, I agree with Steven. I mean, I agree with the good things said about it. It moves very slowly to me. I have not, ne- I've not had an experience reading orange town where it didn't feel like it dragged a little, and that includes the charity stream, which was a lot of fun. But like, I'm like, oh, I don't care about Kabaji at all. Um, and it it is the Hachi story. Futurama did it very well too. I mean, like, this is this is a very well trodden trope. And I think, as Steven said, 
you know, it's it kind of reflects where Oda was at the time, too. It's not bad. Uh, I think Buggy as a character is fantastic. I hate clowns, and I'm saying that. And that might be part of the reason I hate the arc. Uh, I don't. I don't hate the arc. It's like it's it's in my bottom three, but because other arcs are better, they're kind of the same thing as Romance Dawn. You know, it's not because it's bad. Um, it's just not. It's not great. What was um, your What was your number? Oh, I'm sorry. My number. I was two above you, so it was th- my okay, third 22. to last. It was twenty two. Um. What are our outliers? The outliers. Almost everyone agreed that it was like twenty one, twenty two. Like that's where most people had it. Um, the highest here, I think, was Abby. Abby Denton had it at nine, number nine. Um, and Brodsky had it at number 10. I'm not surprised. I believe they were a huge Buggy fan. Mm. Um, Abby as well, I think. And the Abby, I'm not surprised either. That makes sense to me. We have two left here. Uh, the next one, the second to last, number 23 um, in the current, the interim rankings from the audience, um, it ranked at number 19, and last time around, it ranked at number 18, so it's taken a bit of a dive, and that's Amazon Lily, um, hmm. which, yeah, I... I I will say quickly, because I don't know how much more I'm going to have to say. I ranked at the highest um, at 17. I just think other arcs are better. That's kind of how I feel about it. I think mm-hmm. it's perfectly fine, but it is very much in the middle of a story. Um, I think the stuff in the Coliseum are fine. I think Hancock and her sisters are fine. I think. How funny st- do you think dick jokes are? <laughs> mildly really funny yeah exactly yeah i like all of this yeah i think it is a i think it's perfectly fine steven you ranked it one behind me at 17 i'm sorry okay. 18 18 18 okay yeah it's um it, i i don't really think there's anything necessarily wrong with it it's just it is very disposable i feel like you know it's yeah. like okay here's where luffy landed and let's tell a little story about where he landed and yes we get to know Boa Hancock, but also, you know, she's not a, she's not an antagonist, uh, warlord of the sea. So like she, you know, her, her role in the story is different than like an obstacle to overcome. And so, you know, it very much feels like this, you know, he could have done anything, you know, for this part of the the story. And this was kind of just like, let me tell this, you know, let me create this weird little island and tell a story on it. And then we'll go on to the next thing, which is something completely different. Um, Alex, you had it at number 20. I'm going down the list now. Right. I think I had this dead last last time, and it's sort of um, because of what you said. Like, there's other stuff that's better out there. Um, you did. But I, yeah, but I decided to give it a fair shake this time because um, I wanted to reread as much as I can, and uh, I decided, like, oh, well, after, re- after finishing Alabasta and Jaya, I was like, okay, well, let's try and see how many short arcs I can finish in that time. Uh, I only got through Amazon Lily and and Shibandi, but either way, um, uh, Amazon Lily I think is uh, I think it's interesting fluff. Uh, it's at a disadvantage because it comes right after Luffy loses the entire crew, one mm-hmm. of the most dramatic moments in the entire series, and um, what follows is uh, the breakneck arc of Impel Down. Uh, so it's really hard for me to, um, like where it falls in the series, say that, you know, how great it is, I guess. I I guess it depends on how much you like Hancock. However, I do think that Boa Hancock is a different character in this arc than she is following this arc. Mm. Like Luffy changes her into a Mm. better character. Um, I actually wasn't fully on board with Boa Hancock, honestly, until One Piece Stampede. Uh, yeah, she was great in that. which is honestly, I think, her finest moment. She's so cool in, in that movie. Yeah. Um, uh, and she's really cool in Marineford, too, but I think that, like, her um, running up... Uh, That's what I was thinking her, of, too, yeah. Because uh, Luffy got, like, hit or whatever. Very, very fun. Uh, very fun, like, Chi-Chi-esque dynamic. I, I guess this um, this is the art that reminds me of Dragon Ball because of the dick jokes. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> and because you have this uh, Chi-Chi-esque character. Um, I really like the designs for Sandersonia and um, and Marigold. Yeah, I, um, I do think this whole arc is has a lot of really great variety of character design for, for being does. all women. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think people give that... Um, they're like, oh, well, this is an example of that Oda can actually draw mm-hmm. varying shapes of women. He just doesn't want to. And I'm like, yeah, like, mm. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the long and short of that. Um, I, I do think it's kind of interesting. This is like his take on it. Um, and uh, it's the little things in this time around that I noticed like, oh, yeah, there, there's like a market. And, um, you know, they're, they, uh, Boa brings back like all the loot and stuff. Um, it's it's basically provisions and and um, and like crops and stuff for for the rest of the island. I think it's really cool that that's what she, she uses her warlord and pirate status to do that. Um, the the column belt, uh, the island being on the column belt stuff is really cool. Um, a really cool way to flesh out uh, the One Piece world. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's a looking at it from a lens of like uh, an arc in a vacuum. I, I tend to like it a lot. Um, it's it's fun. Um, Ed, you had it one lower than Alex at number 21. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, like you said, it comes right after Shibandi, and the character of Boa Hancock is kind of, kind of one note, and hasn't, I don't know, it's never really done anything, the character's never really done anything for me. Um, the, uh, you know, the part with Luffy being chased around, it's a good slapstick sequence, and uh, the body humor of like him walking in on uh, Hancock and looking for <laughs> he's looking for food, uh, and and you know I don't mind dick jokes. I laugh at jackass. But it's <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's all set up. It's all it's all leading to something else. And yeah, Hancock isn't really hostile. She ends up falling in love with Luffy. So the conflict is sort of. Uh, resolved in a non-traditional way. Um, you know, Elder Nyon is is interesting. I think she, you know, she's like the um, the Estelle Getty of the One Piece world. She's like Gloria from Golden Girls a little bit. Uh, you know, interesting. I I I'd like to see the Boichi story about her. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, otherwise it's um, yeah. It's never I, I had it at twenty one. It's never been my favorite, but it, there are definitely some exciting moments in it, and I do like. The way that Luffy fights with, uh, like, takes out that big panther, and the way he protects uh, Sandersonia and Marigold, or, or Marigold, I forget which one, it protects their, uh, their their tattoo from being shown, mm-hmm. and the, yeah, uh, yeah, Hancock's backstory, which I do, which I do appreciate, and ties into the later Fisher Tiger story. So, um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a little piece of it's a little entertainment. It's, it's it comes right between. Uh, Sabadi and, and Impel Down and it's really overshadowed by those two arcs. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you put it dead last. Um, why? Yeah, surprising. Um, I just feel like it, it, it's done the least to me. Um, I think it... I, I mean, it's disappointing. The Hancock, character, the Hancock character hasn't really changed at all. No, I. It's nothing about. Ooh, this arc disappointed me and all that. Uh, a, a reminder: No, I did not have time to reread this series, uh, so I really had to go off of my memory. I remember the least about this arc. I know the beats, but I don't remember it as vividly as other arcs, and I think that was a huge factor. I don't necessarily think it was a bad arc, um, but this is the first time that we are like straw hat crewless that's true that's a big part of it a yeah. long yeah. long time uh i think the boa sisters are fantastic i i think hancock is great the oh you know the uh the hints at uh you know the slave trade uh that the world government uh allowed uh in in their home you know in their home turf of marie joie as well uh, the uh, the uh, the subtle hints at Fisher Tiger is great, um, and I I think it's a I was gonna say it's a beautiful looking story. I can't imagine why. Um, I think the artwork is fantastic. I, it was nice to see Oda kind of try something different 
with female characters. It's a shame that doesn't stick as much. And I think that's, I think it's just a societal issue, which is the pressure to make attractive female characters. Marketing. But yeah. Merchandising. Merchandising. Um, that's what that's what I was trying to do. Gotta have those bathing beauty POPs, right? Uh, uh, but I, I think it's really cool. I like the jungle setting. Uh you know, Margaret, I you know, I, I like that character just cause. Um she joining and, the crew? Yeah. <laughs> People thought that. <laughs> Cause back then, like Yeah, you know, was, yeah. N- you know, it's a, you know, not a lot of characters always not a, you know, not a lot of characters got that full body reveal with Oda yeah. Box. You know, yeah. it like uh, the, the, I don't think the the supernovas even got that. Uh, so it kind of like for a supporting character to get that, I think it kind of was putting it in people's heads and like I don't know. She seems like she's like eager to see the rest of the world. People I on or Steve? <laughs> no, no. I remember she someone did. on DeviantArt like drew her. No, you didn't know me. Uh, I guess you did start to know me. <laughs> what are you um, talking about? No, I remember like someone on DeviantArt like drew Margaret with the straw hats. I'm like, whoa, whoa, chill, chill. We haven't left the island yet, uh, and of course that did not happen. No, I, 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 I. It's really cool, but just I think it's just it 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 doesn't have like the best. I don't know. It's it, the contents of it just don't stack up. I think. And it's weird because I still think Amazon Lily is a good read, yeah. but if that's the at the bottom of my list, you know, what does that say about everything else? And like, like, and I, you know, I slam stuff like Dress Rosa and Fishman Island all the time, but I think those just have a lot more content in there to enjoy. While Amazon Lily is a much shorter arc, and it really doesn't have a whole lot of time to really mm. dive into that because it's setting up the big story of rescuing Ace from Impel Down. So I think that's why I, I don't even necessarily I wouldn't even say, oh, that's why it suffers. No, it's just why it just doesn't stack up. Um, our editor, Dan, is the only other person who put it at the bottom. Vero put it highest at number nine. Um, uh, I, I, I think the setting does deserve to be talked about a little. I really enjoyed it. It's different. And mm. the assistants did a really good job. I know in that mm. first initial spread of just seeing, yeah, that one's crazy. it's a really cool looking setting. Um, the anime did do a really good job with that too, I think. And also hockey is like kind of the first hockey. The, yeah, that's true. If you like hockey, yeah, you probably for like Amazon worse. Lily. Yeah. <laughs> for better, yeah, you, you probably like Amazon Lily. Mamonga. Oh, everyone's favorite Mamonga. <laughs> Look at those Mamongas. Uh, <laughs> what Luffy should have said when I was in the band. Uh, on that um, note, I'm I'm mangoes, gonna call it Alex, I'm gonna mangoes. call it, <laughs> I'm gonna call it here. Um we have one more to go on this. So it's time, guys. It's time for the worst ever One Piece arc. It's objective. You can't argue the with least it. Least liked. No, arc. no, Steve. Worst. It's bad. Everyone agrees. Uh, Not just very, everyone. Uh, very. Uh, I don't know. Very clickbaity, Zach. <laughs> the One Piece podcast says this is the worst arc. Is it your favorite? Um, Include an arrow, Zach. You got to have an arrow. The pointing. How else will people know that's what you're talking about? <laughs> so I'll say, uh, last time around, this arc, believe it or not, I don't think it got last. Let's see. So last time around, it got third to last. It was 20th. Uh, this time, though, the audience, as of our recording currently, uh, put it at number 24 of 24, dead last. And we put it at number 24 of 24. And can anyone guess Ooh. what it could possibly be? Water can seven. you put it on pancakes? <laughs> you you could put it on pancakes, but it would feed the whole village. You why would you put water on pancakes? <laughs> Does it have onions, carrots, and peppers? No, that's Zoe. Does it? 
<laughs> oh, my God. Does it have uh, uh, Nijin and... Uh, Pimon. Pimon? It's Sarah Village, guys. We're going to just end this discussion right here. <laughs> way too late. I let it go on yeah. for way too long, I'm going to be honest. Like like the rest of this podcast. Well, Zach, yep. you got to build up that Antissa... Syrup. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be honest. So I'm looking right now amongst the five of us. Every single person either put it as number 23 or number 24. So we are in agreement here. Um, it is it is a bottom tier. Uh, where did bottom. where did you put it, Zach? I put it at 24. Um, Ed, you put it at 23. Alex put it at 24. Steve put it at 23. And Steven put it at 23. So we're all... I mean, is there? Does anyone have strong opinions about the Syrup Village arc and why it should be at the bottom? It's better uh, in the manga than it is in the anime. That's no. I I think that the anime is better than the manga. <laughs> really? Because when I first started watching One Piece, w- watching the uh, Syrup Village arc is where I paused for a couple of weeks. Yeah, me too. Because I just I got I uh I uh, I got I lost interest. There was a lot of running in the forest and. The fights, I don't know. They didn't seem that cool in the anime at the time. Well, uh, it, there's, there's the still Meow Band the Brothers, <laughs> Ed. Yeah, the Meow Band Brothers. Okay, all right, all right. Maybe it is better in the manga than it is the anime, but we I feel like... We were through the pole. Alex, the you're just anime, thinking of Django. Playing with our show. I mean, I am. <laughs> uh, but I'm also, but also, like, having reread it recently, the anime really goes a lot bigger with, like, things like Usopp's intro. Hmm. Um and I don't know, it's just, it's framed really nice with the BGM and stuff. I think that... Uh, is, is bigger better? I feel like it's no, just more. It's just sometimes. like more sometimes of Usopp's intro. And... Yeah, we really, what we're looking for is bigger but smaller. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Well, I don't know if we're uh, going person by person, yeah. but... Uh, Ed, Alan, you, oh, Ed, Ed, uh, yeah, go, Ed, yeah, there's uh, no specific order because we all kind sure. of agreed here. Yeah, Ed. Uh, I had, yeah, I had it second to last. Um... Yeah, it's uh, Captain Kuro. Uh, in in one way, it's kind of cool to show a middle aged man who's tired of his job and how old is plan. he? <laughs> he's probably like twenty. He's twenty four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's decided to retire and steal this girl's money, and uh, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, wow! <laughs> wow! I did not need to see his age. That hurts. I felt it. it. Before the time skip or after the time skip? <laughs> <laughs> if he's still sure. alive. 33 yeah. before the time skip. He is 33. He is retiring oh. from piracy at the age of 33. Yeah. The dream well, we Zach, all share. Zach, yeah. Zach, I'm going to be dead honest with you. I'm 33 and I'm just done with life. <laughs> So, no, uh, <laughs> that's the thing. Kuro is who we all want to be. We want to be a 33-year-old well, no, no, no. We stealing don't all money. Have, uh, take those words out of <laughs> You don't all want to mouth. have poop on our shirt. Oda <laughs> said it was poop. Yeah. It's a design yeah, aesthetic, Ed. And zebras on his, on his shoes. Kuro probably owns a bored ape. That's, that's my guess. You know what? <laughs> oh. He's so lame it's... that he can't even like aim his main attack. <laughs> yeah. What about that yeah, glasses true. move, though? That's you, you, the... Wait, the, a- the apes Maybe if he got bored. LASIK, he'd be able to see that. <laughs> the, a- the, the apes are bored. We're bored with this story. Um, so, mm-hmm. uh, I I wanna I wanna just state here that um, I had this. I I, I want to say I probably had I had this pretty high last time. Uh. I'll check for I know you. that I've I've definitely uh I've been a staunch defender of this arc for a couple years. Same but this here. time just okay. burnt me out. Is high for you number nineteen out of twenty two? Uh oh, I don't know. I definitely didn't <laughs> have it dead last last time. Where was Isaac? I know I didn't have Um the re- the other all three of us except for Steven had it at twenty one of twenty two. Steven had it dead last last I time. did have it dead last It went last up you know- one for Steven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I've never been like a a hater of this arc. I know it's between two better East Blue arcs. Yes. But I never had too much of a problem with this arc. And I got to admit that over the years I've had more and more people complain to me about this arc and I never kind of quite understood it. 
but I've heard other people's arguments, and some people think uh, Kuro's plan is stupid, and I don't necessarily like. I think people misinterpret. <laughs> am I wrong here? I think it's people convoluted. misinterpret Kuro. It, it is convoluted, but people misinterpret to, uh, interpret Kuro's plan. Be we're gonna kill everyone in the village except for me, and then I'm gonna be rich. And I'm it's like, it's not. No. no, yeah, it's always yeah. rough up the village. Maybe kill like one or two people, make it believable, but. This uh, like this village needs to continue to exist, and I need to continue to exist in it. Mm-hmm. it. It was never like let's kill everyone. I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I think people just misconstrue that, but it is convoluted, and it, it's it's kind of a Rube Goldberg machine in that it's like it's been a Mission this, Impossible, huh? Yeah, like why why are you going? Why are you doing this to get your retirement savings? This seems well, like the a, whole the whole. The whole moral of it's just revealed that Kuro is just like, you know, he doesn't want to put in the work anymore. Uh, I mean, he put in work for this plan, but he doesn't want to. He's like, no, nah, I don't want to be a pirate. I just want to be rich. And then. Yeah, he thinks it's like, annoying. Uh, yeah. Th- and Luffy's th- this... the 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 uh, the foil to that. Because Luffy's right. like, yeah, you know, it's like, if you don't want this, don't be a freaking pirate. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I, I want to just point out here during my reread, I wrote down one of the lines that he says, like in the flashback where they're, like, being attacked by the Navy and you hear, like, a cannon fire and stuff outside. And he goes, you see, this is my life. And I just heard Zach, <laughs> like, I don't know, like, if Zach was a pirate, that with the, Zach, that's that's you. That's what I do with the pirate. So this is, again, I don't endorse NFTs at all, but, yeah, I do relate to Kuro in a lot of regards uh, as cannonballs are fired outside of my head. This, you see this? This life of piracy I've decided to lead. Oi, a bit again with the Navy. <laughs> why? Why? The why, I always, balls. why do I sound like the grandparents from the Rugrats every time? Because that's who I, who I hope you turn into someday. <laughs> oh! <laughs> not Your only best do you... friend is Five-ish Finkel. <laughs> you don't have to hope well, it, he's... Steve. It will 100% happen. I will 100%. your best friend, but your rival who then becomes your best friend after you bond over Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Um, uh, but with the... I The reason why I didn't rank this dead last and I ranked Amazon Lily lower is because I think uh, Amazon Lily didn't quite have like a uh, great story arc overall. It's It's Fallout from a previous arc and setting up the next one at least Syrup Village has, you know, beginning, middle, and end has, you know, it, it, it has its own self-contained story. So I think it's, you know, maybe not executed as well, but at least I think that was one of its strengths. I... <laughs> See, I didn't care for Usopp as much uh, the first go around. No, t- I, it took, I, it took yeah. a long time for me to w- w- warm up to him as a character. Fortunately, uh, in all of... All of Alabasta had already been in Skypea, and so Water Seven is just as I was catching up. So, like there, that was a very brief period where it took me. I was marathoning through the series at at the, at the beginning, but yeah, he was the, of the strong hands. It took me the longest, I think, to really appreciate him. And this was the arc where he was introduced, obviously. So, Ed, I'd I'd go even further and say I I think you like came up with a very good barometer during our recording here for what mm-hmm. makes a good arc. And it's do the character are the characters that are the stars of this arc better in the arc or afterwards and around or before? Um, and, you know, Django, I think, is better outside of this arc. Um, Usopp, 100 percent. Django hasn't had much to do outside and of that's, this arc. That is how I think Django is annoyed. Uh, sorry. Uh, Got his own Alex. animated short. Yeah, Alex, I mean... close your ears here. But uh, Django annoyed the hell out of me in that arc. Um, wow, I'm getting the middle <laughs> finger right now. It doesn't translate via <laughs> audio. So I am making it clear he is waving at me now with his middle finger, like in a cute way, almost. But no, now, it, now there's two middle fingers. Anyway, as he continues to do that, um, yeah, I, I think everyone in the arc or introduced in that arc is better outside of it. And a lot of those characters never show up again. So that says something. Um, I it, yeah. I think one of the problems too is it plays off of the trope, uh, the boy who cried wolf. Everyone knows this story. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. it does kind of, you know, like it, it flips it on its head a little bit. But everyone's like, yeah, I know all the beats of this, and I, and I gotta say, like Usopp, I love Usopp, but his introduction, he is 
he, he he's not cool he's weak no. uh yeah. his design is very unconventional uh he was a tough sell first go around and uh, for me i warmed up to him you know a little bit later not too far from this arc but so i could understand why this was just like not doing it for a lot of people and also the pacing's slow <laughs> especially the it, anime. Yeah. it takes a long time to set up for like the morning of of the pirate raid and then you know luffy and zoro get lost along the way and then luffy gets knocked out and there's a lot of stalling and then kuro shows up and they're still like i'll give you five minutes and uh and, and yeah it just it could have gone a little bit quicker and i think readers don't necessarily want to watch um or read about the uh, the Usopp pirates, these little kids fighting in the woods. Um, it's yeah, it just I don't know, it. I I just hear so many things, but I think just the the complaints are just either Usopp, Kuro and his plan, or the pacing. Uh, one of my favorite lines from this, I think, is from the English dub of the anime. Uh, Luffy just saying, "You guys are so uncool." <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the most uncool pirates or something like that. And Carl's like, We're uncool, huh? Huh? Well get well, can your can can your pirate grandfather do this? <laughs> and he goes Steep it out of the bag attack. I, out of I, the bag. My yes. god. Steve, I think you're right though, and it's kind of one of the reasons why I also ranked Orange Town a little low, is that this arc and Orange Town both kind of take this very known um ubiquitous story um for, i mean i guess it's a true story in the case of orange town and not as ubiquitous outside of japan but i mean the boy who cried wolf is like one of the most well-known kind of like this is this is how the story goes it's one two three and then he dies um and yeah, simpsons so, did it so, yeah, simpsons did it so therefore it is uh obsolete um but I, but it definitely takes away something when it's the, the great thing about One Piece is it often either turns things on its head or makes it into something far crazier, like um, pumps helium into it, you know, like really uh, enlarges, it makes it larger than life. Um, and we don't really get that. Usopp's uh, story feels like it could totally just happen. Like it, it isn't even like surrealistic. It, it's just it, it's just like, okay. Like, when the live action does this, it will be the easiest thing for them to adapt. Um, hmm. I don't look forward to it. Yeah, just put just put cat ears on people. I yeah. Guess. yeah, yeah. And it'll be the, the, the... Get them the electronic cat headphones. It'll be yeah. easier than the know, musical you go, cat. You go from, Cats. You go from such so, a great aesthetic with the buggy pirates to the yeah. black cat pirates, yeah. and it's just... And Baradier, it's like sandwiched also between, like, pretty good well, Don, aesthetic Don Cree, looking. Well, well, Don Creek gets a lot of uh, Don Don Krieg is con- overcompensating. Yeah, we'll get into that soon, depending on what, how you're listening to these. Um, any any other thoughts on uh, D- Stephen? Did you did you say your yeah. piece on Survey? No, I didn't say. Uh, yeah, I I had put this last uh, the previous time we did this, and I think this time I was like, yeah, I'm not really feeling the the Shushu story, so I'll put Orange Town up bottom uh, this time. But I, I will say, I think that, like, all of my fondness for Syrup Village as an arc is, like, you know, it's, like, 100% nostalgia at this point and, like, sort of <laughs> gentle understanding. And when you go back to it now and it's, like, here's Usopp and he's this, you know, teenager who hangs out with a bunch of, like, eight-year-old, fucking, fucking eight-year-old dude. Uh, you know, he's just, like, the, the, the boss of the little kids and running around and like going on and, you know, made up adventures with them. And like, yeah, it is super uncool in that uh, sense. And, uh, you know, that's that's where Usopp starts. And obviously we, we all love Usopp, but uh, it doesn't necessarily make for the most uh, thrilling um, stuff. But there is a little bit more of a story arc here than, um, you know, in, in some of the other real early uh, materials. So, uh, you know, I, w- I will give it that at least. Um, I do I do like the side of the the cast of characters about as much as I like the you know the buggy uh the buggy pirates and in uh those folks too. So uh it's not bad in that respect, but um yeah, you know, there's not not a lot going on there. Yeah. 
Alex. Although I do, uh, although I do like, I, I do like. Uh, sorry, uh, you know, talking about the the boy who cried wolf. Um, you know, part of the joke, I or not the joke, but like the the layering of the re- reference is the fact that Usopp is like Aesop, uh, and, yeah, and yeah. lie, and you know, that's like I think that comes across cleverly in the way that it's constructed. But you know, like you said, it's not really a wrinkle on the the story so much, which is what he does better. Alex. So. Um... I had this at the the lowest of the East Blue, my East Blue rankings, and part of it is you had it at the lowest I, of all your rankings. I did, um, but <laughs> that's how I, I kind of decided that. And uh, you know, once Kuro shows up, the pacing really like once Kuro shows up shows up. That's when the pacing really slows to a crawl, and it's the first time in the series like that I felt I felt that like during this reread, I was like, oh wow, this is a really really slow really slow arc and i think it's because there's not really um there's not a really big uh emotional through line or interesting villains i guess kuro is we don't i think oda played his hand too quick with someone with a devil fruit uh with buggy because then you go to kuro and he's Mm. fast i guess (laughs) um uh, but you know, I have to give it up for Jongo. Shout out to Jongo, my favorite side character, the original like weird character, like the first character that shows up, uh, and he looks weird, and we know nothing about him, and it's just sort of um, uh, accepted. Uh, he's yeah. not weird. He's not. He's not a weird guy. He's Kazuki Yao. Uh, a lot of people are like, "Oh, yeah, it's Michael Jackson." I'm like, yeah, but. Uh, uh, there's a lot of evidence to show that Oda modeled him after Kazuki Yao. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, there's the people else be like, oh, he's modeled after Steven Tyler. And I'm like, yeah, lots of things are photoshopped on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the internet. Um, I, I, a thing that I do like about this arc, uh, the, the thing I like about the most is that there's uh, little character interactions between Luffy, Nami, and Zoro. Um, mm-hmm. And I kind of miss that. Like, they're just yeah. chilling out in the restaurant talking. I, like, I miss that kind of thing. I, I do like Zoro in the uh, in the diner being all Brock Samson saying we ate him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I kind of like too. It, this is uh you know not maybe necessarily like the biggest like draw for the the arc, but one thing that I I think about is like Usopp and Kaya are about as close to a like canon couple as there is for the Straw Hats, and yet like their their relationship is so absolutely chaste in every respect that like you know if oda wanted to he could literally just say at the end of the series like oh yeah she was just my best friend like uh, you know a, 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 my girlfriend like what are you talking about like you know he could he could play it off that way if he wanted to because they're they're so innocent uh the way that they are are set up and it does kind of fit into you know the the non-romantic aspect of one piece um it, it, it kind of strikes me when i go back and look at it yeah and I think, you know, I, I was making fun of Steve before, but it, it, it is true this is the the least favorite, not the worst. Um I like it's not I don't think any of these arcs are bad. I think at most they're flawed. Um I, or boring. Like I don't hate the yeah, I don't hate this arc. I but I have to acknowledge its problems because yeah. I've, you know, uncovered over the years, this is a huge hurdle for lots of people. And I was almost gonna rank this above Logtown. But then I like Smoker, Buggy, and Alveda, and Sanji more. So uh, them being present in Logtown, despite it being a very brief arc. Uh, 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 emphasis on brief. Uh, better. Well, let's, let's talk about outliers. I, I should at least give shout outs to who put it at the very bottom along with us. Uh, that includes uh, Mike, V... Rogers base, Sungwon. Um I feel like Sungwon said opinions about that arc before. Um he's like one of the first people that come to mind <laughs> when I think about this arc. Uh it's him screaming. <laughs> what is he screaming? Uh, just out of frustration. Right. Ah. Oh, that's a good Sungwon screaming out of frustration impression. Um Vero and Kelly. Um who ranked at the highest? I bet you you could all guess. Um, anyway, no. or you won't be surprised, at least. Abby Denton. I, I was gonna, just going to say Abby Denton. <laughs> eight, yeah. number eight. Um, wow. I feel like, I don't know how, 
I never know what to take seriously with Abby. That's the problem. Um, I like the my initial instinct is to believe everything she maybe says. Maybe they just like that Kuro is a Neko Chan. You know what? Yeah, that does maybe. sound like Abby, and she would say it exactly like that sentence that you just said. Well, that is our. Well, I, we we'd ask them for their opinion, but I guess Cat got their tongue. Too bad. Yeah. Do I have my? That is not the rib shot sound effect. <laughs> no, that's also a pause. <laughs> there it is. Do you want to take? Do you want to take a pause to find out which button that is? <laughs> if only I had the time <laughs> to do that. Okay, that's our cold fish category. Those are the bottom of the barrel, the fish in the barrel. Okay, those are the bottom four. Use one of those takes, whichever one or all th- all of them. I don't care. Anyway. That's going to do it for that. Let's move on to the next part of the Arcs of Consequence. Okay. Um, or that concludes this. Uh, yeah, I thought we were going to Or, or the wait, wait, that's, that concludes this episode of the Arcs of Consequence. And, Dan, you can put in whichever, um, and we'll figure that out. <laughs> uh, I don't, we're probably going to split it in three, so I'm not sure which... We're, but at mm. least I think everything is going to be gotcha. kind of. Um, we got you, you get you get two takes. Yeah, and lots of takes. Just, uh, record things ahead of time. Gerald yeah. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> I I was watching Gerald. The senseless heard. I was watching the Thirty Rock episode where they were trying to predict a disaster and they recorded for each you know situation <laughs> mm-hmm. for like a generalized disaster and it was ended up being Mel Gibson's Secret Island where he hated Jews. Um, okay what he does let's do yes. um yes let's do the next segment yes. Yes. welcome back to ed what do we call this arcs of consequence we're back and uh we are now going up we are only going up from here only getting better from here some other synonym for the same thing steve i see you these are all good jokes we're using all of these no, anyway it's actually just scratching my forehead i don't know you know okay uh we're up to hubba hubba Uh, we're going upstream you could say we're going up a knock upstream maybe yeah um so we're in the hubba hubba category um which means we're gonna have some um feelings about these um and we're going from 12 to number nine um so we're gonna start from number 12 um so this is the one right above zoe and that, um, well, that actually, before I even say, let's see where it ranked last time. It ranked number um, 12. So same. Um, right. It's always good when that Very happens. Um, good old trusty 12. <laughs> the audience ranked it 13. So this is this is good and consistent. And the, oh, that's unlucky. And the arc is Baradier. Um mm-hmm. So I assume I know who did this the highest. So let's see if I am correct. Um, I'm wrong. Alex ranked it the highest uh, at number seven. Um, Alex, why is Baradier your seventh favorite arc in the series? Oh, man. Uh, it's really good. <laughs> um, you know, the more I read Baratier, the stronger of an affect, uh, an affection I have for it. Um it's uh it's the first real emotional um emotional uh flashback really um mm-hmm. that we've gotten in in the series at that point like the Zeph and Sanji stuff. Um the fights are really good. Uh I remember when I first like watched this I didn't really care for Don Krieg at all but he's such a really great example of this like of this uh this this he's a complete blowhard. He just got his shit pushed in in the Grand Line, and then he came back uh, to just, I don't know, he's hungry and he's downtrodden. And then as soon as, he thinks he's going to take a restaurant ship to the Grand Line, and, like, (laughs) it's so stupid, but, like, it's such, like, it's such a great character. Like, he's such a stupid asshole. Didn't he, like, Um, say how long he was in the Grand Line for, and it was not very long at all? Uh, yeah, like, he he's the guy who flunked out of college and he came back in two months right. and then he's like telling everybody <laughs> back home like, oh man, college yeah. or something. Everyone, <laughs> everyone in the Grand Line is so fake. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he was. I think they were there for four days. Yeah. <laughs> Not even make a week. That's great. Yeah. What a stupid dumbass. Um, <laughs> no, he's. <laughs> He's. Uh, I I really enjoy Don Krieg now, though. Um, I like. Uh, well, you could be both. Cool... Both things could be true. Yeah, sure. I like In's uh, weird relationship with Sanji. Um, Zoro versus Mihawk is really awesome. Uh, you get Zor- You get like a tearful. You get a tearful uh, thing from Zoro and a tearful thing from Sanji. The um, the very end of Barati, I think, is what really sticks with me. Is what really puts this up a couple notches. Um, it's gotten to the point where every time I watch the anime, I cry. Uh, I'm a big dumb baby, but um, it's <laughs> it's really good. Like it's it's big a dumb really babies good, um, need the most attention, Alex. Stupid babies need the most attention. Yeah, um, Zeph is a really awesome character design. He's one of my favorite character designs. I've come to realize that really cool hat, and I didn't really clock until this time that his um, his mustache looks like chains. Um, mm. that's how Oda kind of draws them. Uh, ah, God, the art is really good. This is the first arc too, where, um, where Oda's action, uh, starts getting comprehensible. Mm. Um, he doesn't like cut corners too much. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just great stuff. Nami sailing off with the Mary. That's really compelling. Uh, it sort of opens the door to, to Arlong Park in that way. And, um, we're introduced to Yosaku and Johnny, um, everybody's favorites. So I think that um, oh, to the, thru, the the treasure uh, through line, which I have to mention every time we ca- we talk about an East Blue arc, the restaurant is Zeph's treasure, mm-hmm. and uh, nobody mentions anything as their treasure in the Syrup Village arc, which maybe maybe that's subconsciously why I put it down <laughs> at the bottom there. My um, retirement account is my treasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, another thing that's cool about this arc is that, um, you know, Yasako has scurvy uh, mm. and it's still in this in this point where Oda is peppering in little sailor terms or like real dangers that pirates had back in the seven, uh, 16, 1700. So I don't know. Cool stuff. Anyway, uh, I seed my time. Uh, because Steve, I think you got to talk about it. Talk about it. Yeah. Uh, where did I rank it, Zach? You ranked it one lower, number eight. Yeah, it's definitely one of my all-time favorites. Uh, and it's what, like, hooked me as a One Piece fan. Uh, and it's really great. I talked about it a lot in an article, uh, on Crunchyroll.com a couple years ago with Dan Dockery. Uh, talking all about it. Uh, I think it was like it, it was, it established the one, the, like the basic, uh, uh, I'm forgetting all my words now, but it was like the catalyst of your standard one piece story arc as we know it, uh, with the way flashbacks are introduced and where they're, you know, peppered into the story all the beats uh like a lot of arcs will follow this structure uh afterwards and it's really great uh and it's cool because sanji's there uh, <laughs> but it's such a it's a great gimmick like syrup village is there's nothing to note about it its landmark is a mansion uh the baratier arc is it's a floating restaurant in the middle of the sea and there's a great story behind it the supporting cast are much more interesting uh, with Sanji and Zef. Don Krieg is not really anyone's liking because he's just like a big meathead guy, so no one has the hots for him. Um, he's no a one's, big no one's, dumb asshole, like we were saying. Yeah, no one's drawn sexy fan art of Don Krieg. Uh, at least not what I've seen. Uh, there probably is out there. Yeah, I'm sure but he <laughs> exists. I, I, I like his design a lot, though. He's really fun to draw, I think because he just looks like a big gorilla. Um but I really like a lot of the themes uh, and the, uh, you know, the morals, uh, the, you know, the moral codes that a lot of characters follow here, like Sanji feeding anyone, doesn't matter who they are, doesn't matter if they're going to uh, raid the ship afterwards. He's like, no one should starve to death. I'll feed you first and then I'll beat the crap out of you. Uh, it is really, it's great. Um, the, and just, I, I like the, and then it's hints at the bigger worlds with Mihawk coming in 
as such a great story point, uh, especially, you know, for Zora, of course, but just, you know, you know, and just setting up, you know, foreshadowing just how big of, uh, of a world One Piece is. And that's really great. Uh, and, you know, Luffy really, you know, like all the East Blue villains are, are just like the antithesis of Luffy. So him and Don Creed clashing, I think, is very entertaining. But it's just it, this is a very emotional arc. I think, you know, it's the first flashback that I think really and I, I wouldn't count Zoro's because you know, in the manga, it's r- brushed over really quickly. And so is Usopp's. But Sanji's is the first that really kind of takes its time to uh, cook. Uh, Pardon uh, my choice of words, but it's great. And and Sanji's send off. Every time I see it, it gets an emotional reaction out of me. It's it's really something special. And I I I think I'm just more invested with a wow. They got to protect this ship, but also uh, the crew is split up and Zoro is down and Nami took the ship. So there's a lot of things left. Uh, you know, it, it was one of the first arcs where we were like, cool. Uh, I was like, I can't wait for this end so we can find out what the hell's happening, you know, to everyone else. You know, what, what, you know, what happened to Zoro? What's going on with Nami? I, I, I don't want to take up too much time because I've, I've talked about this arc so much over and over again. But I just think, it, you know, despite it being very early in the series run, it's really, it, it just, it, it's very, the foundations of it are very strong, even if it is just a restaurant on the ocean. Uh, it it really stands the test of time. Um, Ed, you had a representative vote where you voted. Uh, it was 12, and that is where it ended up, uh, as per your design, I assume. Uh, so, yeah, tell us, tell us about your thoughts. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the primary reason I have this uh, up so high is because of the emotional content of it. It's... Um, the way that uh, especially the Zoro and Mihawk fight goes, it always it really captured me. That was really where, um, again, in the first watch through of the One Piece anime, and that really got to me uh, just to see Zoro's um, devotion and like to get that first taste of the Grand Line. Like Don Krieg had it, and he had to run away, uh, so Zoro faced it and you know had made this tearful confession to Luffy to you know become the greatest swordsman in the world, and that's. You know, Zoro is already my favorite character, I think, even then, and uh, that really just cemented it, and it's been that way ever since. So um, that, that's, a, that's a pivotal moment uh, in watching One Piece for me. And uh, as far as Sanji goes, um, like his conflict between leaving and, you know, leaving with Luffy or staying um, with the ship, with Zeph, and the way that... Uh, the way that the flashback ties into that really shows a maturing, I think, of Oda's storytelling, especially incorporating the flashbacks, like Steve was saying. Uh, people talk about how short shrift Zoro's uh, flashback gets, but Us- Usopp's, I think, is even shorter. Uh, just briefly seeing his mother dying. <laughs> um, so oh, yeah. just to have the, the, have this and tie it in and make the flashback like an effective self-contained story and tie it into... Uh, Sanji's, you know, his uh, his con- his internal conflict with uh, with going out to sea. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely the, like the second best of the East Blue arcs uh, for yeah. me. I think everyone. Oh, and, uh, and 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 yeah, and just to say that Don Krieg really shows no value in his crew. So the the, the crew is tested really in Baratier because you know Nami betrays them and leaves with the boat and. Uh, Don Krieg is this terrible example. He's basically using his crew as human shields at one point and uh, doesn't really care, like, for example, whether Gein leaves or dies. So this is it's really testing Luffy's, uh, you know, his values early in the series, whether or not he would describe them as that is the way that uh, the way that he operates. He would never do that to his crew. So it really shows the contrast between, you know, good pirates and bad pirates. And we were talking about. Uh, in an earlier tier, talking about the good Marines and and the bad Marines, we see that from the beginning. Uh, I think this is the best uh, example of you know good pirates and and uh, you know really the worst of pirates, the way they betray each other and are dominated by their captain. It's a really negative portrayal, and I think Luffy, you know, it's the core moral of the of that arc is the way he stands up to that. Um, I. I will say, out of the five of us, at least, uh, it was all our second favorite arc from uh, East Blue. So if we were just mm-hmm. doing East Blue, yeah. 
Um, Steven, you and I ranked at number 15, which is also pretty mm-hmm. close to the middle. Um, so, uh, yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could have put it up even a little bit higher too. Um, I, I think, you know, we all, we got our, our fun out of the way at the start with uh, Don Krieg that, you know, he is, I think with the exception of Don Krieg and just the, the villains in general, Gein is cool, but, you know, Pearl's a goofball. Um, I think that like every aspect of this arc, the, the setting, the characters, the, uh, the flashback, the, um, just the storytelling and like, you know, the, the presence of iconic moments and the, um, you know, the, the actual introduction of foreshadowing and like future character growth, all of those things, it is completely head and shoulders above Seer Village, which was of course our, uh, least liked arc. So, uh, you know, if, if it weren't for the fact that, like, you know, if you do a side by side comparison, you know, they look like the same guy drew them within the span of a, a year or so. Like, you would not, you know, believe that it was, you know, just they, that they were so close together in terms of Oda's growth as a, you know, creative, um, you know, storyteller in, in, in mangaka. Um, so, yeah, it, it really is a um, a remarkable feat in that sense. And on a on a personal note, I think this was the part that got me hooked um, on the series, which, you know, when I read it, there was no English version yet. Um, and I was like basically buying one volume at a time at the uh, bookstore, at the Japanese bookstore, um, whenever they had them. So, you know, I, did, I had no idea what was happening next. I had no idea what was going to come. You know, I couldn't just look it up on the Internet. Uh, so like this part, I think, you know, just the... Uh, the the rise in stakes and the uh, the the very obvious like increase in complexity and and kind of storytelling like subtlety and stuff like that um, I, it definitely got its hooks in me and I think you know that the the rise from this point on you know really solidified it as is well, you know one of my favorites and so this is kind of where it started for me yeah I mean I echo Stephen um, I think. Going by the metric that I've been going by, not when I was ranking, but now that we're discussing it, uh, this is probably one of this is probably Sanji's like best character arc. Like I think um, he really shines as he should. It is about him for the most part um, in his arc. Um, I think his flashback is gut wrenching. I should say arm wrenching, but it's also gut wrenching. Um, the the leg wrenching, wasn't it? Leg wrenching, God. Leg wrenching, yeah. Leg wrenching. <laughs> Sorry, I, I forgot how the, I forgot the aphorism. Um, but also, I, I, as Alex said, the the end. I think as I get older, makes me cry uh, more and more. Um, that is that is such a great scene. Um, that it's such- something about that that tuffle of yeah goodbye with with Zeph just being like, all right, um, yeah. Don't catch a cold. And then they just, everyone just breaks down. Like, it's kind of just like, who's going to break? Who's going to appreciate snap your parents? Is the, uh... yeah, <laughs> it is an appreciate your parents arc. And I think abandon them, but appreciate Aban- them. Yeah. Well, no, go out and do what you need to do. You know, be an adult uh, when you grow up. Don't just stay at home for the sake of your parents. I think that's right. what that arc does have some really good messages. Like, and, and yeah. like, I mean, like, that is a thing that a lot of the East Blue arcs are missing. Uh, yes, there's the treasure uh, through line that Alex mentioned, which I think is something that's missing from later arcs. But that arc really, without hitting you over the head about it, has some, like, really important morals to the story, um, which is good, um, I think, to have. Uh, Baratier also is is always going to be an important arc to me personally, having gone to Barate uh, in uh, Kumamoto and meeting the guy who said he was the basis for Sanji, but was definitely the basis for Zef. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and you could oh, yeah, tell... Luffy's, Luffy, Luffy's washing dishes. That's a great gag. Yeah, so that, and was... that was just knowing yeah. that was all Oda and stuff that he did um, makes complete sense, like him breaking all the dishes and stuff. Um, <laughs> I mean, Oda and, and Luffy, from everything we've heard, are already kind of two peas in a pod, so it, it makes sense. But Baradier, I think, 
suffer the only reason is lower is for the same reason a lot of the east blue stuff is lower down for me and that's because there's still not a ton even though there's a lot more meat on the bones here it still feels um fatty like i don't know what where to go with this with this uh analogy but um it's it's still not quite up to up to like the stuff of of stuff we get later um in, in my opinion but it is kind of the first glimpse into the wider, broader world. And for that reason, um, even though on my first read-through I wasn't such a huge fan, I think um, it has definitely grown um, in my I, heart significantly. I personally think this is when Oda found his groove. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this is when everything started to click. I agree. Like, I agree. Okay, like you might twist what I'm saying. It's like, oh, so this is when One Piece became formulaic. And it's like, it's more like, nah, this is when he found the formula yeah um and you know he's branched off of that and he's switched it up but this is because i think you know from here on out i you know and of course you know i rank some of the arcs that follow this lower than this but from like here on out it is like smooth sailing for a while like i yeah. never hear anyone complain like the mm, little garden uh sucks <laughs> i'm like i've never heard anyone complain about anything from here till you know Matter of opinion, Skypea. So, um, you bring up something really interesting too. Like, uh, it's the first arc where he plants seeds for the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, in in just dr name dropping the seven warlords and um and and things like that. And uh, I guess like the Kuro arc has the kind of little clever bit that um. That Captain Morgan is the one who brought in Kuro, and that's that's looking backwards though. That's not job. but on. yes, exactly. It's looking backwards, and I think that's sort of when Oda got that little inkling. But like Baratier plants a lot of different seeds for the future, and um, I mean, we'll get to one particular arc where th that's kind of front and center. And but, um, I, one last thing I, I just want to say, and that's that I think it's not formulaic. I think Oda's formula is the constant unpredictability. Or don't don't um, don't be comfortable where things are in this arc because things could be upended, and the whole stuff with Mihawk, particularly who the hell saw that coming when it came? I mean, it was really an out of left field thing, and that is what Oda I think is most known for in the best of ways to this day. I think something some we're all waiting for the crazy wrench to be thrown into the story when we're in an arc, and we know it's going to happen. We just don't know what it is. Um, and that's the formulaic uh, nature, I guess, of it. Stephen, what were you going to say? Uh, yeah, I was going to say um, you guys mentioned the um, you know the ending making you uh, cry or get you know get get you a little weepy. Uh, I do think that it, it is very true that uh, after Shanks putting the hat on Luffy's head, the moment between Sanji and Zeph is like the first truly iconic. Like you see it in marketing all the time. Yeah. Like that's the first. A uh, major iconic moment that we've and, seen since that first chapter, and the Zoro holding the sword up, saying, "I'm never going to lose." Yeah, again. yeah, okay, yeah, that that one too. Yeah, I think all three. Uh, think about the amount of really momentous things that happen in that arc, and mm -hmm. you're like, "Oh, yeah. I should have rated it higher," and that's what I'm thinking right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about some outliers. Uh, Jill ranked this number five. Um, wow. Abby Denton, because <laughs> Abby, I feel like we've only been talking about Abby Denton during this part of the, the show, ranked at number three. Um, mm -hmm. Kelly ranked at number four. I'm not surprised about that. Um, I've, I heard, I've heard she's a fan of Sanji. And speaking of, Vera ranked at number five, and Belle ranked at number five. Um, who ranked it super low? That's, you know, for... Th this arc was not really super low on... Shannon ranked it uh, 19, and I think that's like about the lowest we get. Um, Jeff ranked it 18, but it, it seems like most people agreed at least it deserves mm. somewhere in the middle, which is not bad. Um, so I think we can move on to the next of our hubba hubba category. Kind of have to keep saying that, don't I? This one uh, ranks number 11. Last time, this one ranked number 9. So it's taken a little bit of a tick down. And on our audience poll, as of this moment, it currently ranks, where are you? Number 10. Um, 
And that is Thriller Bark. Uh, so let's see, who ranked it highest here? Uh, that looks like it is uh, Steven. Steven, you ranked it number eight. Oh, that was my hipster pick, I guess. Um, <laughs> Steven, uh, Steven yeah. I like how Steven finds out when uh, when we all do yeah, where, where, exactly. he, where he ranked it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think this is just a really, really entertaining arc. I mean, that's that's pretty much what it comes down to for me. Like, I, I love Oda's take on a horror in, like, Haunted Mansion-style uh, setting, and I, I think it's it's really funny. Um, I I love the I love almost all of the characters. We, you know, we'll we'll get to that. But um, you know, I, I I love the the general kind of uh, assembly of um, ghouls and ghosties that uh, Oda assembled for this um, for this arc and. Yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, it is Brooke's arc, and I think Brooke, Brooke's flashback is, you know, wonderfully poignant in a in a way that is different from a lot of the other ones because, you know, he was a, a grown adult. It's not so much about a kid going through traumatic growing pains and experiences. It is, um, It's about an adult know, going through dramatic... Yeah, uh, yeah. Dying uh, traumatic. It, it is a very... Yeah, it's a very different style um for, compared to the the other ones and he does some different things with the way that it's presented that i think are are really creative and and cool um but you know aside from that like you know it is it is very much a an entertainment focused arc i i feel like you know just like moria being a real shithead of a of a villain um you know with his sort of philosophy on things um i i love the the team up of everybody to to take down um oars and the you know the different the different ways that the crew is forced to fight i think are i don't think he's ever quite done that uh that way again um and uh so yeah that's that's kind of what i think of most when i, I think of uh, thriller park robin robin won't allow it to happen again no she wouldn't <laughs> not in quite that way at least um alex you ranked it one lower at number 9 yeah, uh, Thrill Bark is great. Um, it's super fun. Uh, a, a setting that we haven't seen Oda do really at all. Uh, and, you know, he's obviously a huge fan of Nightmare Before Christmas and uh, and Jason and, like, a whole bunch of other horror uh, stuff. Um, so it's very cool to see him play around. Like, I love uh, when Oda gets to really do the things he wants to do um, that are just, like, in his brain. Uh, it's the introduction of a talking, singing skeleton, Brooke. Uh one of my favorite characters. Um, the Brook flashback is my all-time favorite. Uh, so I have, you know, a lot of uh, my my heart is is there a lot. Um, I have in reread um, warmed up to the the uh, Oars fight. Uh, I mean, it's really. I don't know. Reading it week to week, I guess, was a little a little hairy, but yeah. reading it all in one go is just so fun. Yeah, uh, seeing them team well, up against this giant creature. I was gonna say it's too bad that or that Oris fight isn't the last, isn't the final fight of the arc. Yeah, but it is what it uh, is. Um, uh, I disagree. I, I I got tired of Moria by the end. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about Moria. I'm talking about Kuma. Uh, that's oh. not really a fight. Spoilers. That's, no, it yeah, is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk, talk about that. It's kind of it's kind of a fight. Uh, I'll it let Ed talk. Okay, about... okay. It's a confrontation. Okay, I'll um, let Ed talk about the Zoro stuff. Um, I'd say I, what's great about uh, uh, sorry on, on the Kuma tangent. He is th- he he's the true ending of the video game. He is the final boss if you like hundred percent completed it or you um you you did Unexpert. all the unlockables. Yeah. Uh, you know Zoro got all the katana upgrades. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah, if you didn't get and you Shusui still lose. In this arc, then you wouldn't unlock the yeah. Kuma ending. You, you found all the shadows. Shusui. You found yeah. all the shadows. You, uh, yeah, all the. But I'll talk about that when it's when my go around. Sure, <laughs> you just did. <laughs> um, yeah, Bink Sake is my favorite fucking thing. I love Bink Sake. I love I love the Brook fla- uh, flashback. Um, Brook as a character is is, um, the do you poop uh, question <laughs> is uh, is the one question that I want to ask Oda if I ever meet him. Um, my favorite thing. Uh, I wonder. I wonder. Does yeah. he? And your next one should be if he's uh, the head of uh, the Quickie Mart. 
Uh, yeah. Are you really the head of the Quick Mart? <laughs> really? Are you sure? Um, but the, the thing that really puts this up highest for me is that it, Pound for Pound has like the most comedy uh, out of all the One Piece arcs. Just like it's uh, uh, pretty nonstop. Um, even like the the Manji gags with Sindri and um, Hogback are like they're pretty they're pretty funny too. Um, Moria is kind of a shinsy villain. Um, so, uh, there's a lot to like there too. Uh, it's, it's just an all around fun, fun adventure in the land of wind and ghosts. <laughs> uh, Ed, you and I both. you were going to say the land of make believe. <laughs> <laughs> basically. You and I put it at number 13. So yep. basically in the middle also. Um, yeah. But what are your thoughts, Ed? Oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's very inventive. I think the manga in particular, um, like Oda was on a run with his art, I think, from Skypea through Thriller Bark, until um, I think it started to get more hectic during Impel Down, I think, and yeah, right through the war. That's what I was thinking. But like this is like the peak of his uh, his first half art style, I think. Uh, this just it's a beautiful looking uh, um, uh, manga art, and the uh, I guess my pro- some of the issues I guess I had with it is that I'm not particularly attached to the horror aesthetic. Never really liked horror movies all that much. So it's not something that I'm fond of or something that I seek out normally. Um, and as I mentioned before, I I was starting to get tired of Moria by the end of the fight. Like, And also the way that that played out in the manga week by week um, uh, was the first, I think, the really the first time I started to get a little frustrated with One Piece's pacing after I had caught up. Because I caught up during um, Innie's Lobby. And this is sort of like, this would be like a year, year and a half later. Um, so there, so there, there was that. And uh, also, uh, Absalom is just a big piece of shit. And I don't, <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. happy he died later on in the series. So, um, but on the other hand, you have the Zoro Kuma fight because this is like, it's interesting to talk about this and Bradier back to back because Zoro has these tremendous moments of self sacrifice in the service of making Luffy, uh, Pirate King. He takes all the punishment that Kumo was going to give to Luffy. He takes on a warlord of the sea in you know a no win situation, and he they're takes both the... warlords of the sea. He takes in a well, no win he... situation. Yeah, and hey, exactly. Sanji was there too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is just another one of those moments that that sort of certifies the, uh, how much of a badass Zoro is and how far he's willing to go to serve Luffy. He's probably the most, he's, he's the, he's the most loyal member of the crew, I think at, at, at uh, that point. Uh, well, yeah, to this day. And yeah, the Brook story is so emotional. Um, the way that goes from goofy to emotional and, and then like back again, back again with, uh, you know, all, all the like Brooks inability to talk to people, like having been alone on this ship forever and uh, yeah, the, it's great gags in this arc with Luffy pushing the man back into the grave, or the Straw Hats happening upon a uh, a tea party of like a, the tree having a tea party. Mm-hmm. So I love that one uh, too. <laughs> yeah, the and the Prona Prona Prona's fight with Chopper is uh, fight, not fight with Chopper. Prona's fight with Usopp is one of I think one of the great gag fights I think in the manga and probably the best. Second best Usopp fight after Alabasta, and that's just that's just that one's a joy to watch and reread. Um, did not care for Hogback as much. So some of the villains are kind of unlikable, and I wanted them to go away, and that's probably why it ended up in the sort of the middle of the pack. But it, there's so much good in this arc, especially with um, it, like Zoro gets to have that really cool fight with Ryuma as well on the top of the building, and that's just a plus moment as well. Yeah, I I first want to agree that especially when I reread it for the first time, Thriller Bark struck me because in the anime it is not a great arc. Just gonna like that's that yeah, the is, anime pacing also the like, anime the anime pacing made me want to read the manga. That's that was uh, that describes the <laughs> anime pacing for Thriller Bark. Um, but the manga is some of Oda's best work in the series, hands down. There are some of, like, my favorite, like, little, you know, uh, what non sequitur panels. Like, there, there's just such great stuff there. And I think he does specifically so well with, like, 
I mean, Steve could probably speak to this a little better than me, but like the inks and like heavy blacks that, that Oda does, he does really well. Um, like in the fights that you see later with all, with the pacifistas and Kuma, he like, it's clear he really likes to show light through black and it's a really cool effect that Oda does. I know that's a very hyper specific, uh, compliment I'm giving to, to Thriller Bark. I think the thing that hurts Thriller Bark the most is that it's buttressed by two of the craziest arcs, uh, you could say best arcs in the series, or at least some of like the highest stake arcs in the series with Water 7 and Aeneas Lobby on one side and Shabadi and everything that follows on the other side. And it's kind of in the middle. Um, it is, but for the same reason, you know, to like the Foxy material or to like Skypea, it is, it is kind of also this like break from the from the stakes of the world. And at the same time, the stakes of the world come in at the end. Um, I got to say, this is a ser- This is a, this is an arc that marathon reading is, is essential. Um, I, I don't think it's much like Skypea. Um, I don't think it necessarily works as well week to week. Um, I like Gecko Moria more and more as I get older. Um, I hate, uh, Absalom the same amount. Um, mm. I still don't love Dr. Hogback, but it also makes it feel better with choppers like uh, realizing what he had been up to. And also uh, Shindri just like taking him down a notch every 10 seconds with that. That yeah, is, I mean yeah. that that's definitely like the yeah, I mean cuz uh Dr. Hobak and Sindri were based off of a pair of of comedians uh in Japan who are, are very well known and very recognizable and so I think that's one of those things that like y- you know, it, whether you know that or not, it's a very familiar uh kind of comedy uh style and and so that's what everybody picks up on, you know, uh, from the those characters. That's why I like uh Hogback um, because of that but if you you know if you don't have any connection to them then you know it's sort of like what i think what it still works here? yeah i think yeah it, it's yeah. funny I, I was gonna say and you reminded me steven is that thriller bark is kind of like the epitome of oda's not just oda having fun but like what oda does best what oda wants out of one piece we talked a lot about it with uh the gear five stuff that happened in wano like oh now he mm. finally gets to let loose and mm. I think Thriller Bark was like, I get to finally let loose in like in this aspect and then the horror. Like, I don't like horror movies either, but this is like clearly Oda having a lot of fun with horror tropes and making them mm. cartoonish and ridiculous, which I, I know people love power scaling and we're ranking right now. But like, it's the cartoonish aspects of One Piece that I really love. And Thriller Bark has that in spades. Uh, Steve. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Oh. Sorry. No, no, Stephen. Uh, he, uh, he, he's definitely kind of stunting at, uh, with this arc. Like, you know, you're coming out of Water Seven, and you know, there's just been so many crazy revelations, and it's just like, what is going to happen next? And then, uh, and then they're sailing. I forget if if they're if they have a destination at that part. Are they going for Fishman Island at that? Yeah, point? they're going for they Fishman are. Island for a while. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but then you know it, they just stumble across the, uh, the the barrel, and then that you know that that takes them off. It's it's a little bit similar to Skypea, where it's just something that completely sucks them off on a different into a different direction. And we've just you know we we've gotten Robin back. We get Frankie on the crew, and then like the very first thing that happens is like you meet this skeleton, and Luffy's like, you know, hey, you want to join the crew? And he's like, sure. And you know it, it's such a like a surprise like you know, there's no build up to it at all it just happens and then all of a sudden you're in this you know haunted mansion arc that it just feels like he he's like oh I can do anything I, that I want now like I can just you know I can create stories out of thin air pretty much um, and that you know that that was really delightful I think at the time you know I think you're finding a pretty big pattern if we haven't discussed it already you have crazy important uh, arc and then Mm -hmm. departure which sometimes Mm -hmm. still leads to something important but uh coming out of wano it may you know if you follow that pattern again and we might have some crazy fun ridiculous side quest kind of adventure that turns into something maybe but um steve you ranked uh thriller bark at number 15 it's a very middle middle of the road with like the middle of the road yeah what can I say that hasn't been said yet? I think Thriller Bark has 
an incredible start. Plotting middle. Fantastic ending. Um, it's funny how this is such a palate cleanse after Water 7 Endy's Lobby. And people don't have a bone to pick with this one. Again, with the phrasing. I, I, you're, you're relative to your how this people about, feel about Skypea, like relative to that, I feel like a lot of people's yeah. complaints about Skypea could be about Thriller Park instead. No, I'm actually, I think I'm alluding more to criticism of Davey Back. <laughs> also, well, I, yeah, uh, I feel, yeah. feel different. I think, that I, I think so it's because, the, yeah. well, this is also the hot topic arc, so uh, <laughs> you know, it, it does have more appeal. Spencer's yeah. gift. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's a hot topic arc. I'd say it's, it's Spencer. Spencer gifts is more uh, Davy back fight. No, I'm pretty sure the I'm pretty sure the Foxy Pirates would sell like fake dog do. And <laughs> no, uh, this is that Halloween store that's open for all oh, year Spirit round. Halloween. Yeah, Spirit of Halloween Spirit store. Of Halloween. Yeah, that's that's Thriller Park. I mean, that's not even a question. Well, it's funny because you know, like Spirit of the Halloween, it kind of just creeps up on you <laughs> and it overtakes uh, the uh, the bewildered and just it just <laughs> cons- it just. Consumes yeah. the space, and and uh, it's and it sucks your shadow and <laughs> all the rest of the yeah, stuff that. Yeah, let's happened. go with that. <laughs> um, I I we, we talked about the artwork a lot, and it's funny how Ed said like, "Oh, this is kind of like peak Oda," and I, I've thought about this too. I I think around this era, I think Oda, his the artwork was fantastic, and he definitely tried a lot of different things this go around with a lot more use of heavy blacks. Uh, I think that just. You know, Oda doing his spin on, you know, horror or like a Haunted Mansion arc is really well done. It's I think it's very well like he he did plenty of good um, inspiration uh, research for this. It's a very unique looking arc. I, I don't think any other arc really looks quite like this. And there, in the humor, is some of the absolute best in the series. There's a lot of great gags. We didn't even mention stuff like docking. Um, <laughs> well, we mentioned the Robin. Straw Hats, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the Straw Hats teaming up together for the first time was very exciting, like, for one fight. Yeah. Uh, and this was around the time I finally... I've been in the series for so long, but this is when I finally uh, caught up and became week to week. Same. Uh, so, And it was right in the middle of this fight, so it was exhilarating. I just remember when the spoilers came out back in early 2008 that, hey, the first chapter after, you know, like one of the first chapters after uh, Water 7, it's uh, there's a talking skeleton with an afro and Luffy asked him to join the crew. And everyone's just like, Oda, you done it again. <laughs> like people were so like, uh, were very welcoming of the concepts introduced in this arc and Brooke, he might not be the most popular straw hat, but he's very, I still, I, I love him and I, I love his gimmick. He's very beloved. Uh, and his flashback is amazing. And, you know, pink sake, Bing Spiru is such an incredible song. And I think seems, seems like it's only getting more and more important yeah. as the series goes on. And of course, uh, I don't think, I don't I forget if anyone mentioned this all, but him being tied to Laboon, was yeah. such a huge like that that the the you know the you know the the freaking the clash of the uh, of the you know the supreme king hockey fucking parted the the clouds when Oda finally had some payoff for Laboon. Yeah, that was like a huge oh shit moment. Uh, yeah, and that's still uh, probably my favorite oh shit moment in the whole series. Mm-hmm. That was and, shocking. Yeah, at this the time. Yeah. There's there's a lot of good stuff here and like and some memorable characters like Perona is a fan favorite for sure, uh, and 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 Kuma coming in was another oh shit moment and then them having to fight Kuma and Zoro's because Zoro's moment there because Zoro didn't really have a whole lot of big character developing moments in quite a while he was kind of just you know he was the backbone you know he yeah. was. Yeah, well, he, he got definitely... his moment in Water Seven with the Luffy and Usopp fight, but that's yeah, yeah that's a, it, that, that's was not, he wasn't the, he wasn't the primary part of that story. No, no, that's the thing. Yeah, so this was like the first time Zoro kind of had some like you know the spotlight on him in that kind of way in quite a while. So there's there's a lot of great stuff to take away from this, and that's why you know it ranks for me where it does. It does have its faults. It's kind of like the first you know kind of. 
Uh, this is getting a little too bloated. And there's a lot of annoying things, like keeping Luffy away from the main fight is just aggravating, especially when... He wasn't you know, stuck going... in anything this time. So there's that. No, but he, he got lured away by Moria's shadow, and then Moria's shadow just, like, disappears. Uh, yeah. It was annoying. Like, it, it's especially annoying when the I characters agree. are trolls. The villains are trolls. Um, yeah. But it's... I think there's some really good payoff there. And, yeah, it's... It's and but also this is like around the time uh you know this was a downturn for Sanji for a while. Uh he yeah. uh what a what a downgrade. You would think uh, I, I and this is me fantasy booking here. Like I would have I would have done Sanji and Absom where Sanji's above all that creepy, pervy, unnecessary stuff. Uh and he can't and you know, and if he needs to come to Nami's rescue which eventually he didn't because Nami wound up taking out Absalom once and for all. But Sanji should have been, you know, the foil to all of Absalom's pervy shit, but then Sanji's just right there deep in the shit with him. <laughs> and that was yeah. disappointing to see. Yeah, it's true. Um, anyone else have... Uh, I, I think Steve covered a lot of the points that I that I had missed. Uh, let's talk about some outliers. Uh, this was ranked as the number one arc for two members. Uh, first was Jeff Ruberg, formerly of Shonen Jump. And wow. second was Godswell, currently of Viz Media. So this there's a little bit of a Viz conspiracy here. Hmm. Which also maybe, Stephen, that's why you ranked it so high. Hmm. Maybe there's a yeah. Thriller Bark push over at Viz. Um, I know Brian, Brian usually has it high, too. Brian had it. Yeah, he had it at number seven. Like the thing is now, outliers are going to be like way up or or down, um, because we're 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 in a better arc here, um, uh, objectively speaking. Um, lower on the rankings, Rogers Base put it at number eighteen. Um, Nikki put it at eighteen. Bell put it at eighteen, and I think those are our lowest mm. rankers for Thriller Bark. Um, so let's go to our next number, and that is number 10. So we're in the top 10, guys. Is, do, can I get a sound effect from someone? I don't know. Alex, do you have a sound effect? <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's the Hilarious. sound effect I was looking for. Okay, that's, yeah, that's your answer to everything, Alex. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Um, no, I can't. Okay. Um. <laughs> Please just look up Sanji's laughs on YouTube if you haven't. So this is number 10. Last time we ranked it number 10. Um, the audience. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> we better. You better not pressure us in doing another one of these anytime soon. If no. We, if, if we haven't swayed this much. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to say uh, right now that I don't think we're going to do this until the series is over. Um, again, I feel like that's probably the appropriate point. It has been seven years, so you know, I th I, it had there, there has been a lot of time that's passed. Anyway, number ten in in the previous rankings, number ten in our rankings, number nine currently in the audience ranking. But there's still time. Maybe it'll go back down to number ten, uh, and that is Impel Down. Um, so let's see who ranked this where. Um, highest ranking in the group, me and Ed ranked this the highest, um, at number nine, uh, number nine. Um, so Ed, you want to start? Sure. Uh, this is a, uh, it's interesting to have like the greatest hits of one piece right before going into the end of the first <laughs> half, but that's, well, that's what yeah, this is. And that's a, we go, never to, we like go down, yeah. we descend through <laughs> impel down through all these, uh, ridiculous, uh, contraptions and, uh, getting, I mean, I love the sort of the whimsy of the impel down guards, like Hanyable and Magellan's poison, and Hanyable's like openly subordinate and just taunting him, and uh, weird, weird looking characters like Saldith and uh, uh, other other things like that. Uh, the, the Minotaurs. This doesn't make sense. Uh, <laughs> but then we get the. Uh, you know, this is all about Ace. This is all about Luffy's. It's interesting. It was such a departure for him to be separated from the crew and then having to go on this adventure by himself. And he's going on this sort of journey of it's kind of a journey of self-discovery, really going down, uh, meeting up with Mr. Three, Mr. Two, Crocodile and Buggy, of course, and introducing Jimbei as well. So and we get to, cough. you know, right. 
and the like the momentum of this arc just exact just picks up like starts off and then it just keeps going and it leads you right into the war. So I, I love the pacing of this, not so much in the, <laughs> in the anime. Um, but yeah, this um this is this is a great arc and it has a lot of this is like uh this is like Oda's storytelling just sort of in a nutshell. It's it, it it's um yeah it's it's all about the the drive to to save Ace and it's putting Luffy in a different context than than we've normally seen him and it's um despite being a very very serious arc it's uh you know there's always time for for whimsy especially when Buggy's around um but then it's time to be serious when we have like those conversations between Jimbei and Ace and when Blackbeard finally shows up at the end it's a real oh shit moment as uh, we've talked about on this podcast I don't know, going back to the beginning of the show really because that's when we start what was when we started um but yeah it's a it, it's a perfect lead in into the war and it really ramps up the tension ramps up the uh, the stakes and leads us directly into that so uh yeah it's uh, definitely a uh definitely a top arc yeah i I would agree. I mean, I definitely have a lot of nostalgia around it in that that's where we started the podcast. Um, so there's mm-hmm. – but also, even though it was certainly frenetic and kind of did that thing that I've later learned to hate, and I think Steve mentioned it earlier in the show, of running, 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 that's run away. Um, there is a lot of that. But it's also the fir- – I think it's the first time that that's like a real trope. So it's not as grating. Um, I think it's also done the best of that kind but of. But also, you're, you're absolutely right because it is uh, like a prison break. Arc. It is a prison so, break. Arc, yeah. Like I, can, I, I'm like, yeah, run away, run away, run faster. But the scoot, stakes are scoot now. The stakes are there, yeah. and yeah, th- this is like the worst Luffy has ever beaten. Um, we really uh, physically maybe <laughs> physically. <laughs> um. <laughs> Not emotionally. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Okay. Uh, at, at, up until this point, I should say. That's that's more of what I meant. I know he gets emotionally beaten soon after this. Um, but the, the, the Motley crew that's put together here is, you know, you would never think all of the, this hall of villains that Luffy basically is the reason they're all there. And yet they have to get along due to circumstances and it works so damn well uh Mm -hmm. speaking of you know like a color spreads i always think about i always think about the breakout crew dressed in the in the original japanese garb or Mm -hmm. wano-e's garb i guess um and it it was just such a really crazy time to be a one piece fan because you never knew what was going to happen next even though it felt like it should be formulaic like okay we're going to level one then two then three then four then five then six um but you never really knew what was going to happen next you never really knew how our heroes were going to get out of this uh thing plus we had new comma which i i love all oh, of that yeah we gotta uh, talk and like mr two's devotion to Miss, Mi- this is where bond clay like bond clay really yeah, bon shown clay. in in alabasta but they were like just such a highlight of the impel down arc specifically to like they were really the you know the zoro the, of this arc uh, when <laughs> so they fought speak. off the when they fought off the the wolves in like the the frozen area yeah. and the yeah. yeah that was cool it almost makes me it's almost a shame that he that that uh bon clay isn't part of the crew uh at the end of this um because if 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 it, if being a crew member is about devotion bon clay is second to none um yeah. pun not intended there either well, someone has to look over the new comma and it took, yes. a, took a long time to, to find out what actually happened uh to them in the manga yeah um yeah i don't know if there's much more i could say i love all the team up moves like with mr three the candle wax thing magellan is such an underrated villain and i love everything about him mm-hmm. and like i love that he is just trying to do his job and he's having a really shitty day and pun also not intended there. Um, I remember the remember the uh, the joke buggy did with uh, Hey Straw Hat. Remember my buggy ball, <laughs> right? And that's <laughs> one, one of the, the funniest. Yeah. That is one of the funniest gags in the oh. entire series, and <laughs> reasonably so. Um, Steve, you rank this number. You rank this number ten, also. So uh, 
You're you're our representative here. Why why is it number ten? Oh, I'm the least qualified to talk about Impel Down because it's been a long time since I've reread it. <laughs> But I think this is um, making up for last time because I feel like I didn't give it uh, enough due um, previously. And it's really good. It's, I mean, it's a it's a major arc that doesn't have any other straw hats, but the major players are involved in it. Like everyone's excited to see, you know, we finally see Jimbei. Jimbei finally makes his move. The return of fan favorites like Crocodile and Buggy and Bone Clay, who all get some great moments. Blackbeard's here, too. It's just like, wow, this keeps getting worse and worse, and it's so <laughs> exciting. Yeah. Um, the setting is is great. Um, I, I think Impel Down, the structure of it is, is fascinating in a fantasy uh, setting. But the, just a lot of really great, like, like, Bonclay has one of the best, you know, character arcs in this, and he's like he's not even a straw hat, but for him to be so close with Luffy, eventually makes that sacrifice so that they can escape, is a really great moment. But uh, and then like the new comma or a great introduction. Like there's a few things that probably could have been handled a little bit better, but overall, I'd say it's very LGBTQ positive. Um, uh, not the cover like story it. with Sanji, but the rest of it. No, no. But I think, <laughs> uh, like, when you look at all, like, the new commas there, yeah. I think it's a better representation. And I, I maybe I'm not the best person to, like, give it the stamp of approval, but no, I on, think Steve. it's a, it's it's more of a... No, I think it's just portrayed yeah. in a much more positive light in here. And you would think, oh, I don't know. It's a, you know, it's a big it's a it's it's a giant funko pop of tim curry how positive can this be um that sounds pretty positive and i think it's i think it's handled pretty well it's just a very exciting arc um because you know it's the big anticipation of like well luffy's got to save ace and this isn't even the arc where he gets to you know where he where he sees ace again like they totally they miss each other but it's like two ships passing in the night You broke Steve. You want it? You want, no, I said you want it. You you want to cite who who said that? I don't know. It's a it's saying. A thing people say. Yeah, it is a saying. <laughs> Who's they? Uh, they. 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 Um, the studio audience. Uh, <laughs> it's weird how you said like two ships passing in the night, and the, my first image was just Bardock and Goku passing each other in that TV special. <laughs> Steve. You may That's watch too much television. Is. No, I think, uh, no, just a very limited scope. Um, what I I think sometimes what makes a really engaging story is just uh, things uh, snowballing and getting worse and worse. It will really make it an entertaining story and it'll make you... And, it's in, it, you know here's a tip streamer you know streaming uh, services you know you want people to binge stuff uh, yeah uh, no but it's like uh, it's uh, Luffy Luffy's in a prison oh like this is terrible and then it's like he keeps going lower and lower this is getting worse and worse Steve and then I was just gonna say I know why you're like Kaiji now yeah you're describing because it's the plot of Kaiji. Because it just gets, because like the, the circumstances get more and more dire, and you just wonder how the hell are they going to get out of this? Yeah. And that's impel down. And it's like, yeah, they go lower and lower in the prison, then Luffy gets poisoned, and then he's like thrown in like a winter nightmare land. Um, and, and then Blackbeard shows up, and it's, it, 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 it's, it's chaotic. And, and it's Ace great. is still taken it's, away yeah. at the end of it. Yeah. yeah. And even Cobb is uh, Luffy's dad's best friend. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I forgot about that. I, I, it's such a great. Uh, I don't know. It's like uh, the it's the great escape, um, but I think it ends a little more positively than that. But I, I think yeah, it. There's just a lot of great. Um, sorry, words are failing me here. Uh, you don't need those here. Yeah, no, not here. I just I could just mumble. Uh, <laughs> Just, it's just, you know, it's just it, it, the continued uh, build of suspense. Uh, Culmination? It's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I it's, don't know. I'm trying it's to a help. suspenseful arc. It's great. 
Everything gets worse and worse. And it's <laughs> awesome. I love Again, it. I like this. F- I also love Kaiji, but that is a very good description of Kaiji. So suspension, the the suspense gets more better because things are just getting worse. Well, I think that's what like saved JoJo's Bizarre Adventure was the the inclusion of stands because yeah. then it just wasn't like who punches the hardest, and it's like right. no, who's crafty enough to get out yeah. of the situation? Yeah, no, I I agree. It I I think that Oda does. Oda really is able to let loose when he is also throws out his formula. Um, and yeah. Impel Down is not at all the typical. I mean, I guess it is, but it's not the typical like, One Piece formula. You know? Like, it's like if people like if, if people were wondering, like, oh, how's Luffy gonna be Kaido? It's like he's gonna punch him really hard. I want to know how they're gonna prevent Onigashima from falling on the Flower Capital. It's stuff like that, you know. Mm. Yeah, you know, a fight's about. a fight, but you gotta have <laughs> you you gotta have certain stakes, or there has to be certain um, uh, obstacles to make it compelling. You know, otherwise, it's just punches. And uh, I think, you know, Double Fruits would be cooler if they were all, you know, music and, and based puns. I don't know what you're referring to. <laughs> no, I'm talking about stands. If all the oh, Double Fruits oh, had oh, names oh, that oh. were... If all yes. the Devil Fruits had names that were puns and no on idea bands and doing. songs, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, Alex and Steven both ranked this um, pretty much dead in the middle at 13. Um, Alex, you want to go first? Yeah. Um, I think that at this point... There are arcs that I like better than Impel Down. I don't think it's a bad arc uh, at all. Um, as you all said, it has really great momentum. Um, the pacing of it is uh, is really, really well done. I think Oda kind of had this plan in mind where he's like, okay, I'll spend one chapter on the first level, one chapter on the second, one, you know, and, you know, and so on and so forth. And as as you progress down these, these levels, you meet uh, an old friend every single time. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's really cool. Uh, and, you know, everybody was wondering, where, when's Buggy going to get uh, show up again? When's Bon Clay going to show up again? And then you get Crocodile and uh, the, you know, affirm- the, you know, uh, often um, talked about Jinbei uh, and Ivankov, a character that nobody knew existed. So you get, like, a mishmash of characters people have talked about, characters people uh, uh, wanted back for a while, and... You know, uh, all new, all new guys. Uh, I thought Magellan was a really cool villain uh, with a really cool power, uh, and the diarrhea stuff, the diarrhea jokes are really great. Um, I really love that. He, he loves eating poison, but it still uh, causes uh, hell on his digestive system. Um, That's like me and yeah. all foods. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I think my favorite part of the arc might be, uh, Jinbei, Crocodile, Mr. One, and, uh, Buggy taking, like, stealing a naval ship. Very cool stuff. Yeah. Very cool to see, like, those villains team up. Um. I, I, I will always think of that iconic spread where, with all of the, um, whale mm-hmm. sharks in the ocean and them on the... Yeah. But I, th- but really I think cool. it's Luffy, Buggy, Croc, and, uh, even Cough with the giant head. Going to yeah. The, yeah, and I do love how it's sort of Luffy's B team straw hats, as as you mentioned, Zach, and the that uh, color spread, how they replaced the straw hats and the color spread. I thought that was a really, really cool, uh, really fun thing to do. Uh, you know, gave Oda uh, Oda a little agency to play around a bit with, like you know, uh, characters and um, really good instance of Luffy's, uh, you know, his the way he draws people in uh, as sort of his uh, latent power. Um, and uh, I'll I'll end there, and I'll I'll pass it to Stephen, who I recall uh, back when you were Stephen when you were uh, mm. translating for fun, you mm-hmm. quit. Uh, yeah. In the middle of impel down. Oh, impel down! You're you're a ten, but you only have six and a half floors. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is literally. That yeah. is literally the case here. You're just it is. Saying one. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Impel Down is really interesting because I I feel like it had it's such a I I don't know if contradiction is the right word, but there's there's such a contrast between the all the the fun aspects of the arc. You know, it's it's he, he's kind of um, after Thriller Bark. This is kind of like the next you know dark menacing setting that has a bunch of fucked up stuff going on um and yet like it has this weird you know it it feels like the red ribbon army base where it's like every floor is some new thing of bullshit that luffy has to get through (laughs) 
Um, Whistle Tower. Uh, yeah, the tower. Yeah, uh, and uh, I don't know. It's like it. There, there. The the setting is cool. The characters are cool. Like like uh, Alex said, I love Magellan and like his the, the dumb shtick with the poison stuff. Um, hit his uh, relationship with Hannibal. All that stuff is is really great and vivid. And the you know the newcomers are a, a delightful sort of twist in the the arc. And and you know the, you get the returning characters. Um, but you know, that's all happening. I think, I feel like the Otis calculus there is like, well, this is just Luffy. Like there's no other straw hats here. Um, so, you know, he takes that opportunity to say like, okay, well, this is the prison. I can bring back some familiar faces and that will kind of help solve the, you know, the wound of being separated from the crew since it's still fairly early on after the, you know, the big separation. Um, but you know it is like just looking back retroactively retrospectively like this is the arc where you know you you go through a bunch of this stuff uh, you know a lot of these um you know not shenanigans you know, it's more serious than that like they're they're trying to break ace out but the whole thing is a, a whole gigantic boondoggle like they don't get him out um it's all kind of for you know not for nothing but it, you know in a sense it is uh, and I, you know, in terms of like the, the dramatic thrust of the arc. And I think that was a big frustrating, a point of frustration for me. Um, and, uh, even though I've, I, I've definitely warmed up on it, um, over the years in, in terms of, um, you know, appreciating its strengths more and not weighing so much on the, the frustrating aspects of it. I, I still think it is, it's hard to read knowing it's it's like knowing you're in act one of like a th a really long like three hour movie or something like that and it's like okay well this is fun but like there's so much more to to go through ahead of this in this story that Oda is telling at this part uh, of the series and uh, you know it's just kind of hard to to get through in that sense. I I mean I think it's definitely a I think Impel Down is a story about failure. I think they definitely. I don't know why The Last Jedi has been popping into my head with this, but, like, there is certainly, like, the, he does not achieve the objective, but you could also say that's the case with Marineford, and it's also kind mm -hmm. of in the middle of a story. Um, and Like, I, I do get that. I But I also think it, it does fulfill the role it's meant to serve super well, and at the end of the day, the things that come out of Impel Down... Um, I think really enrich the world of One Piece in a way that not all arcs do. I mean, it breaks out a lot of these former villains and sets them loose on the world. Um, you have, you know, prisoners like Shiryu, who probably mm -hmm. will play some sort of role in the future, and everything with Blackbeard. Um, I, I think, m most importantly, I think we talk about the lost potential that um, arcs like Dressrosa and Fishman Island have. I feel like Impel Down fulfills its potential. I can't imagine a more Oda prison than Impel Down. Hmm. Um, I can't imagine him going more bonkers than he did. Um, and for that, that's, you know, that's why I like it. Um, let's do some outliers. Um, I think everyone got their piece in there, right? Um who ranked it the highest? Uh, Bell ranked it number one. Um, David Bendor ranked it number two. Sung Wan uh, ranked it number two. Um, and Mike uh, ranked it number three. Uh, Lois, Dennis ranked it number 18. Jill ranked it number 18. Joe ranked it number 18. Sam ranked it number 19. And I think those are our lowest. Um, everyone got a piece to say there, right? I didn't miss anyone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so let's move on to number nine. Number nine um, was last time uh, this arc was number seven. Um, and in our audience poll, this arc was number eight. So, I, again, I think we're, we've been pretty consistent here. Um, our number nine arc is the Shabari Archipelago arc. Um, and this one, I think, had some of our wildest um, wow. 
departures. Um, let me just, sorry, I'm trying to type it in here. So I bought Odie. It's spelt like that. Um, oh, that's why. Um, the highest ranked one here uh, came from Ed, who ranked this at number three. Um, so, Ed, you want to talk about uh, why this was your number three arc? Sure. Uh, this really sets the scene for the conflict of One Piece beyond uh, the first half of One Piece. This sets up everything that we're looking forward to in the new world. It really sets up the depravity of the celestial dragons and like how big the world uh, is and what the scope of the final fight is going to be like. And it has probably the most emotional moment in the entire series. Like I talked about a vibes based ranking previously, <laughs> previously on this and both in the manga and in the anime, this is probably the most emotionally affecting scene one top one or two in both manga and anime. It's the most probably the most powerful scene in in, in One Piece, in general. Just Luffy losing his crew, Luffy being broken down into little pieces, uh, and being sent far, far away. And you know, later coming to learn that it was for his own good, it was for his own protection. But at the time, it's the most devastating thing in the world to him, and. Uh, Additionally, we also get uh, Luffy punching uh, a celestial dragon in the face. And another one of the most powerful uh, sequences, one of the most powerful images in One Piece. You know, it's it, like uh, if you had a thesis statement for the entire series of One Piece, like this is what Luffy's beliefs have evolved into. He punches the celestial dragon in the face, trying to, you know, sell his friend into slavery. Uh, that, that, that's that's one piece for you. That that exemplifies one piece. It's, and it's punch, it's, uh, it's punch fascistic overlords. Uh, sure. Yeah. I and mean, I don't know. It, it, it how may else not do you be describe a, the celestial dragon? <laughs> it may not be a full. Uh, and also, we get to see uh, we get the first hint with Rayleigh and Shaki's bar um, talking about connecting it to Gold Roger and, and Luffy expounding that he doesn't want to know what happens at the end. He wants to, like, what what good is an adventure if if the ending is spoiled for you? So that's, you know, that's another thing I strongly identify with. So there's these, and in such a short uh, sequence of time, we're introduced to all the supernovas, we're introduced to Law and Kid in particular. And uh, actually, I really loved, um, I really loved Bonnie's introduction, the way she interacts with Zoro and, uh, you know, getting in, like pretending to get shot in the middle of the road, or pretending having to have, have him get shot with the celestial dragon. So I, um, yeah, this, this arc packs the most emotional punch, the most sort of the the biggest ideas, the most ideas are crammed into a small amount of chapters, and it ends with this emotionally devastating set piece uh, in the entire series. So um, this is the most bang for your buck arc in the entire series, and it's definitely, uh, it's definitely top four for me. It's actually top three because it was well, number yeah. three. But uh, I, I have mine sorted into tiers, so it's definitely yeah, yeah. top tier arc. Yeah. Um so this this was definitely amongst us five the most divisive. Uh Steven, you put it on the other yeah. end of the spectrum at number nineteen. <laughs> Oof. Uh that that might have been a mistake. Well, um, it's too late. You did it's it. It's too late now. Yeah. yeah. Um this arc sucks. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um Man, I guess. Well, all right. Let me try to. <laughs> let me try to remember. Yeah. Both. Let me. Let, well, no. Let me try to break it to to bust it down as much yeah, as I can. Yeah. Bust, um, bust that shit down. Uh, man. Um, this feels like this feels like Steven's coming off a bender. Yeah. <laughs> what did I? Do? Yeah, I gotta, I, what? Well, Steven, oh, last shit. night yeah. you ranked you ranked <laughs> Shavondi Archipelago at number nineteen. He's yeah, like, what? What happened? What, last what, night? Would, what did I have? What did, yeah. What he is wakes this, up in what jail and tiger. That's why. Yeah, That's why they put him in jail. He's in yeah. jail for raiding the Shabani or Capelago yeah. number nineteen. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, by the I way, was, I was living large on Grove nineteen or whatever. Um, Stephen, I, I don't do the outlier stuff before usually, but there's only two other people in jail with you, and that's Thatch and David Bednar. Put it second to last. Oof! <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, um, I think I think David Bednar just doesn't like to cry. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean I I guess if there's if there's one thing you could say, you know, you could go either way on this, but like it it definitely <clears throat> it does not have a like 
it does not tell a full story, I guess I would say, you know, like it's very much like a, uh, you know, it, it, it's almost feels like imp improvisational in a certain way. Like Oda decided, let me, sh let me bring the, the straw hats into this place. And we've just beaten another warlord and we're like, we're hot shit. Here's all these other guys who are also hot shit. Like we're the new generation and, uh, you know, a, like a couple things happen, you know, some events happen and then he's just like, all right. And then scene, uh, and then just, you know, completely throws everything out the window. Um, and, you know, there's definitely, it, it, there's something cool about that, but uh, it is also, you know, in terms of judging it as an arc, I, I do feel like, um, it's so short in that sense that it is hard to, it, it is hard to rank. And I'm sure that's, that's probably what I was thinking when I was, uh, ordering them as, is like, you know, we all have one we like regret, a, Stephen. It's yeah. Fun. Well, it, I mean, it just you know, there there are lots of interstitial arcs like you know, yeah. Logue Town and stuff like that. Where I, I mean, I'm looking at your like, list. I'm looking at your mm -hmm. list right now, and all the ones that are lower, just about with a couple of exceptions, they're all short. They're, they're all little... they're all interstitial. I th I think you definitely yeah. had that in mind. I, I I was definitely waiting, uh, you know, for like overall punch. Uh, you know the the overall volume of uh, good stuff that happens in each arc. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I do think it is a, it is a cool arc and I, I probably, I, you know, not to, not to, to uh, abandon my, my territory here, but you know, I definitely <laughs> probably would rank it higher, uh, you know, if I were to do it again right now, but um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll let someone else. Talk. Circumstances change in the, <laughs> <laughs> the short period of time between now um i ranked it at number seven um and for me this arc like this is this is what a good example of oda just throwing a gigantic wrench in the gears of of one piece um this arc contains like wonder and like um the the like oh this is a cool new location and bubbles and uh cool rides and it's an amusement park and there's and there's all the stuff you love about that in one piece there's the super ser serious and like depressing and reality of the world going on behind it with the human auction and the celestial dragons and you see that side of the world for the first time you have hints that there is that kind of depravity there but this is the first time it's like laid full bare for for the audience. Um, you get the world changing kind of stuff, like Rayleigh being really introduced into the story. Um, Shaki's a wonderful character. Hachi coming back, obviously at the beginning with the Duval stuff, which I guess is uh, technically part of this and, and is fantastic as well. Um, and then seeing that all shattered in the most dramatic of ways i will i always see the gif of it but like the scene in i think it's episode like 504 or something where uh luffy is pounding on the ground or 404 where luffy's pounding on the ground after losing his crew that's right um, 404 it, crew not found crew not found right uh <laughs> i might be wrong about the episode number um <laughs> i know i think we made that joke at the time if i remember correctly uh, we've definitely it sounds right. And also, that episode, I think, is the one that got leaked from Funimation because they just made it a oh, public yeah. URL. No. I think it's the mm. episode where he loses, or the one before he loses the... No, the, the I think group. it was a little bit earlier than that. It was around then. It's during that fight mm. with the... It's not it, important. It was like Am around Amazon Lily. That's when... No, no Amazon Lily is when it, when it... This is not important. Started. It's not, yeah. no. But it's... But, but we were... But... Zach, we were alive in the fandom back. No, then, we so that we was could... our first episode of the podcast was yeah. based on we that. Got, we got that's you right. So, if, to... so, listener, if we you're interested in this, go listen to the first know. episode. Don't listen yeah. to the first <laughs> episode. Don't listen to the first episode. <laughs> Why would you say that, Alex? What I'm trying to say though is, I have a lot of like nostalgic connection with it. It was our first anime recaps were about this these episodes. It was a time in the fandom where you did not know what's happening next. You know, um, it was. It was very frenetic and very emotionally wrought. Um, and also the supernovas, like all this other cool stuff happening around it. Um, I can't believe it's, it's one of those times where you're like, I can't believe this is a weekly comic. Like those, 
you know, even though there are arcs I like more than this that I think were a lot slower, as Ed said, it's the most bang for the buck, I think. I think I don't think there's another arc that has this much bang for the buck um, as Shabadi. Um, believe it or not, Steve and Alex, you, you ranked it exactly the same at number 12. Um, choose amongst uh, amongst you folks. Or speak simultaneously, if you'd like. All right, uh, Steve, I, one, two, I, three. I, Alex, I, I like, like this <laughs> arc. This is my favorite kind of improv. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here you can go. Uh, told me, you told me do things. Then I, I go running. Running. Uh, you go. You go, Steve. I'll I'll uh, bring I, up the rear. What was great about this arc? It was it felt very unpredictable. Like it was not following the the usual you know structure of a One Piece arc at this point. Uh, the stuff with the flying fish riders and Duval was such a. It was a lot of mystery and. It's like, and everyone in the fandom want to know who was Duvall. <laughs> Especially Graham. Then we all found out. Yes. Then we all found out it was Sanji's Wanted poster. <laughs> that was one, that's one of the best gags in one piece as well. That is a very good yeah. yeah. It's did, really good. Did Ayn predict it? Was that- Ayn, he yeah, did. Ayn, did a, Ayn did like a gag strip that that was the reveal, and then he was right. That's yeah, I, I think a lot of people these days are like, oh, I, I, I predicted what they did in one piece and i'm like okay at this point there's so many like yeah. breadcrumbs that it's hard not to predict shit in one piece but back then mm. like yeah. ein really like he yeah. he put himself on the same level as a in terms of humor mm-hmm. uh with that one yeah. So, yeah not everyone gets awesome. oda's humor very well and i would say ein was definitely one of the fan artists back in the day who tapped into that uh but yeah, this was kind of, it just it had a completely different structure with them going to a new land, but then the conflict was trying to outbid a bunch of evil people to get their friend back. Uh, and there was a lot of dread there too. It was another circumstance of things getting worse and worse. And it just followed, it, what was nice is it's, it kind of, I think the reason why it, it follows like a different structure, because this is basically act one of, uh, of Marineford, if uh, guys, I think Marineford uh, is set up like a Kabuki play. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and it's five acts. Um, well, set tomorrow is kind of a Kabuki act. Actor. So this this one kind of doesn't like necessarily like stand on its own as a complete story, but it's a very you know it's a different premise, and it was very refreshing. Uh, the supernovas. Uh, you know, we're captivating and all unique. Uh, we were finally introduced to another admiral in Kizaru. I forgot about Kizaru uh, until we t- I said so tomorrow. <laughs> and I think no one actually foresaw the Straw Hats losing and getting separated among that. Um, so I think that's why this. I, I I think this is why this stands the test of time. And also just that moment of separation. Luffy breaks down. So many people remember that, and they talk about that often as being a moment uh, that you know makes them cry or just really struck a chord. And I think that's you know this why the, that's why this arc um, is as good as it is. Alex, yeah, um, well, well said. Uh, I think the reason that I put this arc um, as high as I did is because uh, you know, as far as all the interstitial or smaller arcs, I think this is probably one of the best or the best one, uh, just because of all the, what happens in it. Um, y'all mentioned all the you know um, weight of destiny, Rayleigh, Shacky stuff, um, and uh, the celestial dragon uh, piece. But uh, the, what what put this arc above is the introduction of the supernovas and how fun that uh, that whole thing is. Um, the chapter where we meet all of them and uh, it's just one crazy devil fruit power after another and they're all so different and we're not even like sure what some of them are like Capone's or um, Hawkins Um, and I I remember uh, for a really long time whenever I like uh, got really drunk I would try to talk to people about One Piece and one of the things that I would talk about eventually is there's a guy who has a T-Rex power. Um, <laughs> Allosaurus, and, actually? Or... Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, who has the T-Rex then if there's an Allosaurus? Ah, I don't know. I feel like someone. Was, 
playing. Uh, I don't know. Let's look at a color episode. spread and determine how Oda was foreshadowing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, this number is 1722, which means in that chapter, blah, 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 T Rex. Uh,. <laughs> The God, I the, feel like I just knocked on like Doc Brown's door, and he's got the big headpiece on. It's like I, I predict how Wano's gonna end. Yeah. Uh, so which Doc Brown was a one piece theorist? Yeah. I, I I normally would actually rank it a little lower just because of how short it is, but it does have the Duval gag. I think it's really great. The Straw Hat separation is pretty compelling. It never makes me cry because it's One Piece, and we just got a new crew member. We just got Brooke. You're not gonna like. I don't know. It's sort of like the end of how the end of um, what do you call it? Avengers Infinity War didn't really do anything for me because Alex, I I, I knew that everybody had like a contract for like three more movies. I'm gonna yeah, be- but yeah, but Hiro Oda didn't walk out at Jump Festa and show a timeline of all the arcs he had. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Alex, the reason I think it wasn't at the time uh, such like an emotional like stunner was movie six was kind oh, of the yeah. same kind of thing uh-huh. and movie six did it a little bit be- yeah no, yeah movie six did it a little better because there's that weird like <laughs> oh man all the straw hats are being assholes to each other why is that yeah. happening and then they sort of like disappear one by one and you sort of see that happen in real time uh to luffy and it's not i wouldn't i wouldn't even call it a retread i do think it's pretty different but um you know it's just everything happens so quickly and uh, when I was rereading it this time around, uh, it's kind of funny that like Rayleigh, ba- like Rayleigh just sort of lets it happen. Uh, so it's sort of like, okay, so there's not like a, there doesn't appear to be a sinister motive behind this. Uh, but I digress. Um, I think, you know, it, it's a short arc and I'm sort of with Steven in the, in the like, you know, camp where uh, shorter arcs are generally on the other end of the spectrum for me, but because this has so much weight, it's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's much else I, I, I want to add there other than I enjoy that arc. Um, oh, the Kizaru and Apu stuff. I just shout out. And, and that made me love Apu that arc, not Wano. <laughs> um, the outliers for this one. Um, can you guess who ranked this one? Number one, probably. Oh, J- Dennis, Jammer? No, you Joe. I don't think Jammer voted. Oh, okay. Yeah, Joe. There's Law. Oh, Joe, Joe ranked this number one. Yeah. Does, wow. J- does Jammer remember where Shabondi Archipelago is? <laughs> <laughs> Jammer, name all of the supernovas that are introduced in Shibondi. Oh, I, uh, I remember. You know what, what guys? Uh, P- Piano Nader. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bonnie, that's that's one, right? Um, I, I remember Kevin what I want to say. The craziest Oda fact, and I don't remember where he mentioned this, but so I might. I'm hoping that this is accurate. Um, is where he said he kind of came up with those characters on the spot. Um, mm-hmm. And Alex, you talk about you know just like oh, and there's a T Rex. Like all of those characters are nuts, and th- and I love how they become super important later. Obviously. That wasn't necessarily what Oda had in mind when they originally came yeah. in, but mm-hmm. I love that that that's the case because they're all fun. Even the worst one of them, Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> Hawkins is a cool power. I think he his does. power is he legitimately does. cool. I, I like. It's like uh, the arcs. It's the weakest of them, not the worst. It's not yeah. bad. It's just not as good as. the I rest. mean, we don't know jack shit about Bonnie though, so I feel like their jury's still out of her. Mom. Or Rouge. Oh yeah, Lucy's mom, mom. Rouge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish. Um, you know, I, uh, before uh, we move on, I do want to say that the anime episodes where um, all of, like the three captains are fighting the navy and yeah. the supernovas are fighting uh, Kizaru, and even the introduction of the supernovas is handled really well, and the fr- and the staging of um, of all of that is really cool, and yeah. they do these cool transitions from one supernova to the next based on where they are. Um, very cool stuff. I really, I really do love watching those episodes in the anime. That was an era um, in the anime yeah. that wasn't wonderful, and they did a good job with that arc. I yeah, think they realized 100%. that it's like, okay, we got to do this right. Um, so I'm sorry, Joe, Nikki, and I think that's it. Ranked at number one. Henry ranked it. Henry Thurlow ranked at number two. Um, everyone else, a V ranked at number four. Um. Abby Denton has to be different, (laughs) ranked at number 17. Um, And we mentioned David Bednar and Thatch already. 
um, in jail with Stephen for crimes <laughs> against the archipelago. Um, so that's going to do it for our hubba hubba category or tier. The peachy, peachy, pafu, pafu category. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe that's how it's translated. Uh, so we're going to take a little break and we'll return with more Ed. Arts of Consequence. We're in the real stuff now, guys. We're in the Arcs of Consequence. The tier is hot tamale. <laughs> the most serious of tiers. We're up to number eight. Uh, this one on our audience poll was ranked at number seven. And it is Whole Cake Island slash the Reverie arc. Um, so this is our first time, like, really talking about this, like, mm. removed from the event. Um, and amongst the five of us, I ranked at the lowest, but everyone else kind of ranked in the same place. And I did, and I didn't rank at super low either. Um, Steven, I'll go with you first. You ranked at number six. Uh, mm -hmm. thoughts on, uh, Whole Cake Island. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Whole Cake Island, I think, is like, it, it's one of those arcs where there's like a few specific aspects about it that I don't like, that just don't work for me, but everything else about it, I absolutely love. Um, I think it is such a fantastic setting, um, you know, just the the concept of uh, all of the different, you know, food related islands is so great. The different, you know, uh, the different children, the brothers and sisters, or the sons and daughters, I should say, who, um, you know, uh, rule over these different areas. Like just the, the way that Oda, you know, set up all of that infrastructure um, is is really neat. Uh, Big Mom is a an incredible villain. I love, you know, she might be my, I think she is my favorite uh, villain in the series um she's she is larger than life in so many ways um and I, I i really have enjoyed her her presence in the the story um there was a lot of payoff in this in this arc i know that you know there was a, a the huge thing that we kept wondering was like when is the tomate box going to blow up um that that was that ha that was like our only lead on big mom prior to this arc starting. Um, and so waiting to see how that was going to come into play was, was really fascinating. Um, I think that there's some really great drama with, uh, you know, with Luffy and Sanji in particular, um, you know, the, 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 the ways that they fight. I, I don't know if I would say that, I, I don't know if I would put it on the level of Luffy versus Usopp a, in Water 7, but I, I do think it is very close and, and it is, you know, uh, kind of similar in concept. Um, but uh, it really, I think, affecting um, stuff between them. I love the the Germa design. You know, like there's just so much creativity overflowing in, in this arc um that i i i find such a joy to um to go through but then the you know the things that hold it back for me that where i can't put it like in the top 5 quite is i i think i i still don't fully buy i i don't fully buy the concept of like let's make this let's make a sanji focused arc that is that feels like it had to happen um it does kind of feel like his extra layer of backstory was not it wasn't solving any burning questions that i had about sanji as a character um even though i you know i've come to accept it and and roll with it i, I still do think that like you know he, he we didn't need this um for sanji necessarily um and i do also feel like some of the pivotal moments of the arc that should have been the most exciting or thrilling i just feel like the execution was off i didn't I, I didn't get the sense of tension that I wanted out of the wedding scene. Um, I feel like it just sort of like things just sort of turned sideways and went to hell. And there was very little there. There was like maybe one page of actual buildup of like, okay, they're going to do the kiss. Like here, here comes the exciting part. Uh, oh, yeah. He didn't really, he didn't milk it the way that I think he should have, or he could have. Um, and, and I also, 
I did. I thought that he could have done something a lot cooler with the mechanism of delivering the cake at the end. Like I, I wanted to see like Sanji kick the cake into Big Mom's face or something like that. You know, something that was a little defiant and like fun, like something that was a nice punctuation mark. Uh, and instead, we just got like Capone j- dropping it on a beach and then rolling off with his, on his tank treads or something. Like it, it was. Yeah, that was weird. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then and then they like, and, you know, and then she sings the song, and the song was awesome, and I, yeah. I I think that was I think that was what Oda wanted the lasting impression of the end of the arc to be, but it, you know it just felt very anticlimactic the way that it it turned out, and those are the, like the things that just sour me on it a little bit because everything else I really really love about Whole Cake Island. I just want to say we're including Reverie in this. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, yeah. you guys can talk about Reverie and and I'll continue cool. my thoughts there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that I, they're, mostly, they're very separate things, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're separate and reverie is a hard one to kind of like, is it its own arc? It's kind of this, these vignettes of, uh, you know, it's mm-hmm. like a scene, um, yeah. that we're, that we're getting, that we're privy to. And so it's kind of difficult to categorize because is it its own arc? Probably not. Is it part of the whole cake Island arc? Also, mm-hmm. probably not. Um, but we know people have strong opinions about that, so we'll we'll talk about Whole Cake Island and then save thoughts on the Reverie. Um, Ed and Alex, you also both ranked it at number six. Um, Ed, do you want to go first? Uh, talk about Whole no, Cake Alex Island. No, Alex can go first. Alex, can okay, go then first. Alex will go first. You talk about it. Sure. Um, I think I ranked this one the highest out of the time skips. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, I uh, we'll talk about Wano when we get there. Uh, yeah, I thought that this was a really great arc. Uh, really do love that it has like a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it's capped by some musical numbers. I really do love the ending so so much, uh, and it has a staff role, like it has yeah. like the the credits role. Yeah. I love that so much. It's got uh, like this really great epilogue um, to every like thing that has sort of happened. The Pedro stuff is really excellent. Um, I'm really, I'd be really disappointed if, um, if Pedro is actually alive, but I guess if we're going to, if we're going to get that reveal, we'll get it in the current running, uh, cover story, uh, with Jerma. Uh, Jerma is a really, uh, fun group of villains, the tokusatsu set. Uh, the fact, the Sanji, okay, so the Sanji stuff, I really do enjoy. Um, did it need to be done? Absolutely not. But I do think that Sanji definitely needed a win uh, since Thriller Bark. Uh, He had just been sort of getting progressively worse, and um, his coolness was sort of overshadowed by Law, the new cool character who joined the crew. So (laughs) I feel like you kind of have to... He needed a bit of a leg up somehow, and having an arc focused solely on him, uh, sure, that's a way to do it. Uh, It was, I think integrating it into with the big mom stuff was pretty smart on Oda's part. And um, I don't think it suffered the way Dressrosa does where it's like too many plot threads in one arc. Uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, they're pretty on the same level. Um, retcon people view as a bad word, uh, but what it stands for, a lot of people I'm not sure really know is retro- retroactive continuity, which literally just means, oh, we're adding more backstory to this, character later on it doesn't necessarily contradict anything that happened in the previous backstory it's just you know an addendum uh that happens later for um you know reasons uh the relationship between sanji and judge is really great because it strengthens sanji's relationship with zeph so much and i Mm. think that uh how i feel about baratier is ma- has been magnified by Whole Cake Island uh, and what Sanji goes through there. Uh, so uh, in a way, it lifts an older arc up for me. Um, I think that's really cool. Uh, so many cool, crazy characters that Oda committed to drawing and giving <laughs> names to. Uh, <laughs> um, even even if like at, the, at some point he sort of loses the loses the plot when it comes to making devil fruits yet again like oh yeah this is a cream based devil fruit and this is like books like it's very uh <laughs> like 
a- at that point you're like okay there's no way devil fruits are ancient at this point it's it, so i you know we'll find out eventually what what the deal with that is but um i think that because it's like a really well contained dark um that's what puts it high for me and it's the first time since the time skip that we've like had a, a villain as compelling as big mom uh, I mentioned, of course, in my Dressrosa uh, screed that uh, Doflamingo uh, couldn't have been more disappointing to me. Uh, but Big Mom uh, is such a Disney villain, and I love it so, so much. Her design is crazy good. Her backstory is chilling to the bone. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like the one character besides Blackbeard that ga- like gives me like a pit in my stomach. Yeah. Um, just how it, how she carries herself. Um, yeah, whole cake is great. I really do love it. And, uh, the reverie, um, I'm glad that we included the reverie within this arc because the reverie isn't, I don't think that it deserves <laughs> its own, like its own arc since it's only like several chapters long, but, uh, the reverie is very exciting. Um, and it's something that I know that we've been talking about for a really long time. Uh, if not, since Fishman Island, definitely before that, because, um, you know, Drum uh, Island, I think was the first time it was mentioned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the, in the mong in the Viz manga, they call it the meeting of Kings at that yeah. point. Um, but yeah, I think it's not, the cool, not the levelly, not the levelly, which, uh, <laughs> is not what it's actually called, despite no. what the manga and, uh, mm-hmm. one piece wiki <laughs> will have, you know, um, um, I have a anyway. question. Uh, when uh, when you use the levelly uh, 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 for installing a shelf, like do, do you see the bubble? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, you have to put that's... a giant straw hat on top of it. That's why. That's where you're having yeah. issues, Steve. Uh, there, one thing um, before I I, I I finish up. Uh, this is the first like when Luffy and and Sanji reunite. Uh, it's the first time that I've cried in the anime in a really long time. Mm. Uh, they really nailed it in the anime, that sequence. I thought it was really, really sweet. And um, uh, the music cue is very nice. And uh, most of the other songs, um, better in the manga, <laughs> I will say. Mm. Uh, the uh. the final, you know, the uh, Soul Pocus song, that stuff, uh, in the anime doesn't, uh, it, visually, it's really cool, but musically, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, mm. Sorry, Koi Tanaka, I love you, bud, but you missed the mark there. I think I think Big Mom's voice though does deserve a shout out. Um, oh, she's great. Yeah, she's, she's super good. Yeah, yeah she's I been. Uh, she, I mean, she was. A, uh, she was Israeli Chan. She's been around forever. Right, 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 right. right. Raleigh, yeah. yeah. I thought you said Israeli Chan. No. <laughs> no. It's, no. it's a different character. Uh, <laughs> Raleigh Chan from Doctor Slump. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, slightly less popular. Um, um, and... What did Sanji go to Whole Cake Island for his birthright trip? <laughs> wow, <laughs> learning a lot about Sanji. He grew up in a Nazi family and went on and became. Yeah. There's a I lot. Know, I didn't know. I didn't know Vin Smoke was a Jewish name. <laughs> I it mean, isn't. it's not. <laughs> yeah, who's the minister of that look, island? Look at look, look at. I mean, look at them. I mean, who's the rabbi of that island? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, Ed, I, please leave this topic. Sure. Um, this is. Uh, this is. This is my oh, top, it's it's. Uh, this is my sh- top arc for the. Uh, yeah, definitely top arc post time skip. So yeah, the the Sanji aspect of it is. Uh, it's interesting to see him, you know, brought solo, and then he, he sees this is like a, a vision of what his alternate future would have been uh, if Luffy, you know. Without Seth and without Luffy, so he he gets to see that, and he, and he tries to f- rationalize a way that he was going to be able to do it because he felt like he had no choice. But um, but the moment what Alex was saying, the moment that when they reunite, that is um, yeah, that's a, that's a really powerful moment, and that really uh, really sort of elevates uh, this arc for me with the, uh, the emotional content. Like I really got into really got into this, the Sanji character. I really felt his sadness and like his despair and his inability to escape his past. And when his past sort of catches up to him, he shuts down a little bit or he shuts down and he, he shuts Luffy out and Luffy's ability to, uh, pry that open and, you know, <laughs> get back together again is, uh, is, is really uh, one of his more admirable, uh, aspects and I really love seeing that here. Big Mom is 
probably one of the most threatening villains, uh, the most fun villains, and one of the more uh, really intelligent villains. Like the way she talks with um, with Jimbe, I think she fully understands the her position of power and her place I- in the world. And uh, but at the same point, also being this is all resting on a, a background of severe emotional trauma that can be, and, she, and she's got this trigger where. You know, a great a great scene where Brooke breaks the uh, breaks the picture of Mother Carmel at, at the wedding is, uh, is is great, and and no one's really talked about this yet, but I think Katakuri really, um, as far as Luffy finding a rival as opposed to fighting a villain, and granted that didn't always work out so well in the manga the way that the the fight was structured didn't always work out, but I think the emotional impact of that fight is that Luffy and Katakuri really came to respect each other, and uh, they, ha- they they sort of see eye to eye despite being in different situations. So uh, Luffy's relationship with Katakuri ultimately might be more interesting to me than his relationship with Big Mom. Like Big Mom is just sort of this antagonist who chases him all over the place, and uh, it's interesting. This is a very very much a running arc. And uh, but it really felt um, you really felt the danger there because of how dangerous Big Mom was towards the end of that arc. Like when Carrot goes so long and like the the way her like her face gets drawn out as she like uses up all of her reserves of power going on this rampage. And yeah, uh, yeah that, that was some really terrifying stuff. Um, and uh, so oh, the uh, the Pedro moment is especially emotional. I think I've described it this way on the podcast before, but it's like watching a character live through a one piece flashback in real time. This is how Carrot becomes a member of the crew. Yeah, having someone extremely Especially. close to her. <laughs> yeah. Having someone close to her die like that. It's a really emotional moment. And uh yeah. It's it's one of those moments that uh one piece crew members are, are you know are, are made out of. <laughs> uh Steve, you put it at number seven. Yeah. Okay. How about, how about that, Sanji? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we it was mentioned earlier. Did Sanji need more of a flashback? No. Am I gonna? Am I gonna object to more Sanji? No. Uh, Alex said, "Yeah, this was kind of like a step in the right direction for Sanji after so much time." Because yeah, yeah, it was rough. It was rough with Sanji. Uh, uh, but I also think this was like the first true home run in the post time skip mm-hmm. that Oda made. I think out of all the arcs, like I have the least gripes with Whole Cake Island. I think this was, I, I thought this was a slam dunk. I, I didn't think I Sanji needed any more to his character, but uh, especially after watching some of the anime recently. It's really good, uh, the backstory. Um, I, it, it's traumatizing. And Judge and his family are bastards. And I love, I love that back in the day when uh, it was revealed that they were uh, warmongers or assassins, depending on how you want to adapt that. Everyone was already thinking mafia, mafia, mafia. And then, boom, Sentai. No one would have. No one could have predicted that, and I think it just goes to show. It's like, man, there's only one Oda, uh, <laughs> and I'm happy because yeah, he could have been like, yeah, they're all. It's like it's the mafia, and you know, and Luffy goes to you know ask him a favor on this the day of his daughter-in-law's wedding, uh, future daughter-in-law's <laughs> wedding, future daughter. Um, so I like that you know Oda's subverting you know some expectations there. I think the creativity that went to the world building of Whole Cake Island is more early One Piece than One Piece had been in so long. Cause I, I, I just, I just think the other islands we saw previously, for, like it, nothing quite compared. Uh, and it was very, it was very Disney. It was very Western and European influenced, and. That's early One Piece, and I think that's why I also really enjoyed this. And also, it wasn't just like the well, we just got to beat up Big Mom. It like the goal wasn't to beat up Big Mom. The goal was to get Sanji and get out of there. So I think the fact that everything wasn't settled with a big fight 
is what makes this even better. Like Sanji didn't even fight. He baked a cake. But Steven's very right. I think Sanji not being there to see Big Mom enjoy it felt very anticlimactic. Um, mm. I, I I will admit to that. I'm trying to think some other faults I had. The, uh, the seducing woods went on for a little too long, but I think yeah. the cracker, uh, in hindsight, I think the cracker fight's very entertaining. And, uh, you know, we talk about some, uh, you know, Sanji and Big Mom. Nami really shines in this arc. Mm-hmm. And I think this is when, like, she really started to climb my ranks as one of my favorite characters. For someone who doesn't get her badass one-on-one fights, every arc, Nami has something important to contribute to the story. And... She's basic. She's the number two to Luffy in this, and it's and it's so and it, it, and she's great. And she gets to show off how smart. Like Oda talks about her being like the second smartest character in the entire series. Yeah. It really, really shows off here. I mean, instead like, of her punching first? her, Beckman. Ben Beckman <laughs> is the smartest. Whoa, ben Beckman. <laughs> I was an SBS. Yeah, it was an SBS. What a wow. smart Ben yes. Beckman. Ben. Yeah, um, Ben Beckman. No, but like, does what does Nami just go swing around her climb attack and defeating a bunch of trees? No, she controls them. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's cool. great. Yeah. Um, it's just a lot of a lot of gut wrenching emotional beats in this. Like the 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 defeated Sanji trying to light his cigarette in the rain. Yeah, is, yeah. it's yeah. meme worthy, but also it's that. such a it's such a great moment. And I know people talk about, oh, this is similar to Robin. And I think some of the complaints might have been one day. It's like, why are we going through these beats again? We went through this with Robin. And I kind of think that's somewhat of the point of this arc. Sanji, once again, and this has always been Sanji's character of kind of just bearing the weight of it all and taking responsibility. And this traces all the way back to Baratier. when he's like, well, I have to work here because I... You know, I owe the old man for saving my life when it's like, well, the reason why he saved your life is because he wants you to go out and, right. you know, experience the world and succeed. So Sanji being like, no, I got to do this that way. You know, nothing bad will happen to the crew or anything. And Luffy's like, shut the hell up and just have faith in me. We'll get out of this. And thus leads to that, like, amazing moment in both. I mean, the fight and then when they reunite in the manga and especially the anime does such a great job. It's also just, it's really fun. Like I said, like instead of just resorting to fights, we got this whole red wedding, you know, mm. uh, ass pull uh, mission. Red velvet wedding. Yeah, red, red velvet, velvet. wedding. That's, I think we called it. The yeah. yeah. Uh, Bege is amazing in this. He's he's such a yeah. cartoon character. Yeah. Chiffon family is man. great too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's I, a family guy. I want to talk <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the introduction of one of the most important characters in One Piece. We've seen him recently. Big news Morgans. Uh just his addition to Thank One you. Piece. Someone makes, says it. Yes, he <laughs> makes the big moments bigger. He's an intriguing character on his own like being invited to the wedding along with all these other mm-hmm. miscreants, but out of all of them, he's the one who is uh who's really shined and just Add spice every time. Uh, every time he's in there, it's a good time. And Steve, did you have more? Yeah, I just want to give more and just give final praise to uh, Big Mom. Uh, you know, because I think you know, because Hody was a dud. Uh, Caesar was you know like a joke, uh, and Doflamingo kind of disappointed me. Uh, Wait, don't you mean? Ga- gangster guest, you know? yeah. I guess he don't get the redemption. Yeah, here. I think you mean gangster guest. No, not yeah. him. He's a he's a gas, uh, right? She's a real gas. No, but Big Mom was so entertaining. And like Alex said, like on a Disney level, like she was charismatic, funny, intimidating, all of that. And yeah, I just, I think this was Oda finally, you know, it, it, it kind of, it was kind of like back to basics and he was doing what maybe didn't turn a lot of people onto One Piece in the beginning, but it definitely turned me onto it. And I think it was just a success. And I think, just where it was, you know, post time skip, it was elevated because of that. Um, so I'm last to go here. I ranked it at number eleven. Um, and you know, through this discussion, at first I was like, "Oh, I regret it. I love Whole Cake Island. There's all this good stuff." But there are, I mean, first of all, the ten above them, I think, all deserve to be above Whole Cake Island. And it's it's a great arc in that I think it completely um 
it feels like it's going to be like a regular this is going to be a by the numbers one piece arc yes crazy landscape you know here's the villain here's the this we're going to do this but it, it like turns into a complete shit show um which is fantastic the i think the arc is a little bit interesting in that i think the the stakes and the um the energy of the arc peak with the wedding and kind of start you start going into that uh running around and trying to escape thing i i think it definitely feels like the arc kind of you know okay now we're getting into the kind of the normal kind of stuff um but the the st- big mom i th- i agree with steven um if i can't say she's my favorite villain in one piece now i don't i don't know what it would take you know like she's fantastic um katakuri is is a great villain um i know there's a lot of people out there who are like how did you only mention him once up to this point um i will say that i feel like that fight really when we went week by week really felt like it dragged but i'm not but that does not mean that it was not a good fight um it, it was a good fight i thought the end was fantastic where he puts the hat on uh on his face like mm. there's a lot of emotional weight to it it's like a it's a fight between rivals and not enemies um you know so to speak they they didn't hate each other they didn't they weren't fighting for you know differences in belief they were fighting you know to be, you know luffy had to fight him and katakuri had to fight luffy um I, I like that. That's different than what we usually get. Uh, the humor in the arc is is some top notch stuff. We we talked about Capone. The we talk about the gangster Gastino thing. I remember we were like, is that just Caesar in the background when we see the mm-hmm. where we see the two page spread, and the fact that he was reintroduced with the gangster Gastino, but it still says Caesar Clown in the little letters. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of my favorite jokes uh, in the series. Um, it's I, I don't know if I have too much else to add other than the reason it's a little lower and I, Steve did a good job defending it, I think, is that a lot of the beats do feel like rehashes. Um, they they feel like redone versions of, of the same story. They're not done poorly, but they still feel like, OK, couldn't we have done something new here? Uh, Sanji's flashback, like line for line, has the Robin stuff. The you will find friends somewhere else out there on the sea, I think, is a line for line thing Saul said. Um, we have the fight between Sanji and Luffy. Yes, not at all the same or in the same circumstances, but feels like a rehash. Um, and, and you have stuff like that. You know, I will say it does have two, uh, two of my favorite moments or things Jimbei putting down that sake cup saying denounce yeah you know, like i'm i'm done with you is one of the greatest moments in the series um and at the same time brooke with ripping off the balloon mask i think is mm. one of the funniest things ever whenever oh my god he's god. ripped off his face um funny. oh that's or, what i want to mention or like Brooke. the very last uh bit in that chapter where uh you just see his head peek up uh the fake luffy yeah. mask yes mm. Yes. Right before he's been a smash Smashes the, uh, the thing. Uh, Brooke, so funny. Brooke, both comedically and uh, story-wise, shines in this. Jimbei shines in this. Carrot shines in this. Uh, Nami shines in it. Like, all of the secondary characters are just... Not tertiary... Well, secondary and tertiary characters are just so superb in this arc. Last but not least, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention our favorite character of Whole Cake Island, King Baum. Mm-hmm. Um, Steven, I'm sure, I, I'm sure you accidentally forgot to mention him, your favorite character. In oh, One he was Piece. included in everything, uh, okay. you know, just unspoken. Unspoken. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, he, he was so fun to, uh, to translate. <laughs> and I, you know, I think it was very clear, uh, especially when we were going through week to week that I was having a lot of fun with that. <laughs> you were so. having, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna say this. You were having too much fun. Too much fun. Um, yeah, he was well, the root of your enjoyment. Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was the apple of my eye. Yeah, I don't want to branch off too far here, but maybe we should root ourselves back into the discussion. Um, and last but not least, the the reverie stuff was shocking every week. Um, I I do agree. I, I I we got some complaints that we didn't make it its own arc, but I really 
it feels wow. like a in media rest kind of thing. We're just kind it's of like seeing four a little chapters. Bit. Yeah, like, yeah. It's it's so short. Like yeah. it, there, there's. It, it's great to see all the characters come back, and also to see the, the you know the new characters. Obviously, we had a ton of fun with that as well. Um, but like, yeah, I, I and I feel like. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm conflating the, uh, you know, the quote unquote reverie arc with the other like chapters that were in Wano when, um, you know, we found out that like there was some shit that went down at the reverie yeah. also. Yeah. But like, I, I feel like that stuff is like the other foot that we're waiting, the, the shoe that we're waiting to drop where it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to like properly assess what happened yeah. at the reverie since we don't actually know um, for sure. Uh, with all of you know the aftermath stuff that happened it so. is it is very that i think out of all of them was the is the most difficult to categorize because it doesn't mm. it doesn't like it doesn't belong in a specific place and i feel like it detracts from the discussion of the others um but i mm -hmm. think it is also important to it was a very crazy time um mm -hmm. in the story and i think the most interesting thing is that it's really the beginning of the end, and that is, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of that kind of level of um, of craziness to come. Yeah, probably and, and soon. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that 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 was around the time when, like, when Oda would give his, um, you know, jump festa comments yeah. and things to that nature. He started talking about like, yeah, it's going to be ending, and I remember that he had that thing where he was like all right, we're getting to the end of Whole Cake Island and then we're going to go to Reverie and then we're going to go Wano. And, you know, I I don't yeah. remember how much longer it took to do that than he actually said, but, you know, he was, it was, he was setting us year. up for that. It was, yeah. like, you could tell he was like, okay, I got to wrap this up. Because he, yeah. he said, we're going to be going to Wano this year. And yeah. everybody was like, what? There has to be, like, a two-year Reverie arc. Like, they have to <laughs> sail back to the, you know, Mary Jo or whatever and... And I think we were. We all don't like, go backwards. No, I, like no. for, I, I mean, this is this is a personal sticking point. They are not going backwards, at least not until they get to the end. Then there's nowhere yeah. else to go, I guess. But I, th I think the idea that the idea that the Straw Hats had to be at the Reverie is cockamamie. Yeah. Um. It's it's not a place for pirates. It's a place for talking and deliberating, and nobody <laughs> wants to see that in a pirate manga. <laughs> <laughs> Luffy goes to the referee. Rabble, rabble, rabble. That's literally what he says. Um, I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. <laughs> uh, 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 oh. Before we continue, watch I, your I ass. want to. <laughs> you watch your ass. I want to mention uh, that uh, I was thinking about this the other day how Oda split up the crew members between Dressrosa and Whole Cake. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he did it in a, a very interesting way where you have, like, you know, uh, like. So Zoro and, you know, Usopp and Frankie and Robin, they got, you know, some chances to shine in Dressrosa. But then you have, like, you have Nami and you have, like, you have some of the weaker characters, Nami and Chopper and, to a, an extent, Brooke. Um, but then you're also given, uh, as bonuses, Carrot and, and Pedro to go along with it. And I think it, it, uh, Oda did a really great job of balancing... Um, uh, how to use how to how to utilize uh, the straw hats that came with Luffy to Whole Cake Island? Um, much more I, I than in Trust Versa, was, I think. Yeah, it was, it, it was much better utilized. They definitely had more, a little more to do. Oh yeah, Jinbei too, and uh, oh, yeah. I think that one of the most frustrating things was Jinbei not joining oh, God. at the end. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, yeah. I love, I do love the moment when he joins in. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I still yeah. don't get why. I don't think it was worth that. I don't. I don't get it. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess whatever. I guess he couldn't have blended into Wano, and maybe yeah. that's one of the things. Is, hey, yeah, maybe I'm Jimbe. I'm a. I'm an I'm Oni. A, I'm a yeah. I'm a, I, well, I, and then again, Brooke he, he is a skeleton walking around, and he they would have said out. he was a Kappa instead, and then he can't yeah. do the Kawamatsu yeah, story yeah, yeah. or so, something. Yeah. I don't know what he was thinking, but I they, don't know. They think it's like, oh no, Ashra Doji is a zombie. I, I think like the they the whole cake island body. arc was such a Jimbe like Fishman Island was the first shot okay but we'll, I'll wait I'll I'll bite this time but then whole cake island he really shined and still still um mm -hmm. okay anyway uh Blue outliers balls. uh who ranked this highest Vero ranked the whole cake island arc highest um no, for number two Sam uh, did. Sam, uh, where they rank it at? 
at number one. You didn't say, okay, you oh, didn't zero. Say one. Yeah, you just said yeah. the highest. You just you said didn't the say highest. A number. Oh, number one. Wow. Holy shit. I mean, not, not that surprising. I think it's a really good arc. Yeah. Uh, Sam ranked it at number two. Uh, Donnie and Dan Dockery ranked it at number three. Uh, who ranked it the lowest? Can you guys guess? Um, oh, is it Roger? No, it's Abby Denton. Uh, <laughs> at, wow. at number, t- <laughs> a number 20. <laughs> and Brodsky actually at 21 uh, ranked it a little bit lower. Oh, How- you, can't, uh, you can't just lie to us like that, Zach. <laughs> no, I noticed it after I said it. Um, but it's I, I around the same. I, yeah. Abby keeps coming up on the on the yeah. like uh, outliers. the weirdest outliers. It's so great. It's killing me. Thatch uh, Thatch is number twenty one um, for Whole Cake Island. Uh, what did Roger Roger? I feel like loved it at the time. Eleven. So where I ranked it. Um, no, I remember. I thought Roger didn't like Whole Cake, but he loved the Reverie. So it's a little. Uh, mm. Oh, you think? Th- I thought yeah. he liked Whole Cake at the time. Well, no, he was I on every a, week he, at the time. He's no, a big, but, big mom fan. So. Yeah, yeah. I thought he loved that song. Like the arc. Yeah, and Big News Morgans is in that arc. Like that's that, true. I feel like that. That's Roger bait. I don't know what you call that. I don't know, uh, Roger. If you're listening, you can you can, you can uh, chime in, comment, yeah. or whatever. I, I don't know if he's listening. Um, <laughs> all right, so that's it for Whole Cake Island. Um, that may also do it for our recording this evening. <laughs> we still have the top seven to go. Since we last recorded, we have, I think, almost doubled our audience responses. So Ooh. you could probably uh, just ignore everything I've said so far about the audience. But this one, number 14 from the audience. Ooh. So, like, right in the middle, uh, ver- or actually a little lower than the middle. Um, very surprised by that. Um, but th- but there it is. Um, and last time this arc ranked number, uh, six. So we seem to feel the same way about it. And that's, what's important. Mm -hmm. The number seven arc is drum Island. Um, the person who put it, (laughs) I can't believe they put that 14th. Yeah, Um, I can't. Right. Like I'll say it right now. It's, it's an old man arc. (laughs) It's bullshit. Even though I was a young man. No, yeah. Discovered it. I still remember watching that with you guys when we first started this podcast, and we were younger, older men. I'm mad uh, at this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, first of all, ignore the audience ranking because the full final version will it's come Waffle's out. Because Waffle's not hot. Is, is, that, is that it? First I mean, of all, not hot. Waffle's very hot. He's he 29 years he old. Down. He's 29. Um, he, he listened to that Wesley Willis song, I'm Sorry That I Got Fat. <laughs> I, no, I so I just I just want to say the numbers will likely change, but um, I I rate I rank this the highest. I rank this number two. Um, so let me explain myself and why I love the Drum Island arc. It is I think the perfect little arc is how I would describe it. It is perfectly encapsulated. It does all the things I want of a One Piece arc. It makes me cry. It has a great story. It has great characters. Great supporting characters. Um, in the anime, unbelievable music, generally a really cool setting um, that I that I really enjoy and is unique. And, and the setting becomes important in its own way, the way it looks um, at the end of things. It's just like, I can't think of a single thing I don't like about this arc. If I turn on One Piece and I just want to watch random One Piece, it's going to, and for like not a really long extended period of time, I'm going to throw on the Drum, drum Island arc. Um the longer I think about it, the more I love this arc. This is like aged like the finest of wines um, and and has only moved up in my list over the years. Like last time, I think I, where did I even put it? It wasn't, it was not number two, it was number three. So it's only moved up. Um, I, I like, I don't even have much else I want to say about it. Um, Alex, you put it at number three. So you're you're pretty close to, to where I am there. Yeah, I think I had a similar uh situation where um i uh definitely have thought about it more and more and the more i watch it the more i read it like the more i think it's a really great perfect um perfect little 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 arc um it's its own story it has like one of the most grueling flashbacks one of the most uh hateable villains yep uh it's got you know some some decent fights but really it's like uh there's a lot of really cool character moments in it that um, 
that you don't really find anywhere else. Uh, you've got Usopp and, and Vivi kind of as a duo, which I think is a really cool dynamic. His nose uh, specifically. I mean, that becomes a running thing, sort of. Yeah. Like yeah. a Vivi plus Usopp's nose. Like she'll always grab, <laughs> like gravitate towards it. This is like not just in drum, but like everywhere else. Yeah. Um, but Luffy and, and Sanji have like some really fun moments when they're coming, when they're like going up the mountain uh, and they're just sort of shooting the shit. It's uh, it, something I kind of clocked this time around that I, I'm like, wow, this is really great character moments where you just sort of like, just uh, you pan out a little bit and relax and you get to see these fun interactions. Zoro's not in this arc a whole lot, but you don't really need him because Chopper sort of carries most of the weight here. He's um, also hilarious for oh, yeah. what he is yeah. in. Like he is very funny in this arc with Karu. There's a team. <laughs> That's true. That everybody's sort of a team here. Uh, I guess Nami is with Kareha, and that's kind of a fun yeah. little dynamic. Well, and, and Chopper, you're not. We're, I feel like we're not talking about Chopper as much so far. Well, we'll get to Chopper. He's <laughs> we'll he's get the to star. Chopper. Yeah, yeah, he is the star. The reason for the season is birthday is December twenty fifth, right? <laughs> Four. yeah. Fourth, fourth exactly. or fifth? Is it fifth? I don't know. Fifth, Whichever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I really love. Um, I really love Chopper's story. It's 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 a uh, it's a universal thing that I can totally show anybody who isn't into anime and they'll love it. Yeah, it's a cool thing. Yeah, I agree. Ed, you and Steven both put it at number uh, seven, so you you were you agreed with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is uh, an instance of where Oda draws or he depicts such a a, uh, a villain with no redeeming qualities really sort of embodies the worst uh like attributes that i think oda sees in society and projects those onto a villain as opposed yeah. to doing like don krieg is a cartoon villain <laughs> even arlung is you know there, there's a little more uh behind like critique behind that but he's still he's a cartoon villain mr three you know but uh, Wapol is uh b being like the leader of a country i think oda sort of starting to take out his Issues on the government, which have sort of popped through up until this point, but I think, you know, his his worldview comes through, I think, more clearly in this arc. Uh, great gags in this arc, like the gag with the hiking bear and um, yeah. <laughs> the part at the uh, like where Sanji and Luffy are heading up the mountain and without talking, they're dodging lapons. That's yeah, I another that. great gag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chopper hiding behind half of a uh, half of a wall, exposing most of his body. <laughs> Uh, trying to hide, it just and just his reactions to um, the crew on their initial meeting, especially the way that goes in the anime. The anime, I think, adds a lot um, to this arc, even if it differs slightly in uh, construction. I think the way they do it in the manga works for the manga, but um, yeah, the the flashback in the uh, in the anime they use uh, great. Uh, this is a great use of. Um, I guess it's romantic music. It's not classical music. It's romantic music using. The Ave Maria, uh, yeah. which uh, they, they stopped doing after the Baroque Works arc. And I, I wish they would do that some more, um, yeah. using like old older music like that. It, it's but, not um, like it costs money to, what do you call it, uh, license those usually. You know, we can't just steal from the Soviet Philharmonic anymore, <laughs> uh, like we used to. Um, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, oh, and um, I think uh, the story of Dalton, is uh so it's it is you're right it's it's a very old man arc and i think people are attracted to dalton's character because of his uh you know like his steadfastness and his you know really sort of um positively masculine traits like his caring nature and uh i don't know he's really sort of a deeply drawn character and he's a man who's not afraid to show his emotion as a lot of men in one piece are but uh it's it's interesting to see the stereotypical uh you know barrel-chested manly man but he's also this caring nurturing leader who is the kind of person who is deserves to run a country as opposed to this feckless little king they have son Which of it, like he was he was inherited right. it and then just yeah and used it for yeah. his own self and if you yeah. and if you watch the movie the lamer son yeah that's <laughs> I forgot about that i i think steve you and i also were talking about i think the other night, I, f I, I forget if it was with you or with someone else, but like the last, I feel like politics has become much more inherently a part of One Piece, particularly in, in later um, arcs. Um, and I think Ed and Alex make good points about uh, the Drum Island arc being kind of this 
uh, for like the first time we see like an inherently political um, or societal. It, film. It's like the Steven, first. Sorry. It's the first king we've seen, isn't it? Because everything else is just like yeah, villages, village. yeah. yeah, or yeah. Nezumi being a corrupt naval official. Yeah. yeah, it it does open up the world like that, and that's mm-hmm. the first instance of like the reverie, and yes. we get to mm-hmm. kind of find out more about Vivi's father as well. And Dragon um, and Blackbeard are like also kind of weaved in there. Yeah, it's it's a, it's it's um. Uh, this is also the first time we find out that Roger, uh, it, his name is Gold D. Roger, which mm. I still mm. think sounds stupid, but <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Obviously, it carries a lot of weight, and yeah. you know it was sort of like a like it's like okay, that's not a real name, but whoa, that's <laughs> that's that's interesting. And something that I, I I noticed this time around during my read through that like oh yeah, we haven't really explored how Koreha knows Roger the way we have like Crocus mm-hmm. and and Rayleigh and and all them. So I think that's, that's kind point. of interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially since she's one hundred and forty one years young. One hundred and thirty nine. <laughs> Well, now, in yeah. the in the arc, I think now she's one forty one. Yeah. Um, sorry. So Stephen, you ranked at number seven. I want to give you first. Uh, yeah, first I mean, bat. I think well, to 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 try to look at it from a different perspective, I think the only thing this arc really lacks, you might say, is I I guess a more like tension providing villain or you know kind of group group of villains like what Walpole I think is like his his powers make him somewhat menacing for for a certain period of the arc but for the most part when you kind of look back on drum i I do feel like you know the the, he only has like really the two followers and they're they're kind of goofy um and and so it doesn't you know it doesn't have that like real high stakes feeling but everything else about the arc is so good that like i never even really think about that you know when i'm sort of uh judging it as a uh, as as a story um it's such a well realized um location i love the all you know the 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 variation between these little these kind of like sleepy little towns and then the forbidding mountain itself um or mountains um you know the 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 rigors of like climbing up there and then you have this this weird almost like storybook castle with with like the witch and her like you know mysterious reindeer pet companion thing like it's such a it's such a cool kind of fairy tale um sort of setting and um obviously uh you know all the all the stuff about chopper's backstory and and stuff is it's so emotionally done it's so it's so touching it's so gut-wrenching and um it, it really gets the most out of its cast of of characters i feel like um you know you could say this about a lot of arcs pre time skip especially like pre uh let's say like pre water 7 or so like you know he he really gets the most out of a smaller group of characters as opposed to post time skip where he you know just invents as many characters as he possibly can and then can't find the time for uh, enough time for any of them um you know i feel like uh all the 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 roles of the characters in this arc are are really well rounded so yeah it's just uh it is a gem of an arc it, everything comes together um so well in it and uh um since we haven't mentioned it too i know brian would uh would kill us if we didn't point out that the framing of uh the flashback happening while luffy oh, yeah. is stretching back to deliver the punch to wapole you know everybody loves like luffy slugging uh bellamy in in jaya but like this, this hit against Wapol is like kind of the first example of just like a really good one hit KO uh, kind of thing for for Luffy and, and the way that that is uh, f- you know the 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 entire um, heart of the the arc being told to you in flashback uh, while Luffy is in the process of doing this to Wapol makes that you know that snap back to the present. Uh, hit so much harder like it's a really a really clever uh choice on his part yes Stephen. i was gonna say even though the villains aren't you know on the par with a lot of the villains we we know about and care about the most they it was definitely one of the most cathartic victories because mm-hmm. wapple is just a bastard yeah. uh alex yeah uh to expound a little bit on that i think that um, the cool thing about Wapple is that he makes up for his, like, you know, the stakes that he has on our heroes with the stakes that he has on the townsfolk of the country and yeah. the 20 doctors. Like, 
when he returns, everybody is in a huge panic because oh god, Wapol's back. We're mm-hmm. we're screwed. He's the king of this country. Like there's really it's sort of absurd that Luffy uh, sent a king flying. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that's I, I think you sort of uh, you switch one thing with another there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. S- Steve. Oh, sorry, Stephen. Go ahead. Oh, I was, I was going to say, like, last little little thing that's really cool is I, I think he he starts to get really good around here at um, like CD, uh, like uh, slipping in really subtle uh, like foreshadowing of things. Um, you know, we mentioned uh, stuff like the the reverie being mentioned, but also that it this is where we first hear about what, you know we don't know it, but it's Ace um coming to to town and like little little details like oh yeah it was a strangely warm day that day uh which you would not you know yeah, look twice yeah. at um but you know in retrospect it's like oh that's so cool that's such a good little touch that he did yeah i like that um steve you ranked at number nine um so yeah talk about it uh what has not been covered yet is the question uh it's just a very tight, solid arc. Uh, I think, despite it being in the middle of a huge storyline involving Baroque works and Alabasta, it feels like a self-contained story. And I think that worked to its... I think Toy realized that when they did a movie adaptation of it. I think they learned their lesson with Alabasta and they tried something smaller. And I think it worked much, much better. Uh, this arc is just... It's really good. One of the most emotional arcs. It's one when I rewatch it for sure. I cry a bunch of times. Uh, but I, I think it's just it's it's a really good story. I that I think you could pitch to a non One Piece fan. I think. I I just think it's like a, to me. It's one of those stories. I feel like you don't have to read One Piece check out this story though you know this little story arc because everyone most people are familiar with what chopper is uh inspired by you know rudolph the red-nosed reindeer and all that uh it's a pretty easy uh uh story character story to wrap your head around um but it's just it's very mature in the way it handles uh politics and it's like politics and you know corrupt you know you know just terrible uh tyrants and monarchies um uh dealing with mortality yeah it's i i think it's just it, it hits a lot of notes and it hits them with a lot of gusto uh and like hero look is a great uh character too because he's kind of like the the one piece equivalent of like doc brown where he's like frantic and and like definitely kind of suspicious but uh he's you know he's at least you know a little bit capable uh and it's you know he's a great that that's a great mentor figure uh for chopper who i don't think we've really talked about him enough in his introduction arc like what an adorable (laughs) iconic especially back then when he was the yeah chubby adorable and i it when I saw pictures that this little like reindeer was in the straw hats, I thought like I thought it was so unique and interesting because it wasn't just a bunch of anime characters. It was also like and, and then there's this little Pokemon here, um, <laughs> voiced by Pikachu. Yeah, and yeah. It, it wound up having you know it's like it's such a rich backstory. Uh, I, I th- this is an arc I could always I feel like I could just throw it on like i don't have to rewatch one piece but i can rewatch drum and i could probably do it in one sitting or two and it's always worth it. and i'm sorry i'm saying watch all the time because i definitely have watched it more than i've read it but it's i i think it's i i that's what i like about it is i feel like it's just it stands on its own really well and i can't say that about even some of the best arcs that are to come in this discussion. And I think that's uh, one of the things I like most about this arc. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if there's much else I want to add other than recently watching and also having read summit of the gods. I just also love the, that setting so much. I think Alex may have touched on it, but just like the, 
the stuff with Luffy is so visceral. That's um something we kind of mentioned, but like I think is um the the real the real villain in this is is uh the real villain for Luffy is nature and getting through <laughs> that and that's a really cool and different different for One Piece particularly. Yeah, um, that that really hit me on my my recent reread like last year or so that like I I didn't remember Luffy climbing the mountain being so grueling. Yeah. Um and it's it's really cool to go back to. The anime it's I the think finger, really it's the fingernail it's yeah. the fingernail. <laughs> fingernail scene. That's yeah. that's that's always what gets me. <sighs> yeah. That means um, poor coat. <laughs> I I think it's really interesting how Oda gives Luffy some handicaps when it comes to certain villains. Uh like Sanji has a broken back. He can't help. Yeah. Um, and Luffy you is... can't fire the cannon because there's birds in it or in the door. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah. I think it's really funny that Walpole doesn't really get a chance to go full power mode. It's, uh, yeah. It, it's he doesn't deserve because, to. Yeah. I mean, that's what the, that's what the movie's for. He pulls yeah. one of the great yeah. faces yeah. Uh, as well in, in One Piece history. That's oh, true. Yeah, that's yeah, like the first. Face. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the first of the really good ones. Yeah. The first enter face, really. Yeah. Um, I want to touch a little bit on the art of the manga and say that this is the last, like this sort of, this arc is sort of the end cap of Oda's like grand line art before like Alabasta sort of, uh, he changes up the art a little bit when he reaches Alabasta. Mm. Um, this is something that I just not- noticed, like how the art sort of gets a little more angular once you hit Whiskey Peak. And then once you hit Alabasta, um, it becomes a little more, um, I don't know. I'm not gonna say I know lady, what you mean. But- yeah. A little less, scratchier, um, yeah. A, a little scratchier, a little less uniform when it comes to certain things, um, which isn't a bad thing necessarily, but it's just something I, I noticed uh, with his artwork this time around. And it's the last time we see Chopper looking like this. <laughs> um, I mean, he slowly transforms and then becomes a completely different looking character. But I love Chopper. I mean, that though. happened. It happened to Iggy in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So. Oh, did it? Um, okay, I want to go through where other people rank this arc because the next one we're probably going to talk about a little bit. Um, the old men. Uh, so let's see who are the who are the older people we have. Brian comes to mind because <laughs> he ranked at number thirteen. Um, so I'm I'm a little surprised about that. What are you doing, Brian? Um, what other who who else uh, constitutes this this bracket? You guys tell uh, me, Joey. so I'm not. He's old. Yeah, Joey. Um, Joey. Um, Joey ranked at number three. Dennis. There you go. Dennis. Den- Dennis is younger than us, isn't? I'm so is Joey. I think. Um, Dennis is. I don't think so. Yeah. Joey's yeah. older than than me. Um, Dennis ranked at number five. Mm-hmm. Um, who ranked at lowest? V ranked at fifteen. Um. Everyone's pretty. Uh, th- we have a good group here. I think everyone understands it's a good arc. Mm-hmm. At least it's in the middle for everyone. Like no one has it really low. Uh, Nobody has it last, which I no. would, like through my computer. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think we'd fire them on the spot. I think that's only fair. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Waffles not hot enough. <laughs> I'm not surprised Joey had it in his top three because, you know, he knows about having like cute little animal guys. Yeah. Uh, you know. That's his brand. Yeah. And exactly. that's why I love Joey's brand. <laughs> All I want are cute animal guys. That's the um let's move on to number six. Um this one on the audience ranking was number is currently number three. Um does anyone here is. have a prediction as to what this is? Could could, could you define this as not um, being finished? Is it one yet? <laughs> I'm Yeah, I can define it oh. like that. Damn, because I was going to say Marine Ford, but uh, <laughs> I, I guess I mean, we know that. still going on in our hearts, right? I mean, uh, the answer is indeed Wano. Um, mm. So we're going to discuss Wano, um, which is our number six arc. Let's see who ranked it highest. An arc that has an ending. <laughs> well, to be fair, Eventually. we're like we're really, really close. We're really close. I think yeah, that, yeah. like, I think I don't what, feel what complete- if. Uh, yeah, sorry, Zach, Steve. What if what if Ryo Kuku, uh, uh shows up and reveals like you've been dreaming this entire time? <laughs> Wake <laughs> up, Patrick time Duffy. for it. Like would go up. Act it would go up. It would be Hold number on. one. Is, is Ryo is Ryo Kuku played by Patrick Duffy in this version? <laughs> uh, so I am surprised by who ranked Wano highest here. I would not have picked this group. Um, Steve and Steven both 
put it at number four, the Steves. Um, why? Why are you surprised? I'm curious. No, I just <laughs> yeah. like if I had to choose amongst us, who would put this highest? I didn't. I did not think Steve would have put this highest. So, Steve, I want to. I want to hear why you think Wano is the number four arc in One Piece. I I definitely I, I thought a lot about this uh, because I you know recency bias is a thing, but also uh, having a legacy is uh, you know a legacy bias is also very much a thing. Um, is that really a bias? That just feels like evaluation. <laughs> I just I I just think like. <laughs> It's like I definitely didn't. Uh, of course, I didn't obviously say Wano was the best arc, and I think that's because right now it well it does all it does so many great things, but it it still needs to stand the test of time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm pretty confident that it will stand the test of time and go down as one of the greatest arcs. Uh, uh I'll tell you this much: I think anything positive we're gonna say about the rest of these arcs. Wano has all of that. Uh, how how can I fault an arc that has uh, such a unique location uh, with so much thought put into the world building there? Uh, tons of new memorable characters. Uh, so many great gags. So many emotional moments. Uh, one of the greatest flashbacks of all time. Uh constant lore dumps uh satisfying payoffs um great fights uh brilliant art uh iconic moments i wano has all of that but the thing is wano is so freaking long i don't think there's any way we could possibly cover every single thing about it but i think like i i'm gonna have to see how i feel years from now uh removed from wano but i thought like how could I not rank Wano high because it has so much going on in it and it did so many things right? Maybe you know, pacing is an issue for sure. I think there's some there's some lulls. Well, I don't necessarily think we're bad, but it was just yeah, like you know, this is not some of my favorite uh, moments of the arc. And I think Onigashima is a blast, but also. There was there's so much there's there was so much going on in that raid in that final battle. I don't think uh, I I don't think fights and conflicts had nearly enough time to really uh, blossom. Like ironically, some, given the size of the arc. Yeah, like as yeah. as as someone just said uh, about Drum, I think it was Stephen. There's yeah you know, there there's like a hand only a handful of new characters. But in doing so, everyone has, you know, plenty of shine. Well, maybe not, you know, Chess and Kui Marumo. Uh, but, yeah, who cares? <laughs> but Wano, th- th- there's so many freaking characters. I'm not going to be able to recite the names of them also because they're like Japanese names and they're hard for me to remember. But this is like, this is an like the like epic arc when you think of epic arcs. Um, like how I, I, I just think about in hindsight. I'm like, we had so much fun covering this arc on the podcast for four years now, <laughs> and it's mostly positive memories. Like I, you know, there's probably there was some times where I was like, eh, yeah, this was all right, or I don't really care right now. Like I remember not really being too invested in um yasui's like death i was like i just i don't care about these characters but that you know uh age helped me care more about that character in more context of course because we didn't even have odin's flashback yet at that point this is just i don't know this was like wano was something that was wano was like the opposite of fishman island where it was hyped up for so long but it just met all that hype uh and far exceeded my expectations and you know, factoring the anime real quick, it was the turning point for the anime to kind of really up in quality, and it's left such a positive impact on the series, and I think the fandom too, because I think uh, I haven't seen like the fandom so uh, energized by an arc since Marineford, 
and I'm not, and that's not a slight on all those other arcs in between, but this was like such like a, I don't know, like this was, th- th- this was, uh, I don't know, like heat incarnate. Uh, it was, it's very satisfying. Uh, but I'm curious what other people have to say. Stephen, I want to hear yours since you also ranked at number four. Um, yeah. So, you know, uh, when Steve was listing all of the things that Wano has, you know, the great, great characters, memorable characters, like great storytelling, beautiful art, uh, amazing setting, all that stuff. <laughs> the the wonderful thing about Wano is that it also has the inverse of all of those things as well, because it's so long that it has some really dumb characters. It has some moments that don't look very good. It has like some stuff where you're like, why did we need this? Um, <laughs> it, it's yeah i mean it, it really is like its own series within one yeah. piece um mm-hmm. and uh, for- uh, that's how i feel yeah i, I feel like and i'm like oda could have just n- done this story outside of one piece this mm-hmm. is like like not saying the straw hats have no stakes in this but you know like this really doesn't involve luffy that much other than taking down the emperor's but mm. the fact that he just included it in the one piece is uh insane. But continue. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like yeah, just the the sheer volume of of everything in in here uh you know the the how richly he created and kind of developed the different areas of Wano um you know to to flesh it out as a as a place um is uh, astounding. Um the all of the different odd little characters, like all of his homages to, uh, you know, Rakugo stories and just like those kind of like, you know, Meiji and Edo era, like sort of town characters, um, all of the the people that we meet um, with like Frankie's like, um, you know, wild goose chase uh, for the plans to the, uh, you know, the Sh- uh, Kaido's palace or whatever, the Shogun's palace, like all, all of these things that he, he, threw in there just for uh flavor i think are are so much fun and even if they are not even if they're not important to the the story i think like the 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 love that he infused in them um does shine through and i i really enjoy the the early parts of the arc when um he's he's really just kind of um you know having fun with that uh, with that stuff, um, even if it's not necessarily the most compelling or like tense uh, storytelling, because uh, you know he's just sort of playing around in his his new setting that he created. Um, you know, it's it's really delightful uh, to to follow those um, those stories, and I don't know. I mean, I get I I I kind of wanted to. I I, I will even say I I put this in my top five um not just because i i really liked it but also because you know i i know that this that we on the podcast because we have to we spend so much time you know week to week just the sheer amount of uh, discussion that we've had over these years that we do get tired of it and you know things uh lose steam and we get uh bored of you know waiting for the same uh story points to conclude or wrap up and uh, you know, that tends to really like there, there's a big backlash, like the, the wave pulling back out, uh, when we're finally past it and it's like, Oh God, you know, I can't believe how long <laughs> that took. Um, but you know, while we're kind of right fresh off of it, I, I really wanted to, uh, to kind of give it its due as, um, the, the achievement that it is like, I, and I'm still not sure. I mean, obviously at this point in the recording, uh, we are, we still have a couple chapters left probably. And I, I do think that there are maybe some like character stories or emotional moments that, that may still get closure um, yet before we, we leave Wano and go to the, you know, the final arc. Um, but uh, I, I think certain, uh, there were definitely certain choices that he made that um, were, a little questionable or, or like, why, you know, why didn't we, why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? We definitely talked about, uh, you know, kind of di- differences of opinion on like the, the final battle or at least the, the ending between Luffy and Kaido. Um, and, you know, I, I, I was not super into it at first. Um, and, uh, you know, there are other fights that maybe did not, uh, get the, 
uh, they didn't cook in the oven long enough to, to, to be meaningful, but a lot of them were good. And I, I think, uh, you know, even shorter art fights, which are probably just knowing the number of characters he, he had, <laughs> the shorter, the better for the most part. Um, uh, you know, some of them were like clever or, or cool or memorable. Um, and, uh, so I don't think it was like a, you know, it wasn't a total slog to get through, uh, Onigashima, even if it was really long, um, so uh yeah i don't know i don't want to take too long so um why don't we go to someone else now um alex you and i ranked it number eight um so I'll, I'll let you start yeah i think um it was really hard for me to rank this because not because it's it's uh not over at the i don't think there's anything that can happen in the arc that would either put it above or below where i put it for the time being um and i think it's probably because i haven't read it through um like all together once yet uh but the uh, to the be fair that would take a really yeah. long time to do it's funny that steven mentioned like art fatigue because like uh, this is i didn't have it with this with this um with this particular arc there were there was a little bit with the isony that i thought was a little sl- sluggish but the rest of it is just kind of um it flows so well and the the thing that i think is really really great uh sort of piggybacking off of what steven said where we're introduced to all these like townspeople and stuff and they have names and it's it's actually really crazy is that wano became a whole new manga once it started once once those curtains drew and we see act one uh yeah. it is no longer one piece anymore it's a manga within a manga uh and i think that is so cool um you can really tell that oda had planned like this um this arc for a really long time he knew exactly what he wanted to do um with with certain elements of it and uh and i think it really shows we get to sort of reintroduce ourselves to our our crew members and i think that's a really fun thing uh about this is that oh no it's uh, zorajuro now and uh here's his deal and (laughs) uh and we get to see the crew together for the first time in a really long time and it's really really refreshing um once we hit the Roger flashback, it is really elevated and becomes one piece again. Like you forget, um, you've forgotten this entire time that this is about pirates. And then, uh, well, guess what? Here's the most pirate thing that we've done yet in the story uh, <laughs> to date. So uh, it was a really cool way to blend um, to blend genres in a way. Uh, and I, I, I can't um, speak about genres without mentioning, of course, all the Japanese folklore and and samurai film references that's that are peppered throughout this entire story. Uh, it for for once the Straw Hats really do take a backseat, and this is about the Akazaya Nine. It's about Kinemon. It's about Momonosuke and the people of Wano and what they're about to overcome. And for a really long time, like it, I don't mind not seeing Luffy in them because it's this is a, a story about you know these vassals and their. Uh, and their leader. And the Kinemon is one of these characters that I didn't really care about at all, uh, even like around Dressrosa, but uh he really he really shines completely in the in this arc. Um I'm really gonna miss a lot of these characters, uh, just because we've spent so much time with them. Um I the fights in Onigashima are amazing. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had one-on-ones for practically all the characters. Uh, you know, Nami doesn't have one, but that's neither here nor there, really. Same with Thusop. But we're treated to Kid and Killer versus, uh, I'm sorry, Kid and uh, Law versus Big Mom, which I think is one of the coolest fights in the series. Um, I was blown away, completely blown away by it. Um, and that's nothing to say, of course, for all the dinosaur shenanigans, and uh, Gear 5, which uh, uh, I don't like putting stuff on a pedestal like, oh, this cool thing happened, therefore this is a good arc. But uh, you can, like, we've talked about this while we were covering uh, Luffy versus Kaido, but Oda Unbound is what this was. Um, you know, just went full Looney Tunes. Um, <laughs> the ninth obviously... Dragon Ball Z movie. I yeah. was going to make that joke. And I... <laughs> You know, I really can't. Um, it, there's so much to say about this arc, so I'm gonna let. Uh, I'm gonna see the rest of my time to you, Zach. Yeah, like this is. It's almost surreal how long this has been going on. I think we mentioned. Not only does the year 2018 
feel like lifetimes ago for so many reasons, but wow, four years of reading this arc every week and talking about it for hours on end every single week. Really, I mean, we've done it before. We Trust Rosa was no short picnic as as we've discussed, mm. but wow. Trust like, Rosa is much further down the rankings. We yeah. already talked about it. Um, mm. But like... Have I, did I get arc fatigue in this? Absolutely. There are definitely times... I get arc fatigue every arc, no matter how good the arc is. I loved Whole Cake Island, and I got arc fatigue. Uh, Zoe might be the exception to the rule. But for Wano, yeah, it it felt like Oda like finally realized like he critically figured out what doesn't work in these big arcs and what does work in these big arcs. And I don't think... He solved every issue that came in the big arcs before of the Dressrosas and the Punk, even Punk Hazard and Fishman Island. But he definitely improved upon them. And I think this arc does live up to its potential in a way that uh, few arcs, especially post time skip arcs, have. Um, it definitely does feel like its own manga. Now, I, I didn't even like think of it that way until you all said it. But the fact of the matter is. Like, I could say which arc within this arc I prefer. Like, I really liked Act 1. Um, Act 2 was okay, had some issues. Act 3 was, like, nine-tenths of the story, so I don't even know. Where to, um, it really wasn't, but it felt that way. If, mm. Yeah, it was. If it, it felt like a lot. Um, there are, you know, on the, on the negative ends, I never knew where I was in Onigashima. There were ten basements. I don't know which one we were mm. on. The castle basement, the regular basement, the second basement, but... God damn, Oda had so much fun making that arc, and I feel every moment of that fun. The dinosaur gags we discussed, Gear 5, like, we discussed not only... This did just feel like Oda Unbound. It fe felt like Oda just, like, was, like, pent up, waiting for this. I guess that's the definition of Unbound. And just was able to be himself in a way that you don't really even see these, like, kind of gags, I feel like, to this extent since like east blue it like really felt like a culmination of being a one piece fan in a really cool way and gear five wasn't that badass like look at how cool i am i'm gonna beat you up i'm Thank i'm God. all goth and mm -hmm. yeah it's it wasn't it wasn't like that and i and that's bleach. yeah no this is one it was not ukiora in bleach or whatever um and that's what i love about it um it it like it was like the One Piece podcast equivalent of, wow, we're getting what we want. Like, this is what we wanted. We wanted fun. We wanted cool. We wanted uh, zany. We wanted f and funny. I mean, like, the images, yeah. like, Steve drew for the end of Onigashima are, like, some of my favorite images I've seen from Steve. So, and it just, like, it encapsulates, I think, not just the fun. It, th we had a lot of fun this arc. Like, we only started drawing images in this arc uh, yeah. for the last four years. Um, so it it's – that being said, it's a lot, and I need to digest. I think, Ed, you put it to kind of transition to you. Sure. Uh, you, put it, you put it really well. It hasn't really ended yet, so I feel weird putting it much higher than, number, than like, these, these arcs I've had time to digest. So, Ed, you put it at number – what was it? Uh, eleven, yes, eleven. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it. It's not over yet. I don't feel like I've had a opportunity to properly evaluate it. And and uh, like Alex was saying, it doesn't really have a legacy. And I'm thinking about like all the things that I really enjoyed about it, especially like the uh, the fights in Onigashima, especially like Jimbei and um, Robin and Sanji and all the stuff that they did at the end of the arc. That's recentering the uh, Straw Hat crew. After all this uh, Akazaya 9 stuff that I think you've rightly identified as being like a completely different manga sometimes. And I feel yeah. like that's where Wano sometimes suffers a little bit is that for so much of it, the Straw Hat crew is out of it and we are, uh, you know, they're, they're spectators to this bigger story that is that is going on. Yeah. And uh, so I feel like uh, it sort of loses... It so it loses a little bit of its one piece ness sometimes when it's not about the Straw Hats and their journey. It's a different emotional journey with Momonosuke and these characters that we've had uh, since um, uh, 
uh, Thriller Bark uh, with Kinemon and like the emotional story of the Yakuza Punk Hazard, do you mean? Oh uh, yeah, Punk Hazard. And yeah, uh, I get I get the <laughs> confusion. <laughs> right. And and Odin's flashback and all this stuff that's sort of going into the deep lore of One Piece. And it's really interesting finding all these things out, but um yeah, it, it, it's at the end of the day. I, I don't I'm not sure that uh in the end, it was finally about the Straw Hats, and that's really what I liked the most about it. But for the rest of it, um, I wish they were, I just wish they were, um, I don't know, centered more in the story. But the story is really about, like, the land of Wano. So I feel like I have to go back and, and look at it more, because uh, I haven't had a chance no. to really to reflect on it, because it is no uh, Yeah, I, and, uh, and beyond and, that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but, I'm glad you brought that up, because... Uh, that's something I want to talk about when we get to another arc. So just if I don't bring that this up again, someone remind me. I mean, like it, it's a good contrast to what I have ranked as number one and number two. But we'll get there. Yeah, I I think if I sit down and read this whole story, I think it will not be ranked where it is right now. I don't know better or worse. There mm-hmm. are certainly things. I think Stephen really put it well. I think the. You know, the fact that it is so long means that you get all the great things and also all the bad things about, like, all the things in One Piece that Oda has specifically recently. Like, look, I love Hamlet, but there are also plenty of other characters that don't need to be there. I'm not mean, I, I don't mean Hamlet, who is the greatest character in this arc. Sure. Um, there are a lot of characters. There are, like, yeah. do we need Briscola to have, like, a big splash page? Mm-hmm. Four tricks I get, because he was literally a chicken butt. Um, and yes, it doesn't really come back, but We still. haven't talked about Yamato at all, and we barely talked yeah. about Kaido. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kaido, I I am torn about. I like whether we've... there's Look, we don't have a lot of time to talk about all of that. Right. Yamato, I think, was a great character. I still agree with what Steven's original criticism was. Is, was. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As of this moment, Yamato is a great character. Um, my my only problem is, I think, what Stephen originally brought up um, is that he kind of just he popped up out of nowhere. Yeah, I yeah. just wish that there was a little more foreshadowing, and that's really on yeah. Oda, not on Yamato as a yeah. character. But it's yeah. it's it's funny because I think we yeah you know, we we've said that before. It's like Yamato came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yamato showed up in the manga two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I, I agree but no, with no, that. Just, like, see, yeah. like, when you think about it, when you realize that, I'm like, Yamato showed up halfway through. Uh, yeah. Maybe not when you break it down in terms of story structure, mm-hmm. but like Yamato still feels like a recent character to me, and I realize they've been in the manga now for two years. I think, look, if they... If if he joins the Straw Hats, I'd be, I be I agree with Steve. I think that Ace uh, Yamato flashback in the anime particularly uh, really sold me. Beyond, I think I was already pretty sold, but um, I it was just like there there should have been a little more in the Wano story before two years ago to yeah. kind of seed that, and there was I, no reason why it couldn't be there. I'm pretty the, sure. The I think my, my interest level. The, oh, go ahead, Steve. So the themes of freedom are too intricately tied with Yamato and Luffy. So mm-hmm. it, 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 yeah. if you if you were to try and convince me Yamato was not joining the crew, you you would have to really Well, let's see how well this ages. Because let's... it's too I don't know. <laughs> it makes too much sense to me. Uh, Never I, think, agree. I mean like I'm I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna say yes or no at this point. Just because arc's not done and having reread a couple arcs recently there, Oda throws so many curveballs when it comes to who's joining the crew next. He does. So, yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, Alex, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you were uh, duped into thinking the zombie tree uh, stood a chance. I still, <laughs> it still could happen. Still he's could happen. There, yeah. Um, I want to go through some outliers no, he's not, here. He's dead. <laughs> oh, you're he right, doesn't he exist is. anymore. Um, so who ranked it lowest? Jill ranked it at number nineteen. Um, I think that is our lowest ranking here. Abby ranked it at number seven, at number eighteen, because of course it's Abby Denton. Uh, it has to do something slightly on the. It's our latest in the Abby Denton watch. That's the Abby Denton watch. Uh, Brian ranked it number four. Dennis ranked it number three. V ranked it number three. Henry Thurlow, and I cannot say enough uh, how. Um, how much the anime has like hit this arc out of 
the ballpark. Oh yeah, uh, I mean it started like, in Whole Cake Island, but like after Dressrosa, there was a there there was a rethinking, I think, and this is sort of the culmination of that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a completely new team, and they've done such a fantastic job. Can't even begin to say. Henry Thurlow ranked as number five, which I think is super reasonable. Sung Wan did too. Joey also ranked at number five. Um, Nikki ranked at three. Thatch ranked at two, and Bell ranked at two. Um, so there you go. Izo and Yamato both in this arc. Uh, that you would know, explain. It's true. <laughs> I don't think I remarked on why I, I don't have it like top five. And I think it's because there are a lot of arcs that I like more that yeah. I think are more complete. Mm-hmm. But let's uh we'll get to those, I guess. Well, I, I think I think it's what we discussed, and I'll wrap it up here. The straw hats, I think, are the main characters in one piece, and they aren't center stage as much, at least, in Wano. And I think that is a little bit of a drawback. It's a drawback for a lot of the uh post time skip arcs. Mm-hmm. Um anyway. Let's get into our number five. It's the last of our hot tamale category. Um, I have to say it like that, right? Uh, last time around, where did this rank? This ranked number four, so it went down a little bit. Where did it rank? In our audience, it ranked number two. Um, which I actually, I don't know why I was not expecting it, but I was not expecting. Uh, Steve, I, 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 I should have let you one. guess. I want I want you to guess this one. Do you, do you think you know it, I my guess is Marineford. You are correct. It is yeah. Marineford post war return to Shaw Buddy. Uh, we're including that. Um, oh wait, to... this go around we're 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 still including return the Shabandi to in Marineford. Yeah, we, yeah. We talked about we, this in one of our. We made this questions. decision. Yeah, this is yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I, because I because that should I, have been Fishman Island. I think. Yeah, I yeah. no. I think I I said that. We're not having this seven discussion. years we ago. Purposely, we have... purposely did <laughs> yeah. this ahead of time, so we did spend twenty minutes. Okay, yeah, discussing. I forgot we did see that. Yeah, I forget where I was when that final decision was made because Return to Shabandi is not part of Marine Forge. <laughs> I, I'm not. We could discuss this on another podcast. It doesn't. The structure of what we won't. Return but to I'm Shibandi. just like I, I'm just I'm just saying that. Yeah, before I mean, I I I do think it is the conclusion to this storyline. Um kind of ending with luffy's like sorry for being selfish now let's go okay well steve is very emphatically uh (laughs) saying no uh with his face and his head um anyway let's uh let's see who ranked this one highest uh ed you ranked this number five Really, I'm the highest. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, by the way, that's average. Everyone else here ranked it below average of the five of us, so that should say something. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's it's the most it's it's the finale of the first half of One Piece. It's uh, it's interesting to look back on Ace now, the way he was introduced, and uh, especially with uh, with Drum Island, as we mentioned earlier on. At um, the way like his emotional arc is so heart wrenching in this arc like the way he comes to terms with himself and his identity and his relationship with his father and his brother and his other father um really come <laughs> it, it really comes through and it's really it really gives a sense of the shaking of the you know shaking up the world uh that would come that really pervades the second pun half intended the, <laughs> yeah the uh it really that it, uh it, it's shot through the entire new world arc like every like the conclusion of almost every arc in in the new world has like not quite as bad consequences as what happens in Marineford, but it uh, it's it's up there. It's, it's sort of a precursor of what's what's to come, and uh, it's interesting because I talked about the Straw Hats not really being involved, but uh, it's interesting because with Marineford we have Luffy and this entirely new cast of characters that's around him, but it's also a culmination of all the story arcs from the first half and putting them in this ridiculous. War, war scenario where they have to sort of you know fight each other and survive and we get these like the uh, um we get, we, then we get the emotional catharsis or the the emotional like blow of aces the opposite death. of catharsis well, yeah exactly we get catharsis later on yeah. aces death and luffy's uh extreme traumatic response to it and the way uh, this is where Jinbei really joins the crew. So somebody who's this important yes. to Luffy, who who guides him through this entire process and sort of leads him toward acceptance. At the, which point we also get the childhood of of Monkey D. Luffy, which I think is some of 
uh, some of the most fun uh, flashback time we have. It's really a, a great palate cleanser for this, you know, extremely violent, extremely uh, busy art wise arc. And we have constant, you know, like, cha- like entire chapters of two page spreads on all this sort of chaos going around and uh, stuff like that. And at the end, we get this small story of Luffy and Sabo and Ace and Dadan and the pirates on the mountain. And what really made Luffy into, uh, you know, what, what really shaped his his worldview and then coming back to Shibandi and, and meeting everyone again meeting everyone again there. It's uh, I, I, I do agree. I think that is the full arc of the story of the story. Um, but yeah, Marineford is, uh, you know, it, it's the culmin it's the culmination. It's the climax of the story. The first half of, uh, of one piece. And it allows for, you know, the second half, we get this time skip, we get some distance from it. We were able to close, uh, close the book and then reopen it again two years later, uh, which I like, which I, which I liked at the time. And uh, still do. Uh, Steve, you and I ranked at number six. Um, I'll, I'll see to you first. Um, the early uh, days of this podcast are very intertwined with the Marine Ford. Uh, Absolutely. Arc. Um, that that w- what a freaking arc to cover week by week. Yeah. Probably. I I I think uh, Zach and Ed, you couldn't have picked a better year to start the podcast because Mm -hmm. that was just like like who knows if we would like still be here if if like that hadn't serendipitously that and like strong world those were really big events that year 2009 yeah yeah, wound up being like that was you struck when the iron was hot and i say that because i i think half the world didn't even know what a freaking podcast was yet uh (laughs) myself included um (laughs) But yeah, this was uh, epic comes to mind. And I know that I think that word gets tossed around a little too haphazardly, but this is truly an epic uh, culmination, as uh, Ed was saying, of the first half. But so many big names that we have met before and some we've only seen in like uh, board meetings and heard about, uh, they're all coming together have a big fight uh turn into a giant golden buddha (laughs) (laughs) it 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 was just rad and uh, magma fist rain from the sky oh god that was such a good spread yeah yeah and you also gotta consider like uh the path it took to get here and i i guess i'm surprised we're talking about marine for before we're talking about the arc that precedes it uh Mm. but to finally get here uh you you were along for the ride, and you were just. We, we talked on. about Impel Down already. If that's what you're. Did we? Okay. Yeah, it was number ten. Yeah. All right, um, it's been a while. Uh, it has. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, uh, and like everything that Luffy and uh, <laughs> Luffy and his uh, his his substitute crew uh, went through and Impel Down to get here, uh, you couldn't help but continue to root them on, and also it was. <laughs> I, I, Ed, would it be too corny to use the term like forbidden door or something? I know, uh, How Matthew, so? uh, oh, I know Matthew of Botchamania fame, uh, in the, uh, series him and I were, uh, interviewed for on Crunchyroll by Dan Dockery. Uh, he talked about Marine Ford, uh, uh, what was, uh, my favorite, uh, One Piece arc was, uh, yeah, the yeah, series yeah. of articles. I Matthew described it. Uh, uh, hang with me, folks. Uh, I'll, I'll explain more in a sec. He described it as the WrestleMania 17 of <laughs> One Piece arcs. <laughs> and I I totally get that because it is like a culmination. And it's also like this is the grandest stage and it is a big deal. And also we're seeing uh, we're finally getting to see some characters, you know, it's like, uh, it's like uh, you know that we've just been looking at like they're the tiny guy in the yakuza like we know they're going to do something um <laughs> finally get to see them in action whitebeard and shows it, up in fights yeah, yeah like we like whitebeard dies. finally and dies. people like, die <laughs> people die <laughs> people die but also it's it was tons of dream matches uh you know and mm-hmm. things that that were a little more than scuffles like 
Dofi and Croc versus, yeah, yeah, Croc and Dofi, like Jimbe versus Moria in the battle of uh, uh, <laughs> who has the better voice. <laughs> um, and I don't, like the, you know, and the Navy kind of finally taking the stage as like the true main antagonist, like the, like with like exceptions of like uh, Captain Morgan, uh, the, the Navy was always kind of just more of like an obstacle than the opposing force and here they are uh and i this this just i don't know this this made for you know for people that you know really like their shonen uh battle manga like this was as like shonen as one piece you know could get i think at this point but it was just it was event reading every week and also we were a lot younger and yeah definitely uh <laughs> you know a lot more enthused especially with a brand new podcast but the, like th this was so fun to just cover uh if i could you know slide it a little bit uh, i think some of these cool matchups and dream matches kind of just like they they, they they would fight and then when the camera was off them they kind of just walked away I'm like, all right no <laughs> one's paying attention we could stop fighting now uh so things didn't really kind of build to the next thing it was just like oh these characters are fighting and then they're not um and also uh you know we've <laughs> we've we, we've dogged on ace uh for for as long as the podcast existed pretty much and marine ford uh you know we didn't even uh hesitate but i never felt devastated about the loss of ace and I know, like he, you know, he got a few more chances. Like, all right, we gotta, you know, we we gotta show like how sad he was, you know, with his dad being, you know, one of the most notorious and hated uh, men in the entire world for ushering in a pirate age. But I still never felt like I'm like I, I felt for Luffy. Like it, it it sucked to see Luffy devastated. But we didn't really see a whole lot of Ace in the story. Uh, he he showed up in Alabasta very briefly. He fought Blackbeard and then he was an impel down. So that connection, I, I, I think, didn't wasn't really developed in my eyes yet. But now in hindsight, with you know, with the flashback that precedes uh the battle, and especially Wano, as Zach was talking about earlier, with the, the Yamato connection, I think if Marine Ford, even though it's impossible for it to happen now, but if Marine Ford were to happen now, I think the the death of Porcus the Ace would hit me a lot harder than it did back in February of 2010. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's there's a lot more to get into, so I'd like others to get a chance to speak. Yeah, I also rank this at number six. Um Wow. So I I was looking up the phrase again, unstoppable force versus a movable object. And I think that really describes this arc in all of its good and, and all of its bad. Um, I agree to kind of piggyback on what, what Steve said there. I do agree. The ace death did feel powerful because it felt because of Luffy. But in retrospect, of course, it feels powerful because ace's storyline because of the successive uh flashback and wano and everything in between ace has been a very pivotal character in his death post-mortem i think in the story and we talk about and i think it's either casey or grant um have often said like one of the um amazing things about one piece is it uses its length to its advantage it uses the fact that it has been around for so long um the fact that it has been 13 12 13 years since ace has died um and then you know ace gets brought up again and again i think the the strings and the um the plot threads of uh of marineford permeate to this day and i think they are you know this the story of whitebeard um and the story of um of ace have only gotten more emotionally um palpable um, since they originally happened. And they were really emotionally palpable when they happened. Those were the first two uh, in, you know, like in present 
uh, characters that died who weren't like a, a, a one off that we never see again. Um, it was it was a very powerful moment. Um, we also talked about it a little bit, but Luffy's flashback is so wonderful. Yes, it has some really stupid villains, but the stuff with Sabo. I think Sabo is his best as a kid. He is such a fun character. I love the idea of the aristocrat. As someone who grew up in a rich town full of just douchebags, um, it was really nice to see someone who had a similar opinion of all those douchebags, uh, you know, throw off the, you know, realize he's filled with just like corruption and awfulness around him and finds you know this camaraderie in in ace and luffy and i think you really f get so much out of that and to don and garp and and all of them and just the, the the smallest little panel of garp taking that punch from luffy still fills me emotionally um it's it's really great how even in the most chaotic of scenes i think Oda, this is like kind of the pinnacle of what Oda is able to do with chaos and still bring emotional depth um, into the story. I think the only things that is lacking is the other Straw Hats are not there to, to be with him. But, you know, I, I love the Motley Impel Down crew and I love I love all of the characters in this. Uh, Squardo maybe included? I don't know. Um, we'll find out. Uh <laughs> Can't believe I used to do that George Bush impression. That's that's forget about George Bush, uh, Stephen. Right. <laughs> you uh, you put it at number ten. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't you talk a little bit about? It? Yeah, it's uh, I, and honestly, I feel like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember what I ranked it last time, but I, I do feel like overall my my opinion has gone up over time. That for me was kind of a a lull of my my interest in the, in the series. And, and I think, you know, it, it's similar to like when Steve was talking about, uh, you know, some of the characters in Wano, like the Yasuie story, just kind of being like, I don't know, what are we doing here? Like at that <laughs> moment in time. And then, you know, you, you're not ready for it. You're not really, um, receptive to it, but then, you know, later you, you come back to it with fresh, um, perspective and you, you're able to feel it a little better. And, and that's kind of what, this this part of the story was like for me um and it's you know it's it's so hard to to rank as an arc because um you know it's sort of like if you just took if you just took the odin flashback and then all of onigashima from yeah. uh from wano where it's like you know you get some just incredibly impactful moments and very you know just utterly emotional uh hits that um that that take place but then the rest of it is just like it's action 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 and it's not you know like and like ed was saying the the, the build up the um you know the structure that that set all of this up to to lead to the action is the entirety of the first half of the of the story um so it's so hard to to compare like you know it's it's like apples and oranges with like his more kind of fully fleshed out um story arcs and um yeah steven yeah. i was thinking i like this mm -hmm. for the opposite reasons i like drum island which is like this small self-contained <laughs> thing and this is yeah like, you need to see everything else too. right right yeah. um yeah and i and i feel like um uh the 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 flashback for for luffy is it, it it is really beautiful and it it is a it's a great story but it was also a thing where like you know that's that's the last thing that we get before the final you know the return of all of the the straw hats and you know it is kind of one one piece starts again it's one piece part two um and so again you know it is also like as great as it is to to get luffy's backstory which is you know as it turns out like quite impactful for the rest of the story going forward um you know at the time and, and especially like you know if you're marathoning through the whole thing it's like woof man we've been the the crew has been separate for a long i have several arcs now it's just been yeah. luffy 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 um and i i was really feeling it at that at that time um, even though you know i was i was enjoying the flashback it was just like wow this is yeah. just um this is uh I, I'm going through withdrawals here, um, and so that I think that Got that my always Frankie makes... withdrawal. I need, <laughs> <For> yeah, Frankie. 
and, and that's uh, you know it, it is a little it is a little uh, tough to um, plus you know just the fact that uh, Whitebeard uh, also you know had had been a, a sketch of a character before this point and then he, you know you have to come in to see like his most badass and heroic moment where he he also dies and it's just like I feel like I just saw like the last you know five minutes of a movie uh sort of thing like I <laughs> had no time with this guy um yeah. and and uh, again I think that's also an example of something that that Oda like he, he kind of hits you with it really quickly but then over time you come to grasp more and more especially you know with the the other looks into the past that we've had since then um to you know, to get a better perspective on, on who he and, and some of these other characters were. Um, and you know, that's, that that's cool. It's, it's not, it's a less direct way of, of telling a, a story, but it has its own, um, benefits and, and I do appreciate it for that. Um, but I, you know, it's always been a stretch of the part of, you know, it's a stretch of one piece that I've always had more difficulty warming up to. Um, Alex, uh, you put it one lower than that at number 11. Um, want to go through your thoughts on Marineford and the post-war stuff. Sure. Um, I'll start with the flashback, uh, the Saba flashback. I like it. It's really fucking long. Um, yeah. uh, it, but it's, it is nice, uh, because it does flesh Luffy out a little bit. We find out who Dadan is after years at that point of like, what else did Don think of this? Like it's yeah, who's Dodon? I forgot that was at the end of NES lobby, right? Yeah. yeah who's this yeah. Don guy? Yeah. Right. Um well it is funny that you mentioned like, you know, oh well of course Dodon's a guy because there's no mothers in One Piece. To the fact that that both Ace and Sanji and I probably other characters, they don't have the, they have two dads. Like it's it, One Piece is the is the series where everybody has two dads and no moms and yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think the dog counts as a mom. Ma, she is a mom. She's she's a total mom, and yeah. she's very proud of her her sons. Um, I love the hell out of Dodon. I could go on for a while. Yeah. So, um, it all comes back to the Ace stuff, right? Because this is really Ace's arc. Um, and I I was with Steve. I didn't really. I made fun of the Ace death thing for a really long time because I, it did not hit me the way like going Mary's death hit me. You know, like. Like I had more emotional resonance with a boat than like a person, uh, a per- person, manga character, fictional characters. Um, uh, but retconning, uh, you know, retconning isn't a bad word. In this case, retconning, uh, retroactive continuity has helped uh, the, this um, this arc a lot. And when I do re- reread uh, Marine Fort, I actually do get choked up now a little bit at Ace's death because now we have all this context. Um, all that aside, it's really interesting that you know Oda straight off of killing a character until this very moment, like uh, you know the present day characters, mind you, not flashback characters. Uh, one second. Um, and uh, you know, it makes those deaths have a lot of weight. Ace's death has weight for Luffy, it, and Whitebeard's death shakes the world and the story as we know it. Um. Blackbeard, uh, you know, ever the opportunist oh, yeah. comes Jeez. in for the kill, and really, um, the thing about Marine Ford is that it's, yeah, it's basically like the big action sequence. It's the act three of of an, an action movie, um, and it's nonstop. You have, it, it felt like every single week, something new was revealed. Like Marco's Devil Fruit is a phoenix. What? Um, like, oh, here's magma powers. Oh, Diamond Jozu. Uh, and then when Blackbeard Blackbeard's shows, back. Yeah. Black, hey, everybody, Blackbeard's back. Blackbeard's it's a giant. Back. All right. Yeah, Blackbeard's back. Um, oh, my God, he's back again. <laughs> uh, Sengoku turns into a big golden Buddha. Um, Luffy and, and Ace get to team up and fight. Um, we get to see um, Shanks come back. And, and Buggy, really... Um, oh God! Yeah. Everybody was wondering where the fuck is Buggy all these years, and uh, of course, Impel Down brings him back into the fray. But this is where he really uh, gets to shine some. Um, every like <laughs> that's a it, word for it. <laughs> yeah, uh, like I I have this. I don't have this arc in my top like ten or whatever because where are the rest of the Straw Hats? You know, it's it's very. I'm very I'm very much a traditionalist when it comes to One Piece, and I need I need all my favorites, but. Uh, here is a chance for every single side character that Oda made 
uh, to shine. Even Django and Full Body, my favorite side characters. Um, but you have like the entire Seven Warlords, and you have all these crazy combinations. Hancock is fighting Smoker. Like it's, it's pandemonium. It's it's just it's so much fun, and uh, just incredible action. The sheer amount of double page spreads here is absolutely insane i really gotta hand it to oda but not just him but his assistants because there is a lot of debris and it, uh, it hurt him physically emotionally and mentally for years <laughs> after yeah. yeah without a doubt and i i think there was some i forget where it was said that like you know oh, if you thought marineford was was crazy oh, check yeah. out, well the finale is going to be even even more crazy so uh the fact that we're ending the middle of one piece with this uh, it was like what, like six months worth of just double page it was, spreads. It was not. Action. It was not even that long of an arc, and it like yeah. feels. It feels big, like it feels long and big, but it. Yeah, I never got bored. Like out of the yeah. only, like maybe there was like one or two chapters where I'm like, okay, pacifist doesn't give a shit. Well, Little Ors Junior, uh, which now I love that story after Wano, but uh-huh, at the time yeah. was like, what is happening here? You could call it retroactive continuity. You can call it furthering the story. Either way, um, you know it, it further. You know later later reveals further contextualize what is actually you know a really I mean, nice Alex, heartwarming story. I'd even say that Marineford is kind of the log town, the prologue and an epilogue. So it's like the epilogue to the first half of the prologue to the second half, where you have wow. all these things kind of wrapping up, and also all these things that are kind of introduced and. In, I guess Oda really picks up a lot of what was thrown in the chaos of Marineford uh, in his future storytelling. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Alex. There's there's a there's a, a phrase that that Grant really liked using during his One Piece read through, and that was "weight of destiny." And I think that uh, any everything that happens in the last like ten chapters of Marineford is that. Um, yeah. And the biggest one, I think personally, being Whitebeard proclaiming that the One Piece does exist. They yes. Do exist. Like that's I, like for, you know the deaths. Yes, yeah, of course, shakes the world. But he confirms to the world. He reignites a new pirate, an even newer pirate era. Uh, whereas like, keeps you know, the gas going. <laughs> when you when you think about Bellamy and and his whole ethos about like oh sh- you stupid dreamers like that's like the, who gives a shit about you know the One Piece you know the you know the lost city of gold you know it's all it's. You know, it's it's all uh, kill or be killed out here. No the dreams don't exist. It's all uh, it's all nihilism, baby. But here comes Whitebeard and his dying words, basically reigniting the romance that set this whole story off to begin with. Kind of awesome. Uh, you know, I, I I I and I you know would have had it higher if all the straw hats were were there. But I guess I don't really count the um, the. Be- I, 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 I got to talk about the beginning of Shibandi or the, you know, the return to Shibandi for a second, because I think that um, I'm, I'm with Steven that I think that should be part of Fishman Island. That's neither here nor there. Like you say, should be part of a separate podcast where we argue about it. Or I think we should have a two hour podcast where we <laughs> just d- yeah. discuss that. Yeah. But I, I was so excited seeing all yeah. of our favorites in, in their new time skip like designs, which, you know, people criticize, but except I mean, Sanji. I think they're great. Sanji's other his other eyebrow. No, that's I, great. I just mind. meant him being. Oh, 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 well, look. I mean, I need I, Lady, the uh, new iPod commercial from 2010. Yeah. Look, I the anime really does a, a great job of reintroducing, like framing yes. everybody's reintroductions and stuff. Yes. And it's really great. And we go. Uh, I love too. I think that is a fantastic song. I think that they're all they're all great. Um, I like all the time of the time skip designs. Uh, haters gonna hate. Um, I think they're all great, especially Frankie, because he's a toy. Um, as much as I miss uh, Yankee, Frankie, um, I like uh, I like action figure Frankie because that's who he was meant to be. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's it. Um, thank you. Uh, let's go through some outliers. Um, we could talk about Marineford, I feel like, for a very long time. But you could listen to our 2010 episodes. And 2009 episodes, if you want to hear more. And I'm sure those opinions uh, age like something. Uh, Outliers. Uh, Brian ranked at number two. V ranked at number one. 
God's Will ranked at number two. Roger of Roger's Bass fame ranked at number one. Sungwon ranked at number one. So the entire YouTube uh, contingent hmm. uh, on our show. Hmm. I wonder really if like... this has anything to do with the return to Shibandi being included. I don't think it does. I doubt I so. think it you guys... The no. pot. I think it sweetens the pot too much. <laughs> I don't think it sweetens the pot. No, like, I think it, I think it barely factors in at all. It did fact. I don't think it would factor into Fishman Island. It might lift Fishman Island up, yeah, like a that's point. what I was thinking. Yeah, like at, at most. Like this is why this discussion is not worthwhile. What I'm saying I don't is you really give think people too many options. You have Marineford. You have the flashback. Everything post that, and then you also have like. Coming back, from it's the, a very the messy kids. that part of the story, and and we, I mean, we've <laughs> talked about this a lot. It is really difficult to, I think, delineate story arcs for the most part. Um, I'm just and I the think, bees nest right now. No, I know. And just to finish the bees nest discussion, um, th- this is probably the hardest part of the story to categorize because, as Stephen said, you know, all this stuff runs into the next. Uh, literally, like uh, Amazon, uh, Shaw Buddy to Amazon Lily to. There's a time skip. Down. <laughs> okay. You know what? Not not even. But it's in the Go geographically. Go your steak and salad, why don't you? Okay. You know what? Thank you, Steve. <laughs> There's a I can't skip. even. Lowest, Vero ranked it number 14. Um, And that, uh, that's our outliers. Oh, what's the, what's the Abby Denton watch? The Abby Dented Watch, number five. So Dented actually, wow. wow. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think she did exactly average on that. So that's, <laughs> wow. Abby Dented Watch, not so exciting that time. Um, we're going to take a break and get into some Casanova uh, in a moment with our top four One Piece arcs. And I think this time we're not going to discuss whether something should belong in an arc for 20 minutes because that's a waste of time, like I said. Let's take a break. No, the famous words from Odin's ghost. (laughs) Boo! We're going to see Toki. Shabandi is part of the time skip, therefore, in Fishman (laughs) Island. God, Steve gets so bitter. I totally, I thought we were discussing it, and I I thought that it was said that we were going to put in Fishman Island, and I see it on the poll. I'm like, what the? Uh, do you know it'd be you know, this hilarious. has been here for like over a month it would be <laughs> fucking amazing if we divided wano into three separate arcs <laughs> one day oh yeah the, the, the kinemon arc, arc the kinemon you know the act one act the two Asura, the asure uh uh execution arc uh, i the, bet the, you Udon, people Udon have oni arc. Ga- i the bet you there are arc. onigashima arcs like yeah the ankle tattoo arc it's true that was a big thing for like a while these are our top four, and I am very excited to talk about all four of these. Uh, they are certified platinum arcs. Um, so last time, this one ranked number five, so it did move up. Now, I'm. this is what I'm curious about. The audience poll ranked it number six, which I am frankly shocked about, uh, but that's me. I, I, that it's so I, close or so low? Um, so close. That was so close okay. um, to where we were. Um, this one ranked, as I said, number four. It is Steven's number one. So I'm going to let Steven oh, talk no, about no. it first. I know what this um, one is. It is the Jaya Skypea arc. Wow. Are we okay with putting those two together, guys? Is that is that acceptable? Yeah, it makes complete sense. <laughs> I don't know. Good. Jaya kind of feels like the conclusion to Alabasta. To Alabasta. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, the there's, there's a, there's it's a the definite Rainbow conclusion <laughs> to Alabasta. There's, anyway... Yeah, I'm sorry. We're not. Yeah. This, that was that, a joke. Uh, Steven, literally, when you said it was my number one, that was like a gut punch where I was like, oh, is this low? Because I, I thought it was going to be no, like number two or something. But uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Skype is my number one. Um, and uh, I definitely voted it number one last time. I I think it's it, it, it like you can count me in the uh, category of people where like the arc that you catch up and you're following it week to week for the first time, it becomes like the most memorable arc for you because it's like the, the, the first time you have that, you know, painstaking long process kind of um, imprinted on your brain. Uh, and, and that was definitely true for me with, uh, with Skypea. Um, I think, you know, you can, you, you, you could say, and probably some people do think this way that that Skypea comes in below some of the 
the top arcs uh, for them because specifically it is not about recruiting a new member of the Straw Hats. Um, and I, I, I understand, uh, you know, kind of uh, holding it back a, a, a few ranks uh, because of that. But for me, this was like, this this is like Oda, you know, um, I don't know, like th this was like the Wano of the the first half of the the story. This was like the point where Oda was like, okay, so I've been building up all of this stuff, and now I'm just gonna tell a totally different like epic adventure that you didn't see, or well, I mean, I guess we saw Wano coming, but like you didn't see Skypea coming, and he was just like, yeah, well, how about if we go on this freaking like magical adventure up into the clouds and um you know do all this like jack and the beanstalk uh type stuff and it's it's going to be like the most majestic you know epic adventure that we've seen yet um and just really like um there, there's this word uh, that uh japan likes to use i don't know if this is uh used elsewhere but like there, there's a word called fantasista for like soccer players where it's like somebody who basically has total ball control and they can just do superhuman things like whenever they feel like it this was like oda's fantasista uh arc where he was just like well how about if i do this um i i love this the the setting the um the the creativity that that he put into it like the um you know it, it literally starts with like this this question of like you know uh, of the, the you know the the ocean romance like of of dreams where uh bellamy is is laughing at uh the straw hats for like believing that there's actually a place up in the clouds and then they go up there and they do everything that you know he was laughing at them about um there it like thematically i just feel like it is such a it's such a rich arc um and uh i i think one of the things this is kind of like a, a more abstract thought of it but uh, one of the things that i really love about it is that the thrust of the action in the arc like mirrors basically kind of like the the graph of of rising action like the way that he you know first we have to get up into the clouds and then we're you know, we kind of rise up to where the 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 city is, Angel Island, uh, and then you are, you know, you're going up through this uh, the the upper yard the, where the soil is, um, and like climbing your way kind of up to the top of that, and then you have to go up the beanstalk all, all the way up to the very top where the thing that we're looking for is at the very very top of everything uh, in order to hit it. It's like, um, you know, it's it's like a um, uh, you know, uh, what's the show, the legends of the hidden temple or whatever, like you got to climb yeah. up to the top. You got to, you know, the goal is at the top and, um, everything works organically up towards that point. And, and I, I, I love how, how good that feels when you, uh, you go through that, um, that adventure. Um, like, I don't know, he was just, he was on his game. So, well in this this arc like inventing the the sky combat and like the 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 parts where they're they're fighting the um the shandians for the first time and they're you know doing all their stunts with the um uh with the the jet thrusters and all that stuff like it is just so inventive um and you know you kind of you kind of like we we get little bits of the the tone or the not the tone dials but just the dials um in the, uh, the the aftermath of the the arc, but for the most part, like he really kind of left this this arc behind um, after it was done, and um, you know I I feel like that just in, in certain ways that makes it even more more special. I could talk about this for like a whole hour, so I, I will <laughs> let someone else um, uh, go now. I'm sure we'll do that at some point in the future. Um, I ranked it as number three, and this moved up, I think, pretty tremendously over the course of time. I think just being on this podcast around fans like Steven who love Skype. It was number five for me last time. So still high, but not this high. Um, it is like infectious how great this, this arc really is. And upon my first read, I was definitely one of those people who are like, what this, this means nothing. It doesn't affect anything in the future. By the way, all of what I'm about to say is absolutely false. Um, it's not, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, it is, such a fun arc for all the reasons Steven said. 
Um, it is actually much like Marineford. I think it is proven consequential. Um, you know, the stuff in the Odin flashback, um, the stuff, I mean, the stuff in, in Fishman Island, um, and a lot in Wano have been, um, based on the foundation that Skypea laid. Um, I, I, I really, really like your analogy, Stephen, as like, this is when Oda's like, okay, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to do, I'm going to go nuts. I'm going to mm. just show my mastery of manga um in this arc and damn does he um i like i the only things i could criticize are satori hotary and kotary is that the last one i think yeah whatever hotary and kotary yeah hotary and kotary um literally the only things i really don't like it has a giant dog um oh the the parts i didn't like is luffy getting stuck in the snake but like a lot of these things are bad because of the anime uh mm. really delaying for time um i think the manga does everything masterfully and you know this discussion like it is pretty amazing the run oda had from drum island to thriller bark i feel like or up through thriller bark at least it was like hits out of the ballpark every time there was like all of these arcs, I like. It's very hard for me to say something I did not like about each of them, and I'm including Long Ring Long Land in that. And I don't care about all you people who don't like Long Ring Long Land because you're wrong. Um, I think I, you know Luffy being stuck in the snake. Like, do you would would you care about that? Would that even move the needle if he didn't get stuck in something every arc after this? Because like on its own, I think it's fun. Question. Like it's 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 fun. Like it's silly. It's uh, he he has a lot of fun with it. But I feel like it's the patternization of it, it you know, yeah. in the years to come that that made it tiresome. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Water 7 has the same issue uh, where he gets stuck in the in between the yeah. two buildings, um, which has become like it, they have that at like uh, one piece amusement parks. You could be Luffy. I have a picture of me stuck between those two buildings. So obviously there's an audience for that. Uh, I guess I'm just not that audience. Um, I, like Enaru face. Uh, Enaru versus Luffy is just such a great fight. And the mm -hmm. flashback, people. What an amazing flashback. And that, if we're talking about old men-like things, like, mm -hmm. that affects me. That's like a fellowship, brotherhood. Like, <clears throat> what a what a cool story. I love that. And also a completely different take on, like, that kind of story. I feel like... You have a lot of like colonizers coming to a new land and 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 like a lot of the old stereotypes i think oda did really smash that here and you get a lot of like very interesting takes very different takes than i had seen in a lot of popular culture with indigenous culture and um i i think kind of showing that colonizers were not always you know the good guys they're portrayed i mean obviously they're not but like in in uh in media they're often portrayed as the good guys and it's very i thought it was very interesting to see or it was very refreshing to see um that you know th these two men calgara and noland um on the same level as each other learning from each other growing from mm -hmm. each other i love that story and the catharsis that a story from 400 years ago comes to fruition um like this this the sacred bond and this this sacred promise that couldn't be fulfilled coming together and the with it with their ancestors i and were their descendants um i love that i like what a great that's a great standalone story that also feels like a manga and in in, within a manga um mm. skypea like it is very different than anything we see before or after but the thing it does better than Wano is the Straw Hats are each extremely critical and play an extremely uh, significant role. So I will take Alex's traditionalist route here and say that that is why it is above Wano for me significantly. Hmm. Um, it's a very limited cast for, for, it this is. Entire, for this entire arc. I mean, there's also like uh, there's Gonfall and the Shandorians um, and then there's Enerus folks and that's about it. I think that's good. <laughs> Sometimes Oda <laughs> needs to ta tamp his imagination down. Uh, Alex, you put it at number four. Yeah. Um, I was actually really struggling with ranking um, my 
bottom four, I guess. Or I, I knew what my, my number one was going to be, but the the three that followed, I was really having a hard time because the more I read Skype, it like I am, I'm with Steven on like I love the the fact that it's contained. Um, right from when the ship falls from the sky, uh, up to you know the ringing of the bell and and the 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 big shadow of Luffy. It's such a wonderful, beautiful story. And the more I, I read it, the more I really love characters like Cricket. Um, yeah. Like, that. it's it's all about him, really. It's it's uh, It kind of harkens back to, like, East Blue a little bit, where we meet, like, a, kind of like Boodle. Like, oh, who's this guy? Well, um, he's the mayor of this town, and he's going to die for his town. Why? Like, what's the deal with, like, why is he looking for this gold? I mean, well, obviously, it's a pirate manga, but... I don't know. There's it's it's this perfect storm of like what you want to see in a pirate story, uh, and it sort of exceeds the limits of your imagination. Uh, I've been rereading Skypea pretty slowly uh, recently, and I love the the build up to like finding out there's an island in the sky. It's sort of slow, but it's methodical, and you just in you know, Nico Robin just joins the crew. She's an archaeologist, so she's, like, perfectly suited to the task of rebuilding the skull and figuring out, like, it, I want more of that. Like, I yeah. want to see the ship's records. Like, it's very cool uh, to sort of delve into that uh, aspect of it. And um, speaking of old men, I I was week to week uh, during the Nolan flashback, and I remember it being such a weird slog, and um, I didn't understand it fully until it was completely done because it's like it, you know no, normally an arcs flashback is to showcase the sad past of you know whoever is joining the crew at that point mm-hmm. and skype is it was such a really cool outlier at the time uh when it came to that um and uh the thing that really struck me about skype when i was first reading it is how bizarrely different it is from the rest of one piece before it uh specifically like i know you hate satori so much zach but the the stuff with all the ball like the the cloud balls like completely bonkers shit that Mm. i never would have even thought about uh it would be to come in one piece and um that's to say nothing of the of the you know, Skypean technology, and um, it's it's such a cool uh, it's such a cool romantic adventure. Um, you know, I I really I, I think y'all have more to say about it, but I had a really hard time ranking this one this time around. Yeah, I agree, Steve. You ranked at number five. Uh, yeah, I ranked it a little lower than last time. I could get into that later. Uh, people way more qualified than me have already said a lot of great things about Skypea. Uh, let me talk about why I ranked it a little bit lower. Uh, and, you know, some slights against it. Uh, it's definitely an arc that I hear a lot of complaints about pacing. Um, it is a slow burn and um i don't think the stakes are all that high till much later when eneru is like i'm gonna bring all this shit down and then it's like okay now this affects everybody because the straw hats they just they 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 want the gold sucker uh that's all they want um (laughs) Uh, so like, kind of, it's not like, I was like, oh, like Luffy and the gang, they gotta, they gotta defeat Eneru. It's like, do they really? They just want gold. They're just, they, they, they wandered into like, oh, it's, it, it, they wandered into a war. Like, oh, what's going on here? Um, but, uh, I mean, also they're doing it for cricket, uh, to, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Part, part of their reasoning. Um, Eneru just wanders but, off at the end. That's true. Was it? Yeah. Uh, and Haru gets to live. I mean, they all, most characters in the series get to live. Uh, I mean, Pongi it's worth it to see his, uh, his adventures, but. It's well, he doesn't just get to live. He gets the thing he was actually well, looking to right. get yeah. at the end. Yeah. 
Because really what he wanted, besides, you know, bringing down uh, Angel Island, which is, uh, or, you know, like all of Skypea, which is good that he didn't succeed in that, he still got what he wanted. So he did, like, kind of, like, he, he won and lost at the same time. But uh, the pacing in this arc, it is, yeah, a slow burn. I don't think it's terrible, but I think people aren't as invested in some of the other characters, especially when so many of the Straw Hats are taken out, like Sanji and Usopp are taken out very early in the uh, in the game, uh, the survival game. Well, I, I do want to, I kind of want to add to that a little bit, and I, I think that Oda is very economical about how he uses the Straw Hats in Skypea, and they all have mm-hmm. this really interesting part to play. Uh, m- some of my favorite parts uh, are with Sanji and Usopp's little jaunt up the up the side of the maxim you know yeah that comes later yeah like i said like it it all kind of comes to a head when the stakes are much higher um i yeah no i think they are used very well but i just think it's spaced out and i think people sometimes get tripped up by that um and i the the thing is yeah and uh, and another arc i'm thinking of uh when I hear people talk about the two, I never hear the same complaint, like I the same complaints about another arc, like I do this arc, at least not to this extent. Um, I just think that's the biggest thing going against Skypea. Uh, but I think Skypea is so much fun. It's such a unique adventure, and I always think of Skypea and like every arc kind of has its own distinct look and kind of flavor to it. But Skypea really has its own essence. Um, and just, like I, it really feels like the first time in the pre time skip, like the characters like kind of significantly change up their outfits. Uh, yeah, and I that's know, true. and I and I know the arc that comes before that, but like underneath is kind of just like yeah, it's it's still Sanji's regular uh, blue pinstripe shirt and all that, and Usopp's overalls. But this was yeah, this arc distinctly looks different, which I always appreciate. And I think Jai is a hell of like a opening act. It's so fun because it's it, you it's haven't piratey. talked about it much yet. It's oh, it's so piratey. I mm, love it. I love it. Yeah. Like Mock Town, just like it. It looks like you know something right out of like a like a you know pirate novel. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's it, it's grimy and salty, and I love so many of the new characters we're introduced to. Uh, Whitebeard. Uh, Roshio the Executioner. Yeah, Rockstar. Roshio the Executioner. Sarkis. Um, the, the, uh, the hotel owner uh, who <laughs> nervously fidgets. Um, mm-hmm. No, I really enjoy uh, Jaya a lot. I, I like when One Piece gets to feel like a pirate manga. And I think Alex talked about it earlier with Wano, because Wano, we were so deep in Japan, Japan, and then like, to have uh, Roger be brought into Odin's flashback and then it just turns into like a pirate story again was very refreshing. And that's how I feel about Jaya coming off of the previous arc. In uh, and, and Mock Town was in, was in Odin's flashback as well. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I have so many fond memories of Skypea and I truly appreciate it. I just, Ed, and I think we, I've said this before and uh, feel free to correct me. Cause I don't know if I'm saying this right. Mm. I think I like I, I think I like Skypea better as a whole than the sum of its parts, if I'm saying that correctly. Like I love Skypea, but when I break it down, I'm like, oh, do I really like the priests all that much? Not really. I like Gadatsu, but like do I have a lot of uh, great things to say about Ohm? No. Yeah. But Sure, who cares? Yeah, it's sort of the idea of them, though. Like, yeah, I, I, I just, I, 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 I'm, I think I'm in agreement. Like, I don't think they're very strong characters, but it's kind of neat that they're there. The, well, the idea, uh, Skypea is high concept, so the concept yeah. is enough to hang the entire story arc on it, and it works. I, it, I, it, by the way, you ranked it as number uh, six. Is that no eight? Eight. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, Jaya is my favorite part of this of this arc. And it's been that way ever since the beginning. Skypea itself is an arc I've come more to appreciate. I think because I watched it in the anime first before reading it. I think if I had versed that it might've been different, but Same. Like, the, the moment that gets me uh, in, in Jaya is uh, when Luffy 
knocks out Bellamy with one punch, and then they ask him where he's going. He says, he's going to the sky. And that's the essence of One Piece. That's that sort of, uh, you know, moments that exemplify what the spirit of One Piece. And I think that's that's it. And, like, fun bits in Jaya, like, uh, <laughs> like bug hunting. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up. Bug hunting <laughs> and the South Bird, like, the South Bird yeah. being so important, <laughs> ultimately, to the story. Uh, very the sound for that in the it, anime... It, it, I don't know who came up with that. Is fantastic. If we could skip yeah. back chronologically for a few things, I, uh, Luffy and Zoro deciding not to fight. Mm. Yeah, Bellamy, yeah. it yeah, always stuck in my mind because I and think the Blackbeard about it. Like, scene. I mean, the famous. oh, I love the the Blackbeard scene so great. But like, I, I Luffy, I, 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 I guess the whole point of that scene is like Luffy didn't want to lower himself down to their level. Uh, it's also it's, kind of a, a little bit of a callback to like during East Blue, wherever Luffy makes like a decision, he kind of bases it on like what he learned from Shanks and that's sort of kind of similar to yeah. what he does in mm-hmm. yeah, Higuma with the Yeah. It was like the first like kind of that kind of East Blue callback we had gotten in some time, especially with Alabasta and the... That's why it's so satisfying that Luffy beats him with one punch. Oh god, it's... yeah. Mm-hmm. Cuz it's like wow, yeah, like Luffy did not have to lower himself uh down to that level yeah. and like yeah and then well the only reason why he fought him was uh for someone else uh i really like that aspect of the story but ed please continue no it really shows how he's uh oda wanted to show luffy had leveled up from alabasta so at this point he's able to take out this you know this big bounty pirate captain less than crocodile but still a big bounty and with with one punch and uh yeah it's <laughs> it, it makes it makes luffy look really really cool which is you know, it's always he important is. to have your, have your main character look really cool. Uh, that's how they stay. That's how they stay at the top of the popularity chart. Um, yeah, but the idea of redoing the ship and going up into the sky, just like the mechanics of that, and then finding out that the island in the sky was blown up from our seafloor, and like it fits in like a jigsaw puzzle. That's like, yeah, that, that's real fantasy, um, real fun, fantastical stuff. And uh, yeah, Oda really threw it against. <laughs> really threw it against the wall on this one. He he, he really went for it and uh, making enter this ridiculous character who has this um, sort of psychotic god complex and you know having a goal, having his eyes on on the horizon and really sort of looking past Luffy and the fact that he's defeated doesn't really phase him at all and he goes on to have this ridiculous adventure. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, one thing that did bother me though was um, doing the. The character who should die but doesn't die like two arcs in a row. This is where we get the will of mm. P from. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Well, well that was done for a joke. I th- so, think it was yeah. well done. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, pa- Alex. Pagaya, I think, is kind of a non character. Like, he's a yeah. very non character. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have he's that a gag ha- character. Kind like, of he doesn't play. have even, the even, weight co- that even Conus does. isn't particularly interesting. She's not. I, but she does that cool thing with the bazooka. Bazooka, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that cool moment. Well, uh, she mm-hmm. serves her purpose because she is kind of like the liaison to yeah. Sky Island culture mm-hmm. that we need. Uh, Pagaya, I don't correct me if I'm wrong. Was Pagaya even in the uh, episode of Skypea TV special? I think I they don't didn't remember. even include him. Um, Conus is also a narc, by the way. So don't like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, she felt bad. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And she that, did. I'm, I'm sure. I'm oh, sure and, all narcs feel bad after yeah, after. Well, narking. hey, yeah, she was a she narked, but then when she like you know went to tell everyone to flee, uh, the cops tried like silencing her, and she stuck a bazooka mm-hmm. in one of their faces. She's she like, like, just kidding. Back the uh, f ACAP. off, right, guys? Yeah. Like, you know, I think I think the Shandorians, Shandorians, however you pronounce it, are the are the more interesting characters uh, in this arc, not just from a design perspective. And it's, this is exactly the opposite of what I thought. I mean, of, uh, first Wiper and Isa, and that's really about it. Yeah. I, well. Yeah. yeah, like I Rom. said, like I said, I like it, is a like, I like movie. all these things. I like all these together rather than you know the sum of the the parts. Because- but I think th- if you think of One Piece as a meal, and we always do, and I'm not going to say steak and salad, um, but when you think of One Piece as a meal, I think the reason why Skypea ranks so high on lists these days is because it is so refreshing and so different compared to the rest of the. 
of the of the platter of, of what you have in front of you. Um, I think it's also because people who were saying that, uh, oh, you should skip Skype here, were shamed up and down on Twitter. They so. were shamed, good. and yeah. properly yeah. so. And I was one of them, and I am ashamed that I was. Um, I'm coming out and, and saying it. Um, you want to enjoy a story. Why would you skip anything? No, p- because people always come up to you and say, it's this long. And by the way, this was like, 15 years ago when it was mm. much less long it's five they're like it's so long can i skip anything i'm like well i guess skype here i don't know if you really need to skip something but don't. I, you know anytime I, I hear stuff like that i just i just think of what whitebeard yelled at blackbeard at the end of marine ford it's like you're not the one roger's yeah. waiting for <laughs> yeah I, that's I think, what i should be doing <laughs> i i think it was i think uh fan translations were a little different back in the day because i always <laughs> yeah because i always remember him yelling like you're not one of them so <laughs> <laughs> Bastard in a basket. <laughs> a bastard um, from a basket. All right, so we got to move on. Um, but before we do, do, do any of you want to guess who ranked this number one? There's a bunch. Sam. Sam. Sam, Sam yeah. that's correct. Sam, Anyone else? Sure. We have five Brian. total. Brian, Brian, that's correct. Brian ranked Th- it number There's one. three more people. Probably less mm. less of you are going to get this right off. Joey? No. Number one? No. No, okay. Joey ranked it number seven? Okay. I, I, yeah, Sam and, and Brian. I the the, rem- sure. the remaining ones, Jill ranked at number one. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. Dan Dockery, number one. Yeah. Uh, and last year on this list is Henry Thurlow wow. ranked at oh. number one. Yeah. And you know what? I, he, I think he is of our generation or maybe Stephen's generation yeah. in this yeah, case. My, uh, my that generation. makes sense. Um, <laughs> the old man. Who, arc, right? <laughs> who ranked it lowest? V ranked it lowest. At number twenty one. Oh, wow. Um and I see Stephen coming to V's house now with a giant spear. Um <laughs> oh, David no, Bednar. Stephen, Stephen, save yourself some time and just send a lightning bolt. <laughs> lightning bolt. Lightning I could bolt. sense it. Um <laughs> Steven I'm sorry, David Bednar ranked at number twenty. Um, and those are our outliers. I, as- da- David Bednar <laughs> David Bednar also thinks uh Revenge of the uh I'm sorry, uh Rise of, uh, Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. So yeah. he's a Rise of Does Skywalker he listen defender, to the show? So. Oh uh, yeah, of course he does. I think hey, he David. does. I think he does. Yeah. No, I, think he's I mean to he, he makes an interesting case for it though, but I don't I I don't buy it. Not he does not make an interesting case for not liking <laughs> an Jaya and Skypea. Uh, I mean no. I'd like uh, to hear his I'd like to hear his reasoning. But um I do want to say uh while we were talking about the other uh, Shindorans, um, I remembered Brom, and then I was trying to remember the other two, the the fat one, Genbo, right? Genbo, yeah. Genbo. and I remember Kamikari. Names, but, uh, Kamikari was Kamikiri. like, Kamikiri. 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 Yeah. shit. I was like, what the fuck is his name? He gets, like, zapped in the face. It was really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> See? Um, um, Genbo, was probably, think, Genbo was, like, the most forgettable. Their designs, do though, I think were cool. Yeah, you're right. I, uh, Genbo probably yeah. I, doesn't he get like bodied by one of the goats? No, goat he guys? gets bodied by uh, Yama. Oh yeah, Yama. Um, one-, one one last note, and, Robin, and then we so. can we can move yeah. on, Zach. Um, I did want to point out that this was the point. I think it maybe volume twenty three, which would be the last of Alabasta, but definitely volume twenty four and twenty five and so on. That was the point where, like every time, and it was a big publicized thing. Every first printing of the new volume was setting a new record for uh, first you know print runs um in japan so it was you know de facto it was the biggest thing in japan by this point so i I feel like this this arc exemplifies like oda saying well i guess i'm on top of the world right now so what can you do better than that you go off the top of the world into the class and and since then he has just been in outer space the rest of the time i believe Mm -hmm. and now Um, you know the rest of the story (laughs) yeah That is our number four. The the one last thing I did want to say about Jaya Skype is I am impressed how high I feel like it has risen in the ranks of just the audience generally. I don't think this this was not a well regarded <laughs> arc. <laughs> this arc also didn't take four years to tell. <laughs> well, yeah, but at the time, I mean, Alex and Stephen could probably speak to this better. At the time, it felt like it took four years to tell. Like it was it was one it of was the long, longer yeah. arcs in, and it was a slow burn. Which I think we could appreciate today because it doesn't feel mm-hmm. like a slow burn compared to a lot of the others. Um, but yeah, I th- it, it has definitely become a well-regarded arc in the community. As number six, I think I mentioned as of this recording, that says something. 
it's time to move on to number three. Last time we ranked this as number three. The audience wow. ranks this Very good. as number three. The audience ranks this as number four. Our wow. number three arc uh, is the number one arc this time for Alex. So would you like to tell us what is it? Yeah, um, my number one arc has changed since last time, and it's Alabasta. Mm. What? The disaster in Alabasta. Uh. Yeah, um, mm. last time, uh, for, for a really long time, Arlong Park, <laughs> I think, was my de facto number one because it's the important answer. But uh, after rereading it uh, twice um, in the past couple months, um, and also, oh, I guess, watching it and forced to watch four kids. Um, I don't know if that counts. Al- Alabasta has, has like, risen to the top as far as, like, the way I ranked everything this time was my pure enjoyment of of reading it and um, and just consuming it. Alabasta has, like, it hits that nostalgia button for me because when I was first getting into One Piece, like, everything that, I could get my hands on at the time, like all the Hong Kong DVDs, you know, at the time, that's the only way you could really watch it. Um, Alabasta had just like, it was either ending or had just ended in Japan. So that was like the, it was like the, it was hot shit. Um, I was really enamored with the Baroque work stuff. I thought that was a really cool uh, story. And Alabasta is the, is the culmination of it. And uh, it's not as piratey. As, as some of the other uh, stories, obviously, because most of it takes place uh, on this country of, of, of desert. Um, but it has such cool, um, like, such cool mysteries involved, uh, such cool political intrigue. All the pieces fit really, really well. Uh, it's really awesome how well everything fits. It's, it's kind of perfect to me. Alabasta, Al, I'm, I'm outside of Alabasta's window, and I'm holding the signs from Love Actually. You are perfect to me. Oh. Alabasta. I thought it was going to be the uh, stereo uh, over the head, yeah, blasting the uh, like New Era Peter Symphony Gabriel. or whatever. No, no, no <laughs> yes. p- blasting the Dvorak. Uh, New yeah, World. Dvorak. Uh, P- yeah. Peter Gabriel's uh, Sledgehammer remix to New World Symphony. <laughs> I, I prefer Salisbury Hill. If we're going to do that. And it's, no, relatively, uh, it's relatively simple, despite, yeah. you know, yeah. It, it is, yeah. and it's also the template for like a couple yeah. of the really big arcs that kind of preceded it, like and succeeded it. it yes, <laughs> um, for better or for worse. Uh, I'm when it comes to a lot of stories, I think that uh, a story is only good as, uh, as its villain or villains. And uh, Baroque works are my perfect, uh, my perfect pals. I love them all. They're all really great, even the frontier agents. Uh, even and especially the sniper duo, uh, Miss Father's Day and Mr. Seven. Yeah. Um, it has my favorite, <laughs> some of my favorite fights in the entire series. Last night when I was packing, uh, I was coming back from a business trip, I threw on Netflix and I watched um, Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas versus Usopp and Chopper. My probably my favorite fight of all. That one is like it. tough for me to watch. Like, like that, that one. Every is, fight uh, in that in this arc is one of the best fights. For each character involved. Period. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I do agree completely. with that. There, there's, there's character growth within uh, within that. It's like, and everybody's fighting for Vivi. Like, Vivi is this character that when I first went through Alabasta, I did not appreciate nearly as much. And through, t- over time, and this isn't even with, like, retroactive continuity. Like, you know, we've seen her, you know, these days where she's a princess and, you know, she's being royal and shit. No, like, it's it's kind of sort of going back and rereading everything and sort of recontextualizing everything. And Vivi is a really great character. Yeah. Uh, she re- She's sort of... Uh, Luffy even says this to Crocodile when they're fighting. Crocodile's like, boy, she sure is naive, huh? What a bonehead. And Luffy's like, yeah, but... Uh, but she cares really deeply for her country, and you're a piece of shit, so I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> like it's very, uh, it, it sort of it it it's it takes who Luffy is too, and really boils him down to like, well, I don't, I know what I need to know about you. Um, I don't care that you're, you know, uh, you know, trying to steal the rain or trying to steal, uh, you know, honor or truth. You've stolen my friend's kingdom, and she can't be happy because of you. It's very, like it's it boils Luffy down to to his to his core, 
Crocodile is an amazing villain. Um, he is he has this swagger that is just unbeatable, and his incremental uh, frustration with the fact that Luffy can't be killed um, through sheer happenstance is delicious to watch. Um, like, I I always forget about this. You know, Luffy gets turned into a mummy, but before that, he shoots water up into the sky, and Crocodile just pieces out, and the water comes back down, and just by sheer happenstance, he's, he's okay. Um, Alabasta... This time around, um, and I, I reread it again um, recently, like the past couple of days during uh, during my work trip. Smoker is incredible. What a great, cool character. The first instance of a Marine that you really, um, I guess, sort of, I mean, Shellstown is sort of like, you know, it has that disambiguation between what a good Marine is and what a bad Marine is. But Smoker, uh, this is his, like, follow your own justice arc. You know, we get to see him sort of interact with the Straw Hats, and he sort of ponders, like, what exactly do you pirates know about what Crocodile is doing here? Because that woman is Nico Robin, and she has been wanted for, like, 20 years. <laughs> like, do you know what's happening? And they're like, no, we just want to kick Crocodile's ass. And, like, it's... Uh, I, I could gush about this arc further and further and further, but it's... To me, like I, I can't think of an arc that I love better, and it didn't really occur to me, honestly, until a couple weeks ago when Steve tagged me in this Discord post that they, uh, hey, there's new Baroque works, like there's like a clear file that has all the Baroque works agents on it. There was some sort of merch, new merch with the uh, with the BW agents on it, and I was like, shit, this is my favorite arc. Like I can't, I can't hide it from myself any longer. Like. <laughs> I You've come Alabaster. out and uh, and as yeah. the Alabasta disaster. I, I, Alabasta disaster. Crazy karate. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Ed. I'll pa- I'm uh, going to pod a do on out of here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you hear pod a do one more time. Um, I'll take a doo doo. Uh, Ed. Sorry. That's just a four kids. Uh, they're yeah. terrible. Ed. Uh, listen to watch four kids. It was. Yeah. Listen to force to watch four kids. Ed. You rank yes. this as your number two. Um, so, yes. uh, tell us, tell us why. Sure. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, um, top to bottom, one of the best stories I think in one piece, uh, it starts off strong. We get the, uh, the, like the fight with Ace, like Ace just shows up and we have this like massive revelation that this is Luffy's brother and he's this incredibly powerful pirate, but he's also this goofy guy who falls asleep in a plate of food and, you know, <laughs> has a wild goose chase around, uh, around town. And we start off with that. We get, we really get deep into Vivi's character. We get the uh, the parts in the in the casino, and then we get each successive fight with Crocodile. And Crocodile is this sort of diabolical character. He's the first character in One Piece who we've seen have this tremendous plan and really have all the advantages. Have this incredible devil fruit. Have this familiarity with the land. Having this um, you know the perfect fruit for you know for where he lives and being this beloved guy and really having everyone fooled and then really having it all fall apart when Luffy just won't go down and to see his desperation with that, like you really get a sense later on of how, you know, despite being a really powerful guy, crocodile is kind of low on the totem pole of being a, being a warlord and being a really powerful player on the world stage. He doesn't really move events. He was trying to take over a single country. He can't move the world at this point. But he's trying to get with Nico Robin. He's trying to get the Poneglyphs. And we don't really know what the Poneglyphs are. And we find out towards the end of the arc about like these, you know, it's a, it's a legendary weapon that could destroy the world. Maybe we don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, Vivi as a character is also very, very interesting because we see like, we have the encounter with Walpole. We have this really bad impression of royalty and we get Vivi onto the crew slightly before that. And we see the contrast first there, but going to see her family, going to see the pe- how the people of Alabasta view her and respect her, and the way that Crocodile is able to take away, like sort of the uh, the prestige or the uh, the trust in in the family, and the way, the way he's able to sow that discord in the country is uh, is one of I think one of one of his better uh, one of better, his better storytelling flourishes. And um, and as I was saying before, each fight, especially in Alabarna, 
is the uh, it's it's probably the best fight for a bunch of characters. It might be Zoro's best fight. It might be Sanji's best fight. I think it's definitely Usopp's best fight. Uh, Nami and this double finger. Even Nami gets a really physical, really dirty fight in this uh, mm. in this arc, and it's not really something you see uh, very often. And uh, for me, also like to see Zoro transcend his uh, his ability and really get uh, he achieves one of his first goals. Really, is just to have the power to cut, uh, to feel the power to cut uh, anything. Really, to hear the you know to cut everything or nothing at all. It's uh, that's a really fun episode of the anime to watch. It's a really great chapter of the manga on its own, and. Um, yeah, it it, uh, it really brings the whole, uh, it's, it's a culmination of One Piece up to that point, and it allows it to go further places. It really shows the advancement of the crew, and uh, especially the advancement in Luffy finally being able to take down Crocodile. You know, Ed, you mentioned Usopp, mm-hmm. um, and I think this was sort of, for me, the turning point where I was like, oh man, Usopp rules. <laughs> uh, like, Arlong Park, he's got a pretty good fight, but for me, this was like the whoa like i was chopper when he had like he did the uh the 510 hammer thing i was like Mm -hmm. oh my god you're so cool and i think that usopp does have this like uh this sort of repellent when it comes to new readers or new watchers because he's like he's kind of a weenie he is a weenie and i think that incrementally there's like different points where i think people really get on get on his like oh man usopp rules and i think for a certain generation this was this was us and for a newer generation, it was um, God Usopp, the God mm, Usopp stuff. Mm, and, yeah, and I think that. Uh, yeah. The, new, the newer generation of fans, I think, that's, like, where they really... And for another generation, Soga King. Like, mm-hmm. I think there's yeah. Yeah. It, there's certain points where, like, oh, hey, Usopp's great. I'm probably in know? the generation after, yeah. Yeah. Kind of kind of interesting how that works. So are we do uh, a big-time Usopp moment real soon? I think so. Hey. I think We're so. always do. We're always doing big ups up. <laughs> um, the Steves both rank this arc number three. Uh, Steve in, I'll start with you. Sure, I'll be. I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, I, I definitely echoing uh, what Alex said. I, I think it is. It, it, this is the the arc that created the mold for you know Oda's epic arcs. Like you know he had never done anything this big. Um, and this was him proving that he could with total aplomb, you know, like there, there's no, it, like I was just saying, uh, about, uh, one piece becoming the biggest manga in the, in the world, like, uh, at the end of Al- by the end of Alabasta, like it is no wonder uh, that it did. Um, yeah, like, I don't think he does any facet of this arc poorly in any regard. Like, in, in fact, that's probably why, like I have it number three instead of number one, it's just like it's so it's so perfect that like you know there's no like flawed like underdog part of it where i'm like oh but this is what makes it great like no he just does he just knocks it out of the park in every uh respect i I think the um as ed was saying the fights uh all the one-on-one fights are basically the bar like they're the bar that like no other arc has been able to um to match they the one thing they are they do follow a certain formula. Like they're all like three chapters long. You know, they all have like, here's the, you know, they fight, they start skirmishing, uh, you know, uh, the, like the, the, the straw hat does a cool attack, but then the other character is fine. And then the other character busts out something and you think they're going to, you know, they're they're They have the upper hand, but then the straw hats find the, the inner strength to overcome them in the third chapter. Um, they all kind of work like that. Uh, but they, you know, they're just executed so well. Like it's, it's why that formula works um as as well as it does and yeah i mean i think it's only the fact that he doesn't have enough time to to dedicate three chapters to every single straw hat in a in an arc is is the reason why he hasn't been able to flesh them out as well as he has um in these fights um so yeah it's just um wow it it is a, a a real masterpiece of an arc absolutely uh steve you also had it number three uh, I feel like I feel like Skypea and Alabasta are are almost like siblings. They kind of go hand in hand. They're two major One Piece arcs, and I think last time we ranked it, I think I had Skypea above Alabasta. But uh, having being refamiliarized uh, with Alabasta, 
over the last year. Um, it, it I think it's just one step above uh, Skypea. Uh, it is it is the classic. It's the vintage epic One Piece arc. The first, you know, it was the first major epic of One Piece, and it's masterful i think uh it's you know there's a little bit of a slow burn of trekking through that desert uh but everything else is so much fun uh and i think i i love eneru i think eneru is a great villain he might be my favorite one piece villain but i have to admit i'm like eh, crocodile's the better villain though <laughs> it's and he's amazing because he is yeah, he's a little ridiculous, not too ridiculous, but he is super cool, and he is a calculating bastard. He's like a really the, capable Bond villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The constant uh, twists and and Plan B and Cs with Crocodile yeah. from like the from just Rain Base. When it's like, oh, it's like, what if the what if VV manages to help them escape? It's like, oh, she can't do that because I have the real key right here. And then yeah, what like, a fucking asshole! Yeah. Like it's such a yeah. he's just toying with them the whole time. It's so good. And, and he's then the there's real, the he's the real Captain Kuro, like the real yeah. man yeah. thousand plans. Oh god, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking, uh, Captain Kuro is roadkill compared to crocodile and it's then, funny like, alex because like, you put alabaster at the top it's it's sort of village on the bottom so mm. there you go <laughs> but the constant twists like the bomb uh that was gonna be fired into the courtyard and then it turns out it's a time bomb yeah. uh it's there there's always you know it's like it's like things can always get worse in alabasta so it's just it it, it it was just irresistible uh, reading and watching. I think Baroque Works is like an iconic team of One Piece villains. Maybe they're not some of the most popular, but it's like they are a great blend of fearsome and 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 citizens of Toontown. Uh, and and I and I think because there's just. I there there there's less uh, you know the, uh, there's less fat on on one piece at this point like uh, it, alabaster is all that's it's all meat you know all tender meat uh, <laughs> I don't know it's, but the thing is like there's enough time for all the straw hats to really get plenty of great moments and that includes uh, their their fights and all the fights are amazing and they're all different in their own way um, and they really kind of help. All the straw hats. I, I would say Sanji. Like I, I don't think he necessarily has a whole lot of character development in his fight with Mister Two because he's still paralyzed by women. Um, but it's it's an amazing fight. But Nami really gets down and dirty, not in that way with uh, Miss Doublefinger, <laughs> and a really gruesome fight that you. Mm. I, I don't think you would see a lot of female characters, even in One Piece today, uh, really get involved in her fight. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like I always yeah, think of that. Oh, yeah, I wince every time. Zoro's bloodbath, and even mm. like Usopp getting uh, his, Jeez. you know, just his his body mangled uh, is Skull incredible. Shattered. Um, Luffy's, you know, and you know, Luffy's fights with uh, Crocodile are great. Uh, I still think it's the uh, the best finale of any fight is uh, Luffy defeating Crocodile. Yeah, uh, you, you know. Oh, don't no, go. Sorry. Because that was one where it's like, as soon as Crocodile was beaten, like there was no Bartholomew Kuma. Uh, Kuma. There's no there's no Bartholomew Kuma showing up at the end. There's no, uh, we still got to, you know, run away from uh, this or the Navy's coming or Doflamingo's coming. It's like, no, Crocodile was beaten. It started raining. Everything was done. Like, I think that it, it's still the most satisfying uh, villain defeat because it was... It was fine. I know the Marines, uh, you know, the Marines, and the Navy eventually show up, and the Straw Hats have to leave Alabasta. But it wasn't like at the moment. But it, it, it like, is Smoker and Tashigi are used very well in this arc. Um, Ace is kind of he's not introduced, but this is his. This is kind of like our getting to know you. And while it's very brief in the manga, 
Uh, it's a very spectacular scene of him blowing up all those Baroque work ships. Alabasta, it's just, I guess, like, I was talking about this earlier with Drum Island, and, you know, talking about with the anime tried making it into a movie and it didn't work. I don't think this is an arc I could sell someone on out of context. But once you're you're all in on One Piece and you know the context, Alabasta is is such a treat uh it's it and i and i think this might be just uh the legacy uh uh bias uh you know the nostalgia but revisiting it it's just like every everything just hits and i just think it 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 was very satisfying and i think i don't know i i Hmm. Steve, I want to say know, I want I want I want to say something really uh, impactful before I toss the uh, toss. We're putting to a lot of, Well, let me yeah. let me help you out and say that uh, Sanji's never been cooler than in this, this arc. Possibly, I'd say peak Sanji kind of hits around yeah. Water Seven. Um, really like, uh, rereading this, like every every single scene with Sanji, every single scene with Sanji, every single yeah. one in in Alabasta, he's the coolest motherfucker on the page. He is. Mr. Pr- is Mr. Mr. Prince had such an effect on me. Yeah. Uh, I bought any black rim yellow sunglasses I could. <laughs> I, I, even if they look terrible on me, I wanted to be Mr. Prince so bad. We all want to be Steve Buscemi. <laughs> um, shut up, Zach. Um, <laughs> we do. I just think I just think this is this is One Piece' first true epic, and it's. Masterful. Oh God! Uh, the the ending, the the whole uh, uh, yeah, mark of friendship. I was going to say, How you, what you not... meant, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. When you mentioned that uh, they didn't have they any it. like, there's no running away at the end. It's like yeah, and because they have time to relax, you actually are able to get the moment at the end with that where yeah. they can yeah. say goodbye. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean they were running away, but they were able to do it in a way. It, it, mm-hmm. it they had to go just, back. Yeah. Like they're running yeah. away. They're like they're. Hina has them on the fucking ropes. They have like yeah. they have spears all in their ship. It's yeah. crazy. Like they're about to get sunk, and then Usopp and saves the day. It's like, and then they Mr. have to go all the way back to to go to get Vivi. It's Mr. It's, Two it's with one of the best baby face uh, turns you'll ever see. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean the the iconic the, ending the, scene. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. That it's is the, the one iconic ta- ending it's, scene. It's the one tattoo I have, and it's the only tattoo I really want. It's... People know, like people in Japan, like know what it is. Like whenever you, whenever they have like a One Piece retrospective video, everybody's always doing the. Well, we met mm-hmm. when we did uh, our One Piece podcast ten. We when we did our yeah. samurai class. What did yeah. we do? The mark of friendship with the uh, with uh, the teacher who knew that. Yeah, yeah. Ocean. Um, yeah, so I do, I, I do I want... know the 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 editors at Jump were really floored when they saw that my tattoo was. Legit. They were. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I I want to talk about this a little bit. I put it at number five. Um. It was my number two last go around. Um. And I want to look because I love the hell out of Alabasta. I agree with everything said. So I want to explain. I want to explain myself. Why Why did it go down? And um. I, the 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 only reason I could think of to put the four that went above it is that the one thing there are two things Alabasta is missing. One is an impactful um, emotional flashback. Um, all of the other arcs that I ranked above Alabasta have that. Um, there there is just not that emotional uh, moment in the same in the in that kind of way for for Alabasta. The second. And I think it's kind of what Stephen talked about and many others talked about with Marineford, which is which had come right after this in my rankings, is that Alabasta kind of can't exist on its own. I think movie eight is kind of the prime example of that. And for me, I think all of the four above, let's use um, Drum Island or Skypea, for example, since we went through those, uh, work so well as self-encompassing, like, this is one piece. This is the this is how this is what one piece could look like at its best. Um and I'm not saying that Alabasta isn't one piece at its best. I just it it doesn't I don't know, I think it kind of misses something because 
it is so strung into everything that comes before um, and after to some extent. Um, it is I, everything else I completely agree with. I think the to the, to the credit of Baroque works, you know, Impel Down uses almost all of the Baroque works agents because I think Oda realizes, oh, zero, one, two, three, all amazing characters. Why would I not bring them back uh, in a big way? And those characters, like their growth in and out of that arc are amazing. But I would say, except for that scene at the end, I think Mr. Two is better outside of his own arc. And I get Mr. Three, I guess, isn't really in Alabasta too much. But um, Mr. One isn't. I, Mr. One is a good foil for Zoro. I don't know if I'd say he's such an interesting character on his own. Um, but I do agree with everything said about Crocodile. I will say definitely the best Zoro fight, maybe the best Luffy fight, um, at least in the anime, I'd say that's, that's probably my favorite anime fight. I just rewatched the end of, uh, Alabasta. I watched, sometimes I turn on Pluto TV and they're just like running through one piece. Um, and I just got to watch the end of that fight and what a great freaking ending to an arc i love it and by the way people used to make fun of the please stop the fighting thing that vivi used to do she does not do it that much uh from what i watched and she i agree with alex um i didn't i think because i caught up later i never really got that resentment for i think there was a resentful uh i think the community was resentful against vivi for a while for whatever reason, I don't know why. I love Vivi. I love Nami and Vivi's relationship throughout that saga. Um, and Vivi's relationship with the rest of the crew is like, I am still interested in that relationship. I'm still interested to see. I know Alabasta will be important in the future. And I, he's already, Oda's already laid the laid the stones for that in the reverie material. Um, I'm super interested to see why Alabasta was important in the past and why it will be important in the future of, of the One Piece world. I'll end uh, it there. Well, before, Alex. Um, yeah, uh, so something that, like, I really kind of, that kind of hit me this time around. Um, first, uh, the Luffy's final fight with Crocodile is staged really well in the manga. Like, you should go, go back and reread it because the panel layouts for the fight are really great. The action is so clear. Um, like, you can see exactly what moves he's making. He's basically storyboarded it out for the anime. It's crazy good. Um, this time around, I felt like maybe it's because I've been working, like, nonstop uh, for <laughs> eight days. Uh, but uh, when I finally reach the end of Alabasta and there's that really nice moment where it's raining and Cobra has uh, Luffy on his back yeah. and Sanji's like, hey, that guy's with us. And Vivi's like, hey, you guys need medical attention. They're like, no, 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 we'll go to the palace. You just take care of yourselves and um, just get get Luffy somewhere safe. And then they all, like, pass the fuck out. Like, they're all so exhausted from just everything. And I felt that so hard. Yeah. Uh, and I don't really recall them doing that in any other arc after, like, just all together just being like, okay, we're we're spent. Like, that's we've we've really exhausted ourselves just fighting for our our friend and their country i think alabasta and skypea and maybe one other in particular is such a great example of the camaraderie in the crew that i think is missing um in the post time skip era generally um and i hope we see more of that as as we run through the end of the series there was only one other person by the way who ranked this number one um hmm. surprisingly dennis um was the only other person uh who ranked it low joe ranked it number 19 hmm. um roger of roger's base fame ranked it number 16 wow. uh jeff ranked it number four uh 15 uh and Abby Denton ranked at number two. So she was just fine there. Um, right. Yeah. So we have two left. Uh, this is our number two. Uh, last time around, it was number two. Uh, the audience ranked at number five. Um, no one here ranked at number one. 
Um, but really? one of us, yeah, one of us ranked it number two. Um, Did anyone have it outside their top four? Uh, two of us, Alex okay. and Steven. I'm shocked about one what? of those. Really? Have it outside of their top four. Really? Yeah, Alex, you have it at number five. Uh, oh, Steve, wow. you have it at number two. Um, it's the Arlong Park arc. Uh, Steve, would you like to talk about it? Should come as no surprise. Um, <laughs> hell, this is an amazing arc. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Uh, this was it. This was the uh this is the moment that most people will tell you this is when One Piece, you know, gets its hooks in you. Like this is the this is the make or break uh moment. Um it is one of the earliest story arcs. Uh and it's I think it's very crucial in its placement. Because I think at the time, everyone just thought of One Piece as like, yeah, it's the goofy looking manga. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's it's weird. The characters are weird looking. I don't know if I like the art. Uh, and then uh, the story throws this arc at you and shows like, oh, we could go there. We could go there. You, you Oh, you think this is all fun and games and goofy crap? Uh, <laughs> nah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, okay. We're going to mess you up real good. <laughs> I I I still think this is one of the greatest stories that's ever been told in One Piece. This is what an amazing character story for Nami. This uh, who like she's very Fujiko inspired, you know, very femme fatale. Where it's like, yeah, I'll work with the men, but also I'm out for myself. And you know, she steals the the Mary and their treasure. You're thinking, oh, that's just, you know, that's that's just how she be. You know, she's she's dastardly, but it just then it just turns into this whole tragic backstory where she's doing this to save like her entire village. And it takes a while. Like it's, I I, I like the slow, um, the build up to that because you think it's like you know, oh wow, she was part of the Arlong Pirates all along. And it's like, well, why'd she save Zoro? And then it's like, oh, they're, I think she's hiding treasure in, uh, in the Orange Grove, or it's like, oh, is there treasure there? She wants that's why she wants the village back. Uh, it just it's this build up to just one of the. Uh, one of the best backstories in this entire series and it just only cements Arlong as one of the biggest bastards uh, of all the other villains and then it just and we've been with these characters for a while like not too long because this is very early into the series Uh, so and you know that like you know, it's like no. Well, Nami's gonna join. Like Nami has to join the crew, right? You know, it's like they they just gotta. Like Luffy's not gonna say like, oh, well, Nami said to leave, so we're gonna leave. Uh, and then just when everything goes to shit, and and then you, you just get one of the like the darkest moments in the entire series of, uh, Nami realizing that everything she did was just a waste, and she'll never be free, and she looks at the the uh, the symbol that was etched into her arm and she just starts stabbing at it to just you know tr- you know it in a, in a futile attempt to get rid of it and that's when luffy's there and then she finally breaks down and opens up asks him for help and just and and just a true moment of friendship and and, and like an, an undeniable undeniable connection that these characters have Luffy just says, "Okay, you know, like, I'm like, of course, like, you, you, you should, you know, like, you, you could have always just said the word, we're ready, because uh, you know, because we're a team here, we're friends, uh, and then just them fighting the Fishmen for Nami, and then defeating them, and uh, winning her freedom and all the other citizens' freedom, it's, it's an incredible story." It's and it's told so well. I, 
I couldn't get over this when I was first watching the series. It, it was it was must see TV for me, and by that I just mean putting in those Hong Kong bootleg DVDs. Like I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't turn away, and I must see VHS. I have rewatched these episodes so many times. I feel like I I know these episodes like the back of my hand at this point. It this is. And, and like to say that this is, you know, this being one of the earliest story arcs, I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, One Piece never got this good again. It's like, no, it just, this was the launching point. It's like, this is going to be a, an amazing series, and you're going to be super invested into these characters and the stories, and they're going to have such an, uh, like, amazing kinship. Uh, you, you, had, you had no idea what you were getting yourself into. and You're going to be crying that, a lot. Yeah, and and that's and that's what I think about the Arhon Park arc. Thank you, thank you. That's Steve. all I have to say about that. Yeah, um, Ed, you that was and I, son. you and I put it at number four. Mm-hmm. Um, Ed, do you want to you want to start us off? Sure. I think this is a special moment in particular in the arc of the Straw Hat Pirates because it's the moment where they they are a they're a crew that's capable of going out into the world, go out. And, into the Grand Line, once they have this collective experience under their belt, because they've been fighting together for the past three or four arcs before this, and this really uh, is the conclusion of the first big, you know, series of arcs in One Piece. This is is the end of that story, where Logtown sort of is the prologue, prologue and epilogue, it's in between. Uh, but the way, the way Arlong is characterized as this, uh, you know, small, he's a, he's a, He's a strong man. He's a thug. He's just somebody who, you know, he's dominating these people because he can and because he thinks he's right to do it. And, um, yeah, he has, he deals with them ruthlessly. He brutally murders uh, Nami and Nojiko's mother in front of them and uh, just does his, a really good job in, like, sort of, subduing Nami, bringing, like, giving her these false, this false hope, this false promise of the potential of freedom and holding everyone's, you know, lives, you know, hostage, basically, so that she works for him. And the way, you know, Luffy doesn't even listen to the history. He doesn't listen to the story. He's, he's sleeping. But he sees how it's affected her. And even though she had, you know, betrayed him back at Baradier and stolen the ship and everything. He knew he had the, the emotional knowledge to know that she was hiding something and she needed help. So when he sees that he has the, uh, you know, he has the impetus to go storm, you know, storm the castle and we get all these incredible uh, fights. Although I do have <laughs> a little issue with like, you know, Luffy, Luffy hanging down at the bottom of the sea is actually comes before the snake with him getting stuck. I, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna mention that. <laughs> Thank with, you for saying that. But Zoro and Hachi and Usopp and Chu is a very underrated fight. That one's so much fun. Yes, yeah, uh, that was great. So yeah, and and bringing and down. May I interject for just a moment? Go ahead. I don't mind the Luffy being stuck uh, underwater scene because. Uh, it would would have looked really ridiculous if Arlong and Luffy just stood on the sidelines and waited for their, uh, their look. Uh, I, I guess their again, this might be an anime issue. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. get the reasoning for all of those things happening. I just the, I wish there was a better solution. That that was yeah. that was an anime issue, I think, more than a manga issue. But it's a, and it's also the first like tremendous you know final blow in an arc like Luffy. Going up to the room, the map room, destroying the map room, destroying mm. like basically her the jail cell, and yeah. t- you know, stretching his leg up and destroying a building with his with his punch or with his kick, is um, you know it's a re- it's an escalation for 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 Luffy. So it's it's an escalation in powers and it's uh, it really shows how his commitment to his ideals and to his crew, which is uh, you know at the core of One Piece. Yeah, I. I completely agree with everything that's been said. I think the anime, I think it needs to be said. I think this is a case where the anime does it better than the manga. I think the well, manga is things, fan- yeah. yeah, I the thing is the the flashback in the manga, as I recall, is really, really, really short um and quick. Um, like it, it goes by quickly. I think having the time, like the literal time, 
to go through the story of uh, Nami's flashback um, makes it even more heartbreaking. What like that is that will always be one of my top two flashbacks. I can't imagine anything ever unseating it. There's that and one other that I will be discussing shortly that will always be uh, at the top of mind of me being like, wow, I can't get through this dry eyed. Um, it is it is tough. Um, it's a really good arc that I, I think I have come to appreciate more and more um, as time has gone on. Um, I don't even know if there's like much else I could say other than I think it also set, I think really Arlong set the template for a lot of arcs to come um, in the one-on-one fights, in the, the br- heartbreaking flashbacks, in the um, the wacky side characters that are actually very, you know, sentimental and important. Uh, oh, there's a guy with a windmill on his head. How funny. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. I don't really know if there's much else I could say. I love this arc. It ticks all the boxes for me. I don't want to eat up more time. Um, Alex, um, <laughs> I know this is, I know this is an important one to you. Um, you ranked it number five. Yeah. Um, like I said, this time around, I did it a little differently. I, I did it based on, you know, my enjoyment of reading the arc versus, like, you know, where I was, you know, in my One Piece reading experience. And um, like I said, this was like the important, the important choice. Um, I, I I feel like this time around, I I feel like every single time I rank I rank an arc, I have to do this one at the top, and there isn't anything that comes below it. But like I think this time around. I I think that I miss, um, I just miss like the whole crew being together. I guess up to that point, um, which is why I guess I bumped it down a little bit, um, because I really like having Chopper and Nami be part of the you know part of the part of the core group versus you know everything being sort of about Nami's struggle, but uh, it is the culmination of of all the East Blue stuff. Um, you know, Nami's character uh, sort of really uh, gets fleshed out there. Uh, you know, we've seen little hints here and there in the, uh, in, you know, the previous few arcs before that, and um, it comes out really well. Uh, Arlong is such a great, 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 great villain. Um, one of the best, uh, r- truly. Um, if there was ever, like, you know, it, it, Crocodile is the, you know, is the villain with the endless array of contingency plans. But Arlong is just a master of manipulation and he has such a stranglehold on this town and the Marines and really um, up to this point. And I think that like, even after that, like there isn't really such a moment where you feel helpless as the, as the reader and, uh, like as helpless as Nami is when she, you know, when Nezumi and the rest of the Marines are digging up Belmere's garden and, uh, you know, and taking all of the money that she is painstakingly, yeah. you know, collected over the last couple of years. And then he's basically, he basically just says to her face, well, what are you going to do about it? Like you and what army? And uh, like, he doesn't count on on the friends she accidentally made along the way. Like it's <laughs> uh it's uh kind of serendipitous that that, that nobody expects she... Monkey D. Luffy. Yeah. He's the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> I, I think I think that Who are you to doubt El Luffy? <laughs> yeah. The the thing is this. I think that like the Belmere flashback is is an all timer, of course. It's 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 so heart wrenching. And I think that like Arlong Park will always be number one in my heart because of what it means for One Piece and what it means for my personal reading experience. Um, but I think at this point, like I've I've read it so many times and I've seen it adapted in so many ways because they had the episode of Nami and episode of East Blue and they're basically adapting the same same material in a way. And I mean, why wouldn't you? It's it's, it's they, like, they really know awesome. how yeah yeah. Like it's a no brainer at this point, but I think now I sort of appreciate the bigger, um, I don't know, 
I, I don't know why. I, like I said, the it was really hard for me to rank my after my number one, my bottom like you know three or yeah. four. The, I can interchange. It depends on the day. Uh, you know, tomorrow our Ar- Arlong Park could be in my number two. Like it, it versus um, whatever I picked, I forget what it, what, what it was. Um, you picked. I'm not. I can't say. Ah, it's the one. It's the one we haven't. Done. The one we have left. Okay. Not well, anyways, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I could just ramble on and on, but um, our, our long park is it, far and away. I mean, when I was reviewing my reread, my recent reread, I I ranked all of the East Blue uh, arcs, and of course, our long park was at the fucking top. Like, how could you not? It's it's uh it's great it's Arling park like what, what what can i say steven you ranked it in, in the same place number five yeah when when i talked about uh baratier um i mentioned how the jump from syrup village to baratier you know in quality and just in the uh ranking uh order uh was really indicative of that you know he was figuring it out quickly and i think there's an equal jump from Baratier to Arlong Park, where it's not just that uh, he, 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 everything improves from you know Baratier being a like a well constructed, you know, very solid story arc with solid character, solid setting, solid uh, action, um, you know, storytelling, flashback. Uh, Arlong Park does all of those things, except this time they're iconic. Uh, you know, he <laughs> he made them like unforgettable, um, and I, I think that's a really uh, a, a tremendous um, achievement at this point in the the story, having been uh, so early on. Um, like Steve said, I think you know I, I had said during Baratier that like that was the moment where uh, like especially with um, the Oh, uh, you know, I mean, I was a teenager, so partly the violence in Baratier, but also, you know, just kind of like, well, you know, Oda showing that he could take it to some more intense places than we had seen, uh, at least not since, you know, chapter one uh, with with Shanks's arm and stuff. Um, and, and like the the depth of the Zoro and Mihawk fight and like the foreshadowing and, and stuff that was going on. Arlong is where like where you're like oh okay i'm i i have to you know i'm i'm i have to see the rest of this like you you got me i'm i'm hooked um that it it you know he he really uh really hits you uh hard and i i think a a big part of that or one of the things that makes this arc so rich um especially coming off of you know like i like i said uh Bratier being a good arc, but also it is a very much a sausage fest of an arc, uh, you know, with all these like salty cooks in a yeah. kitchen. Uh, and Not me uh, you know, halfway through the, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the men, uh, tearful farewell, uh, you know, with snot running down their faces, um, is that like, it, it feels like such a richer arc when all of a sudden, like the central figures in, uh, you know, at least on the good, the good character side is, uh, Nami, Nojiko and Belmare um yeah. being all of a sudden you have this this trio of um very well realized and, and fleshed out uh female characters um who are there you know they are a family they have they they each have agency in the story and um they each have their own kind of perspective within the story I feel like it it really broadens the, the like the character archetypes and and the um variety of of uh, characters and perspectives that we've seen in the story up to that point, and it really it does make it a much richer um, arc, and and you know it helps I think the emotional aspect of of the the arc um, as well because it's not you know like Nami is not a uh, you know a, a shrinking violet um, you know she's she's a, a tough girl, but I think you know that extra layer of kind of vulnerability as a, as a child to, to go through the traumatic experiences that she did. Um, I think really adds to how, how much of a gut punch that, um, that, that flashback is. And, uh, it, it does, it definitely makes her a much, uh, richer character in the present day. Um, which is, you know, it's something that I, I do feel like in the last, you know, decade or so of, of one piece, we've, we've missed a lot of like, he's, he's developed Nami in different ways. She's, she's turned into a, a different character than she was in East blue um, for better or for worse. And um, 
you know, I, I feel like it, it's always useful to go back to Arlong Park to to be reminded of, um, you know, how how close their bond is, you know, having gone through what happens in this arc. Do you um, think? Um... Do you think that like Nami needs a, needs her own whole cake island uh, <laughs> to to sort of recontextualize uh, her character these days? Or, or I, I, I I think that we've 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 sort of uh, been so far removed from what sort of made the core five um, mm. tick. I, I, I know the male gaze has had uh, yeah, well that's a yeah. negative effect on Nami. Uh, and I've said this on the podcast before, and I don't think I've I've had a chance to say this on this batch of episodes. Uh, I think Nami is one of the most relevant main characters in the series because yes. I think, you know, besides Tress Rosa, when she you know steps away, every arc she has something interesting to do. Yeah, she's mm. uh, like uh, unequivocally the smartest character. Yes, uh, on on the Straw Hat. I guess aside from Robin, smart in a different way though. You know, like she's she's crafty she's clever this is where she uses her her rogue skills really it's, it's I, less no. about the fighting and more about the she, uh slippery uh, she's sensible slippery about shit. i yes. yeah. i'm i'm rewatching whole cake island at at the moment of recording and my god she has yeah she's whole, great she, she, i my stuff to do i don't mean she's like oh she has this awesome fight with this character no but she's doing a lot of crafty and and uh you know just crafty I, stuff like that you know that really suits her character she's great like she's she continues Steve, to be one of the most entertaining characters in the series i i think we mentioned this later on in our wano and onigashima like maybe a couple months ago um but to be a good character and you know, to be a good straw hat you don't necessarily need to have cool one-on-one -on -one fights every arc like the things for example, the thing Sanji's really good at is the espionage kind of stuff that he used to do. I mean, we talk about Alabasta, and I'm sure we're going to be talking about it a little bit more later, but like, and in uh, Little Garden and, and so on. Like, you don't need to just kick ass to be a three dimensional, amazing character in One Piece. And that's one of the reasons I love this show, is it's not just about uh, this manga, um, it's not just about combat. And I think Nami's. Nami's story here and a lot of the flashbacks to come after this I think this really sets the template for it show like creates such a bond not just between her and the Straw Hats and Luffy but her and the reader um it, it's it's just such a unique thing particularly in shonen manga I I love the hell out of it um you, you, Alex, you know yeah. I think I think that like a, a new thing not really new but so, uh, a a facet of um of Nami's that has been brought up post time skip is is her uh I guess her affect affection or her affinity towards children and mothers yeah. and um I think you know of course that speaks a lot about you know her upbringing and about Belmare as an as orphan kid. yeah yeah and Belmare like. It sucks that we don't have more characters in One Piece like Belmere. Yes, I agree. Um, I yeah, I just had to say that because it's yeah. I, Nojiko like, too is like yeah, like the the side characters in Orange Town, uh, not Orange Town, um, Kokoyashi Village. Yeah, sorry, I f I mix up the East Blue names. Coco um, Village. Coco. Uh. The, all of the side characters, I'd say, are wonderful and three-dimensional and just, like, different than I feel like anything you see. Um, they're not wacky in the ways that you'll see in something like Wano or, like, caricatured. They're just, like, these are they, – they feel like lived-in people, like real people. Well, I mean, um, I think part of it is that, you know, this is sort of in the early days of One Piece. and Well, I Mayor Boodle – <laughs> yeah but the thing is like once the most ridiculous get... thing about mayor boodle is that his name is boodle <laughs> yeah once you go out of the east blue then oda starts kicking it up a notch with like the crazy weather patterns and yeah, yeah. and uh, you know like i i feel like uh the nice thing about the east blue stuff is that it's really easy to follow uh yeah. because mm -hmm. he's you know hasn't gotten to the point where he 
like he the the way Oda challenges his him challenges his himself in East Blue is like up to that point this is the greatest thing he's ever done, and then he decides to amp it up further with you know the Grand Line stuff, and then further with New World stuff. Like, um, it, it's it's kind of funny that like this I. I you know, mentioned, of course, that like Alabasta is sort of the template for for you know the big arcs to come, but but Arlong Park really is the that's sort of the first the foundation, deal, yeah, yeah, of One Piece. Uh, um, f- following that, I want to move on to our number one. Uh, but before we do, wait, did Ed, uh, Ed, Ed say his piece yeah. about? Okay. Yeah, it's oh yeah, piece. I went like yeah. uh, I had a number four. It was I went like twenty minutes ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Number one, who picked it at number one? Um, anyone want to guess? There's two people who picked it at number one. Uh, I bet Steve picked it at number one. St- the Wait, one are, here? Are these the out, the out no, ones? everyone out. Yeah. Well, they're not oh, out. Oh, oh sorry. At this point. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. My bad. I thought we were talking about the next Anyway, one. I, okay. The I, two, I the two, I'm sorry. The two people who picked Arlong Park at number one was Abby Denton and Dan, our editor. Um, the outliers. Or the people who picked the lowest, since we're so high at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, v uh, picked at number fourteen. V has been the Abby Denton of this this batch here. Um, Brodsky picked it at number twelve, um, which is really not bad. Uh, Bell, what is going on, Bell? Who picked it dead last? Um, what? What? Yeah, uh, we'll have to have a talk with Bell. I'm sorry, even I had to unmute to be on. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, I assume that's a typo. Um, Man, uh, <laughs> I mean, score one for the Davy back fight, huh? <laughs> we're we're down to number one. What could this be? Uh, it ranked number one last time for us too. And guess what? Ranked number one pretty far and away as of this moment among the audience. So we have some consensus here. Even if Alex and Steven disagree, Steve, Ed, and myself all agree. Water 7 Ennius Lobby remains the crown jewel of the One Piece uh, story arcs. Um, I, I want Ed to go first. Ed, um, let's talk about it. Why do you love Water 7 Ennius Lobby so much, huh? Well, it's the arc that d- sort of defines the Straw Hat crew. It's, um, you know, they are united after after this. Because they go through their hardest period. They go through their most trying time. You know, they've come so far, especially it's in- interesting to talk about this after the Arlong arc. Because at that point, they were they were unified. They were heading, ready to go into the Grand Line. And they make it through the Grand Line. They make it through Alabaster. They go up into the sky. They fight God. They come back. And then <laughs> when they finally, you know, when they they finally, when they finally come back, we run into... You know, they they had left Earth for a while. They let, went up into the sky. They come back, and sort of the reality of the world sort of hits them in the face and threatens to break up the crew. And the the crew falls out with each other. Usopp falls out. He's gonna he's gonna leave the crew, and they're gonna and they ha- they have a fight. Like the crew is fighting each other, and we get this sort of whirlwind conspiracy, you know, an intricate plot that made sense. As opposed to necessarily being muddled and a little confusing, uh, so we get the the chase, the sea train, and uh, we get Robin's flashback and all the individual fights again. Some of the best fights in the entire series, um, like the emotional impact of Mary's death in particular. Uh, it's interesting, you know. One Piece is at its strongest when it can. You know, it, you're crying over a boat. We've said this for many, many years now, but it's it, it, so much that it kind of became a meme. But it's true because <laughs> if it can make you cry over a boat, it can make you, you know, the, the, the skill of, you know, of the storyteller is to make you care about these things. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the fights in particular, I the, think the one thing that's necessarily missing is a big head villain it's interesting that we have have it sort of split luchi is the power but spondum is the brains and he's really sniveling he's this really sort of cowardly guy using uh using the power of the government to sort of try to try and crush the straw hat crew to uh you know take nico robin and the way um that's 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 split up um allows Luffy to have sort of this pure martial arts contest 
with with Lucci, which uh, is one of the most kinetic, one of the most fun fights in in One Piece. And when they finally get Robin back, and they finally have that moment where they're all together, and she can finally relax, and even when she has the encounter with uh, Aokiji at the end of at the end of the arc, uh, she can still she can finally relax. She finally has that uh, burden off of her. They have that. Uh, emotional moment she declares that she wants to live and the, the crew you know you know they can't be stopped at that point so it, it again these are the aspects of friendship and you know sort of kind-heartedness that are at the core of one piece and uh you know water seven i think is the most one piece arc <laughs> like you know it, it exemplifies it that's why i think it's number one steve um why was it number? You're at number one. Everything I've praised about every other arc in this ranking, uh, Water Seven has it all. Um, it's uh, it's hard to talk about this, and I think what Steve was saying earlier, it's like when you caught up, like that arc will always have an effect on you. And while yeah, I wasn't same. reading week week to week, I should have. I'm an idiot who doesn't read. Um, <laughs> except the manga i read the manga um, yeah now steve reads the manga um, yeah i was just i was reading spoilers for like any's lobby at the time uh yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> everyone hey, like just disappointment cringed at that yeah 2005 and 2006 was a different time yeah i'm sorry steve hey at least i didn't rank arlong park dead last um <laughs> Bell isn't here to defend themselves. <laughs> I know, I know, but uh, you know, I I Not, don't like but it's shaming a tough, anyone it's for the stances. Yeah, I mean, but that one, I was like, really, really. <laughs> Whiskey Peak one. was better. <laughs> um, hey, come on, Whiskey yeah. Peak is really good. Yeah. I know, but it's, come I know, on, I, yeah, I know. It's, it's Syrup Village is better. Yeah. That's the one that you can yes, universally. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, Water um, Seven, Steve. Uh, this. It is, I, I think I always have a, 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 a ironic, right? I'm on this uh, podcast ranking all these uh, arcs. I really have a tough time conveying all the things I love about a piece of media because it just feels natural. It, it's when something mm. just feels right. Yeah. You know, it's almost like this is just how it should be. <laughs> Water seven and his lobby is such a great, it, like it's, it, it, like any story would would benefit from having their own water seven um it starts off like any good one piece arc should in a brand new locale that has its own ecosystem it's gorgeous to look at fantastic new characters introduced uh great gags uh with the straw hats but then we have um you know, then we have conflict, and then we have, uh, uh, I don't know, then things take a turn for the worse with the Mary. Apparently mm -hmm. the Mary can't be repaired. This leads to uh, Luffy and Usopp having a falling out. I, I don't think One Piece has ever gotten that dramatic outside of a flashback. And I know we've had moments like Alabasta, but the fact that this these were two friends, two of the goofiest characters amongst the main cast, just having this this duel, this falling out, it, and at at the time, like you didn't know what was gonna, you didn't know Usopp, like if Usopp was gonna rejoin, there was no guarantees, um, and then the constant swerves. You're introduced to Frankie and the Frankie family. You think, oh, I guess they're the big bads of this arc. No, <laughs> turns out they're the they're the big goods. <laughs> uh, and and the of course the the CP nine reveal. You're introduced to all these lovable uh, shipwrights of Galia, and it turns out half of them are are cops. <laughs> um, and Bluno. From the bar. From, from the, the bar. bar. Bluno from the bar. Yeah, well, I think Kaku is the biggest swerve because Kaku is just this very whimsical character and yeah. so goofy. And I still love Kaku. Kaku is one of my all-time uh, favorite side characters. And it's like, 
he's evil. I mean, and, you know, evil. And Bluno from the say. bar is evil. I mean, what? what, what, what? Oh, I like that guy. And yeah. then, yeah, you thought Frankie was the big uh, bad, and now we're getting his flashback, and it's like, yeah. oh, uh, Frankie's really important. Um, and then just the the the, you know, and just finding out and like. And and Robin, like, it, it was such a huge mystery and finding out more and more. And then, like I talked about this earlier, Sanji being peak Sanji uh, going after Robin on the sea train. The whole concept of the sea train is really oh, fun God. and unique, yeah. too. And then that leads to, you know, a shonen trope of, uh, oh, each level is a different, stronger adversary. And, they, and Oda does that with the sea train. And it's a lot of fun. And, you know, and they desperately you know trying to get robin back and you want robin back because now like mm-hmm. robin is finally fleshed out a little bit more and you realize like no she's not a traitor at all uh usop you know introduces us to soge king sniper king and and, and he can and usop continues to amaze and and be one of the most versatile members of the main cast and then that takes us to Eni's lobby uh you know and you know, Spondum and the rest of CP9. Is, is Spondum is one of my favorite bastards uh, in this series, um, and just that whole raid on Eni's lobby is entertaining. Robin's flashback is astounding, uh, and and all those fights. I think I, I, CP9 are a great antithesis uh, for the Straw Hats, and I think I was talking about this with Vero. I was like, I I like I like CP9 because they're you know they're there's they're goofy they're they're just the right amount of goofy to be great one piece characters uh but also they're not too edgy to be edge lords they they rest right in the middle they're 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 goofy one piece characters that dress in black <laughs> so they're right, really they're, close to being edge lords i mean they're not they're goofy. they're not like they're really they're goofy, goofy. They're uh, really yeah goofy. i disagree jabra yeah. and kumidori and Fukuro and yeah. Kaku is very They're, Kaku, Kaku just, like tumbling through the roof or t- tumbling through the ceiling of a of a bill of the room as as a giraffe. Like, By yeah. the way, I I, res- I resent that remark to say that. They're, they're, yeah, they're goofy One Piece characters who also make you feel that like pit of like that almost that Blackbeard level of like ooh what is going to happen with some of them at least not all of them yeah. but yeah I. And just some amazing battles uh, and a tremendous finale with Luffy and Lucci uh, and all leads to just the Mary who, you know, for all we knew, like that, that like Kaku had to like cement his heel turn. I think it was just like, I don't think people are buying, buying me as a villain. So I got to launch the Mary into uh, <laughs> uh, into a, a storm. Everyone's saying and I'm going to join the crew. Let's. You know, let's, yeah, let's, let's yeah. not do that. Yeah, join this uh, pulls the <laughs> lever, um, and then for the Mary to come back and save them, and it was kind of just yes, everyone's back together. We're gonna be fine. And then no, the Mary still you know, they still had to part ways with the Mary, and one of the, one of the most tear jerking moments of the entire series. Uh, like I'd said, crying over a boat, uh, it's iconic, and just for mm-hmm. Robin to finally be at peace. And to gain Frankie as the shipwright, one of my favorite characters. When I was really getting to One Piece, I was obsessed with Frankie so much. Uh, and you know, and then the even the sorry, I, I don't want to take too much away from everyone. No, I'm glad you're place. going the reveal, through the plot. <laughs> I, I want to make sure I want to talk. About, the reveal of Garp uh, was yeah. and the return of Kobe and Helmeppo, Kobe and Helmeppo yeah. was was awesome. And then. Uh, yeah, Ace Ace versus Blackbeard, a dragon, and, still, and yeah. the four emperors. Yeah. Oh, oh, Michael and Michael. And Michael. <laughs> oh yeah, we can't forget about Michael. And also, Zoro oh was a was a mom Michael. for a little bit for three <laughs> that's, kids. That's filler. Yeah, that's filler. I that's know. Filler. I'm joking. It's Michael and Hoiko jo- are real. And Michael and Hoiko are canon, baby. <laughs> I know. I know. Michael and Hoiko um, are real, and obviously. <laughs> and uh, and the Ace versus Blackbeard fight is yes. Yeah. It is yeah. awesome too. That yeah. was a big. Uh, that was the very end. Of, That's a yeah. shit of brick, your mom. Because we there was so many shit of bricks moments. Because we we heard that Blackbeard was something to be feared, and you know our moments with them. He was kind of just he was goofy, 
he ate cherry pies. Uh, he encouraged Luffy, and then uh, his uh, his Lincoln Log ship got uh, destroyed by the knock upstream. <laughs> I love that uh, show. And and then we see him again, and it's like, oh, this is the Blackbeard that we should have been worried about. Uh, I just this arc just has it all. So now that you've described the arc, uh, now that I read the Wikipedia it? article for you. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, it's, I, I, I appreciate you actually going through it because mm-hmm. it saves me the effort. Uh, did you have anything else, Steve? Or I, I, it's what's I, 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 I can't con- like I said, it's hard to me convey something that I just think just like is perfect. No notes. I'm like, I am so invested in this. Uh, all the characters get shine to wonderful backstories great villains uh and uh you know fuck the government uh what else is there to say (laughs) there isn't much else to say um i'll i'll try and add my one piece here um as i'm sorry um thank you though steve like you've i think the I think the reason why I put this arc as my number one is because all it's exactly as Steve said. I, I'll I'll take it a little. I'll put in a little more detail here. Um, it all the parts I love about every One Piece arc. This arc has like a million of those things. Oh, it doesn't have one insanely good flashback. It has like it has at least two. Um, really, really good flashbacks. I yeah. love Frankie's three flashback. If you want to, Tom- three if you want to count uh, Lucci's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Tom's, is, Tom's is great. Tom's is underrated. Tom and Frankie. Tom, yeah, the Tom and Frankie story is an amazing story. I love the the machines I built, you know, coming to bite him in the ass at the end of the, the whole. I'm not going to go describing each of the stories, but I will say Robin's flashback is my favorite flashback. That flashback makes me cry on multiple occasions. Um, it has iconic moments like at the end of Alabasta scattered throughout each of the arcs them standing on the tower of justice um the mary being burned and them set you know with the viking funeral um it has uh just like all of water seven is so intricately i mean steve took like an hour to just describe what happened it's so intricately and wonderfully done and it is such an amazing characterization of all of the straw hats the Usopp versus Luffy fight is going to always be one of my favorite moments, not just because of the... It's because I care so much about each of those characters and seeing that story uh, unfold before your very eyes, just in the in the anime particularly, is so heartbreaking, not just for Luffy and Usopp, but also for Chopper and Zoro and Sanji and Nami and uh, and the rest of them, uh, all on the and and the Mary who and actually is lit- and Mary who's literally crying um, during that scene. That is such an emotionally touching scene. Um, I love the way that paid God. off the uh, Club Outerman scene from the Skype here. The club, was, uh, yeah, it paid off the Club Outerman scene. Yeah. You you also have Usopp coming full circle with not just the Soge King, but at the end, the very end where he realizes, oh, I need to apologize. I need to, I need to be humble for the first time in my life. Um, it's, it's, it's such a great moment for Usopp and Robin. I could talk about for hours, but like Robin and Usopp are completely different characters after this arc in the best of ways. Um, they grow so much and we don't see that too much after and i get why we don't but i think it also exemplifies why water seven and ennius lobby are such standouts um alex you you and steven put this as your number two how dare you so low um alex would you like to go first sure um I was actually thinking today it's a really good thing that you put ennius lobby and water seven as one whole thing because I think that does sweeten the pot. Um, because it's yeah, it's it does. I there, agree. A lot of there is a lot of water seven that drags for me. Uh, and uh, two words, Aqua Laguna. Like I, the whole Aqua Laguna stuff happens. Uh, it's a little bit of a slog, but uh, for the most part, like I'm playing a little de- devil's advocate here because I do love Water Seven and his lobby, and I did for a moment think about putting it as my number one because of um 
I mean, I followed it week to week. I I was in it. Like this was the height of One Piece like of of One Piece fandom. Like this was to be a One Piece fan during the Water 7 stuff uh was absolutely pandemonium pandemonium. It, it it was insane. Anybody can tell you. Um that CP9 reveal was everybody's form signature, uh yep. mine included. Uh, um, it was so fucking crazy. That was like the ultimate oh shit from moment for me. Like, what a what a crazy swerve. Um, I Oda, Oda's Kaiser Soze. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm so happy that no one spoiled that for me. I have to say because that was like oh the CP9 reveal. Yeah, that that was I think probably the most shocking thing for me to 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 witness. It's... Yeah, and I I feel like now there's so many things that people can tell you that like are bigger spoilers that they won't even remen- mention the CP and reveal anymore, which is really great for new readers. Um, the Luffy versus Usopp fight was really really fun. Like like all that crew, like who who's leaving the crew, who's joining the crew stuff was, it was our soap opera back then. It was. Every single time a new shipwright was introduced, it was like, oh, man, this is going to be the guy. Like, when Kaku showed up, I was for sure he was going to be the guy because he had such, like, he was given this really great introduction. Uh, and it was like, but but he's got a long nose, too. Like, I have a are question. Are they going to replace one long yeah. nose guy with another one? Did and it people was... think that Kaku was, it was like, oh, well, I'm sure. Usopp's gone, but we got the new Usopp. There was so much arguing about it. Like I, I, I've been involved with the fandom long enough to remember the poll on the Arlong Park forums on who was joining, Polly or Frankie. Yeah. It was, this is how Pauly was a... St- Bad choice all around. No, but no, Polly Pauly had like his rope. That's a I, cool. His I thought his uh, he had a cool technique, and I thought that like you know he had he could lasso people. Okay, so uh, like I said Zach, earlier uh, Zach. Uh, in this episode, <laughs> that Oda has been like doing the whole uh, like who's going to join the crew swerve for a really long time. Yes, mm-hmm. um, I will get into the Water Seven stuff in a second, but uh, and I hate to bring it back to Alabasta, like because I know we. We fucking close the book on it, but uh, re- and we rereading it, do it's much, like much faster. Yeah, the the uh, the the really crazy thing about Alabasta is that it gives you swerves there too. It's like, is Vivi gonna join the crew? Is Bon Clay gonna join the crew? No, neither of them are fucking joining the crew. Here's Nico Robin. <laughs> like it's it's such a crazy. That was such a crazy swerve, and the drama of who's going to join the crew during this time was fucking nuts because it went from Kaku to Polly, and then you had Tilestone and Lulu that were just they had they shared a a thing. They shared like a thing. Rob Lucci came coming in as well. Like which one of these is going to join the crew? Then Frankie shows up and he's a villain. Then Frankie shows up and he's a good guy again. And like it went like from Kaku to Polly to Frankie to Polly to Frankie to Kaku again after fucking fighting Zoro because he smiles after Zoro defeats him or whatever. I'm like, come on. Like, you just really want this guy to join the crew, don't you? And at that point, I think people still were thinking that Usopp wasn't going to join the crew. He's going to go off and go on like an Elbaf adventure. Well, uh, Oda did that. Oda. Uh, planted that seed there. He did. Uh, he really did. Like it, it, like Water Seven. While you were reading it, was really an, an amazing time. Like I, I, I my, guess I'll my, include my, Indies Lobby in this as well. My biggest regret was just not because I omit this at the time because I I watched ahead in the anime. Yeah, it was hard for me to read through the manga and get past Alabasta. But as uh, as soon as I finally just like manned up and plowed through it and then like reading through skypea and water seven was a breeze i one of my biggest regrets in my fandom is uh not being caught up during any's lobby uh it was crazy man can you imagine us podcasting oh man like Gar- uh, we hey, we're we 10 and this is the one oh piece my podcast God. <laughs> so uh and my name is steve <laughs> <laughs> the why did we like, all have falsetto voices? <laughs> I think the thing that really blew me away about Water 7 was Oda's art style changing 
uh, to the point where certain like Kokoro looks like a European storybook character. Um, Kaku looks like like he looks like a character from Vicky the Viking. Like they there there are so many. Whenever Oda has like this new arc, and he has agency to create new side characters, they're never the same as the previous arc. And Water Seven has a very European feel to it. It's it's Venice. It's it's you know, mm-hmm. it's it's Europe. It's uh, it's very um like Italian inspired. Like all the neighboring uh cities and and places like. <laughs> the the mask motif i mean come the fuck on like that is italy like it's yeah I, see i think that's that's to one piece's benefit is i think you know the best thing you could do in creating your own art is take in your like your inspirations and your likes outside of that medium yeah like and that's why you i th- and one piece just really stands on its own and not just in its cartoony art style, but the fact that it's inspired by European art and comics and not just other manga. Sure. Or you have like, or just real life places. Like, I think it's funny that Mm -hmm. I'm like, for me, my rankings go from uh, nothing but sand to nothing but water. Uh, Like it's, it's, you know, one or the other, right? Like it's um, like a fucking star Wars biome where, Oh no, it can't be a a well-balanced planet. It's gotta be nothing but sand, nothing but, ice you know uh I, i'm rambling a little bit i i do yes. want to talk about the cp9 members and those fights are really great um i i am a little I, like i think they're not as good as alabaster fights except for with the exception being sanji's fight with jabra um sanji's fight with jabra is fucking incredible um i i really i i really love how visceral it is and the um i don't know letting his foot on fire very cool stuff Frankie's fight with Fukuro, also a favorite of mine. I Ooh, don't. Thank you, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, like, that really fight. That fight. And uh, one one character that I really I, I I've come around to a lot is is Kumidori, and I really love him. He's very Kumidori is the scariest of of all. Of yes, them. I agree. That's um, who I was thinking he, of when I said scary. Yeah. Yes, Kumidori is the most frightening out of all of them. Uh, when he goes like berserk mode or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't. And now now. My my big criticism, like you mentioned, okay, so you mentioned, uh, you know, the Mary, you mentioned Robin and Usopp. I'm not going to talk about that because we all know that's all great shit. Makes me the, when Luffy and and Usopp reunite makes me cry. Yeah. Like it's one of my favorite scenes in the anime. Um, Lucci, I I don't really enjoy Rob Lucci that much. I think he's kind of cool, but I I don't think that he's. I mean, I get that, like, he's the brawn and Spondum is the brains, but there's something about Lucci that doesn't quite do it for me, and I don't know what it is. And I I really I really can't put my finger on it. And I don't think that Luffy's final... Like, I wish he had finished him off with Giant Pistol. Because Jet Gatling, I don't think, is a strong... as Is as strong of a finish as something like um, uh, Storm. Like, I don't know. It's just more punchies. We never even uh, talked about gear two and three, but um, uh, it's good stuff. I mean, yeah, they are good gear, stuff. Like I, yeah. I could, I could, I could basically get on an entire podcast and talk about my experience week to week with this entire shit. Yeah, we that but, we, but instead, we're already are running over. I'm going to cut it right here. <laughs> All right, say Steven. that I don't think Lucci's that hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's very sexy. Uh, Steven. Yeah, I, I guess I will. I'll do a little. Uh, devil's advocate as well just to uh to say why i i guess why number two yeah d- doesn't rise over you know my um my, my love of the pristine structure of skypea um i do think it it, it is i didn't I, I i love the cp9 members that we see in uh water seven and i think that like the the shared experience of having seen their betrayal um, and understanding what they're capable of makes though that group of characters really strong. And I felt like once we got to Aeneas Lobby, and it's like, oh, here's a couple more dipshits. Uh, it yeah, was, yeah. you know, I couldn't get it up for them as as much. Um, the and, and they they had fine, you know, fights. I had, they had good moments. Um, uh, they the you know, it's it's a very strong cast overall. Um, but I I did 
th- there was a little bit of a like getting watered down feeling uh, for me. And um, I, I think that that uh, Luffy versus Lucci is it's a spectacular fight of a particular kind. There's many different fights in in uh, styles of fight in in One Piece. Um, and that that particular sort of fight where it's very stoic and it's it's very action forward and uh it's not as much about like um you know uh overcoming like this this character that you just hate that represents everything that's wrong with it like luch is a bad guy but he is not he's a very different type of character than uh you know characters like wapple um or you know other you know caesar clown or whoever you know uh theatrical characters and i i guess i personally i am uh, i will always lean towards uh, a satisfying takedown of uh an enemy that you really love to hate um yeah. over a uh you know a very pitched like white knuckle you know and it's it's great it's great for what it is um it's just not as much my my kind of bag um i <laughs> I mean, I I love Ennis Lobby as a um as a place, but I, it is very it is kind of weird that they have this like very forbidding, uh you know center of justice sort of location, and it's this whole giant town. It's filled with like tens of thousands of agents that are basically just imperial stormtroopers. Like they're they're just there to get bodied, um and you know whatever it's fine. It's <laughs> I, I love it. Squad or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I like I, I love it. You know, it's the it's the impetus for. <laughs> pirate warriors is like luffy yeah, fighting, you know wiping out ten thousand guys at once like that it's great but um i, I definitely remember getting a, a little fatigued at at times um yeah. in in any lobby um and like those are the things that i will bring up you know just to 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 mention the slight blemishes on you know just like pound for pound like the most impactful and emotional and um, stunning arc that you know exists in the in the series. Like he he hits so many highs, um, you know, with the 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 iconic moments, the uh, the 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 clash of personalities, um, the the crew like fighting each other, and then and then finding out that they you know can can still stick by each other. Um, all of that stuff. It is you know it's just so perfectly done. It's so fantastic it, it like I'll, I'll echo everything alex said it was a absolute experience going through it um the first time and you know it, it made you wonder like how is he going to top this and you know i guess it, it is guess number did, one according it, to it, yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. uh it, it it's hard to imagine how he could have um uh, done yeah. that and um yeah i don't know it, it's just uh it there's nothing else like it in in one piece and um yeah you guys have already said all the things i i would have said otherwise so i'll leave it at that i'll i'll I, add i i, I Alex. i'd like to bring up yeah that like it's all as much as i love current one piece like time skip one piece like i i it still hasn't achieved uh week to week this um whatever we got during water 7 uh, it was something like, I don't know, man, it was the best, it was literally the best time to be a One Piece fan every week. Um, just because you had all this stuff going on, it was airtight, uh, like everything, all the pieces, uh, with Usopp and Robin and the Going Merry and Frankie, like, how do you juggle all of that and not fuck it up? Um, like it, he was... He was going full board. And he was now. younger than us, probably, uh, at the time. Yes. Oda? Or around our yeah. age. No, he was. Um, he would have been about 32 at the time. Okay, well, there you go. Um, he was uh, born in 75. Well, I want to give... impressing me. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I want to end on one on one note, just saying Water 7 and Aeneas Lobby, I think, exemplifies the... It's the only time it's really the Straw Hats versus the government. And... The you know like that setting up something like that important contrast for the rest of the series I think sets it apart in in, in that way as well and right but it's not just them versus the government because oh the government is bad and they're doing this it's they're they're doing it right it, it's the ethos of one piece they're doing it for for their the friend. friends the, yeah the, the best the best one piece arcs are the ones where 
there's personal stakes for the Straw Hats. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it is. And I, that's why the post time skip stuff has been hard because like we have already built the characterization. Like I get why they aren't about the Straw Hats, but that's why I think yeah. it's hard for the post time skip stuff to that's get why Except That's why for... ranking Wano was a little tough because I think yes. Wano is great, but you know, like Luffy's doing it. Like Luffy wants to free this nation for for his friends that for live his, there, and yeah. he wants to take down the four emperors. But I still don't quite feel like it's the Straw Hats fight. It is, but like it's not. Yeah, it's kind of more like it yeah. not not we, initially. We have run out of time today. Um, <laughs> I do want to. I do want to mention who put this as their number one. Uh, Mike. Put it as his number one, as well as Joey, Brodsky, Kelly, David, Donnie, um, and Shannon. Uh, who put it lower? Uh, guess what? Abby Denton put it as number 13. Zach, is that the uh, lowest? Is 13 really the lowest, though? 13 the lowest. Yeah, I mean, like, I'd be shocked if anybody put this dead last. This is, unless they mm. were like... Unless they hated Robin. <laughs> like, exactly. God, Robin, what a disaster. How could you? So, uh, yeah, any last thought? Uh, Steve. Can, we get a, can we get a final rundown now? Oh, from yes. Last, final, from from, from last to first. To one. Yeah. Here we go. So, Syrup Village, Amazon Lily, or so it's 24 up. Orange Town, Twin Capes and Whiskey Peak, Little Garden, Fishman Island, Logtown, Romance Dawn, Dress Rosa, Lo- Long Ring, Long Land, Punk Hazard, Zoe, Baradier, Thriller Bark, Impel Down, the Shabari Archipelago, Whole Cake Island in the Reverie, Drum Island, Wano, Marineford, Post War and Return to Shabari, uh, Jaya and Skypea, Alabasta, Arlong Park, and Water 7, Ennius Lobby. At top, a at the top. Pretty good list, decent list. I, I'd say yeah. that um, uh, maybe Arlong Park should be dead last. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You're right. Let's switch that. No. Uh, I'm that'll put do you it. in the dungeon. <laughs> and that'll do it for our <laughs> arcs of consequence. And feel free to quote me.